all right what's up guys welcome back welcome back it's time for another watch party and uh, yeah it's beginning already well the pre-show is nice to be back nice to have you here and uh, i'm just gonna tweet out that we're live and uh, also another thing we have no music here but oh no it's uh, audio there uh, so if cypher is picked today i will be um putting on the cypher cosplay so uh, hopefully he's picked i don't think he will be but i really hope so so i prepared for for it or actually i, I think he will be picked I think they're pretty, but not by all teams Das, I'm doing great, so doing great. And Livio, MP, really doing great. And, uh, I guess uh, doing yourselves. And that's y'all. The alpha bracket started with six teams, and after today, we'll be down to just eight. Hello and welcome to day three of the lock-in, the biggest VCT event ever. And we're coming at you live from the Gimnasio de Ibapuera in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Of course, I'm Golden Boy in the captain's chair, joined by Mimi as well as Achilleo. Very so nice to see them again. Guys here today. Dude, the matches have been great. The matches have been great so far, two last two days. That are gonna take the stage later and yeah, the crowd was good. The first two I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the meta so far. It's, it's a, to cheer for. a lot of variety yeah it's gonna be fantastic who am i supporting this match team heretics man i i almost had a multiple uh heart palpitations yesterday after uh, those, oh, yeah. especially those first two games yeah crazy, let me increase the volume crazy a bit. series to start things off i mean the okay. <laughs> series just so back and forth with them and <clears throat> what about you Corp. really truly really didn't know who the hell was gonna walk away with the win there but uh carmine able to get it at the end today? i think so dropping a scent for the first time in a very long time not since copenhagen versus fpx i have the cypher cosplay map. ready a really good as well from bbl on that map to take yeah. it all the way to three and uh unfortunately the third series wasn't nearly as crazy. Well, let's go ahead and go into greater detail about the matches yesterday because we had six teams that made their debut right here on the world stage. Unfortunately, three of them went home due to the single elimination bracket, which is an unfortunate reality. But Carmine Core, you know, they they managed to take down FPX, but Mimi, that was quite the game. This is probably one of the most like insane single series of Valorant that I have seen. Both these teams came in with some really really interesting ideas never thought i'd see a team where scream was igling that played not a single duelist across the uh, entirety of this series chinese valorant continues to be exciting and weird and just awesome to watch there's a lot of potential for the scene but unfortunately yeah. for fbx just not quite there yet yeah and then of course we made history uh yesterday mm. the first time oh, should have write this korean tweet. team take on an all turkish team uh, as well yeah. in drx and bbl and kilios i know you had particular great interest in this but i am glad that bbl showed the world what they're capable of against one of the world's finest. Yeah, I think they really set the stage for what they are going to be able to achieve in the Pacific, or sorry, in the EMEA region when that does kick off after this event because, you know, coming into this, a lot of people were saying, okay, DRX should have this pretty easily. We saw the prediction rate was like 98% for DRX across the board on all poles. And PBL really made them sweat. Being able to take them down on this map of Ascent, especially given how things had kind of started for DRX, was yeah. a really good rally back from BBL because they got absolutely just boomed they out of that proud. first map. That, that really first did. map of Pearl was just so one-sided. Uh, for them to be able to rally back and also rally back on Haven uh, after a really rough start was really incredible for them. So I'm really looking forward to tracking BBL and their progress through EMEA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the rest of that series really was just all DRX all the time. They come back in with the same roster as last year, look fantastic. Buds is absolutely fragging out. And besides the issues that we saw in Ascent, it was looking pretty incredible. Yeah, and then we were so excited about what could have potentially have been the Gigabank, one of the greatest matches of all time. And un unfortunately, uh, for Cloud9, it was a great match. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, I'm talking about Cloud9 and Paper X, obviously, as our last match of the day. Second. And Mimi, I think we came into that one expecting a little bit more oomph 
from Paper X than we ended up getting. And uh, Cloud9, well, I think they answered a lot of questions yesterday. There were a lot of issues from Paper X, but what I walk away with mostly from the series is being so incredibly impressed with the prep that Cloud9 did in the offseason and the read that they have in this meta. Both compositions they brought out here are not ones that I expected, but I thought they were so incredibly well thought out on both and really well set up. And then Paper X just got shut down there by we go. was really unable to make an adaptation during those matches to these wild comps and unfortunately are now head to home. Yeah, I think one of the things up, that we uh, were really Nwede? anticipating was, okay, they've got Yay, this is huge, what a pickup, best player in the yeah, world. Yeah, Heretics are mixed. I've also heard that Heretics are pretty good. Map of Lotus. He was able to take the top of the standings, but he didn't need to go out and crush. It was really no. the likes of Leaf and Zeppo who were going absolutely It's going to be interesting to see Mixed play I mean, as well. Everybody on that team right now looks great. Vanity's shot calling, fantastic the whole way throughout. Yeah. Genuinely, I am terrified for DRX going and, to that and, next and match. And, you know, in comparison to where What's up, Omega? were, How you doing? Uh, at least where the conversation was for C9 coming to the event, I think a lot of people were excited about the team, but they were unsure. They were kind of a bit of an unknown commodity. And now they show up here. And, yes, was Paper X uh, struggling a little bit? Sure. But I think a lot a, a lot of fans at home are going to be taking the C9 roster very seriously here in the Alpha Bracket. And speaking of, coming up today, we actually have I'm some doing good, huge Omega. Doing good, matches Mama. today. Our last three opening matches of the Alpha Bracket. First up, right, it's going to be here. Team Heretics taking on Evil Geniuses. Then it's going to be MIBR versus Talon Esports. And then later, our returning champions, Loud, will be taking on Gen G. Mimi, I have a feeling mm. we're going to have some upsets today. Yeah, it feels very, very possible. I feel like I the arena is going to be packed be for MIBR and Loud. You mentioned it as well. Two Brazilian teams get to come out uh, and play for their 100%. Well, here. maybe not the 100% because um, they have a cap the until the semis and the grand finals. From this alpha bracket. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I believe at least. It feels so and, weird um, because normally we're like two weeks into a Regardless of that, so like right whatever right amount they like, allow in, oh yeah, we've just that's going to be packed when Loud and MIBR already. are playing. And of course, we have to call another entire group next week or two uh, weeks. Cypher has been played, is. yeah. I, 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 I think he has been played three, three times in total. Hours of travel has really just fried my brain. But it's great. I'm here for it. It's going to be awesome. I'm glad you've been enjoying Cypher. Very nice to hear that. I know everyone at home is excited about it. We are excited about it here in the venue. And I know I'm going to be particularly pumped when we get get to see our Brazilian teams take the stage right here in Sao Paulo. But if your lock and bracket has already been busted, and um, for me, unfortunately, also, that yeah. already happened. Yeah, I, I, I want to bring it on know, the, uh, the cosplay. The hat is still experts, small, and but uh, we have Brad, we'll it who has all of the answers. I, uh, when I got the cosplay the first time, I, the hat was too small, but uh, I was going to fix it and never got around to Thank do it very much golden boy but yes welcome to what i could uh, do is um, they've given me i could forget segment, about some of the strats i've here. memorized and uh, put it on as i build the perfect bracket they told me it was impossible they told me you couldn't perfect the bracket but i've made it an art form myself i'm gonna be taking my sweet time with this i have two minutes two minutes with this with the segment that i was <laughs> okay i've got all the t there's a timer okay um mibr first team that First team to go through um, against Talon in the bracket. Probably going to be making it through on that one. Honestly, I'm not going to bet against the Brazilian teams. I'm in their country. Um, they'll go with that one there. Stick them on. Uh, <laughs> what's next? Who have I got here? That's Talon. What's that's up, you and the uh, editor, Marmik? How are you guys doing? Um, that's Loud, not MIBR. Loud versus Gen G. Again, same logic applies. I'm not going. I'm not going against the Brazilian teams. Let's go. How much time have I got? One minute. Tw okay, one minute twenty-five. Um, this is moving all over the place. What is this? Heretics is a team? It's a silly logo. Um, the, <laughs> uh, where the hell are they on this bracket? They're not winning against EG. Neither are Talon. Cloud9 uh, versus DRX. Uh, I don't know who to predict for that one. I'm going to go with Cloud9. Looks pretty good. One minute on the clock. I'm being pressured I think in my you, ear. I this think DRX wins versus Cloud9. Uh, where are they here? Cloud9. Um, I'm not. I'm not going with Cloud9. I'm going to go with DRX for this one. I think that they listen. They looked a bit sloppy against BBL, but they're going to be able to pick it up in time. Who else have oh. I got? That's just oh. already four. Never mind. They lost. Paper X, they're gone. Um, the next team we've got is Paper X again. I don't. I'm just searching through all of these Gen G. That's useless. Um, Koi, Koi, Koi. Thirty seconds. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. NRG versus Giants. I'm going to go with NRG. Stick them on. Get on there, NRG, and um, 
loud, sure. We'll go with loud. We'll go with loud for this one. And thirteen seconds. Okay. Um, ten seconds. Uh, this pressure. Where is EG? Where is EG in this box, man? Uh, there they are. Oh god, their logo is so un un unrecognizable, and I've run out of time. That's the bracketology <laughs> lesson. Um, what do you make of that one, Des? Well, I think it might be R and um, Lauda definitely uh, winning their matches. <laughs> what the hell was that? It was I wasn't even. He didn't. That was science. We he didn't predict who the final. If if I'm if I was leaning on. Brent Although for I think uh, Talon had underdogs versus uh, MIBR. I, I believe it's uh, Talon, right? Uh, okay. Let me see. It. I think that's the best Would you make a yes. bet? Talon best and Gen G, they are not the under underdogs <laughs> versus Loud. Maybe, I mean, oh. maybe, I feel like some things were meant to be there. I don't know. I, who was he trying to predict? He Cloud9, they fell off the board? The Brazilian it teams because he, 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 okay. he feared backlash. And then the EG sign was literally in the bucket the whole time and he couldn't see it. The poor man needed an assistant. He needed some help. Yeah. Surely an upstanding scientist like him could have afforded an assistant. Next time we'll do it. Next time we do that, we bring back bracketology. I'll, I'll go in as his assistant. I'll make sure that we have yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could definitely be there and help him out or help him out. Okay, well, I hope you guys learned something useful I today. I definitely didn't. If not, well, it's just a Wednesday. So, yeah. <laughs> reminder, make sure you guys use the hashtag VCT you believe is and winner? hashtag VCT throughout the they event. They played pretty we, good course, yesterday. They played very good yesterday. As we do all the time. But we want to know... Uh, How you doing, Kato? How you doing? How you doing? Who do you think uh, is going to be the matchup that has upset potential written all over it? Scan that QR code that's at the bottom of the screen. You got Team Heretics versus Evil Geniuses, MIBR versus Talent, and, of course, you have Gen G Esports taking on What's up, Danny? Uh, Seth, what Leaf, do you think is the potential for an esport? Or an esport? They're both esports. Uh, a spoiler esports. today. Uh, I'm gonna say the biggest upset. I think the one that, if it does happen, would be the biggest is obviously Gen G versus Loud, just because we haven't gotten to see a lot of these Gen G players on an international stage. Yeah, and they're going Gen up well, actually, yeah, Gen G is the underdog the team because Loud won championship champions last year, so on there as well as some really by default they're faces, one so of the best, yeah. right? I, I'm with you there. I think Gen G actually have a chance at this one. And imagine how the crowd would feel if Loud go home in the first round. That would be brutal. But I want to set the stage. What if Talon beats MIBR? Well, luckily for Loud, it's if they go home, I it's I not I a plane ride, either way, right? Both hilarious. Well, All right, car ride. well, guys, coming up, we're going to deep dive into our first match of the day. It's Team Heretics taking uh, on Evil Leaf. Geniuses. But first, no you know, we idea. Take well, I don't have drops on my channel. Here. I know well, that, but uh, for we'll the Twitch uh, stream, no more. idea. They should be working both on YouTube and Twitch um, for drops. On mainstream, at least. When does uh, Global Esports uh, play? Next week on uh, the 23rd, 25th. Let me double check. Twenty third. So next week on Thursday. All right. Who are we supporting to win? Well, I am supporting the underdog teams, and in this te in this matchup, I think it's probably EG that is under um, underrated. Nobody really, you know, thinks of EG uh, winning anything right now compared to other NA teams and so on. And I feel like uh, Team Heretics have the highest chance of winning. Hi team Heretics, they are very good. Uh, MIBR versus Talon. I think MIBR and Talon are pretty evenly matched, but I think uh, MIBR probably has the upper hand. Home Arena as well. And um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure, really sure who is the most underdog, but well, I guess Talon actually, because it's not their home arena, right? And then Loud versus Gen G. I feel like Loud, uh, yeah, they'll take that. Welcome back, one and all, to the lock-in here. Let's talk about our first match of the day. We've got Team Heretics squaring off against Evil Geniuses. What's up, so let's actually talk about the Heretics first coming out of EMEA. This is a uh, a, a team that has... When, when you see the names on the roster, Mimi, 
there are a lot of names that fans of Valorant Mixed should and recognize. Champions from G2, Zeke from uh, games, Ascend. Damn good players. This is a good squad on paper. Avova, was he yeah, on? Um, the they have some he was in G2 players. as well, right? Some amazing heights in Valorant, but for the last Got year, some, the core some of lag, yeah. felt like they're on kind of a, a downslide. Seeing at an international event. These guys, for the most part, have seen those heights and are looking to re-hit them with this new roster in Heretics. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, it kind of just shades of quite because you do have so many of these parts that everybody knows. They come together. You've got a former yeah. champion there. Zeke, much like what we have started on the other seat. Nice to see you. Oh, okay, some fun with the I, I can't right. uh, okay. read it, but um, I'm in, I'm it. I translated it right now, match. and uh, much back to you. It's definitely a thing you don't want to do on match day if you drop him on the cement. <laughs> Yeah, that would not be great. <laughs> that's what you have a six player for. <laughs> yeah, that's what's worth it for the content. The play standing up is just fractured tailbone. Oh, oh God. That's just. <laughs> Anyways. Going, I thought maybe they were going to set him down after walking for like no, five they're, they're seconds. Actually, they're going to carry him out to the stage, actually. That oh. would be. Yeah, sure. Why not? Last time I saw oh, Kellogg's yeah, play. Walk out from ben Kai yesterday, so he wasn't uh, really. Um, I guess so. But you know what, though? In talking about the. That the clean, players, if actually, that makes sense. He's very intuitive. because. Uh, you know, this is a but, this um, is guy that I think, you know, I was talking I think you beat him with strategy. The and they were telling me, like, he's either going to have... However, he has been doing fine in uh, BRL, for example. And you really, in this single elimination bracket, Mimi, need him to have a fantastic game. Uh, that's exactly it. Kellax cannot be carried in that's this roster. Bad, in previous iterations of G2, which is what the core of this team kind of used to be, he was always uh, the god optic TSM ninjas, pure mass, G2 face. Flat. And generally, uh, he's well, a really, they didn't really qualify. It's um, a franchise league, so they have to buy a slot. And when they so buy a slot, they um, have to apply to uh, Riot and, you know, Riot approves yeah, or disapproves. Find these kills. I mean, the highlights they speak for themselves. And the not all of teams got a slot. Less of a sold out situation here for Kellogg's. Yeah. We didn't. We know that fire. So that's why we don't we see them here. If Kellogg's can come out here and perform. But there will be a, um, gonna have a really moments where here. teams yeah, uh, can team climb up, so to say. Been here before, but for me, what really has to mold it together again is an IGL. It's another one of these teams who is restructured with a strong core, but a new leader. Traditionally, G2 has always had issues. Map one, not decided yet. Sometimes even playing without them, and now they have Boo, who is storied and really solid in that role. So my hopes are a lot higher for this Heretics roster than previous iterations. Yeah, and you know, like with all the teams that we have here at the VCT lock-in, right? There's so many fresh faces, orgs, or teams joining new orgs, or players no joining worries, orgs, and you know, all I'm the doing good. I'm doing good. that you could possibly expect with roster mania. So for even more jump. on Team Heretics, we've actually got a short video for y'all to check out. So let's go ahead and meet Heretics. All right, all right. Let's see them. Hello, I'm Oscar Cañellas, most known as Mixwell. I play for Team Heretics, and I'm a flex player. My name is Boo. I'm from Lithuania. I'm playing for. Do you guys ever think he, his teammates team. try to uh, scare him around the corner to go Boo? The way it works the best in our team is when Oscar or me are kind of orchestrating things, and then the younger guys are uh, doing the job basically. In my team, we have uh, people from different countries, starting with Kellogg's. He was my ex-teammate in G2. He's the youngest uh, player in the team and also really funny. Vavova, ex-teammate in G2 as well. He's from Denmark. He's the best smoker. The oldest player is with. really boring. As well, and I'm super happy to have him with me. We have Boo. He played on OG London United. He was the IGL and he's the IGL of our team. He's a really smart person, really chill. And we have Zeke. Zeke is champion of the world in Valorant with Ascend. He was the MVP, he's a really good player, and now he's in Team Heretics. It helps a lot for me as an IGL when Oscar is uh, stepping in and helping me with the calling. When everybody is in the flow, and there is a lot of communication, a lot of energy, a lot of hyping, that's when we are the best, and I think that's when we can beat anyone. Our goals for this tournament is to go as far as possible. We want to win against TG and then we will face MIBR in my opinion, probably. They are in their home crowd, so it's going to be a tough match. And I'm looking forward to play those two matches first and then go match by, by match. Guys, we're coming for you. Don't relax too much because you're going to go out home soon.
that was a look there at Heretics as they get ready to take the stage. But let's well, shift the conversation over to their opponents. Well, well, uh, well. The, you know, honestly, for a, a lot of people, the underdogs that are going to be coming out of North America, I don't is, of course, understand. Evil Adrian. geniuses and Kelios, they had a Let bit of a, uh, interesting off season. A very, <laughs> it was a bold strategy for sure. But yeah. they have a yes. core five that Big they games. have been sticking with. Two, yeah, this is going to uh, be Brazilian the core five that well. we get to see. But oh, we do matches. know that there are plenty of other players waiting in the wings. Pretty much an entire other so, five uh, man squad. The whole, all of the audience is there. How scrims if somebody gets ill, injured, whatever, uh, or if they start performing incredibly well. So they have a really deep bench that they can pull from. Much like yeah. Rip. Yeah, look, okay. <laughs> BCJ dropping out of the bus. Nice. BCJ but, is uh, always. Yeah, they have a, a really large bench that they can pull from funny. if they need to. But this is going to be the core five that we're going to be seeing throughout this tournament. Uh, but it's, it's a bold strategy. It's the only one that we've nice really seal. seen from one other squad at this event, which is Global Esports. Everybody else Love has it. kind of gone for a bit more trim down on the roster. But they said, you know what? We don't care. We're just gonna get a, we don't care. Get a whole little like, Zandrog in this match. I think well, it's um, EG. Nobody really uh, speaks super loud about EG right now. But they are about the uh, Team Heretics. Like a really good run there in BCT. So I think Even it's Team Heretics um, just be more popular, but also well, no, maybe not more popular, but they are definitely more, uh, they bring in Ethan, they more bring favored, I think, to win. Well, I think part of that success as well is come from uh, Jogamo, right? Yeah. Like he has, I think, had an amazing closeout to 2022. Everyone was talking about him, and this is going to be the guy to look out for here in this match. Yeah, maybe I was a little too too deep in the judgeopium last year, but I was saying that this guy is one of the absolute best dive players that exist in North America. Playing on the Rays and the Jet in VCT, he was putting up some insane numbers. They keep I mean, on saying dive. Some of these clips that he was able to pull off against. I don't agree like with dive as a term, by the way. Right here. He's now That's something they picked up from Overwatch or something, because stage, there you really literally dive on. On the characters but yeah, here they mean like showing right here the ko as well i guess yeah. He's really Beyond being so fast yeah, with really jet great stuff, making, you know, that, also that type of stuff. Flexibility in there, being able to shift over to something like an initiator if you want to go for a duelistless cop. But that's Let's nowhere that close don't. to dive because you're I'm never going on the, the enemy. Yes. I don't want more carbine. <laughs> Unless you'd like doubles <laughs> actually with uh, race duelist. and uh, judge. Yeah. I, and look, I, I think that a lot of people are going to, you know, undersell this EG lineup because you got a lot of players that are taking that stage for the first time. They are going to maybe have some land jitters. It's a young squad, so I totally get it. Yep. That's when you lean on the leadership of people like Potter, the coach for the team, to kind of keep the squad in line. But let's actually go ahead and uh, meet this new and improved Evil Geniuses roster and actually hear from the one and only BCJ and Busio. Let's go ahead and check it out. Hey, it's BCJ, and I play for Evil Geniuses, representing the Americas League, and I play the controller role. Bustio, he's our IGL and game leader. He's been playing a lot of Sentinel, and that's kind of his role right now, and he's definitely the leader emotionally and, uh, you know, helps us get the wins uh, on the attack sides for sure. Jojima, he's going to be our duelist. Bustio was also like, um, one of the most a Lucia player in I've Overwatch, seen. which um, um, plays usually the also the in-game leader. Goes way to him has no off switch in that game but, um, we love him to death and he's also really key for our vibes Com plays initiator and he is the guy who you know really treats the team as his family and he's really caring really nice guy and uh he's the guy who finds all the lineups for us and then um lastly we have ethan and he's one of the players who has the most experience in the team and he has a ton of fps experience on land Hey guys, my name is Bustio. I play for Evil Geniuses and I'm the IGL. It feels amazing leading a squad like this because they have so much more experience than I do and they still Same believe Bruno. in me. Dude, I, would, I wish them. I could be so in the audience when Loud plays, as, as well as, as MBR. Me, I'll believe in them. I think a lot of people have been down in EG and hopefully after this tournament, you guys will finally see how strong we can be as a team. You know, we have some really nutty players in this team that have done amazing things in their career would be so sick. far. And we're only gonna expand on also that. Also nice to see you, by the way. A lot of eyes.
a lot of eyes on the evil geniuses here. Uh, also, just want to give a special shout out because uh, to the moms of, of our of our uh, pro players here, Busio's mom, I believe. You know, like all the parents that are always coming out big, uh, supporting their kids. So shout out to you, Busio's mom, and the rest of the moms out there who support the players. But yeah, I mean, just hearing the the players talk, there's a certain level of comfort there that is quite quite comfortable I think yeah they say they're, they're like a family it goes beyond just the the Twitter parents that we have out there from a lot of members of this team um, but I think what is an interesting part of this squad going into this new year with this new roster is some of the role changes BCJ was always that initiator player when he was playing over yeah. with Xset now he's gonna be switching over to that controller role uh, as well as that Busio was always a chamber player he did slot into that IGL uh, role last year but now for kind of the first time in quite a while he'll be playing that more traditional Sentinel I'd imagine yeah yeah, I mean, one of the things that, that really impressed me a lot at, at the last Champions was BCJ. I didn't, you know, I watched some VODs and whatnot, but didn't do d that deep of a dive. But seeing him play on X set, even so as an initiator, he was really able to hold down a lot of those sites, especially when they were one of the teams that was willing to bring out Pearl early yeah. when nobody else was willing to do it. He was instrumental in being able to block out those attacking squads. So him shifting over to the controller role, I think is going to be a perfect fit for him. Yeah, th this team, it could be scary, but let's not forget across the field, you have heretics who are very much looking ahead in this competition as well. But we're going to take a quick break, though. And our first, first match, excuse me, is going to be coming mm. up very shortly. You don't want to go anywhere. This is VCT Lockin'. Mm -mm -mm. I wonder. I don't think we're gonna see um, Lotus. We're probably gonna see very safe maps. Probably Fracture though. What's up, uh, Rush Deep? What team am I rooting for? Well, out of these teams. Let me put on some music here. Uh, out of these teams, I'm rooting for. Um, I would say. EG, but uh, you know I'm rooting for you know all of these teams when they go up against uh, other teams uh, after they win or lose whatever they will be the underdogs team underdog teams except for loud I think um, TH uh, team heretics team heretics but um, in this matchup EG I think team heretics win uh, in this one I root for man I've root for both actually but um mibr home home arena i think uh, they will win they're pretty even here as well i'd assume uh gen g new roster versus loud the former champions since last year's uh, since last year uh, also home arena they will probably win just roll over gen g and um i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna support both I'll try to, uh, you know, find uh, find uh, fun stuff from both teams. But um, mm -mm -mm. I really want to cheer for Loud a lot, but you know, I don't want to go against my uh, principle of uh, cheering for the underdogs. What's up, uh, Levi and uh, Rush Deep? How you doing? Pressure, sure. what's up, what's up? Let me move myself here so you guys get the tweets. And tomorrow we have no matches, by the way, as far as I know. Let me see to double check. Yeah, no matches tomorrow. So tomorrow I don't stream. But the day after, on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I will. you which match has, oh yeah, the has most been a, uh, having potential. a team uh, for a while very happy to say that the polls have closed and the results are in and it is loud versus gen g yep not a shocker there Achilles. not at all i mean I, I think there actually is very real potential there's a ton of experience on that gen g core meteor has some land mm. experience there as well uh, i don't think there will be an upset between loud and gen g i uh, and I potential for it and if it does them taking down the world champions again is just monstrous for genji yeah that would be huge uh, a massive upset uh for sure but let's actually uh we, we had some fun exactly to Parrot, exactly crash. Sure, we decided to have some predictions and so uh i want to hear the, who you guys think are going to win this you Maybe get the we'll whole we'll uh, right, who, who you just my, uh, my unexpected uh, look on all the all the fans and the players and everything where they lose and they're also rooting for the 
is that? Is, yeah, big teams. Who is that? That's PCJ. <laughs> it's PCJ. It's okay, all right. I, okay. I, I, I too, but I have my reasonings, and it's not NA bias. Please, okay? It is. Yinsu, Get him on Twitter. Get him. Uh, here it is. I went with EG, but I also wanted an opportunity to draw the old EG logo. So that's why I decided to go with Evil Geniuses. Oh, and also you could just use this as like a meme, potentially, and write something right. ridiculous Seth, down the line. This, this is not a, a three to zero chance of EG winning this, so please have predicted heretics. You both are NA pilled, is what it is. Yeah, so yeah, I went got? with the uh, obvious choice. DRX. What? DRX. Is not even win in this the game. Match. Doesn't Erase matter. The board. They're so good they can win matches that they're not even a part of. I. You know what? They're not even in the game. I, at some point, enough has to be enough. End the segment. My real, my Jordan real, break. Get my, out. my real prediction is actually EG. So we are 3-0 no, for EG. No, it's gonna be a close <laughs> match. Heretics have a are probably the favorite. Actually. I, I feel like he heretics have the upper hand here. For talk is done, and it's time I feel like they are gonna like 2-0 or 2-1. Started, and of course we have our final three opening matches here for the Alpha bracket. It's a new season, and anything it's just me, is but possible. But uh, I feel like the, three of the, the talent on um, right now. heretics is way more experienced then also uh, like they don't even meme that's how serious they are i mean they do meme sometimes but they are pretty serious on that team Oh yeah, you have to do points. I mean, you, you're probably gonna find some uh, teams to root for um, in this tournament. For example, um, the first time I watched Paper X, I was sold on Paper X. But before that, you know, I wasn't really sold on them yet. So sometimes, you, you know, you, you watch one match and then you're sold. Big, big, yeah. It was very unfortunate to see them go out. Welcome back, though. It's only the first tournament of the year, so welcome back. There's way more. Also, from what I understand, uh, this one doesn't give you points for um, champions. Oh yeah, we have no music here, by the way. Can't uh, play uh, music. Otherwise, copyright track. Oh, Loud will win more than one tournament. We still have to, um, to see um, a team win champions twice. All right, we got some supporters. Nice, nice. Oh yeah, I forgot to look up uh, polls, by the way, to make polls for um, predictions. I can make some in... Um, I'll prob If I have time tomorrow, I'll make some uh, like third-party poll system. Just something simple, so it shows up on the on the stream as well. Not that many in the crowd. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a lot more when uh, MIBR and um, uh, what's called um, Lauda playing, for sure. It's still early in the day as well. Let me see what's the time in Brazil. And here 
uh, 2 p.m. Still, still uh, you know, pretty early in the day. I took a particular point of uh, pride seeing our friend Potter take the stage and do the fist bump. That was pretty cool. But this is going to be quite the matchup. And honestly, look, I know we were talking a lot about EG going into the matchup here. We all predicted it. But let's not get it twisted. Heretics is a scary team. Yeah, think about the players that you have on this roster. You have guys who have been here before. You have Zeke, who has won a championship before on the scene. And for the side of EG, they have some players who are brand new to this. Calm, Jaw, and Busio, two of the three core players of this roster, or excuse me, three of the three, this will be their very first time. Yep. The yep. pressure is going to be big. And last year at BCT, even when this team was looking fantastic, they had a problem with getting stressed out, choking away some of those matchups. It What kind of loss in the LCQ? Yeah, I mean, BCJ was talking All right, about maps, it during that let's interview. See. No ban like, Lotus, you know, please. Ethan, we're kind of the, Don't the ban Lotus. Ban Icebox. And ban... Okay. In a land environment. So they are the instantly like, nah, nah, nah. We don't want excitement. Yeah, well, Lotus is we don't want no fun. One. Makes sense. No reason for EG to have to play then that. Then Team Heretics are like, actually, no we do want here, fun. I think that's a good ban. EG and their old edition absolutely adored Icebox. It was their best map. Pearl is great. They've been great at it. That leads EG to pick Pearl. We've never seen them play with the edition of this roster so i'm excited to see what they have cooked up there yeah I, but i think that uh, this this someone makes sense i mean i, I was talking about bcj holding things down on this map at champions Ascent when he was on is good set. too maybe yeah can just kind of carry over maybe he's a guy don't ban fracture to say, this is how you play this map i, mean, I want to see fracture i'm gonna kick you in the shape <laughs> Uh, but either way, seems like we're just going to be getting a lot of the same maps here. It's been a lot of Pearl, a lot of Ascent focus, and then I wouldn't be surprised ban Haven. if we see Haven as well as the Decider because that has been the favorite matchup. So, uh, they are so banning the matchup seen. Yeah, we did see everything I'm calling to not ban. They were playing some craziness everything I don't want like them to ban, yep. they just ban it. On there at one point. It was wild. <laughs> I imagine they'll just go back to a more normal composition for this one. Something fresh EG from EG does not want teams. fun. Haven is where we land as that Decider, though, sadly split. Again, getting knocked out of one of these pools. These have been some very uh, comfortable maps for a lot of our teams here at Lock-In. Uh, but I, I would have to agree with you. I am uh, very worried for what uh, Heritage We're gonna is going to get bringing to the point. table there. And, and, and I don't know if some EG is going to be prepared One of the for matches, one, uh, I really hope it's like Lotus into Split that big into Fracture. Match, especially when we saw uh, BBL play that one yesterday. I, thi I, think that, I think Ascent might be the map that we've seen the most deep run backs on throughout the history of the BCT, especially at global events. Every single solid, you know, 10-round run back to be able to close something out, it feels like in my head it's always been on a sense, so it could happen again here. And here is oh. the Prime Gaming Agent Select. Surely not. I see. Ethan? I see a Yoru hover, hover in the mix there. It's a that double duelist. That would be crazy. But There's a Jet there, too. That, that would be wild. On the side of Heretics, doing something pretty standard. I think the biggest difference is yes. they're playing that breach. Good. There's some Cypher is in. in the past However, not super popular, and there it is. I'm not uh, entirely sold on Boo as Cypher before, but I'm going to be back soon. We have the Cypher cosplay. A lot more support tools for that Yoru. Ethan's going to be on his own. No breach, no flashes besides his own. I'd like to confirm with production this isn't a misfire, right? Like, this is the actual agent select. <laughs> it's wild. This is going to be crazy. I mean, EG are, like, out paper rexing paper rex right now with this setup. <laughs> yeah, I do not know what to think about this composition for EG. It's going to be so exciting to watch. Heretics as well coming out with something new. So many surprises in this agent pick. Well, the time for talk is over. We're all set. So I'm going to be tossing the keys to the Enterprise over to two of my favorite people. It's Mitch and Tom on the call and by the way guys i don't want to see any scratches on my ship enjoy well we'll try to steer clear of any icebergs here gb and at least no icebox to kick things off he said, that makes no, me happy. He said no crashes he didn't say anything about like dents or like anything like that so that I, is I true did, i, I was gonna scratch it but it, it might get broken it might be gone by yeah. the end of this it might be submerged well look this is certainly uh, not the agent select i expected we're getting a double sentinel comp which is one thing yoru. starting on attack but then a yoru as well i mean <laughs> this is, uh, they, they, they do things differently over I don't know, there's some genius analysts out there that definitely sure. would have seen the Yoru coming, Definitely. known for days that Ethan has been having that in his back pocket, but mm -hmm, unfortunately, mm -hmm. they're clearly not here. No one saw this coming. Uh, yeah, it's an absurdity. And I, I was going to go into today and be like, okay, people like Boo, they've been sort of trying out Initiator recently, so I'm excited to see that. He's not playing anymore. He's actually moved over to Sentinel because I, I feel like that wasn't necessarily too comfortable for someone like Mixwell. So we got a lot to digest, but unfortunately, we don't have much time. We're going straight into the match. That's it. Barrier's already up, and it looks like Heretics are up inside of their attacker spawn. Almost. They've gone straight up on B long with a double push. 
get the knife early and keep them back, but EG looking to take control elsewhere, making their way on in through the double doors already, taking one of those trip wires out and getting rid of those. Obviously, it's a fair trade when you're only removing your Prowler. It's gonna mean Mixwell has to hold that angle for the rest of the round. That's the thing, even just the doubt that that is thrown in alone will be enough to cause some issues for Heretics, but with how deep control they already have, this could be a nasty surprise. Now, Zeke is already just looking to try and take some contact. Basically, allow his teammates oh. to be that nasty surprise. Nice through, should get the information. Up I'm ready with my two small hats. In fact, overall, it came out on top for EG. Well, although Ethan goes down in the end, like with the damage done, calm and jog ammo, it's eh, way too it's small. Great. But uh, it really isn't. Like they're in a we have the cosplay here. These pistols I'm on the supporting other side the cipher. So I deliver. They're gonna have to rely on Boostio doing a lot of work on his way back through. We know that he can be on this angle. Mixwell not able to do too much with the near sight, but his teammates are on the way to help. There it is, though. Turning things back into an advantageous position. Turret down and Jorgamo trying to just find a little bit more here as the defenders are struggling to get their way back through. Not a lot of utility to play with here as they look to try and connect any sort of Let's shot. Let's do it, come on. Ah, oh, nice down. try. Boo, will nice try. Able to get one, but EG are there with the stun. Yeah, guys. I, I said I posted this on Twitter. I got the idea after the stream yesterday. If someone picks fact, Cypher today, early, they have to fight back any match, it, but they we'll put it on the cosplay. On the back of Ethan, grabbing a quick double, right? not necessarily because of the Yoru or anything. He ran through the smoke, didn't expect there to be two players on his left. And he had a pretty easy time cleaning those. Is up it you or is the sound Certainly of the stream the delayed? Usual round, uh, no, let me you can see exactly refresh. Like the fact that heretics were there so early on in the round, you just don't expect. I have to hide the stream once again because I can't show the link. I've really been on an international stage before. There we go. They're a little bit shy, a little bit nervous. I don't think anybody on EG is. Like they, they've got obviously the likes of BCJ who's been here many times. You go back to previous FPS, Ethan has been on a stage more time than most. Got the but gloves the fact as well. Is the other players haven't had the most experience here, but they already seem to be having a great time. That they do. As we see the barriers go up yet again, it looks like it should be an even easier time for them. Yeah, just a couple of pistols on the other side. Classics all around. And that I look like more Kellogg's. like Cypher today. Yeah. He is. He's got to be hitting the headshots. Obviously, you know, I everyone on the other side fixed my hair in a different shields, way. And they're not so I look a bit more like Cypher. I mean, they know there's probably a marshal there. It's certainly not worth risking a wide swing into it. But the, the thing is, and this is the main sort of point I want to look at with these two teams. EG are like a, a rising roster who's added you guys know if it's delayed on the mainstream as well, we kind of the, well. Maybe the audio in the future, we don't know what to expect right now heretics are the opposite they're a team that's had you a have lot trips of the camera the well past. the camera is right we there we don't know if they're going to be good now because a lot of those players haven't had that yeah the audio is delayed but it's so on the stream I'm looking at players not, like not me though is he going to be as good as he has been right say there. back in berlin is that going to be possible then you look on the uh, other I side i can try players. a different on the stage so there's a lot of questions stream, to be but it has no casters said, on that one. Round, not so much. You, ex you expect EG to take this one comfortably, and even two kills here would be fine for Heretics. Yeah, again, when it comes to these fights, especially with Kellogg's being on the A side now, you really can't expect much from them. You got a player trapped inside the elbow, so. Well, audio looks good now. Move. They get one kill for their it looks good Heretics, now. It's not too bad. Second follows anything from this point. It's a little devastating, and there it is. Kellogg's following up. Everyone else was 150, so a headshot needed. But with three kills in a round like that with four classics, did I make it myself or buy it? I bought it. Yeah, huge amount of damage. A long time ago. But now the question is asked of EG of how much they actually invest into this one. Do they play this as a really heavy bonus? Just try and work with pistols and the couple of sort of SMG. I think they have one bulldog in there as well. Or do they now force it up and try and get right. some of the rifles? All right, Cypher now, playing more mid. Prior, unless they're feeling a little Interesting bit camera there. C9. Really go all out with these sort of rounds, so I'm interested. Oh, that's to see for Ark. Okay, okay, our camera for Ark. Well, I've really liked the early round from EG so far. I assume it's going to be consistent to just see this, this harassment from the fade utility, so that Boo can never maintain that. You think you're in? He's got to be Thank you. very fluid with where those traps are going. I know exactly where you are as well. That EG will face not you, but specifically, but I just wanted to throw a voice down. Like and <laughs> that's the one that came into my head. If you're playing a, a similar comp, if anything, you can make that a transactional trade for the Prowlers. So I think the EG's defense is almost, it's going to be a lot easier. At least they have a lot oh, more lineup tools coming in. to work with. All right, there Where's you go. my mask? Again, we've just seen well, I don't have a mask. Yeah. The hat it's is too small. I never fixed the hat. It, there, it looks like a fisherman hat if I put it on. Wait. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that's going to have to be moved over the next round or so from Boo. 
He's got his cam up. Like Just here, watching. it works. Anybody making but then, push? I, I feel like they might if we put it on more, the unit starts I'm waving. Trying to get as much space as possible without losing so I gotta much. get the new hat, I think. But still, it's still Already very cool. A rotation coming back I still like to try and give them that little bit of extra support on this side yeah, of the like map. Right now. When is the neon costume? I mean, the fact that you've um, got two players this close already, it's dangerous. I don't know Team when. Heretic's able to get the jump on them. And now with that spike planted, I I'll mean, do a neon costume sometime. EG can, can play their positions, but it's yeah, static, that's from when Kong. they do replays that, sometimes. The second he moves, Kellogg's rounds the corner. Oh, 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 he wasn't even looking second. at them. This is now incredibly difficult for Bustio. Some players tagged up, but he has to hit every single shot. It nice. was close. A nice attempt, but Zeke survived the initial barrage of bullets. They'll find their first only barely. Yeah, the thing is, though, you have to bear in mind that, that I feel like the setups are very weak, but it's for information so that they use these setups. They managed to make that one look close. They're not in a position where they can really buy up back into the next round. You're looking at BCJ Ethan with it very, very, very low. Definitely for information, they use okay, the setups here. On, on the heretic side. Might be able to help them, like, for example, with that stinger and the dimensional drift that could work out. But it's definitely going to be tougher. Either way. On the other side of things, a blade storm, still a couple of guns saved that they can sort of juggle around. But both teams are going to come in with a buy here. Just neither of them are particularly strong. I do jump. Strong. I put it on a few seconds ago, but weaknesses across the board. Here, I'm it's too small. Ethan, though. He's got but I wanted to show it anyways. Right now. Has a stinger to play with. Whether it's going to be an information play or some TikTok Yoru, I'm not sure. But one thing I can say for sure is Team Heretic's early round. They're looking at the other side of the map. We've seen their B aggression, but this time taking some early A mm. control, spotting that out, and we could see some early rotations to this B site. Traps in new positions, and that's going to be something that they have to contend with on their way in. Ethan, oh, oh, already there it is, the one guy. Space, catching a fair bit of information, and you can see he's just scouting it out, acting as a recon dart, but here he makes a decision. Does he go back, or is he committing to it? And it's a full commitment. Oh, he got either. that. He got he's that. He's completely off guard. Now the site's that was threat. a nice There's kill. enemies all around. They need to clear out a safe haven for themselves. The decoy almost Nobody catching there. them. And now they realize, okay, we've got control, but look how much time that bought. Yeah, that's the thing. Ethan was so low on HP, he's just decided to leave. Kellogg's, though, has already caught the close man. They're going to try and find if there's anybody else lurking around the back lines. And Boo with the spam has found another in behind them is Ethan. He's managed to sneak his way through, but Kellogg's has found his third in the round. Just one left standing. BCJ trying to hold it down. It's difficult for EG. Time, though. Oh. Has the time actually gone already? I think it might have done. It's going to be incredibly yeah. close. Ah, lucky. They win it anyway. Even with that many players. Dude, Harbor cosplay would be cool. That would be cool off. to do. It's the time that was bought for EG. Not sticking it in that moment, right? I don't know Hard what room. happened. I think, I think there was a grab wall. I think it was there a was really a grab wall. There you go, right? So they try to get on it. The player is still alive wins by 0.68 of a second. And Ethan here, he's got his decoy down, right? So even after the TP noise is heard, it could have been a fake. That cost them precious seconds. Yeah, that Chamber would be cool as well. I feel like all, uh, all agents are pretty, um, pretty fun to From cosplay. start to finish, and a stinger and an ultimate. That's all this man needed. Still, though, you look at the purchases in this one, and it's actually in favor of Heretics. Being able to save those three guns through, it's going to be another stinger for Ethan. Ethan could be very to annoying to the cipher. He is flying with the, the TPs. That was the main question I had. If but they're is not off, really doing anything against the cipher. If Kellogg's is off, they don't stand a chance. Those are the sort of two sides of this Heretics roster at the moment. Right now, he is on. Even though they lost that last round, he managed to get three kills with that Blade Storm. It's a good sign. It absolutely is. And starting this one off well. Look, they've got their two man advantage. There's no, no and this uh, camera is right here. Camera in front of me, actually. Double doors, trap for B long. Just a ton of control to play with. And like we said, one of the main problems here is if EG are dealing with that Sentinel utility. But in this round, they haven't just yet. And this is leaving them in a position where they're running into a stack. Oh. Again. Just instant trade from Kellogg's. They're going to eventually find out this piece of utility is still sat around. They can crouch under the trap, but just crouch under it, right? I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, he couldn't. It. Okay, the never mind. No, they're going to walk straight. I thought they, they could. Stun through from the other side as looks but then I saw um, Astro's hair. First BCJ was in astral form. And he will fall nice, as well. Yeah. Second round on the board for Heretics. And this is going to crush the economy of EG. Well, Team Heretics certainly off to a good start. Look, Perhaps they could have jumped. I don't know if they can jump over it even. Just 
robbed by a second or so on yeah. the clock. It's a good That's spot. some very good signs for EG and attacking rounds Definitely. built up. Certainly looking like it's anyone's game to start things off here, but I want to see how this attacking side evolves. This round I need here, to be bold. Dude, be I wish I had evolution. a bold filter. We're just seeing pistols out of EG. But I'm afraid I would scare most likely more than impress. Equalized. Unless there's some big mistakes from the defenders. Yeah, that's the main thing. Oh, that could be a difference maker. Though. Real cost We're digital. Up jet updraft play. It's a real one. His time at the start as well, and now here he comes. Oh, of course. I love the idea of changing the timing, but shot didn't I think land. They were ready for it as well. I think Kellogg's was spotting. It was just that Avova almost gets caught by <laughs> it anyway. So they had the right idea. This is all they really have in this round. Lockdown. Who made that? Uh, I got it from Alex. A press. Of kills. Maybe you can get so the probably in some factory in uh, China. If some butts, whereas on the other side you have a full purchase. They've also started to switch things up. You mentioned that trip. I do, and this. I do, broken. I do. Since that's happened, Here. they've started moving Mixol into that exact spot to try and deny the pressure from there, and they've moved where they put the wires. So an initial read from EG was solid. Now they have to deal with what's next. And look, they're trying to clear this out and figure out how it was being held. Now realizing that the trap had been moved, they blitz into the site. There's still players here, but Kellogg's decides to leave. A quick kill, though. BCJ caught, playing a little slower oh, through. Really? Oh, oh, ho, 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 ho. But a classic in hand. Kellogg's, oh. though, going Kellogg's just going nuts, though. That shut down any it's too small on this, so um, I can't wear it, actually. Only one man falls. But I wanted to show it I'm anyway, so that's what brought it. Though, that they used the rolling thunder there. And uh, I can't hear it, you know, a, because a of that. A little bit more in the round, or just wanting to make sure they keep this clean and build up their own. You want to see what it looks like? I, sure, I, I'll do it. I'll do it. Usage, I'll I just don't think they really needed it. Yeah, to be honest though, just looking at where their economy is, this feels like it's just that cyclical nature of the ultimates. They don't want to have that in the back pocket and risk pistols getting value. That first kill comes in, and they say, "Screw it, we're popping it in. We're grabbing this round." Who am I rooting for? I'm rooting for EG right here, but I think uh, Heretics will win. Like, this is the thing. It's like Actually, will see his online performances and be like, oh, everyone expects EG on the dusk. Best when he made it to a land stage. A root for them. I'm going to root for Heretics right more than just the confidence this man has is oh. But you can clearly see that they have really, really strong well, players I mean, here on he the Heretics. Made it out of there, 5 HP, but he still got some health to work with. Not gonna be too easy. You know, I know. Uh, uh, I know. I know. A lot of healing abilities in there. Not a luxury That's why that Kellogg's has on his team. So he is gonna remain one shot to absolutely anything. And this team seems to be gradually shifting towards him. They've left the spike behind though. They haven't made their mind up yet. This might sell Good it though. Job. A quick double and the five HP Kellogg's is the last man standing on B. An ult oh, before him. Make much of a difference. Hmm. <laughs> Down to one. Shot not connected and really starting to come under pressure. Oh, he's deaf. know exactly where he is and he's starting to be pushed from behind. He's dead. Yeah, he no didn't hear the TP at all. In that scenario, the rotation has finally come through from the rest of the team, but EG have done well to pick this defense apart. Boo is hoping he can maybe make a little bit of space for Avova. The spike is still only just rotating in, so it's not like the clock is against them just yet. And Avova has managed to sneak his way through. Oh, <laughs> he's getting it in there <laughs> well, for free. He spotted that evidently. And with that, the round is closed out quickly. I gotta say, you know, the nightfall there as well. Ethan is so terrifying if you're hit by that. You can't yeah. hear a damn thing. He is gonna be behind you right away. That's four to three. And again, showing that they're not willing to let their opponents run away with this one. Even just take a look at where the credits are at. On both sides, they're having to dig deep into their economy just to get the rifles out. Look at it, so close. <laughs> just tapping the ankles on his way up. If that was... No more, that was an gone. interesting way to uh, pick the, the angle. I, I do feel like if heretics do that flash like a second before, they probably yeah. catch everyone. It's just that EG basically right. realized where the space was now after the trip was moved and just walked through. Because yeah. the fact, I don't even think they used a prowler there. I don't think they used anything and they just walked it. That's why nobody was really checking in that direction just yet. Again, realizing that that, that setup's going to constantly change. We've seen them be so slow in the map control as well. Like, they're shifting up when they're taking those positions, especially Art. Remember just the previous round when they walked up really slowly and they're spotting the trap wire. They're not just blitzing in and forgetting about that piece of utility. Now, this camera here, we've seen it mm -hmm. many a time. Yeah. And the information that it is garnering right now, as we said, this is covering Great double floors, camera. but it's also allowing them to hold the B long position. I remember position Artis using this one. <laughs> quite a bit. And then <laughs> you have that trap there as well, and obviously you can just... Allow them to come in, maybe even the Yoru making a play, and you're going to catch him off. But look at where I don't this my keyboard teleport now. is gone. Oh, it's actually ridiculous. He's behind them on A right now. The lineup is perfect. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ethan, 
It doesn't matter though. Kill us He's deleting them. They tried to buy Almost an ace. Well, Ethan what is just happening? running around uh, invisible. He's just decimating at the moment. And now, Ethan, as you said, he was lining up. He was getting in behind How do I get that but camera? Matter, I have a video on that. If you check out my ace. parlor setups. They were banking on his flank so much. The ultimate after the TP he was right behind them. But instead uh, of that flank coming through, you had this sneaky, aggressive push on A main. No, that's, completely that's, catching that's them the off. Thing. It wasn't I just, Thank you, Shabam. Thank you, man. They That's saw it. him in the corner. He fake updrafted away and then just stayed and peeked out and oh, killed stop. everyone. This is this oh, was stop. the least sneaky play oh, I've ever yeah. seen in my life. That's why I think yeah, heretics are way He's stronger. He's better at the moment. He is EG can't really do that stuff. He's getting two kills around. I, 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 I don't even know what to, what, how, to, how to process what we're witnessing here. I mean, He's you, 16 and 4. You think the, the point of that round the, the key play has to be Ethan the your the amazing setup that they've got him for one guy one guy to just destroy your game plan like that there is no way to account like for for Hyder Hyder we talked to this man before we started here and he said you know I'm going to try to reach that same form as I had last time I was on LAN and, and my god he has succeeded and then some and we're only 8 rounds in He's, he's, yeah, he's At what age did you leave your parents home? Uh, Around uh, no played this world so far. No three years old or four years old, old, I think. Already getting the entry in another round. That's the first time I um, and walked point, away you know, from uh, home. Plan has well, no. to be just sending him out to grab that opening duel. And then well, luckily some uh, if you're not, the neighbors this on me now, and brought me back. Shut that down, you, you think? You hope. We'll have to see. Two trap wires sitting or sit sitting <laughs> sitting. <laughs> on this B site, but there's no one from Heretics. Uh, despite being in a five versus four, right, they, they have decided to play full retake. That, I, it's a wise choice. Yeah, they there's the clear divide. of the trap wire. Yeah, gonna Fade is going to be super annoying to, um, to deal with. And they can block off any after plants with the walls. So this is something that EG are going to have to read into. Now they're going to keep Ethan here aggressively. He's done this a couple of times now where he's able to just exit, but the rest of the team are now sticking around with him, knowing that they're going to be forced back by the cosmic divide. So they have to play more aggressive. This retake starting to run out of time. They've got to get it started eventually and on the way through. Zeke, up, good Steve? to pick it up, but it's Jed yeah, in the corner. So uh, the point, man, I made a, a post on Twitter ball. and um, on Discord. The the Basically, end. if Cypher is picked today, to I uh, cosplay to Cypher. One enemy left. Mixwell, the father of Valorant, now has to close this out. And let's see if he can find it. The dash, it's quick, and he's just playing the clock here. It might again come down to the time. I don't think he's yeah. got yeah, it. Yeah, no got time. It. It's the second time. And, and this is this round is fantastic oh, for EG. This is a round where they've looked at the ultimates on the other side. Witness how they played every single afterplant on this B site up till this point. They were playing deep. Think about where BCJ was in the uh, last does round where they traps, um, He was just hidden right at, at all the heights. To make yes. Sure that nobody at all heights. Him off. This time they got, okay, Except got in the stairs divide. on the fracture on the B site. There's a specific spot the where the prowler doesn't clear it. And I don't know why, but I suspect it has to do with the hitbox. Fantastic adaptation from EG, and they've got the lead back. Team Heretic's not happy with that result, and they've called the time. Oh, no, he didn't have time zero. Take a moment when, uh, you see, when the spike is planted, and there's one, uh, like, here, circle of light, or, like, one orb of light, you can defuse, and you will make it. It's but when the second one comes EG, in, it's, it's automatically telling you, well, you don't have enough time. They're getting away with it. And the, the second one was, uh, was there. Really fun to watch he's so far. Sick. He's got some great ideas. And he's sitting on top of the scoreboard 11 and 8 right now. You know, first man in in the positions that he's going for. Yeah, oh, before the fight. Expect him to get I, I think he just suspect that he would pistol, be killed. Popping, I think he would be killed. Match. What's being brought by Kellogg's on the other side. The thing I'm going to give him credit for most is his timing. Because uh, Jogamo, he was uh, constantly peaking leave, as well. So I don't think he would have reached 58%. 0.6-second failed defuse was mostly him on like 5 HP with the Stinger just causing issues in the back lines them not knowing where he is we've seen that him playing off yep, team yep. as well. he is so he is yeah, the, the space 17 of 5 hugely valuable and then you add in that he's also fragging so it's a good start for EG if Kellogg slows down th this half is done like he basically has to continue on there's other players setting him up I think Mixos actually done very well with the breach to put those stuns into play Ooh. nice try I will say, I'm, I'm looking at right now Mixo with the gun and Kellogg's not, and that does very much annoy <laughs> me. No offense, Mixo. I'll, 
I like you, but you don't. Let me move my stuff so you can see yeah, health look, bars. Uh, Let me know if it's, it's annoying to not see health bars properly. Yeah, 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 but no, uh, no, no, he wants to farm up the old orbs for the rolling oh, thunder. He you found know, that's, one? that's what it's all about. More valuable than Kellogg's popping off. Or maybe he can just, yeah, he'll do it with the sheriff anyways. No. For now, it doesn't look like he'll be doing too much. They had a camera down on the uh, He's early. out in open. He's and out in so open. Caught off guard. And his support out of the round. And that rifle, well, oh, it didn't do very much in mixed wild hands. For Ethan. There you go. Great. A little, little fish gun. I saw a guy that actually made that in real life, even with the fish and everything, like 3D with printed, put it together. In it. No, not a real fish. Okay, no, I, I, I was like, that, that sounds cool. No, that's cruel. dangerous. Yeah, no, he's, he's not a, a lunatic. <laughs> all right, all right. Oof. Okay, nice shot from Zeke. I don't it's think they'll get too much more from this. Jorgama again, just fragging out. Zeke's got another. Not been the best game for him so far, but he's gonna try and get a rifle and- I mean, he has money next round, so he could go and uh, try to get a kill or something. No, he didn't. Gone out for it. I mean, look, uh, dealing nice damage here, it's not a terrible idea. Again, if yep. we take a look at the credits as we have the whole way through, getting a kill or two, shutting down the I money for um, EG would Anyways, be that's decent. That's the key point. You can still do damage to your opponent's economy. If he had to drop two more rifles there, they would be Esky. potentially in a tough spot coming into the final well, round. Well, I was going to go but EG, but then uh, the whole desk the also, selected EG as the team for winning. To an extent. And no, um, okay. I saw he had a shorty. And I, I'm thinking, you know, there's I, no way he's going to just play the I was always suspecting that the um, or predicting and that they do have Heretics will win. With, so it would be a bit uh, but I'm rooting, I'm rooting for both, actually. You know, EG has been under the radar. I feel like Heretics definitely are. Uh, at least with the desk, but um, so orbs that he's got this yeah, you can see again. that heretics are so very good. Already. Straight past the trap he goes into the A side, just taking all of the space, and it almost seems like at this point they're just opting to try and play the retake, not even wanting to go anywhere near it. The flash oh. is solid though. Even still, Close. it's going to be an even trade. Jog him over with really nice 30 HP as well. Just initially to push him over into the smoke to gain that space. Just again. catching just random bullets. Nice boot. There we go. Deniably strong right now, but this Heretics play back into A looks unreal. A lockdown in play. Six seconds left on it. In oh, a lineup for that too. To it, but it doesn't it break like it. It looks like it's just about missed. They're going to be stuck inside of it. The timer's gone. They just about made it out. But now the clock runs way down. They might have another star to play with here. BCJ needs to try and deny it. The spray nice down, not good enough. And no utility yeah, remaining. Yeah, Kiyomoli, it's not a guarantee anymore. It looked like EG might have had a fighting chance, though. Yeah, I, I think at this point, that was the right call. Like, every single time we've seen the executions, other than the one where Kellogg's just killed everyone on A long, it, Those trap really wires are pretty solid for um, mid control. Makes it so that Fade has to use utility. So this time they just move back and play the and, uh, and it's pretty safe in terms of um, the denial of the exact where you want to play as uh, Astro, for example. Art is uh, held off. Cypher is massive map, map control. Operator on Kellogg's early, but it's a team cipher, so to say, those be long peaks out which of makes sense because that allows you to focus a lot on Kellogg's and setting him up with um, flashes and whatnot. Late round, but to start with, it's gonna mix well ready with the um, aftershock there, the map no, not aftershock spot line. Oh, he's stuck in there. He knows where they've been having issues dealing with their prowlers, but he's not going to win nice the duel comp. Quick on the trade, however. Good however, job, boo. again, it's instantly back. Well done from Heretics to keep that one in control. And you What's mentioned the man at the moment. Match is uh, going well. Got ball. Cypher, map one. And potentially another with BCJ. Sad here. That spike was spotted moments ago. He saw Kellogg's run back. But still committing to this position. I mean, you got to rely nice on Bustio. Try. He hasn't found that kill. And now... He knows there's going to be an op train down on him. This is a tough fight to win. And with BCJ <laughs> going down, the chances turn to zero. Six to six at the halftime mark. We are neck and neck. Yeah, I haven't used this costume yeah, since I, I um, last time I did a cosplay, Heretics, which was like two years ago. So on the board as happy, well to, uh, have, happy to have it on. An incredible display Maybe like one and a half years and ago, actually. I, that, that's sort of the question I have, Mitch, is... Uh, is, is there any player that the, the desk is thinking of highlighting here? Like, anyone you've thought of, GB? 20 and 6. Holy moly. Fellas, I'm just going to tell you right now, that was, that was fun.
I enjoyed every single freaking round of that. Yep. From the Kellogg's pop-offs to the great ideas we were seeing from EG. But first, let's talk about Kellogg's because Tom had a great point on, on the cast. This see, is a Brandon. player that is, uh, he's kind of a win con for this team. What do you think about the race boom bot nerf? I think it's good. It, team finds Very good because oh, now it makes so that race I mean, we can about just be like super forward, passive and defensive. Oh, boy, Instead, you have to be uh, decisive when you use your boom bot. A 413 ACS right now in the first half as they're tied up 6-6, six to six, and he's dropped 20 kills already in just those 12 rounds. At one point, he was averaging two kills per round. He's going absolutely crazy in only six deaths, zero assists. If he puts his eyes on somebody, I think basically dead. the devs yeah, want less PG lurking duelists. Time, Kellogg's was set up to be in the right place at the right time yep. to miraculously well, get three duelists. or four kills and pull some wild rounds away. But as we look forward, let's talk about some of those plans because EG ACS came in with average combat score. here. They brought that Yoru out and I was a little doubtful since they were playing it without a breach or a KO, but the synergy that they found... And having a 400 favorites, average really combat score, it is very good. Ethan finding his so way good. in um, with that, uh, with the Seeker initially to take back sight, and then you're going to see that Comp will have been able to throw utility over the top as that ult The timing deeper. on that. Dude, that the timing on that ulti, the by the way. They were absolutely excellent Getting at. info and then bam, safe. And here's another one. You actually see the Seas Makes there. Makes that he doesn't even have to use a um, smoke if he wants to. Well, he's stuck in place to get that gap. Go back around with the shorty, win the fight. Another opportunity Yeah, it does, uh, Prox. Fatal, that player back sight in Kellogg's, he's going to be absolutely deafened. And the Yoru is going to just teleport. EG are playing very smart. Flash on in and get himself a nice little free kill there. There were some really cool ideas in the first half, but now the question is, how do they translate this into the second? Because yes. that's where Yoru tends to struggle on this map. Normally yep. you just think, we go for the rotations with it, you can sometimes play gambits, but with the way Kellogg's is playing, I don't know if I'm confident in this. Yeah, I, I would happen to agree with you on that one. Kellogg's is on fire and if he continues to play in this manner watch out eg it is going to be a barn burner but this is what this is the best way to wake up in the morning baby <laughs> i'm loving it so send it back over to the casters well it sure has been an exciting first half it's not often you see a player go 20 and 6 and it's ha even at the half that's uh yeah. That's it's, a rare. It's not even the champions winner either. <laughs> That's the crazy thing about it. Bro, no, I, I, I just noticed BCJ this two I and ten. That is rough. Really He's not having a good time right now. Because defensively, hopefully it changes honest, on defense. Most of the time, hot trash. So yes. I hope they have some ideas. Yeah, it was a good first half. Oh, the, this the, is the flash the timing. Flash used as a support for his teammates and for actually double peeking around. Good job by uh, EG though. Turning this into a two lane fight, double peeking nice. down and leaving EG in a four versus three Headshot. versus one. <laughs> it shouldn't be possible for Boo, but a few well placed headshots and. Those odds could quickly turn into his I favor. prefer the other tripwire, by the way, but um, yeah, that's, the only real thing on his side that's when at this point. he the should actually do that tripwire the here. Side, though, the spike down. Yeah, yeah. There, because they're pushing A, flank, and now there. you don't know if people, people are right in here, for example. There's also the turret on short towards art, so it, it, he's not going to be able to get too much information going in that direction either. And now with all three players from EG set up, stacked up, ready to trade, he has to do something crazy. I'd love he a can, dude, to him he can send a cage would have already swung them above the wall here. Should probably would have headshot them all. Boo goes back, gets his camera, gets his utility. Just send a cage above the wall. Be back online so he can spot them, figure out where they are. Okay, didn't get him a ton Ooh, of come on, my man. Use right cage and then camera. A side at this point, right? So it's worth putting down. He's given himself every. What does he want to save money? Unfortunately, the three players holding nah. him, so he's gonna die. Nah. But, you know, he I doesn't see the problem solving there. Like you could, you could tell like the solution, you yeah, send a yeah, cage yeah. over here. You can block off that no, angle no, no, no. He's, easily. He's like a world-class pilot on a sinking ship. It's not much use, really. Yeah. But either way, another pistol under EG's belt. They've started both of these strong, perfect reads. Like having that initial yeah. setup, oh, yeah. the, the flash, even just having the extra utility to give them advantages. And unfortunately, well, for Heretics just not being ready for that. Not being ready for such an aggressive stance. Now, that's something they're going to have to be prepared for. Because, again, you've got a Yoru jet. Now, he's not unexperienced, Adrenaline. It's just control. in the you moment, sometimes, uh, because if you're left you know, human setback, errors, right? You have basically he's no definitely experienced, trust me. But uh, yeah, I've seen him play, you know, a lot safer. But uh, the one thing I'm looking at, though, is they're, they're just choking, you know? Just choking. Right? The control 
that they can keep playing this kill it joint. feels like it's impossible because there's lots of random positions yeah, enemies can be on on attack, and it's no, easier for us to see it right but no not for um, him go. necessarily that's a good shot down actually sickening he runs out of ammo after doing 150 damage and goes hey i'm not done boys i got another <laughs> mag loaded up <laughs> let's go eight to six eg winning that one easily and you know those are the rounds where you sit back and say oh how much damage can they get done on heretics and the answer is nothing yeah, i mean it's just basically flawless on the way and even with ethan huge he's play by ethan dog here and i i fear what he's going to do with it i'm glad to see ethan doing doing good yeah that's the thing this this round they've managed to keep things pretty clean over the last couple it's nice to see that, that obviously we've got the brazilian games coming up after this yeah. but the arena's already starting to pack out it, it, it's I, mm -hmm. i'm enjoying it they're enjoying what valorant we've got to offer so far but i'm sure it's only going to get louder as the day goes on ha, no but they're given they're given a good to show so sell it to a man that they have. take care but it's not over yet remember this was eg's map pick I'm also in. just remembering yesterday. Started good, mm -hmm. went downhill. <laughs> EG choosing this map, now being on defense with a comp that, I'm going to be honest, not many people have probably prepped against this comp. It's not no. something that you're going to be very used to what your opponents are trying to do on the other side. In fact, a lot of this game might be just figuring out what ideas they have, just like we've been trying to do. It's a challenge, certainly, and you know. It's yeah, a I'm wearing a cipher costume. They don't have X-ray. At, at least I hope they don't. That'll they pick cipher, so um. Already. Before the stream, I said um, if they now pick cipher, I'll uh, put on the cipher costume. Yeah. And then they Just did. Trying to get that little bit of extra space, calm in the right position oh. at the right time. He's tagged desperately low, but in fact the pressure's coming in from behind. Yeah, I have a hat as well, but it's uh, too small. Now diminishing any advantage that was there, but Kellogg's working through the back line. This should be for free. An easy kill to turn it back into a 3v3 scenario. Com still in an aggressive spot. He finds another, drops the spike on the ground, and now Oof. they have the pins and have them surrounded. It's all on to That's Kellos, so good. That's so good by round. EG. That is what so good. A play from Com. I'm rooting for, um, well, Heretics to win here because they are the most Heretics. underrated at the tournament right now. And it crumbles. And of all the rounds from the desk happen, and everything and remember they didn't manage but i think they're a better team there's no way he's playing an odin bcj come on man or at least i thought so we'll, we'll see we'll don't see i'm playing really right now. smart he's so astral far astral form. he's not got a ton of time to sell that i don't i hope he's not going to top of it if he's gonna play he can he can, he can wall bang off i'm just gonna stop it stop it bcj what are you planning my man let's have a look okay <laughs> I've never seen I've never seen a man play that position with an Odin. He's just ready to go. And in this spot, oh, it's dangerous. You can wall bang this mm. with a phantom. <laughs> when you're talking about an Odin, it's like he's out in the open. He's just going to be right. dealing so much damage really, on the way really through. Really line up. Here, the, the, the Kellogg's like somehow gets into the site, kills him, and then picks that up. That that would be my favorite oh, be thing if, if this happened this round. But. I'm gonna be honest. I I I would almost bet my everything I own that Kellogg's would not pick it up. Uh, even even with the sheriff, I think <laughs> yeah. he would just roll with the sheriff. He's like, hey hey Mixo, you want to go? Nice solar system. Kind of weapon, you know? Double he, like, the lava. He's quick on his feet and tap heads. That's that's not the Odin. No. That's crouched in a corner and just. Well, that, that's my life. main worry as well going into this half, is that he now needs to be the tip of the spear, and unless you are having the greatest game of all time. Dashing into sights and getting four kills, not really possible. Yeah, it's a little different for Ethan with the way he's able to set himself up and yes. the utility he's got, the barrage of players that and come even, with him, and it, alternating angles. It was angles. still impressive when he was doing it on the Yoru, so it that's was, the thing. absolutely. But then, yeah, when it comes to Kellogg's, it's much more well, one-dimensional. you got to dash forward. You can't just appear in their spawn. And let's see what he can do here. Great oh. flash by Ethan. What a setup. That Two is a sick a flash. Double. Down goes an is that like max longer. range? There's only 20 seconds left on that it is, I think. They have got to get going now. That first duel doesn't go too bad. What? Nor does the second. They're back in control. Oh, nice. Oh, that's going to get rid of him, though. Ten seconds. He actually comes out from BCJ. That Odin has actually worked out for them. Trying to get that plant again. Boo just needs to defend. Mixor will be able to get it down. Somehow turning it 2v2. He's dodged the flash! There's the wall bang from BCJ's in Astral 4! Weapon out, not on time! Boo has a chance! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Delivered! Nice! Boo. He saved the round for Heretics! They're not out yet! So, 
I believe <laughs> if you look straight down there, you can the bounce it. You think it's just and it's be a just slaughter. like right above the, the box, the or whatever the um, thing it is. Spread with I know that if, if you're in a brimstone in, smoke, for example, you and you shoot the, the smoke straight down, a kills as well. then it bounces right on top of the Ridiculous. smoke out there. And Boo, someone who's been relatively quiet so far in the Sentinel. 45 HP. They are definitely, the they have definitely been well coached. HP. That Odin is run, run spraying the corner. He's dead. Of course, like you don't know he's that HP. There's a lot of math that has to be done on the spot. And you're focused on a bunch of different things. But that has got to be devastating. All oh, right, Rolling Thunder. Easy. They're not messing around here. Straight into the side. Oh, it's Kellogg's, gorgeous. He has just embarrassed yeah, PCJ. That was but difficult to, uh, to, to recover from. The spot. What a flash. Oh, poke flashes this round have been fantastic. Bustio, he's only going to be able to drop the KO to the floor. They haven't managed to get him back up yet. And in fact, another pick coming through. This is actually a 2v2 for a second. Eventually, that res is found and the Astral I think the new knife is pretty cool. Utility will help them out. I think it's pretty coming cool. On that cosmic divides just left them in such a bad spot. No flashes for Ethan. Dude, Getting that looked like you're just dashing into a, a, just a trap wire. Inside. And any attempt made here is denied. EG don't even make it past that ultimate. And just like that, a 2v2 retake isn't even attempted. Yep. With Heretic nice. surviving after getting that Very extra nice. player, we're, we're in such a lovely spot. See, I don't know. Obviously, Zeke's second flash was sick. I don't know if the first flash was his as well. But not only did they have the rolling thunder into the back lines, which makes me think it probably was his flash because Mixwell was around the corner doing the rolling One thunder. One more round to 9-9. Nine, nine. That, that meant BCJ was not only stunned Dude, up, that but clutch from Cypher was got them a free entry, probably a like a, a very good, uh, what's called, Heretics. momentum uh, shift in the, the team. In the first half, I'll be honest, we were kind of looking at that. Hyping up the teammates. Mm -hmm. The last couple of rounds have been anything but. Kellogg's finished the last half, 20 kills and six deaths on the board. He's got 22. That's the flash. The flash went off just Gorgeous. behind him. Gorgeous. Yeah, that's something that it takes a lot of time sitting on those customs yeah. just to get that There's out. About a million other times I think if Kellogg the changes the order of, oh, yeah. of uh, actions there, it's kind of difficult in the moment, right? But if he uses the smoke as he's falling down, I think he, he survives that because he's not able to shoot while yeah, flying down, right? It's not amazing. And Astra is still uh, flashed. Into that operator. There we go. Jungamo even having his blade storm He's online, expecting so someone there on the corner. Now, That's why he used the cage. PCJ. They were able to isolate him in the last round, but this time it might be a little bit more tricky. He does Oof. have support, although Jorgamo is caught by Zeke. He's going to have a nightfall at least. He's caught two of them in art and one further outside. I mean, at this point... Best What's bet the to swing to the other side is even going to be cancelled out by a probable rotation. You've got, you've got a four Good versus read. four right now, and you can see with Killjoy Utility on B, they're still going to stack up that second player. Uh, if anything, for Heretics, just delaying this has ended up with a slightly easier A take. And yeah, the thing is, as well, they have plenty of utility still Good to knife. with BCJ. That's they know impossible exactly to destroy too. That's the nice. I think they still have an aftershock as well, so he's going to be somewhat stuck in the mud. I don't yeah, barely. It, it, it missed him. He's still just sat there. I don't know if they're going to expect it anymore. The flash is clear on the. As well. and the swing yeah. Comes out from the SFGs. Bad just placement on the on the aftershock, the aftershock there. And EG steal happens. The round. Well, it happens. That's the problem, you know. You come in not playing the duelist at times, and we heard from Heretics when it came. I'm going to go grab some water. I'll be back soon. Conversations we've had that. You know, it, it, it's something that you'll you'll get a ton more utility to bring with you. Having someone like Mixwell on a breach, the problem is you miss that utility, you're in a ton of trouble. It's such and a it's, tiny, tiny It's enough for spot. one player to sit in. If he yeah. is an inch, a pixel forward, a pixel to his right, I think even, he's taken down. But that's all it comes down to, and it cost them the round this time at such a crucial moment as well. 10 to 8 now on the board, and the Heretics are on their last legs economically. Been a tougher second half for Kellogg's. Here. This is the thing. A lot of the time, he's either full speed ahead or he's completely missing. Those are the two sides to this man. There's very little in between. But he has managed to get the space this time. Let's see if he can manage to find the opener. Flash through. 
he actually going to go in here? I think he might just have As to in all tournament, a bit, which team am I rooting for? I don't have any specific. I'm also looking at Ethan's deep control. He can very easily TP back into the site if needed. I root for um, underdogs. Guard. You know, it's especially the turret. The turret here is just given. So it there's away. a lot of them. They are looking as if they're retake B. They've got a killjoy on site and a turret watching for a long push, but instead it's Ethan watching long. Boo's caught completely off guard. Boostio's able to grab nice. one, two, and now took in for a little more. Ethan's eventually going to deal with a Vova, and this is now looking done and dusted. Kellogg's has to do it all with that Blade Storm, and nothing so difficult will be there. found. 11 to 8, and that was Team Heretics putting all their credits into a round. This is looking like EG might just close it out. Yeah, a solid, solid hold as well. And as you said, a nasty little setup to almost bait them into believing some of those spots were clear. Bustio playing fantastically around his own utility as well, just to give him those little edges when it comes to taking the fights on the angles and giving that extra space <laughs> over to Ethan, who is having a worldie of a game. By the way, he is one kill behind Kellogg's, who is basically ruling the server in the first half. You can see the morale certainly high here for EG. Potter that, feeling good after the play. I'll be honest with you. I, I think they could be losing this 10-0, <laughs> yeah. and Potter would still be smiling. Potter is that, always though. smiling. That's what you need. And nah, with it's this not team weird, especially, uh, you know, Brother. it's just a bunch of jolly chaps. I think many people um, They've got big do that, especially with sports face, teams. With two rounds left to go to close this out, facing up against what should be an anti-eco for them. Not a whole lot of promises. No. And then I, even thinking of Heretic's ult economy, it's not like that's coming online anytime soon either. I mean... They need a lot to bail them out of this. No, Potter has been the head coach for a while. Kellogg's. He's bought himself a judge. That's what I'm looking at right oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> she was That's an analyst in uh, CSGO. Though. Idea? So hold on. on I oh, think no. desk analyst. Heretics have given Kellogg's a judge. Think about it. <clears throat> they took the A site before and it was successful on Kellogg's dashing in. They tried to do breach utility clear when Kellogg's got picked off early round. That didn't work at all. So now. Well, give Kellogg's a judge and just go dashing into the back of A, kill BCJ. But EGM don't we see female players idea. in this, uh, these tournaments? None like of Heretics the teams um, out for field them. Whether it's going to be a late round execute to try and get Kellogg's in there, I don't know. But what will happen if they do decide to go to A... But there is a uh, game changers where um, it's for here, again, um, we've seen the same setup from EG in the pistol round. Uh, Yoru Flash it's for marginalized uh, and players. The other two players are peeking down, essentially turning this into two yeah. lane ways for them. This is similar to the pistol round where they just have a perfect setup on EG to just basically pop a flash and leave the players. As far as I understand, there's nothing screwed. stopping, you know, a, a female player from being in a tournament EG here. EG couldn't be more prepared. This was the idea it's just from Heretics. So that they it's it just start, so cutthroat and also, you know, it's a, a play. And mal dominated so much value has to be found by industry. these attackers and they're not expecting another player. There's the flash Beautiful. and a decimation Beautiful. on a long, just shutting down any hope for Heretics here. Boo was lurking. Now he's the last man standing in a 1v4 stinger in hand. He's managed to sneak by them. But They've BCJ, gotten rolled on A there well, I, I several times should be aware from that, that box. Timing could have gotten them, but they're not accounting for it just yet. No one's left. watching the angle. Oh, no. <laughs> no <Boo! laughs> you know, the yeah, stinger, is what can you do? Let's just stand oh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No. That's what that was. Yep. Yep. Oh, here we go. Okay, good. From the other perspective, at least. No, no, oh, no, that's the first bit. This is early. It's coming. It's coming. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Wait, they didn't show it. Free play guys are being nice today. What happened? Oh, my God. I love it. Is this what morning games are like? It's just that we, we, when we get to <laughs> the end of the day, they get salty as the day bitter, goes on. Like, and they're like, this is I've seen too many whiffs today. This is my eighth. Uh, Feng, it's a lot more than just that. It's a lot more than that. Just that. If there's a sixth one, you're going on stream. <laughs> oh, this oh is follow. Oh, oh. Kellogg's is completely <laughs> blind, but I guess it doesn't matter. So was Jorgen I know a lot of uh, nice female pro me. players that would just whoop half of the half of the players on on this tournament there's not really a reason but um, for, to continue to push for example it's it's really difficult to um, and they grow as a player yeah, if you're a female in a in a team stop. where there's no forward. other females like ability, it's it's extremely he difficult again, he went, I'll just dash and, mainly and then because to kill after, you're dead. pretty much happy with that. isolated yeah, right all that fight. I'm just your experience is completely different than them in the end, it's not left just not the same, position same um, fairness either. 
And that's a lot of the reason for why there is game changers, so that players who um, aren't male, they can develop. And it looks like he's going to call the retreat. Ooh. That's the thing. Backwards might actually be worse, depending where that rolling thunder is placed. I can only assume that's going to go through in a second or two. Oh. Already, the knife is going to give them a little bit of extra information. BCG oh. Nice. Just with a Double spam, kill. Oh, the and the... To take out oh. two. the Man, not I'm lucky. Zeke has found that frag instead. Back into a 2v2 we go. Com has managed to hold onto some ground. He's pressuring onto Zeke. The spike plant will come through, and there's a flank. Bustio in behind. This might not be expected. So many angles to consider at this point. They know where Calm is. Or was, at least. I'm doing good, Mohit. We see Cypher here. Now, here's what I like. They're taking and, uh, their own control, and that set them up nicely. It's a pretty actually, close game. I expected the Heretics to win this, but EG have been, sure have been be in very position, smart in how they play. Oh. He might even catch them on the way through. It's the timing. It's absolutely everything here. It comes down to just one man left, and he's been detained. No! no. Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Oh. <laughs> GG's first map. Oh, he was EG. so convinced that his teammate would be able to survive. The defuse gonna go through in the last second or so. And honestly, honestly, I'm just happy it wasn't a knife. It could have been. He had every right to in that moment as well, but the risk not taken. The uh, long dominion, I do. But it's too EG small. Too small to wear. Experience the roar of the crowd for them. 13 to 8. A five round gap between them and considering. How All right, next map ascent, and map? that's um, that heretics pick. Insane. Ethan even managed to top Kellogg's performance. Three kills in the whole second half from Kellogg's, not Ethan. He yeah, was, he was insane. Why are they yeah, doing the I match in the evening? We well, it's um, afternoon in the Brazil. Jet, much tougher for your own individual ability. Hey, I'll say this though: being a Yoru. That's true. That's, that's all true. I need to that say. Being true. a Yoru, damn hard, <laughs> and he did it here. So I loved every play I saw from this guy. Every single one was just such a treat. So much thought went into this. Sometimes you oh, see yeah, sorry, new I, I don't have the bracket command, but um, I'll uh, link to bracket. To kind of thro throw your opponent off guard. You might have one or two little ideas, but ultimately it ends up go. just being kind of a pathetic pick. Here, this was game changing. Yeah, no, this was a really nice setup for EG. Clearly had a Usually lot of matches ideas. on the night. Now, yeah, but plants, once they were able if to you them, uh, host matches at 6 p.m. Brazilian time, sort of you can forget rounds, about European look at and Asian viewers, right? Go, as well as American, in some cases. Well, some of the players from Com, for example, his positioning, his movement, his read on the game to re-aggress. There are matches in the evening, but it's the late ones. As for example, when it's midnight for me, that's when the photo matches. EG in this map, but what I will say now is there's only so much you can do to surprise. Now on Pearl, there's a little bit more. Oh yeah, going into Ascent, that's where I'm going to be excited to see what they've got because I think Heretic still had a pretty good showing playing up against something that you're not really going to have seen Yo, well, much sleep before. Well. Mm -hmm. On Ascent, I don't know if EG are going to be that creative. Yeah, no, I think realistically, Ascent, it, it's just so much more grounded as a map, you yeah. know? And you come into this map with a Yoru, definitely going to be catching your opponent <laughs> off guard. But no doubt EG had the upper hand. Now all that remains late. is to see if they'll close it out on the second map. No, I'm not, I'm not staying up too late, but uh, I want to do all the watch parties. Things. Tomorrow I'm not streaming, though. So I'm, tomorrow I'm going to be yeah. editing instead. Weird little things and, like, really, like, oh, do hot mic. And... Um, if it gets super late today, I might um, have to uh, call it a bit early. Tomorrow I have um, an appointment. I gotta go for it in the morning. So I gotta be, uh, you know, make, make sure I don't miss it. What is that guy's haircut on the right? He's just flexing on the ball, dude. He's like, look at all this hair. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it. So now when there are, you know, muted mics, he's just like doing this, you know, on his hair. He's like fl flipping it up and down. He has like four fans around him, so it's like permanently lifted. Red Bull gives you oh, I'm oh, good, uh, Solar. Just uh, routine stuff. It's um, my um, ADHD my education. I have to um, lower it a bit and uh, just uh, making sure it's, um, you know, all good. 
cosplay right there. Yes. I'm a cosplaying peak. My name is Cypher. And uh, I know exactly where you are. Ah, do you guys think uh, Heretics uh, takes Ascent? I feel like EG, uh, if they play like they did here on Pearl, like later on, they uh, probably take Ascent too. Because uh, you can be very smart on Ascent and they, they seem prepared. Can you show that? Yeah. It's not the, it's not the biggest hat. But it, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You should get, uh, go to the appointment, dress the cipher, and see if they recognize who you are. I don't think they will. <laughs> I don't think they will. Not that you know of, Bulletproof Gangster. Not that you know of. You don't think they watch your vids? I mean... If I was, uh, let's say I was a doctor, I probably would not Google my patients. <laughs> I probably wouldn't. And if I have patients that are like, yo, can you watch my videos on YouTube? I would be like, no, uh, maybe some other time. But then if they come out, Dressed it like this, you know, just full on cipher suit and I play Valorant. You bet. You bet I'm gonna ask them if they're no pick. Since they're cosplaying pick. Your surgeon for your back plays Valorant. Dude, that is cool. That is very cool. I know once there was a viewer. I can't remember if it was a viewer that had a teacher. Or if the teacher wanted to learn about Cypher or something similar, but I remember there was a, a viewer who um, basically showed cameras and stuff to uh, their teacher in Zoom. How long is stream? God of War? Probably God of War. I know when Valorant came out, they won. I probably streamed it for like 30 hours or something. Other than that, God of War for sure. That was 26 hours. 26, I think, yeah. No, 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 no. It was uh, 24. Well, if you weren't up, I hope you are now. What a way to start things off here in Sao Paulo as we just saw EG hope and did I play day one? take Brimstone, each other I think. on Pearl. And that was an awesome game to watch from the beginning the ideas that were being implemented to just kellogg's and then kellogg's and then more kellogg's until <laughs> we couldn't talk about them anymore <laughs> Thank you, uh, but yeah let, let's just go ahead and break things down here and seth and you know i'll start with you on this because i think you know going into this we were a little worried what were going to be some of the win conditions here for heretics we knew kellogg's was going to be a, a standout player for them but we were also hoping to see more uh, of the of the heretics players step up as well, especially in that defense. It was yeah, a lot was difficult a on a lot more difficult on attack for Kellogg's because he has to go in first there. Two rounds picked up on that and EG, they side. were ready for that. Uh, and it was a bit rough. We'll get into Kellogg's a little bit more later on, but for EG, we had questions about how Actually, they were going to pile that the defensive side. Pearl. It ended up being really damn good. Yeah, I think what was interesting about their Heretic solution map? was it wasn't really centered around the Yoru. Instead, it was just excellent sight anchoring from both BCJ and Busio. Every time that uh, Heretics was going for one of these fast sight executes, these guys were getting a, you like to play a few of kills. Do you I do, I do. It's pretty simple, for EG. but it's very, very re reliable. Because I think a lot of their game plan in this half with the really heavy initiator comp was, okay, we're going to dive on in, we're going to push Kellogg's forward with a dash, we're going to get an entry and just uh, kind of follow our way into the site, which I think normally is good against this kind of double duelist composition, but EG was just shutting it down consistently. Yeah, I think we saw a little bit of growing pains uh, for BCJ coming into this role. A couple times where he was getting caught in his astral 
Rule Form 1. The timings just weren't quite there initially during that attacking yeah. half. But as soon as he got over to the defender side, you could see that the comfort just came uh, back. Stranger, 7 p.m. ratty plays, avoiding that it's aftershock. So just pretty early. Just dug out that entire time and just swinging out and murdering people. It was fantastically done from him. Yeah, and, and the objective, especially after that, you know, raucous first half that we saw from Kellogg's, for Evil Geniuses was to shut down this player. And Mimi, they succeeded in that I'm regard, gonna but also Kellogg's had the difficult task of having to be the one that um, essentially had to face check everything. I'm and that's interested exactly what to I was going to bring up. This guy Oop, was constantly off. diving into sites, stacked with some really strong anchors from EG. I see this half of him not doing great, not as EG a, fail a, fail okay. a failure I sent of his own, but instead story. as an issue with some of the mid-rounding that this team had. Boo had some great moments, but I felt like he really struggled yeah, with yeah, makes to sense find though. a gap for I thought it was that way around. It was oftentimes no, never mind. This didn't actually. No. A sacrificial lamb. I don't know what I'm on. Those trades weren't really coming through. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, you know get some get our high speed. But think of Molly lineup this time. I actually made a video of, of um, and this one. I mean, on, the Molly setups and everything Seth, before it became popular. <laughs> this game was so uh, I approve. Yeah, I mean, he he dashes away, goes for the think it's, uh, I think it's smart. You know, up house as soon as all the smokes have faded. If you can make use of the mollies and win rounds, that's what you do it. If Ethan was finally able to shut him down, but yeah, I mean, what a just quick play from him. This and you can counter it by just pushing, you know, the, the brimstone. <laughs> but if you're taking time and not, you know, thinking about the possibility of lineups, once they got over then side. He just yeah, it's going to be a very tight on time, him up especially when he has ulti. Like you can tell that Kellogg's missed land, though. Walking out, just getting the crowd pumped oh, yeah. up, popping off after every play. He is loving it right now, yeah. but he's going to need to maintain that performance for map number two. Yeah, he, he definitely feels like a natural out there, for sure. Uh, speaking of naturals, one player who was also, you know, pretty pretty strong and a solid rock for this team was Jogamo. We're actually I've not be played the out. World of Tanks, but I've heard it's uh, pretty uh, pre all right. Shoot around, gives us an opportunity to talk more, uh, you know, about Jogimo because or Jog Jogimo, Jogimo, he wrote it three different ways, by the way. Just want to let everyone know at home. Yeah. Um, I, he he had a great game, uh, up, he, but it was more the sum of all the parts. Hope of you have a great day, man. Rather than just and Jogimo so being the superstar, like he was can in raise previous lift teammates of up. this roster. Yeah, and I was wondering if that was uh, going to change. Not lift them up, well, but she can make them bounce, basically. To the side. Strength was always in it's their a, it's a, how every single player was contributing. But it's even like though they they're adding a lot of experience, kind of tier one big name players like Ethan and BCJ, they've kept to that standard of having absolutely everyone show up in these games. That they, that they have, I mean, just great team effort overall uh, from the side of EG. So I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. some more of it. I mean, and especially though, since we do have a scent coming up, talking about more eyes on him as that jet player because we saw, you know, like the buzz and whatnot going absolutely crazy on that map. Kushner oh, as well okay. yesterday. So I'm looking forward to some more jet, uh, you know, show off uh, plays coming out. All right. Well, as we get ready for our second map yeah and it's, uh, recently there was um, get their picks a patch up and we'll where we're be playing really high ping map there. is um, I think for me, no longer uh, like favored you know, in, uh, in really terms of running around corners and fighting the, and so on the rest of heretics we know you got the skill zeke is a world champion not as much as before at least. a legend Boo's calling pretty solid and also hitting some nasty shots himself. He really impressed me. Where's my he did. Here. He did. And I think Just that there small. was a lot of positives, Mimi, to take All away right, from if that. We don't but see that Cypher. is a 13-8 loss for Heretics. They're going to be licking their wounds, but they don't have a lot of I time can keep to think it on about for it. they got to have this game plan solid, laid out. Because you know EG has one of their own. Yeah, and Ascent is another one of those maps where you can really It's a really take warm suit, so I'm not going to have it on the whole time, though. For this side of Heretics, they need to get this attack side calling down. Yeah. Needs to be clean if they want to be walking away with the win. I mean, granted, this is their map pick, so we should anticipate that they're going to be a little bit more prepared. The but I think this is hover? Certainly hmm. not. There's okay. no way. Well, this will be a very interesting prime gaming agent select if that is necessary. I mean, you say the, the chamber hum hover. I'll yeah, we don't see Cypher. Zeke on Jindre. I mean, I, I think it's going to come through. Thus far, pretty normal stuff from both sides. Uh, Calm is going to play the Sova and said the Killjoy. Jet. So there it is, is going to be Bustio going over to that one. I'm glad they got rid of the Phoenix. That was kind of a gimmick before. And Heretics do as well. Normalcy on both these sides. I'm very glad to see that. I mean, this is perfectly mirrored compositions across both of these teams. This is entirely going to come down to prep, mid-round adjustments. If you have a chance to play pro, which team yeah, would it Kellogg's, play on? Anyone's game, right? hmm. Kellogg's has been here before. This is his time to show us what he's got. Hmm. This is Jojimo's first rodeo. Kellogg should be able to shut it down. And if there's a player to step up in that moment, we already saw it in game one. It could very well be Kellogg. Let's now go ahead and send it back to your casters for map number two. I hope they're having a good time because I sure as hell am. It's Mitch and Tom. Golden boy, when have I ever had a bad time when you're around? Come on. <laughs>
<laughs> We're having not a great sure. time up here. And I, I got to sure. say, the one thing that's confusing Probably, me a little bit, um, though, and that agent select, Zeke. Yeah, I, see, like, I will agree mm. with Mimi in the Strange. fact that in terms Maybe of fanatic. the agents that were chosen, they are normal. Normal agents. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. They don't like Cypher, so. Not so Probably much. not. Zeke playing a Killjoy is something that has literally never happened before. Actually, 100 and I can thieves. Really read into it the fact Current that 100 thieves. Was brought in Their to head coach uh, is a fan of Cypher. Done on some other rosters. I'll be honest with you. I think. It wasn't amazing. So now they've switched that role between multiple different players. Boo was playing it in the last map as more of a flex. He's now on Sova. So it's almost like this team is very interchangeable in their roles. It's just whether or not it's good. Yeah, it's a weird thing to see. Uh, Mixwell coming in, playing the agent of Zeke, world champion. Uh, but then again, we haven't seen him since then, right? Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, that's what a team is. On Nat's not team? Gonna come I mean, in if I play on Nat's role. team, I'm not Let's thinking safe, right? Team taking it right? Maybe well, but Kellogg's good for one. can't overlap in Wilson. The trade is clean, the nano delays the rest of the team. And it looks like Rustio might even get out. He's been spotted, though, and that's a clean kill. Yeah, again, solid flash. That one coming through from Mixwell. That's happened a couple of times where they have a lot of these sort of flash and dash setups coming out to give Kellogg's that opener. The fact that they managed to get a second one, though, that makes things a bit more interesting. Now, Ethan has pushed up into mid. Now, he's got a yeah, they make the move a bit here. It's not really going to be in his favor. So I don't know how much further than this he's going to be able to go. And oh, here's like the peak. Waiting there it him, is. Just watching, and with him being spotted, he now has the decision to almost fall back. Yeah, I mean, EG don't really have the ability to contain here. And while well, Jogimo, he's they popped a nade down. That's going to delay a little longer, but they've still got a bit of time. Those spams through the smoke, on the other hand, they can run back to you now. Damage. Thirteen. Now do Ronte. On Zeke, sixty-eight on Mixwell. And what was previously, I mean, nobody scouted from the knife fighter. Oh, two people dead there. Heretic sway despite the low HP. Nice PCJ. PCJ left on 30, and he's got two opponents to deal with. Mixwell low. Look, this has been a scrappy round so far. Am I playing peak? Yeah, I'm playing right now, hands free. And that's why we have the camera on this this guy there. You know, just PCJ. attention. Desperately low on health. Ah oh, man, I died. I died as Omen. Have got themselves, I and I was winning at SKO at the same time, by the way. Problems in the last map is they started things off incredibly slow. Man, now, it's I'll really nice to you, take with no hands. In terms of this series, this will be the map so that nice. I expect them to take. The level playing field, in terms of individual brilliance in the last map, I feel like a lot of it came around them having some really cool setups and takes. Now we're going into much more. That is a good flash. Good timing. And that's where I think individually we've seen some very good stuff from the side of heretics it's whether or not there's been those same sort of creative ideas on the side of eg now for now we've got a bit of a stack up into am i gonna play in the tournament no 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 dangerous with the i'm playing right now in the tournament to fight this side of the map. in brazil no and B with just I mean, one these are teams. That's these are pro teams, and uh, now, I think it's gonna be interesting I'm not a pro player, how this so I'm not playing in a pro uh, tournament. I'm, uh, Mixwell on the I'm watching it. We have a position here where Mixwell, in the previous round, when he popped that support flash for Kellogg's, he's last man into the site there. This is leaving. So basically, he can't do that if he's lurking, right? If he was playing a Killjoy over on B, it would have to be Zeke last guy in if he's the flash to play that exact role. So I almost feel like there could Don't be a possibility scouted the jet. so Zeke can play more aggressive almost on the attack side with that oh kill my. joy. Why have they lost so many? Oh, he wanted to knife. He, he wanted to knife. This is one of the messiest rounds I think I've ever seen. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, BCJ just reads it in the smoke. And he's dropped the spike on I want to make content. Now Zeke does have the Guardian. Maybe not the greatest weapon fine. for close range, but a single bullet will take out one. Trying to have ever played in a tournament? A I have. Com coming up behind him. Time is going to be absolutely everything. Now the alarm bot is down. So it's going to give the information away. It means that this becomes an isolated fight. Spike's going to be retrieved, but he has to almost plant it here. He can't rotate. He can't go anywhere. So he's looking to try and isolate that final duel. And with it, ooh, getting a little bit awkward, he will finally find it. He knows roughly where that last man is going to be in the plant. Should be in. Maybe gonna find him with the tag at least. That gives the information over to the other side, and an SMG's been picked up. I don't know if he knows he's Ooh, close, dude. but he finds the, the shot anyway. That round shouldn't have been the headshot there. Close. But luckily Zeke's there to save. Rico, them. nice to my dude. Slightly, Tom. Not even slightly close. And if a team signs me a, a content creator, which team Stacked would you like to join? I would place. join the I one that pays me the most. The they to them. They a Red Bull clutch in That's what I would do. The opponents had shorties. 48 HP on Evolva there. If he goes down, it's already over. That is, uh, that is so actually pretty easy. I would join the ones that pay the Luckily most. Luckily, he got the kill, but uh, 
Yeah. Imagine this. Sentinels want to get me as content creator, but I have to pay them. That would be a bad deal. I'm lucky there, by the way. Zeke. No lurking this time. That's the only rifle on the floor. Now it should be very easy it's to so retrieve. It's so silly when Sova <laughs> goes with an old in there. Uh, they've just got information it's like such a common thing. I think only a but it looks so silly. Decent shock as well. Stripped some shields, done some damage. Yeah, he's still got plenty of bullets left. He's been spacing out his spams. You don't want to see just people mag dumping 100 bullets into the wall. It's not going to do anything. You know, nobody at this level at least is going to be silly enough to run into the spray. But you use it to Good periodically thing, deny that control. Now you see the drone go through, and now he can start spamming again. Gets back up on top, and we'll hear the raffle in a moment. Oh, he even had the recon. And then he can do it a little bit later. Look, so here's... Oh, this is actually nasty, the recon. He's going to time it. He's playing this perfectly. It just depends whether he decides to go for that spam, or rather, when Imagine he goes, if all are playing the same. And it looks like he's moving back towards ah, the passive then it's a bit more instead. difficult. So Team Heretics will manage to bypass mm. it for now. Yeah, they've smoked the alarm bomb as well. So that's Ooh, not nice going to be the try. information there. Just that uh, small probably, piece of utility uh, has managed to put the pressure on to come. First goes his way with the thieves, he is gonna get I think. Up with Warbag as well. Mixed they have good so probably far. the most the uh, fun type of content hands. to make. The only rifle they had was a Guardian. You know, they had the creatures in, the, in this, the in this the organization. Realm, they did it in the end. And now an Odin picked up for Boo a recon. 20 seconds till that's going to be back online. And that means a last second exec here from EG even gets a little more dangerous. They're starting to make their way in already. Looking for mm. space. Mixwell up close. Going to be a massive Ooh, nice danger. Try. He's gone for the play. Swinging up in. And they had absolutely no Yo, yeah, idea. Peter, they picked no Cypher last map, so um, <laughs> before the match, I said, uh, if they pick Cypher, I'll put it on. They chose an early Odin investment, and they I'll have keep it on for the entire match. Price. And if anyone picks Cypher later, I'll put it on, put it on again. Team Heretics yes. playing against some shorties. Yes. Some classics. Yes. I, maybe a frenzy. I, I don't know. I, I think there might have been a single I, I frenzy. I don't really yes. remember. I don't think it matters. Big, big they, difference that makes. One person survived. Mm-hmm. And when they run into a round with a Guardian, a Spectre, Heretics and a getting pistols, where gets three rounds here, yeah, that's, they, they lose the Guardian almost instantly. that's very yeah. nice on attack. They that is a good start. A couple of players alive and retrieve all the weapons. Yes. You've got that one right, Tom. Okay. Yep. Just wanted to make sure. Don't know what's uh, so confusing gamers. about that. Hey, yes and no. That's obvious, really. No one, yes that's and no. That's how Valorant works, also, my guy. I mean, stop what? He, he saw that one coming months ago. He predicted like, he, that. He, he, knew, he actually sent me a message saying they're about to win this round comfortably. He predicted that in the Halo days. He knew it all. It's, it's not a surprise, man, honestly. He just has to rub his head like a crystal ball and the visions come to him. <laughs> Three to zero Lash right now. Weak weapons for EG. We Nothing. know what that means. It's going to be a big round from the defenders. Just kidding. Ustia's already dead. Oh, they don't even check the corner on him. Good damage. They need a follow-up, though. And so far, that follow-up's just not there. Nicely handled by Heretics all in all. And Mixwell ain't even going to die. Yes, he's just about back up. Yeah, they, they actually did quite a bit of damage. Like Kellogg's going down to I don't HP, out. but ultimately with yeah. only one player being lost, it's not going to be too yeah. big of a deal for Heretics. And I um, remember, I came up with the idea like yesterday Blue, after a stream. Pick up an Odin in the last round, yeah. 6,800 credits. Just so to support the Cypher, you know? For them. A flyer of a start for Team Heretics. Bear in mind, last map didn't go their way. Lost both pistols. They're now 4-0 up. And I'm even more gobsmacked. The man who is leading the charge... This is his first time on this agent. Yeah, and it's on attack thing. as well. Like I said, you know, I, I almost love what they're doing here. I think giving him the freedom to play one side of the map by himself, if I'm picking anyone on their team, but it's probably it Kellogg, might feel like you're safe here, yeah, Ethan. But these are walls that, that, that are paper Kellogg's thin. Often gonna be taking the space and being the spear for the team. So I, I looked at this comp initially and I was like, is this Mixwell just like egoing the agent? Being like, hey, Zeke, you're going to learn my old role. But no, instead he's actually come in and yeah. I think taking a very modest approach well, that, to this and said, thing. I'm going to set you guys up. His breach on the last map was very mm. supportive. So at the time, yes. he was not in a position at all to take any fight. Oh yeah, Avova so can vote it with his ult there. I also think for EG, they need to bounce oh, back can now. We, can we see Mixwell right now? He's setting up a, a knife, I think. Do you think it's, it's good to save one. in pistol or Ecom? Uh, no, He's I don't think so, because you uh, don't have enough money, or what, you lose out the money close. if that's that's you don't die. So much information. But you're, let's say that you're attackers, play, if you don't uh, clap and you don't die, yeah. you lose money the next round. Get onto a site and lost and yeah, same yeah, if you defend her, but not defusing. That's a great shock dart Good as well. Good timing. With 30 seconds left, they still have to push into the entirety of this setup. Oh, there's no ulti to break it. But they're going to be able to delay 
No With way the to stop it. They have, to the last but they know where Boostio is, though. Throw down those nanosorbs. That is brilliant from Boostio. They're not going to be able to get much of the space whatsoever. And now the remaining players of EG can start pushing back into the site. The turret has it's just managed to turret. get a kill. And there's only 10 seconds for them to get this spike down. In fact, they have to go back and retrieve it. All they oh. need to do is deny it. It has to come in here and now. No time. It's done. They've already conceded. They knew the plan couldn't be what secured. What is this? That was such a weird round, such a scrap around there. Phenomenal stuff, well done by EG. Great plan. We saw yeah. Team Heretics with their late the round info play for mid. Burned a lot of time. time you can't really run through them. To give you that last cycle of utility when you come to either a site push or to playing close. And turret plan. killing a boo. That was uh, unexpected. Unstoppable defense. I wonder how did he take so much damage before? The thing I love is just how Oh, he was vulnerable and then was deleted by the... Um, oh, then, okay, okay. The thing, obviously, Bustio knows they can't have pushed up that far because of the alarm bot in the first place. Is that for good for beginners? They're going to run sure. out of the last four seconds. So that's when he pops the util com. What is this? Yes. Why are you fighting this with an... Oh, yeah. he's going to get the kill! Oh, uh, round on, on the other side of the... That's what I mean wall. with paper thin walls. <laughs> Everything is... You can wall by anything, swing. really. Tom, all I'm going to say is if I try that in ranked, you are going to scream at me for the Yeah, because you'll die <laughs> instantly. Know, but it's a play, and I've seen it a pro play. I'm going to do also, it in ranked also, now. Also, you don't have the dart Gorgeous. that gets in the... That is also, the yes, that is also very accurate, but I don't need to hear your nice. negativity. What a gorgeous play from Calm. I'm really enjoying this early round, Odin. Look, that aside, they have the advantage, and Team Heretics do not seem to be getting any ground. Another player dropped the spike, confirmed to be outside of A, and at this point... Like reading Heretics are pretty novel. solid on the money now for the defense. For Even if they lose no, all rounds from now on, they have a pretty solid yeah, defense really nice with four rounds. Like just being able to almost work but obviously you want to you want to get more off the back of that like you have this aggressive odin play the dart to force them back and almost shimmy them back towards the b site and in the meantime he gets aggressive so while they're losing mid control on the attack they are also being pressured in b main but they don't expect that they're trying to reclaim and the odin spam there so, <laughs> died so much early. yes he got right dipped right instantly. Instantly. he literally got headshot through the wall at the very first second and then went no, I'm still gonna swing this. You will literally see like an op holding that angle, given less less respect from the other yep. team. He's spraying with Noden, and they're like, I don't want to peek. Oh my god! Oh, they oh he's going man! Insta flash. He's still going. This is such an aggressive play. They had a dart to set him up as well. Just oh. trying to catch heretics off guard. Dude, that's exactly there's what a laser done. show Just in B main. Just a anime battle. Everything being thrown at this main, and in the end, look, they end up fairly even, but a quick kill. Pulls it right back. The map control for Heretics here. They've got main, and they might be able to fight their way back out, but still two players waiting on the site. Calm. Knows that push can be coming through, and the flash on the other side was actually that. They're just pushing. That makes well's flash. Yeah, I think it feels like, very oh, um. No, it didn't catch him this time. They attempted it before. Hasty? The decisions? For, I, I think a very optimistic spam. He's getting spammed out here. Yeah, he's done for. The tag's coming through in almost every It is definitely very scenario. hasty. Com's darts have been on point. I'd almost like to see them highlighted going forward. Because he's been catching people every single time. Now, Mixos trying to... What is going on? Yeah. Win, but there are three I feel like they are being very impulsive here. Trying to be fast to... Um, chip them up with a little bit of extra damage. But they create chaos. And make it uncomfortable for uh, EG to... Um, yeah, uh, again, in these sort of scenarios with a man advantage, like try and catch them off guard. Is, they just have to understand but it backfires because, uh, yeah, and they EG aren't really, uh, locking down spawn really budging. Two, watching their back and Especially the because they have a drone scouting their perfect timing. They hear the TP from Omen. Drone comes out, bam. He's no wall bank. They're not so blinded, so he doesn't know where he's standing. There was never going to be a result that favored them. EG walking out with three. And a strong start to this map for the attack side of Heretics, but EG quickly on their heels. Yeah, this is the thing. I, I will say I imagine Heretics are going to be a fairly momentum-based team in general. But I also think that going into the defense, they could have a really stellar heart. Can Hypen uh, weapon uh, wallbang two walls? Really no. Nope. You can only wallbang um, one wall. The, 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 the is, though, time EG, it goes, I, just, I sort of said it. Like, the moment a bullet goes to the second wall, it just gets blocked there. And that so, flash yeah, not only blinded it gets stopped. But blinded the turret. So he was able to push all the way up and catch him off guard without any yeah. information going the other way. That's just a beautiful uh, Ascent little was from uh, EG. And then after that, he throws down no, a sword um, and they dart behind. What am I saying? So that not only Ascent was the first from kill, uh, he might be able Heretics. To find more. 
these are just minute details that EG are putting in because they are so around these sort of set plays from people like Potter, who is, I yeah. don't know, she's clearly doing an amazing job. You know, it even sounds almost less impressive uh, when you consider the fact that, like, these mm. guys didn't just go what for the play they have and now? the flash and then decide to recon. That recon was there from the start. It's you got to do soft. something wacky. They intended like, not if just they're in this main, mindset, but to make that dash play let's go for something wacky. And then spam them through the smoke with, with the reveal yep. from the very beginning. I mean, the amount of utility thrown into that early play, silly. Look, it's costly, but you're either getting kills like he did, whiffing, which, you know, you don't have to account for that. And then the other thing is free map control. You spend all that utility. I'm going to play much of the here. Premier game mode. Yeah. Let's rotate everyone uh, else to I'll, the other side. I'm going to check it out. I'm not sure wiser. really because Just I don't have a five stack or um, like a team say, or anything. But it would be uh, fun to um, like have a Potter team and, you know, there. scrim with We've them as well. The stream it. The <laughs> in the but past, but I'm going to see. I'm not sure really. I might make my own team, but that is going to be very, very heretics. Have they got anything? Time consuming. This time completely different. It's not an Just to, sure. um, but instantly smoked off. you know, not get Same poached and mid. so on. Knife reveal, slow peek up. Drone to it, it's, it's a bit complicated. Side, that's, that's like, if you want to um, avoid getting poached, you got to have a, some form of like contract with players, dart. but I wouldn't be back. able to pay them, so would be a weirder contract than um, give some value of some sort. again. But yeah, it, of it's something I want to do in the future. I want to have my own team. EG, which they so or be an owner, desire. part owner or and something. The Premier Game Mode, that's the in-game tournament system that's going to come. Here, pushing those players back, stealing information from their hands. Look at the response. EG look to fight for short. And Ethan has the You got an interesting flash. EPL got game today. I don't watch um, yeah, SES, sorry. That sent Heretics running to the other side of the map. Yeah, the thing is Why is not picked on Ascent? I think they favor um, Killjoy over Cypher because um, Sky and Fade are very um, normal picks. Same with Kale. And I don't think many uh, Cypher players are comfortable with uh, Cypher against those agents. Oh. So the team just goes for um, Killjoy, I think. Just moments ago, was sat 0-4 while they're level again. Right back into it, and with that streak of rounds, they put heretics. I feel Eco. like you can play safe though. Four and oh down, they might just steal the lead out but of you have to play, um, Another pretty, gorgeous round. Pretty efficient. Jogamo checking for the player up on mid as well with that late of a push, with the fact yeah. that they had faked the A player, at least had been on short not that long ago, and quickly shifted, running away from KO. Still at a player fake A, by the way. After all of that, you don't. I, I didn't expect the guy to be there, and I could see the mini map, but he checked it, took the kill, and. Is it like well, a pick and dance for map selection? Yes. He's tagged and switches to the yes. shorty. You gotta love it. This is the chance here for EG. And to uh, walk if you look at the top uh, left, the lead, you can see who picked what. Five sheriffs. And so, no um, powerful example, that was. Um, from the shadows for Revolva and, yeah, by. Well, um, you've seen this game before. You EG. know, that's not gonna change too much. See how. See how big the Mitch Man curse is today. Yeah. You know, watch him like TV <laughs> right behind someone. They don't hear him somehow. <laughs> There'll be a There's a few articles, a uh, I think, Adam. You're right, though. With uh, It's not like some or something, super yeah. well-known, but there's a few articles, uh, I think, by Riot that um, describe they, it. They still know that there was a player around this position just moments ago. The knife not really going to give too much over on the A side, oh, but it's very oh, passive. Oh, if football. You know I, um, I don't watch any sports risks, either. Sorry. Basically just waiting for their opponents to try and find something. And now heretics are excellent. I'm going to be uh, hosting the watch party all day today and um, they're just being given nothing. then I'm going to sleep. So unfortunately not watching. I've saved this time and there's not going to be a dash oh. to play with on the other side. A chance. Yeah, I heard that the, the next agent is going to be a Sentinel Bandicoot. It's just gonna be that would be super nice. Closing the distance at least, but with I feel like we definitely need more Sentinels. The shorty on the other side, and hopefully a tiny bit of... Um, Elements from Cypher, like with the camera. A little bit more time, but there's too many players. EG were 4 and 0 oh down. Without losing a round, they've taken the lead back. This series might be under a little bit of threat for EMEA fans out there. But that's the thing. As said, I do expect Heretics to be a lot better on the defense of this map. The issue I have is if they just get bodied out of the late stage of this half, I don't know if they have the stones to turn it around. Nice. But that's yeah, cool. Yeah. They picked Cypher before, so... Uh, I don't know if Put they're it mentally going to be in it anymore. As 
especially someone like Kellex, as we've said before. He's very up and down, and so far in this game, he's been struggling. Well, we saw that 20 kills in one half, three mm. in the next. In the a, defensive a complete, a complete change of roles, though, right? And this is the mm. attack again, where Kellogg's can be slow. Chogamo is, he's de yeah, he's dead. Half, he dead. <laughs> That's a nice free combat. They've already got four, and there's an opening duel for Kellogg's. This could be the turning point for Team Heretics. Yeah. Good darts to get them that info. Imagine Getting a five sentinel team, team comp. So many issues with his aggressive plays. I want to see it. Main playing into mid. Finally, they've managed to shut him down. The thing is, though, instead of giving up that control and trying to play more passively, it's actually the opposite from EG. They have two players challenging. Why not put on the hat? Uh, well, I have a headset, control. but also uh, the hat is too small. Why not be expected? Just even without the headset. Oh, BCJ, you need to go huge! That's so I can't it. wear it. I look like a fisherman with it on. But unfortunately, we've seen Mixwell pop the ultis oh. right back online. Bustio, though, wants to shut it down. Keep those kills in their favor. Three versus three. Ability to nice. fight back in. Ethan's nice got a kill, shot. and they have a lockdown. This should be around for EG. Team Heretics need to find an advantage. They can't just sit down and wait for the retake to... Uh, what? <laughs> I guess um, they thought it would be breaking. Okay. All right. They can't just sit down and wait for the retake to come through. And here's a problem now. Nice. Okay, maybe not. Mixwell's fighting for it. He's trying to make up for that flash. If only he still had one. Time to run away. He's stuck. He's stuck. Zeke's managed to find one, but he needs his teammate to try and hold on here. Oof. Mixwell Lucky. gets the final kill. Luckily. I, I, I don't know how that round ended up going their way. They needed that. Uh, Two uh, more rounds now for, for, for Heretics, and they are just looks well looks very, set. very funny. But the fact that he manages to clutch it out in the end, currently sat top of the board. Nine Here and comes seven, the 13 assists. 900 IQ Wait, flash. On, guys. I said you do this late but in the day. But the silver was 901 was IQ day, by not fair, breaking the I, door. You know what? You know what, to our replay guys out there, that one's okay. I green light that one. <laughs> that was a funny one. I just, the fact that he just stared at the door and they went, flash. <laughs> it's just so great. <laughs> He obviously thought they were about to break oh. it, or his teammate was whatever. <laughs> that was such a weird battle. Three Both pe players oh, wait, the actually, they stacked B side with four out. people. A lot of damage done onto Kellogg's. That is so much. Here would put him in the grave. Oh, oh he's is. dead there. Unlucky. That on, one hurts. On the mark. Oh. oh, I guess nothing. An attempt to try and catch them would have been trapped within it, but it was a sacrificial play, a bit like what Ethan's doing. Ooh, Just ooh, running ooh. through two headshots instantaneously. Massive. Does he know though? There's a player on the site. Seemingly not. Com's taken a lot of damage. Two players tagged up, and Boo is now holding onto that cross, just making sure that nobody has already made it forward, giving up over the all clear to try and get this spike down. Com's always going to be a player walking down those stairs. Now they know where he is as well, and there's a flank coming through. Boo's he's in a lot of Yeah, he has to clear these left, areas. Now and he's dead. Zero. I like you taking Bucio too much time there. Him. It's all onto a Vova. This man has had more clutches than I can count. It's time to put another on the board. The team Heretics are to hit six here. Have any chance of winning the half? That's the first, but in comes the deadly duo, Ethan and Bustio. Low HP on Ethan. Ah, nice Bustio try. Nice doesn't try. even need well his teammate. Well handled. Six found. And the lead's still possible for EG at the halftime. But that's the thing. Like, EG are just so disruptive in the manner of which they play. Like, not only when the lockdown was placed, somebody tries to, like, go into the smoke. You see the initial aggression as well from Jorgamo just trying to do that extra damage. But then you also have Ethan flashing through the smoke and yeah. finding two kills. Like, heretics are trying to find some sort of rhythm. They are, Quail. And they each are. time, they just get but heretics, they've got an, uh, in the ribs. It five is rounds on attack. Tough, that is, that is right pretty now. good. However, and they were early on. Buy. It really feels like it's just a game where both teams like are attempting if you win pistol, to disrupt the other one. You can kind of count on having two rounds that you win, you rely on making or you one round at least. Put you on the back foot, and well, it's a treat to watch for now at least. If they get the last one, to the defense, this man here, Kellogg's, I expect to do. EG has to win the pistol, more. in my opinion. It's where he'll put up the big numbers for now. They've got one more round on the attack to try and pick it up. Zeke could be in trouble here. That's just a sheriff. He didn't stand a chance. Why do you need to keep that? Why do you need to search? But in a round like you don't this, need to search that, to Zeke. A little bit more aggressive. Kellogg's into the site. He is the man that nice. needs to go huge. First kill is way trying to take it all. He oh, didn't do damage there. BCJ full sprint headshot him through the floor. But they are blinded. A 3v3. Weaponry for Mixol. Weaponry for Avova. It's possible. Looks like we got another weapon picked up. It's uh, not quite the same caliber, 
Rocking him with the Spectre, but it'll do something at least. Quick tag up top. That's going to slow your push. Mixwell, he's inside the smoke. He's up close. There's Ooh, so a close. Kill. One more there. But it's traded right back out. The dash into the site from Jogamo. And he's caught another one. So Whoa. close. So <laughs> close. I need a replay of that. But immediately. What in the... How? How? Ran out of bullets. How? Also the Molly from KO. Well deserved from EG. From four to zero yeah. down. They've put seven one on the board. A oh, really, really impressive resurgence, and this round may be a little bit closer than it should have been. A nice attempt for them to bring this one home, but Jorgamo not only getting the first entry back in, but just finding absolutely everything as he dashes back into the smoke. We're definitely going to see, need to see quite a lot more of that though, as they're going to be heading into the second half. They're going to be moving on to that attacker side. I'm going to grab some first, water. I'll be back soon. People on the desk who want to have a chat. We love chatting. We're, we're big chatting fans. Absolutely. Uh, yes, what a, a, a game and a start there. Obviously, mirror compositions, but you're always looking to see what are going to be those small little details between each team that, that, that stands out. And I think for EG, you know, Jogamo right at the end there, definitely living up to why the hype is real. But let's actually look back on that half there and, and reflect on it because it really was a lot of great little takeaways from each side and some flubs as well. Yeah, I think this was kind of echoes of Pearl for me in that some of the mistakes that were being made by Team Heretics felt very similar to the issues that they had the, on the attacking side. This is one example. This round started off pretty rough. A Vova uh, actually misses out on a smoke in mid here that leads um, uh, to a kill happening in that area of the map. Or excuse me, it's actually being CJ's. I didn't realize that at the time, but yeah, very nicely played here to peek out by Ethan. He gets that big opening kill onto Kellogg's. There's, there's a lot of smokes in the mix there mid, um, but a little bit later into that round as well, that's where things kind of fell apart. They absolutely um, ran out of time on that site execute when they tried to split back into that A site, um, and at that point, it really fell apart. That was the breaking point where then the rounds, one after another, fell away from this team and EG yeah. got their foot on the defense. Yeah, I mean, they just took the momentum and ran with it. And honestly, in those first four rounds, we were seeing some uncharacteristic, you know, compared to Pearl, some uncharacteristic mistakes from EG, where it felt like they had these rounds in hand, but then they just had them slip. I agree with you. It does feel like Pearl, though, right now. And that's because this attacking side coming out from Heretics is, again, falling short. This time, it's not a 6-6. It's a 7-5 as they get ready to flip over to the opposite side. We saw that they had a decent defending side when they were there on Pearl. We saw that Kellogg's was able to really pop off as the defending Jet. He needs to be able to do that now if they want to get themselves back into this. Because right mm. now, from what we've been seeing, especially in these last few rounds, EG, they are very much in the driver's seat, and they're not letting go of the wheel. Yeah, they very much are here. But I think there are there is some hope here for the side of Heretics. They tend to be better on the defense. And EG, I think they could struggle to get a footing here. It's going to come down again to these side anchors from Team Heretics and how much they can get done. If they can't do that, they're headed home. Yeah, well, this is it, folks, for the Heretics. And EG could very well go with a 2-0 win. I mean, this matchup has been bonkers. Let's send it back over to Mitch and Tom for the second half. Thank you very much, Golden Boy, Mimi, and Achilleos. We have got a second half lineup here that certainly excites me. Team Heretics moving on to this defensive That's a lot side. Of days. 1,024 days. We saw 763 for Paper X. Mixwell's putting up a few more numbers there. He's been here since day one, back in Team Mixwell, and all the way back then, we knew him. And a lot of these players, even on the same rosters, for being strong on ascent for putting up defensive sides here. If they're gonna Whoa. do it, this is the place to make that stand. But Evolva okay. down right away puts the A side under threat. Well, a freebie at least. I will turn it back into a four versus four. I think they're probably gonna wait to try and play the retake. A bit of a longer rotation coming through from Zeke. And in the meantime, also got this aggressive push. Got it's some coffee too. It's being watched for. I don't know if he's going to get too much from this, but even still, time has been bought. Now they look to reposition, go back towards that main spot at the retake. Oh, he's waiting begins. for the beacon bolt. Two frenzies on the drop down, just shredding them, turning them to Swiss cheese. Ethan hitting every single shot and. No nice. chance he's stopping anytime soon. That's exactly Four what EG kills needs. For this man, he was impressive with a Yoru and a Frenzy and the pistol doing it here. 
on the KO, and both times it didn't matter what agent he was yeah. playing. It's just about shooting people. Eight rounds for EG, and another nail in the coffin for Heretics. That's, that's the thing. I think coming into this series, Ethan was one of those players where I was like, okay, he's been on a lot of good teams in battle. They could try and I um, the best of him. force like, I, it. I think Fair. going back to on Heretics SCS games, he was a talent, a true talent ah, don't within again. the game. So the fact that he is performing this well, yeah, his frenzy has been popping off map, today. He's looking like he might be the same in this one. It's also worth mentioning because we focused on Zeke a lot. Obviously, I mean, Boo, I know him as a top tier controller. Yes. Uh, obviously, a Fova though and is even higher above. You know, he has reached the highest heights uh, across his career in Valorant, and he's been here since day one, much like Boo. So again, something to, to note, just, just that thing Boo is slow not here. on a role that we typically see him, and I think we feel much better results. They're trying to get some whiffs off uh, each other. On that controller. It's you know, issues smell, team smell if anyone is close. You see those things over time, but they better start to figure it out here and now. Only a couple of rounds for it to uh -oh. slip away. Oh, oh, I say here and now, yeah. I more so mean the next round. Nice Obviously, they've yeah. got classics here. And here and uh, now would be nice. But it would be great. It's something EG would probably I know, do. Quill. For but, me, uh, yeah, I, I think when I use the Frenzy, accept, especially because half of the time, early, trying to fight B main, it's um, and EG now have that read it's shooting good. The, the like other half of the time, that, it's shooting at people on a different map. Uh, Joram, please try some other agent during comp. Go well, I know you don't watch my videos or um, streams because um, I've been trying to learn Neon for um, two weeks now or one and a half weeks. So, uh, yeah, you got to come. Zeke has got another. It's all on to BCJ. Kellogg's with the Sheriff trying to bait him, but the spike is down deep. There's not much time left on the clock. Oh, there is. He found him. Man. Uh, no, no. But he can't quite close the round. <sighs> hey, look, they stack up B, they try to fight you there, you make the read, you go to A. What was BCJ thinking with that TP? Walk out with one player alive. That's not I how don't I know. thought things were gonna go. Yeah. But great sign for know. Heretics Hell. That's gonna get your morale up a whole lot higher. Not only will there be less weaponry to deal with in the next round because you think about the bonus they would have <laughs> specters here and there <laughs> Instead, like, they should the be playing yep, i don't know like four players on an eco are you gonna do that are you gonna force up into it well it's time to decide barriers already up and stingers in hand full investment this is a big play out of eg if they can fight back here and okay now, Jerome. That yeah might just i be mean the end of i will yes. i will bring other agents too like they have to um the other sentinels are boring so to a, play for me so that's why I don't play them. them. But um, I really like uh, Neon. And uh, yeah, Tishon, Yor as well. So those are, I will play. Like a lot of times when I play solo queue, I have to entry all the time. So I might as well play Neon or Yor them. He ran into the nade as well. Must have thought that was the last pulse on it. Now rifles retrieved as well. Ethan and BCJ stacked up with Mixwell on two health. One of the toughest clutches when will facing I use them in such an important round. Hmm. Your, this could set the dominoes. Probably, I don't know. Cascade, it's time I might mix it up, you know, when I feel it. How about Harbor? Harbor is going to be the next one. So here, for this year, I have a goal. Zeke. I want to learn some new agents. Two. He knows where they are. But it's a whole different ball game Maybe not like every month or every two months or something. But I want to learn new agents every third or fourth month, I think. There's got to be a... Not fourth, very, but at least every third month, I want to add a new agent to right the main now. pool. Well, they've they've won oh. one round of the last ten. One of the last ten, Tom. I didn't even. I mean, I know it's that bad. It was seven-one in a row. He said that, but like one of the last ten. It is. It is. Oh, thank you, Rishi. Thank you, Mama. Appreciate all of these players. Defensive side, but maybe Kellogg steps it back up. The man was twenty. Man, I was gonna drink some coffee, the and I instantly realized series. how warm it is. So you just, just a hand Real. on the cup. Oh, they're investing again. The thing is, the way the last half started, their 4-0 began with them doing exactly what EG have just done. I tried today. Astra, but, but they now need I feel like Astra is just a more difficult version honest, of Cypher. Like because you have to rely version, on okay, info from Guardian teammates or you have to lurk a lot. Half, maybe it can again. And they are desperately hopeful that this man can step up. Trying to play close. It is uh, zero. It is. It's been Evolver, warm, but it's, it's good. And the trading, the spacing, it's perfect from EG. Oh, I like it, the dark uh, Adam. No milk or anything. I, I had honey sometimes, but done. not today. There can be no doubt at this point, honey and coffee is very good. 
all across our global scene has been elevated at this event, to even in the Alpha group. Some of the cleanest Valorant we've gotten to see, and I think EG just a shining example of it right now. Meticulous play. And there just seems to be no way that heretics can find those advantages, those ways in. Hell, Out of money, so we got to go for the save. Point. Saved Bulldogs, some credits. They can try to fight back with Tom. Look, uh, that's gone. Nice we, try. we talked about it at the start of this round. You said you wanted to see nice them try. started here. And, and, I'm and I thought they really would little, do better. I, I'd say a little lighter than that. I'd say I want to see them at least have promise in this round. Make it close. If you lose it, I'll put that down to the weaker weaponry. But you've got to have the foundations here for that comeback. And we did not A lot see more that. people in the crowd now, by the way, remotely. compared to before. Oh, no, and that's the thing. You're looking at the other side of the scoreboard. It, it is literally every single player performing. Yeah. It, you, you have got Ethan right up the top. Bustio has been fantastic. BCJ, some of the rounds he's won for them. And then I don't even need to mention Jorgamo. He's been so good with just these aggressive sort of plays with comms utility alongside yeah. him. They are sublime from top to bottom. And on the other side, unfortunately, that just isn't the case. You know, I feel like the writing was on the wall in that first half of the first What's map. What's the second match? We came MIBR out and versus Talon. Six six and I said, also very good match. It is a damn rare thing to see Kellogg's pop off like that. See any player 20 and 6 at the yep. end of a half, and you are tied neck and neck. In that kind of game, you are dominating. But instead, Heretics were scraping by with a world-class performance out of one of the best duelists in the world. What happens when that slows down? You get slapped. 11 to 5. Two rounds needed for EG. Heretics, they haven't even found two rounds in the last 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, optimistic. A lot of no, no, no. Uh, a lot of people pause. have been noticing. They've had a chat with Neil. So, by the way, hold Hopefully, on. he's instilled some confidence in them that they can turn this around. Booze had his chance with the team. This, this now has to be it. This is it. Do or die for Team Heretics. Seen so many teams so far, the single elimination format, dealing them a rough hand, have that mm. slower start to the tournament. There there's it is. No way there's a good find. You don't get to have that bad first game and bounce back. You've got to be turned and tuned in from the very get go. And Heretics, oh, this is their last I don't know why if you scouted all of them. They tried to scout, but I think that's also why there was the. Um, to do well here. Already, goes Maybe not the smoke for that. I thought someone he might be around the corner one. here. That's the site under their control. Calm still lurking. Oh, he's nice a little try. bit unlucky. Mixor may be aware. And Ethan's trying to cross. He's managed to get a bit of space here. And he's not going to get caught. It seems yeah, like he's got an idea. It seems like they know that he's around this corner. Maybe not. First uh, nice way, try. He can't good job for, good job for uh, Heretics. Very around good. On the board for Heretics. You Finally, need this. we see some life in this roster. Well, it was about time. Around on the board at long last, a dabbing penguin to seal the deal. But, well, we're going to need to see seven more in a row if they're going to take it here and now. Otherwise, OT's their best hope. And, okay, we get an early pick out of Kellogg's, which is great to see. It was a default play from EG. That was a sick peek, by the way. End up getting caught by the op. I wonder what they're at. Beating out the shot there and actually, on the barrels. Just a much less passive hold over A. The same default played around mid and B. So BCJ, you're right, he's going to pop a smoke and then just stay on the boxes, try to deny that aggression. Yeah, they got their lock uh, no, this, this is the first match, but they played a map before available. this. Oh, 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 oh. Flash is decent. Good trade, Sony at least. Trade. It gives the setup. BCJ gonna but I think it's now worse to lose the KO compared to the Omen. Without having those smokes, they need to almost just find the space, find the gap. And right now, you they're potentially that. peeking in. This lockdown's being used as a ruse, a fake to try and bait them into the rotation. They're going to use up one ult to try and counter it. And in the meantime, Kellogg's has found another. Of over about to come under pressure as well. And in fact, he's somewhat been baited by the fake plot. I think Jogamo is uh, baiting out some uh, attention here from Holman. Oh, oh, nice. Another player Very nice. Not caught. Bustio grabbing himself another. And we end up two versus two. Lockdown could be the I don't know if he had ulti. This. I mean, that is blocking out all of the control and... Jogamo, he's going for it, he's updrafted, at least he's staying aggressive, he just needs the kill, one second to go and it's not gonna happen. <laughs> no, 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 no,
They've been trying. They've been um, both these two the teams. Team they have been Heretics. keeping the people in the well. kill jolt thing. thing. We saw mercy in the last map. Maybe it was also the time was low where they could have ended it with a knife, but... Well, I think Zeke that's the first knife kill of the tournament, by the way. That same sort of mercy. The lockdown really? becomes the crucial part of this round and just being able to <laughs> deny... <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. I, I don't think there's a single moment for Jorgamo where he's annoyed by that. No, no, I, no. I, he seems point. to just be laughing and enjoying it. spin. So. Just don't, don't knife me once, you know? Maybe, maybe <laughs> I'll survive long enough to get my gun back out, but... You know, that was an ambitious play. Don't you dare! Don't you dare! He's gonna do it! Right off the rim! Oh, so much Almost damage killed done. Almost. I love this man! And there's the follow-up with the stinger! Oh, the that's nasty. The site for the info that is nasty. They're so fast through. here. He's pushing in. He's gonna get tagged up by the drone of chance. For him to be taken out almost instantaneously. Now, Bustio desperately... What's happening, Pearl? Knife kill? Rotation now coming back in. Oh. I must they have just completely have forgotten it then. Almost try and man the cross to try and deny them back into the site. They will have a decent idea of where he is though. I love this man. Yeah, attack side Odin, it hits different. That's a BCJ call if ever I've seen one. Calm, ready and waiting. Here comes the big boy! Another kill! And that's shut them down. Heretics only have a vote. Looking left. like uh, and oh, through the smoke. Oh, nice try. Nasty shot back through. He actually tries to use the dart to bait it, but it doesn't matter. 12 to 7. Looking EG. rough. So much spice to this roster's ideas, at least. 12 and 7. Five in a row needed for Heretics just to make OT. Oh, that is nasty, because it's such a hard thing to do, dashing into that Odin still when Boo, even if he's blind, he can just keep spraying it. The man knows the, the pattern. But the updraft dash in. That just ruins you. There's no well, way to track that player. Well, they slide down the roof at such a while, fast velocity. While they're swinging as well, they also then, High a velocity. moment later, put a dart so that then the player looks oh, yeah. away and they yeah, get yeah, the kill. Yeah. So their utility is doing so much for them. And they've used it from the shadows at the same time. So like, there's just so much going oh, against you. Okay. That's a great early fight for Heretics. They have so many weak oh. weapons here. <gasps> okay. Okay, they're fully aware. They've naded him. They've flashed him. They've hit him so much, and Kamal will only get the one. Mixwell, though, quite low. Nice. And now that he's Very gone nice. down, this is scarily guns. doable. Yeah, look at the guns. The remaining two players only have stingers. And there's plenty of time for Bustio to play with. Taking the orb will get him close to having that lockdown online. If he heads back to the B site, well, he grants them weaponry. But at the same time, he gets himself a sublime after plant. Bear in mind, the plant will give him his ult and be able to burn some extra time off the clock. I know you they guys right comment a lot when I focus, you know, with my steps. mouth and stuff. He does it too. To go through mid. Who's still? And they've been spotted. Now, the element of surprise Just is a massive factor with them sneaking up behind, but one player. At least on top yeah. mid, Bustio's going to take the risk. A quick rotate, obviously cautious of the continued mid push, and then he'll grab a plant on B. That plant is going to give him his yep. lockdown. And with the turret watching for market and spawn pushes, look at the amount of time he's going to have. They they literally could not be further away. The position they are in is mm -hmm. as far from B as I think it's physically possible to be. And, and now, what that means, Tom, Bustio could be anywhere. He's trying to time this as well with the lockdown. They're going to have to full sprint into this site the second he places it. If he gets the timing right, they might not even be that close by the time they move in. There's the turret. Lockdown not yet used. They Holding it at least for the moment, but he is waiting for them to just get that little bit further into the site. With the time ticking, just going to try and battle and waste it as much as humanly possible. The first not quite going to go his way. And they need to get on that defusal, but they will have plenty of time in the end. Just trying to isolate them, trying to fight them, but nice it didn't try. quite work out this time. Heretics, very nice try. Play to start the Would round, have been hype if he got the killer. You know, if uh, he well, and didn't uh, get killed by Kendra. How far away they were, that lockdown would have been placed. With yeah, perfect I, I guess timing, the, the thought process as well is they're going to run him out anyway. Why not use Ultim? I think it's lockdown, because um, only gives away his position of exactly it, where it he might is, feel too um, unpredictable of um, they're gonna run it, they're it's going to have that little bit timing. of secrecy, especially with the nano swarm down. Yeah. He almost played it so that he could buy time from out of the way. Exactly. Anywhere. The thing is as well, right, for, for him in that spot, 
There might be a guy in B main. He spotted someone mid with the alarm bot. He didn't know how close they were to the doors. They could have easily just crept up, been right behind him. He puts that ult down. They know where he is, and then they capture him in the back of the site. So uh, not using it there. What do you guys think he will uh, do with the ult now? Because they could use it on A. The round. But they're pretty but low on money. He watches the VOD back. Yeah. Oh, locked down in play. But you want to use it before Boog gets um, a sub ult. Dude, two kills with Boog. Hunter's Fury. What an incredible Hunter's Fury to start the round. A that too, Livio. Yeah, this one that is, that is a good point. But they are still in a bad spot. I think he hit both of them with that first Hunter's Fury blast. That was it such a low buy. But Hunter's well. Fury just and I don't massive think value. Had seen him. If, if he has just blind ulted Mixwell and Kalat shot him, that is... The most unlucky timing. They've got stingers on the other side. The ult was one of the only things that they had going in their favor. Oh, and there it is. Late. Three Looking like GG. And it's the first time he's fired a shot. They still haven't dealt with him. And by the time they do, Not there's yet. so many Not players rooted in on the site. A good attempt. Wrap down to just one. Jogamo has to do it alone. A stinger. Good for the first. It and is time to go home. EG have got it. Good. Good the job, EG. They have had so many spicy so little close. set plays, so many incredible ideas. They played really smart this series. With an added little bit of experience. It was a bit a rough in the beginning be on Pearl, they have two but Eric later on, out of the tournament. very smart plays. <laughs> Stop it! That is insane! The guy came in with a stinger, he killed two people with his ult, only trying to get one, didn't know where they both were, didn't know where one of them was, and then he kills another with a stinger flank. That is disgusting. Come, he might be bottom of the scoreboard, but he's on top in my heart. Well, either way, it is goodbye to Heretics. Definitely showed some promise. We saw a decent performance out of Kellogg's. I think Zeke switching up his roles on this map in particular didn't look bad. And actually, there you know Yeah, what? and imagine Six this was also chaos. off the Sting and Earth. Imagine it, what, was, so I, I what could have happened before be the Sting and Earth. But maybe there's more to see of this roster when it goes to the EMEA season. I'll tell you what, that's a big game for Jogamo <laughs> as well. He did a fantastic job, and there it is. The fist bumps to close out the game. Potter, someone that used to be up here with us, Tom. Yeah. Now well, look also at her. used to be on the stage with them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> she's been in the game a while, Mitch. She sure has. She's played, she's coached, she's analyzed, she's cast, she's done it all. And now she's sent EMEA packing. Honestly, with one of her good friends being Sapphire, I wouldn't be surprised if she's observed as well. I, I, I think probably, she's done a lot. Probably. She, she's basically completed esports at this point. She's probably built that stage. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's just give it to her. Unreal. Honestly, EG well, they made it very expensive. Um, yeah. well. and you could see it from the second BCJ I, I'd say it's still usable stage, for sure. Just a bit more expensive. Cool so you can't just buy it for um, any um, save round as well. They belong here. Yeah. And they ain't going anywhere. No. Uh, especially with coming in with some real spice on map number one. Throwing in a Yoru with some red of the camera. Uh, their first time on a stage. I don't think the player cameras the are red map, cameras. Which is much more standardized and a lot of teams kind of but the camera the dude is right there. Creative. He probably has one. exciting to watch. And honestly, they're a team I want to see go far in this event because this was thoroughly is. enjoyable. And of course, the webcam looked a bit too small to be, the um, as well. he to be the one. He took the off for the picture, but right back on afterwards. Don't even let the enemy see your eyes. I love it. At EG, All right, it's time they have certainly for MIBR. Here today. What an incredible performance from start to finish. What do we do in between games? Home on the back of uh, there's like analysis said, here, and then Tom. just a tiny break. He stole my heart here yeah, today. I had he really did. Attack side Odin. But He's we basically just wait. <laughs> Perfect time to get some snacks. Some of the most fun I've had. And another 2-0, Tom. That's the thing. A lot of the time when you watch sort of like younger, newer teams, a lot of what you expect is, oh my god, they've got this kid who's nuts and does something like really aggressive and like he pushes the, oh, he's got really sick aim. It's actually the support players I really enjoy within this matchup. Like yep. the little pop flashes they had, the contact plays they came out with, the sort of every little piece of the puzzle coming in all at the same time. And it, it was just 
beautiful to watch. It wasn't one player winning the game. Got snacks at the half time. Well, then you have time to make food. It was the players that were already there showing how they could be. So you can do pretty much whatever. I can't play any games during the watch party stuff. So I'm just gonna chill here, chat with you guys. Hound, say later, my man. Take care. Take care. I mean, that no, was, was unreal. They, we saw Kellogg's come in, and maybe there's a world where we sit here and go, uh, who's, oh, you know, who else is playing this tournament? Oh, let me show you. I'll send you the bracket. Who was your favorite player? Is, or the bracket. Is, is the yeah, I see what you guys isn't. have done. I see what you guys <laughs> there. have done. Don't think, let me make don't the think command I'm not coming well. right down to that production <laughs> office after this. We've got four people for you as a match MVP. Calm has been robbed, but he was bottom of the scoreboard. BCJ, Ethan, Jogamo, and Bustio. Scan the code uh, down there and get your vote in for who you think is the match MVP. Apparently, my opinion doesn't matter. No, no, no. No, again, he, he was bottom. I well, get it. We don't I, have I, it, I like the Odin. I mean, make I, it then. I lean in the direction of Ethan. I, I think he had a very good game. <laughs> but, uh, you know what? Yeah, that Yoru was revolutionary. As, as we've already mentioned, Gorgeous. our opinion does not matter. That is match one done. But there are still a couple of Brazilian teams coming up, so you might want to stick around. We'll be back after the break. Let's test it. You don't have a hat? Uh, I do, but it's too small. I have it here. Also a headset, you know, for headphones. Who's playing next? Talon versus MIBR. Let's test this here. That coach is the CEO, right? No, no, no. They have um, a... She's uh, just coach. Uh, let me fix the title too. Talon. Versus MIBR. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna go take off this because it's really warm. And uh, if they play safer again, I'll put it back on. It feels like I just, it feels like I, you know when you cut your hair really short, from long to really, really short, it's like that on the whole body. Yeah, Patty with the injury. Does anyone know how long he's going to be resting? Let's switch to C and we can go to the scene. I feel like um, he had a wrist injury. Was it wrist injury? I think so, right? That's probably gonna take some time. Hopefully, he doesn't um, injure himself more, so it's uh, you know delayed. Yeah, Brazilian team. Yeah, Emma Br. And then huge match at the end with uh, Gen G versus Loud. Oh well, yeah, prediction. Or what do you guys think? MIBR versus Talon? I think Talon are gonna lose. But, uh, you know, they're the underdogs. So I'm gonna, you know, support them as well. I su yeah, I support everyone. Except teams with bad manners. I don't like bad manners team. Uh, bad mannered teams. Hmm. I'd say 2-1 two, two, to MIBR. Will it still be there for the last game of the day? Yes, I will. I will. Allowed tier 1 team? Yes, sir. They won champions last um, last year. So uh, they are, by definition, the tier 1-est of all the tier 1 teams. <laughs> if that word would exist. Yeah, loud. I feel like two zero Genji. I I feel that too. But I feel like loud. Half of the game for Genji, it's gonna be just 
dealing with the crowd. And I love you guys too, uh, Ninja. Uh, I love you guys too. I wish I could speak um, Brazilian Portuguese. So um, I could um, make more... Um, what's called? More content for you guys. Because I know a lot of uh, Brazilian viewers, they don't speak English. And um, yeah. I might... I might um, take help from AI translators to um, to make um, audio tracks, I guess. You know, you can make uh, separate audio tracks and then have it in Brazilian Portuguese. And if not that, I could use uh, subtitles. Who do you think will win the whole event? That one is very difficult because we have so many teams yet to see. And... Um, I think that Loud have a high chance, or probably the highest chance out of the Brazilian teams. Uh, Loud or Leviathan? Uh, I mean, Leviathan can do well too. But um, yeah, Loud, I feel like they are going to be in the finals. With who else? That I don't know. And uh, yeah, Leviathan, they're not Brazilian, right? They're from uh, Chile. But uh, I was thinking of them because... Um, they have a very similar playstyle, if I'm not wrong. And they're pretty strong too. Thank you, Summer Man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're just in time for a second match. That's nice to hear, Bruno. That is very nice to hear. I'm still, I'm still gonna try and, uh, you know, improve uh, videos um, however I can, though. Alright, so same rules as before. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't switch. Man, you have the sound from the background here. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't switch. But yeah, same rules as before. If they pick Cypher, I put on the suit again. And if they don't pick, um, pick Cypher, we'll put it to the side. And I think we could do that for all matches. Maybe. We'll see how we feel, but um, for today at least, I'll, I'll do that. The master plan was concocted and evil geniuses walk away with a 2-0 sweep over the heretics. Welcome back to the desk, everyone. I'm your host, Golden Boy, alongside with Achilles as well as Mimi. As we look to break down, uh, you know, a matchup that it was very topsy-turvy. It was super fun to watch on that Pearl. Then Ascent came and things slowed down a little bit. But Mimi, Project, I think yes. showed uh, the range It was just a, a small fun thing. To bust something out that, you, you know, to celebrate well, Cypher being picked in Pearl play. But then also play the fundamentals extremely well. Yeah, I think on both maps, EG came in with some fantastic preposition, or excuse me, pr pr preparation, <laughs> not preposition. We'll, we'll learn a little bit and about grammar while we're watching this. <laughs> well, yeah, why can't we get a little bit of everything going there? But in map number two, it was no longer the gimmick, like you're saying. It was just some good uh, Mike, fundamental I think Valorant. so. Again, the uh, this um, tournament, they play on the um, on top patch, of that, I mean, we saw in the you know, without the Kill Nerf. They were just like popping off. They were loving it But in the future, the I think so, because yeah, um, really it will be easier to break the turret I mean, and so on with uh, just abilities. For me, this kind of felt like we got one solid. Half of and um, and then it will offer more away. room for Cypher to be picked. It was tied up six to six. That was great. I was like, oh man, great series. And then it just started slipping so quickly. Ascent looked like it was going to be starting off a hell of a lot better for them. They got that four round streak at the beginning. But then again, it just started spiraling out of control. You know, G just as soon as they got that little momentum shift, they grabbed the this whole round here was rounds nuts. to then be able to take the lead in the half. It was just so clean. Yeah, and, and again, even though there wasn't the same amount of like cool gimmick comp with the Yoru, the preparation here was great. They yes. had like lineups to break the Killjoy turret. They had really cool sets. You think uh, Razor Nerf, yes. Nerf is going to help deal with the boom bots? Triggering EG, trips? Last season, we kind of talked about them as um, really being like a genius, go, being kind of true to their name. And I think that was the same here. Huge credit to Potter and Busio. They put in some great prep. On some places. Yeah, and I think that's yes. the thing to highlight here, right? It's that there's a system in place at Evil Geniuses. Uh, for example, B main on split. Very well for it's them. not going to change much so because. And there's still plenty sure. more Reese, to play. Um, yeah, but she's going to use it close to the tripwire anyway. Squad for just but if really you play uh, Fracture, roster, uh, you know, on that stage, I mean, I then think for one sure. of the most impressive things is
is just having because the trust it might be used very early on in a main for example and then it doesn't reach like, all the way to the choke point or maybe all the way to the side the the nope. 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 trusts that the team is going to be able to course correct but i think you could be damn sure that if that did go to a zero so five, so. you would have seen it come through on we would have calmed everybody down and say okay the this be main as well on fracture perhaps there too figure out the problem to really be able to work around the mistakes they were having early and course correct and that's exactly what they did so you love to see that and i think part of that as well a big part of that was ethan oh yeah another because, one actually uh, I he spoke. came out For of the sure. gates and this is a guy who came into valorant with a lot of hype and then kind of teetered off but mimi this if this is the level that we're going to be seeing ethan play i'm okay with it i'm all in yeah i mean this was really really good out of eg uh and not about the next two games well i think stage, yeah mibr wins 2-1 versus uh, talent this guy ethan and uh, both agents just so probably yeah, loud mean, winning 2-0 versus genji as well ACS, but as you go deeper here on the ascent that but i, I want to see uh, ever so important in genji and talent put up a fight because um coming through you see, they are down dogs and um if we can get a just you know, utterly fantastic one, one. stuff for me. It's going to be spicy. That was doing pretty good. BCJ. My art <laughs> skills, not quite there. But this guy was popping off. He was having some fun. Oh, up there that on looks the like stage. Picasso. You continue to claim that that is cool. BCJ. But it is BCJ. Maybe if he was it's wearing like a beret. It's not the Unibomber, as you might think. <laughs> if BCJ was wearing a beret. That looks like a retired rapper. There's a rhyme there that we have to figure out. Yeah. That could be a haiku for another day. Uh, but for now, though, it's unfortunate. But as it has been tradition here for every time that we've had to send a team home, let's go ahead and say goodbye to Team Heretics because I think uh, salutations and salute to them. You know, look, uh, it, this this is a format, as we have mentioned numerous times, it's grueling, it's unrelenting, and most importantly, it's unpredictable, especially when you have a Yoru pick on Pearl that you yeah. probably weren't preparing for. I give them credit for hanging in as long as they did, and also Kellogg's. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, we've talked a lot about EG. They deserve that credit, but Team Heretics didn't necessarily play a bad game here. I think they came in, had some solid ideas on Pearl. They did struggle to adapt a little bit, but you can see the pieces are here. There's some great individuals. Kellogg's was popping off it feels like boo with a little bit more time in this igl role might actually be able to kind of turn this team into something that can call be play a, smart a, a good competitor in the that changes a bit yeah, of sure. um, I mean, it's the same how i look at him because um, show some really good stuff but it, you if know, anyone just would make that call more, just need a little bit more time i wouldn't expect really him because he's also the youngest so we'll and like most flashy player, player and so once bct kicks off all right well look guys before the break we as you always know ask you guys vote for the player of the match and much of the chagrin of our dear friend mitch calm was not on the list but we do love calm here Makes sense though. Ethan gets the love. I think everyone had a moment in this match, Seth. Yeah. But Ethan, uh, you, you gotta give the boy his yeah, flowers. Yeah, I this agree. Guy off. I feel I mean, like Ethan we definitely like, deserves oh, yeah, MVP there. Ethan, Jogamo, these guys are great. And then all of a sudden we noticed that like even Bustio was dropping 20 and you know like a 20 and 12 record in the last few rounds there on that ascent. And it was just like, damn, everybody is just performing to the nines right now. But Ethan. Of course, I think even if we did have Calm on that list, it still wouldn't have changed who was going to be winning it. Ethan, all the way. I know we, we have our uh, interview coming up in a sec, but Mimi, I just want to ask you real fast: sure. Are you are you an EG believer right now, or do you feel like there's still some more things? You that we asked need to that question as if I wasn't already a believer. I, I believed in this project and this roster from the beginning of the tournament. I think they had a lot of potential, and I think they showed that here. They're only going to get better through the course of this tournament. Yeah, it's scary how good this team can become. But of course, for more on that win, let's send it over to the bracketologist himself, Bren, who's actually standing by with the one and only BCJ for our Verizon post-match interview. Let's see what this says. Thank you very much, Golden Boy. Yes, I'm here with BCJ, the big guy himself. Honestly, the big guy buff in action on the stage as well. Congratulations on your win, BCJ, first of all. Uh, up against Heretics as well. Very, man, very well. It looks victory. so cool. Off the back of that, yeah. Yeah, thanks, man. Pleasure to be here. You know I fucking love you, so uh, <laughs> glad to be here. And uh, yeah, we're definitely feeling really confident. Yeah, that. yeah. I mean, you it's guys are looking cool to even look him in the eyes. I do have to ask as well because you've got a new roster that's been, you know, kind of <laughs> built coming into this 2023 season. New roster, new team. And uh, when you get thrown hurdles, obstacles in the form of a jet player dropping 20 kills in the first half of map number one, I think a lot of teams, a lot of new teams as well, not to say that you don't have veteran presence on your team itself, but I think a lot of new rosters would really struggle to go up against that. I want to know what the vibes were like in your team at that map one at that turning point as well what was going on how did you guys keep the mental in check to really just you know battle back and, and be unfazed by it i mean it was honestly quite simple you know he had 20 kills at half and he had two kills after that after that <laughs> second half so you know that's exactly what ethan said after the game he goes guys listen their jet is the only player getting kills he had two kills in the second half 
And uh, that really just lightened up the mood. And that's really what our team's about is yeah. getting that culture that we kind of created ourselves and what the old EG members have already had been doing forever, you know, fun, vibes, play the game for fun, and usually the wins follow along with it. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you certainly guys, I mean, you guys definitely won <laughs> off the back of that one. You shut them down uh, pretty well off the, uh, the back of that second half. Uh, I want to talk about your new roster as well, though, and your new roles that you guys have been playing as well, because for you in particular, you've been playing the, the Smokes, which, you know, it's not necessarily you a new role. You were still If we see his eyes, we're dead the yeah, same. Now it is full-time on the, on the controller role. So how do yeah. you you know, liking to switch up onto this new role. When they like, play so, uh, you know, something new it's to the same with the monitor. Master. They have to use a special um, yeah, monitor. Um, going into the free agency that's period, I was not reflective because role, if he you know, sees the reflection in the monitor, obviously, or controller. you know, he, he gets lightheaded. He's a weak, and, you know, all sweaty, and he's about to throw up, feeling bad, you know. But and, uh, when it's you know, not reflective, and also that's just the lightest like symptoms. If anyone else sees them, they are just when Potter Gone. Call and said, hey, Pulverized, you know, what, what actually. I, so he has I to play with the uh, matte screen. For in free agency, and on the inside here, there's no glass because then he would see himself uh, technically with the, the reflection. The omen, so. It's yeah, just that's, paper. That's he sees through the paper. No, it's pretty nice to see, honestly. Yeah, the, the entire roster really coming together. But your, your team, you know, it's quite impressive. You guys have a really, really big roster. I mean, you're, you're punching in terms of in terms of the amount of players. Was he watching the floor, though? Active, oh, not the active uh, roster, this guy hasn't deserved the um, his um, well, I know gaze that you guys, yet. Uh, in the past, as I think Potter has spoken about, the, you, you know, the potential of internal scrims between your team. Uh, have you been doing that with the with the internal EG structure? Have you guys been scrimming against your, your kind of like sister team, partner team, if you will? Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, we utilize it however we want. If you don't want to release something to other, you know, challenger teams at the time, or, you know, especially your franchise, when those yeah. scrims start, you know, being the only scrim you can take, um, we're blessed to have two really good leagues in NA right now, so you can scrim a lot of different, you know, teams and give them different looks. But having that reserve roster is something that EG is kind of built in league. You know, they trust that academy system that builds talent and can kind of, you know, find the, the talent and build them alongside their tier one team as well. Um, so that's really something that they liked and instantly went for and jumped out when Valorant decided to go franchising. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it should give you guys, a, I think, a big edge, you know, moving forward throughout the 2023 season, like you said. Get to hide all the strategies. Real quick, just before I let you go. Hiding well, strategies, you know, hiding goals, eyes. I believe, listen, we've got like, the bracket over there from the bracketology segment. Everything. Against the winner hiding the, everything. Yeah, that might be our talent. As your next matchup, you know, who do you want to face more? Is it the MIBR? Even hide the, 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 the cup of water that he had on the table. It's you in his play? hand. I definitely want the uh, Brazilian crowd against me. Yeah, um, I knew it. I've done it in Istanbul, and it was so much fun playing against, uh, <laughs> you know, Fnatic yeah. and uh, being able to 2 of them, by the way, 2-0. Uh, so I'd love to do, um, or I'd love to play MIBR. I think that will be a really fun experience for the fans. Um, obviously, I want to see Brazilian teams here do really well. Yeah. Uh, Brazil has treated us really well so far. So I want to see them go far, for sure. Okay, awesome stuff. Thank you very much, BCGA. Congrats again on the win. Appreciate your time, and best of luck moving forward into the tournament. Thank you so much, Ben. All right, that's all. Thank you very much. And back to the desk as well to break down the rest of the series, set up the next games. I'm not too sure. All right, next couple of teams uh, moving in soon. Where are the five guys? Uh, he hit them. He hit them. I don't know where, but um, I don't know. Hiding strats, hiding eyes, hiding teammates. You never know who's out there to get you. I think he's just standing there, <laughs> just moving around on this because it was uh, it, it it was a like odd interview <laughs> where the interviewee is not looking at you. All right, we have some time to kill here. Well, hmm. Let's take a look at some some of the bracket here for tomorrow. Actually, I don't have to hide this. 
No, I do actually, I do. I realized I don't have a secondary tab. There we go. Okay, so MIBR winning. They face um, EG on uh, Friday, I think this. No, Saturday. Okay, okay. I believe. Um, hmm. I believe that's going to be a tough one if it's MIBR for EG. And then the winner between Genji and Loud, they were supposed to play. Um, on uh, Monday, by the, by the way, loud. Um, they face Carmine Corp. And that's on Friday. That's two days of time. So Carmine Corp, they've had a lot of time to prepare here. Actually, no, they haven't. Because they haven't seen loud play. But I think KC is probably going to be an easy, easy team to beat for um, loud or Genji. Now on the other hand here, yeah, Rex versus Cloud9. That one, I think it leans toward the Rx. Team DBZ, some of them. How you doing, how you doing? Oh, we have a good match right off the bat here with NRG and Giant too on Friday. Is it only two matches? One, two, one, two. Yeah, one, two. Okay. Nice. Zombie, what's up, sup? Uh, let me find some. Actually, I don't think we have extra stats, no. I was gonna look on run it down uh, and see if oh wait you guys can wait why doesn't it show if you guys here I've been on the wrong screen the whole time huh my guys I'm very sorry I thought my plugin was uh, or stream deck was working I was doing some I was moving around here everything it happens. What do you think about GE versus Vitality? All right, we can take a look at them. GE versus Vitality. I think if GE has a cool roster, mixed, mixed roster, and um, for a second I thought it was a uh, CNED, but it's um, the other. Well, not really CNED, but um, it's like you want CNED, but you can't. You get Sender. This team might be difficult to um, to break the um, language barriers, I guess, for the for Buzzy. Ah, uh, no, actually, no, no, no. Buzzy has been um, so Buzzy. He is come. He comes from uh, Overwatch. He has played uh, Overwatch before, professionally, and he was crazy good, like crazy good. And also Guangzhou Charge. I think they had an English-speaking roster back then. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, they did actually. English speaking. So I'm pretty sure he's. Uh, no, 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 never mind. It was here. Ah, that was Korean. Okay, never mind. I was looking at uh, a different team. All right, so he has to learn English then, which can be difficult, but I think it's uh, going to be fine. And uh, if they uh, also have the head coach know English and uh, speak well, you know able to communicate um, everything um, without translator then it's not going to be an, a big issue when they um, take timeouts and so on I don't know Razor and how much um, English he speaks but I assume it's pretty good probably got paid um, you know to um, to take lessons and uh, I feel like that's going to be fine I think Vitality is they have to rely on Twisten a lot 
Actually, no, Bone Cold is great. Destrian doing good. But I think Twisten is their, um, like, carry, so to say. I don't think many know how good Bazzi is. Or how good at aiming he is, at least. Skills-wise, not sure. But that's a great pickup, by the way. Probably didn't cost much as well. Contract-wise. Also, I want to see if Lightning Fast ever plays slow. That would not be a good name to have then. Imagine he's just sneaking, sneaking, sneaking. Getting shot from behind. Welcome back to Lock in Life from Sao Paulo. I am your host, Yung Su, and joining me uh, to break the next though. match is Mimi and Seth, of course. Yeah, I'm gonna root for them too, and Marmik. I'm gonna root for them as well. Gonna get a Brazilian team on that stage, Achilles. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Yeah, I think this is the moment. G, where we I think G off of this gymnasium. probably I mean, wins. Also I'm also rooting for them because they are the most underrated team in that match. Raring to see these teams play. Yeah, the Portuguese broadcast was already showing an IBR on the screen, and the crowd was already so loud before they even start playing yeah there's a I, I saw a video i think i can't remember who it was it might have been jb that posted it but heat was kind of like walking through the player area and all the fans were chanting they're loving it they're waiting for this moment of course speaking of these players some of them have been to international uh, events before some of them haven't so this is uh, also a bit of a moment for them as well yeah this absolutely is a moment for this mibr roster it's coming together of uh, the old core of vivo keed with a kind of experienced leadership in bazooka he's the coach who led loud to the their victory at Champions last year. FRZ is a player that used to play under Bazooka, and they've now been kind of reunited as the leadership core of this team, combined with that fantastic Brazilian JZZ, he's looking yeah, like mean, he's about to beat you up. A very scary a challenge photo. here for Talon as they get ready to go up, not only against this fairly stacked Brazilian squad, but also against the crowd, uh, because there is not going to be any fan I'm really for them, but you can see everybody showing up. They love just, this team. You know, get, those, get those high fives out. It's just been wild, and I can't even imagine how these players are feeling as well. Yeah, it is going to be a big moment for these players indeed. And I think what is quite interesting about this match is that I want to see when Loud come in. already completed the arc. He built his Brazilian <laughs> yeah. super team with Loud. He won an international tournament, and now as the coach of MIBR, in a way, he is starting from fresh. It's some players he has worked with in the past. It's some players he hasn't. And it's, again, kind of that option of can you can you mold another Brazilian super team to actually be a title contender besides Loud? Yeah, I mean, we saw last you know, Ono managed to make two uh, yeah. Latam teams good. Is BZK going to be that person that could do it again? That is a big question. But one of the players, uh, Seth, who might just be the answer to that question is Heat. It is very hot right now inside the venue and in Sao Paulo, <laughs> but I feel like it's, gonna, it's about to get hotter. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy in, in pretty much all of his, his international matches... I haven't seen this guy play that much, but it's... A powerful looks force. good. And now having him here alongside the rest of the squad in MRBR being guided by... Uh, BZK, by Bazooka, whichever you want to say. That is very terrifying to have to go up against. I mean, this one, of course, we got to play this clip. It's just the no scope, just <laughs> martial ace that he was able to pull off. Time, you know, it, Dude, it's just no scoping he's ace. He's got this martial where he's got a pistol, a rifle. It doesn't matter. Any weaponry for What is that? Is just so deadly when it's in his hands. Yeah, people will remember this guy from Masters Berlin and Champions where he competed with Vivo Key. But in the last year, he hasn't been able to yeah. make it back to an international event. Loud was the de facto dominant Brazilian team. No one else was really able to compete with them. Now, this player is again at an international event on a roster with Loud's old coach who have a much better chance at being able to compete. Yeah, and I think it was FRZ that said that their philosophy is basically combining that aggressiveness of the Vivo key players and what FRZ and BZK can do. And Mimi, if they can pull that off, that sounds like the perfect combination. It really is, because at the start of Valorant, Brazil was crazy. It was lock in Phoenix, go wild, back when Vivo Keed was making those international events. Yeah, I remember now, they were Brazilian very aggressive. They've a lot more structured, so I'm hoping they can meld those two together. Well, they're going to be taking on talent today. I'm of course, rooting for them. might be there from the Pacific. Again, some really familiar faces returning yeah some familiar ones but also some ones i feel like might talon and mibr too. might be uh, equal uh, boys as well as garnets who but um, joining this talent roster i want to see a talon do era. good too of course uh, jit boys coming over from fw then you've got garnet from 47 give me so uh, not nearly as experienced especially obviously when it comes down to international play as the rest of this team there is of course a shout out for body panel who hopefully we will get to see later on during bct pacific pending his wrist uh, yeah. you know status obviously just went underwent a surgery on it which is why he's not here with the team today but these guys 
They have done the impossible in the past under different banners. The question is, can they do it again here today? I wonder, no, I don't wonder, yeah, but that, I know Padipan um, used to play uh, on very high sense, and event, but that's usually where these the wrist injuries come in from. I, I think it might be from um, excuse me, not in sushi, too much tension uh, on the wrist, but that guy has to play on lower sense, otherwise this is how you end up with wrist injuries. A lot of players in Overwatch end up had crazy many wrist injuries, especially Korean players, because they would have just super high sense, since in PC Banks. Even at the time at least it was very so small mouse pads dated. and everyone just really had to play very high sense even when he's in order to turn all the time yeah i mean to talk about somebody who's going to be the but, next um, series loud, he's kind of like king Doesn't then matter, yeah after a lot of people got to wrist injuries i think yeah, more and more players kind of learned how to uh, prevent them i like nano swarms i like lockdowns i'm gonna keep playing this and he has looked absolutely stellar on it in the past see him that taking down north Neptune, dealing with uh you know with crew as well so sushi boy is definitely somebody to keep our eyes in since Killjoy and Cypher are so centric to yeah. the current meta. And beyond just his, his play in the server, I'm also looking to him to be one of these more experienced members that helps get uh, Garnets and Jit Boys used to the international stage because it's something brand new for them. Yeah, and also, uh, we I, got, I gotta say, Cruz is someone who's been uh, to almost every international event. He is a veteran by now on this sure. stage. And speaking of Cruz, he is also uh, with Foxy right now. How much does uh, the team have to pay for slot in this team? I don't know. I don't know, actually. It's a pretty penny. Let me see, actually, if I can find. Hi, my name is Cruz. Uh, I played for Talon Esports, and my role on the team is controller. Teddy Pan will not be attending this tournament because he is recovering from his wrist surgery. It will definitely impact our performance in lock-in, but I don't think honest, it's right public. Now, we are just focusing on getting the most experience for the two new members of the team. ครับสวัสดีครับผมเอ่อฟอกแซดครับจากทีมทารอนจะเป็นประสบการณ์เล็กๆน้อยเพราะว่าทีมจากบ้านเราก็มีน้อยกว่าถ้าเทียบกับจากทางโซนยุโรปครับทางยุโรปเขามีเอ่อ uh, it, um, it, uh, can cause it because um, when you have high sense you put all that, really all, the, really all the like uh, force not force really but all the weight on the wrist and you move uh, pretty much only with the wrist and it's, it's very easy to um, just put too much strain on it ขอขอบคุณแฟนๆทุกคนที่ส่งกําลังใจเชียร์ครับเราจะไม่ทําให้ผิดหวังครับผมจะไม่กลับบ้านไวครับ Things have been a little bit rough here for the Pacific teams and Yeah, so and it's like with uh, for example a like uh, Bruno says with you have to move the arm. Um, yeah, I mean, like we with uh, arm uh, like with low sense it's not the same type of um, injury but Let's say that you have a bad posture and you like sit like this and you, your shoulders are really far forward and you put tension on the shoulders a lot. You can you can break it like the shoulders or and it becomes super super difficult to just have the same arm aim, so to say. But it's in a different way. It's not definitely not the same type of injury. But that comes like if if you have players who play like let's say 14 hours a day don't move they don't do um, much um, strength training or you know conditioning and so on there's always the risk also this is the first time we hear the crowd when there's no music like this they are definitely hyped up for MIBR This is gonna be nice. 
This is gonna be so nice. I wanna hear the crowd and see the faces of Talon because it is difficult to uh, to ignore them. One of them had two of those photos walking out. So, yeah, I mean, six patty pens would certainly get the job done, but Talon are hoping that the five, this core that they have here today, is going to be able to do it as well. Yeah, they might need to play, like, five patty pens because <laughs> MIBR is going to be a tough opponent. It's been a while since we've had a second competitive Brazilian team, but people should not underestimate this MIBR roster. FRZ and Bazooka bringing their ideas into this core of talented players has made them look fantastic. And with more practice under their belt, I'm really excited to see what they have going. I mean, you heard the cheers for BZK. This is a world champion coach. Not a few months mm -hmm. ago, he won a trophy here. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they got cooked up. But let's talk about the map. Vitos here. We've seen a lot of funky stuff so far. And Ascent Don't has ban Lotus. off the table. Okay. Yeah. MIBR gets rid of that one right off the bat. For Talon, I imagine they're going to want to try and head towards Icebox. They did That's it. generally what they like to do. They All right, don't pick Icebox. Lotus, though, as the first map. A lot of teams still unwilling to play that one. Or Haven. Split is still on the okay, table, but Haven. Haven is going to be the pick. No Once Icebox. Else, we were still not going to be seeing Split. It seems like everyone is straying <laughs> away from that, but Haven is here to stay. This one has constantly been left up. This is just bread and butter comfort for just about every single team that is here. No and it's also... You know, a very uh, KJ nice fracture, map yes. As well. yeah. So makes sense that they're going to keep this in the pool. But hey, all right, we have fracture floated as a designer. Okay, ban map, icebox. But, you know, so we get we've split. We've got to see it yet. So this will be a first look, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. At this event, at least. So really exciting to see that one. Leave split for Talon. What is interesting is and that Ibanez does have okay. some team available of them playing fracture. They run a knee on there. No it team wants really split. It looks really solid for them in the off season. So I'm interested to see what Talon has prepped. They, they've given them the ice box. They floated it. They they didn't mind but going there. But they didn't there. pick it in the first first round, yeah, which true, is a true. bit of a change from past iterations. At almost every event ever, Talon, or back then, Sersha, would be playing Icebox, and they do let it uh, land as that decider. They're going to be happy with this. Yeah, I mean, I think overall they will be. Maybe not going straight away for the Icebox is a product of not having those two former players. Maybe they feel like that, that their Icebox has been impacted by bringing in these two you know, more rookie pl players that don't have this international experience in Jit Boys and Garnet. So we'll have to just kind of wait and see how they do pilot that if we can go all the way to three. Well, we're heading to the Prime Gaming agent to select here for Haven. And as you guys have spoken about, uh, when it comes to some of these players, uh, we know roughly where they're gonna play. Sushi Boys, surely. How come the they don't like uh, playing Jim um, is looking to steal it away from the yeah, yeah, Bruno. Number, But yeah, Sushi going to be able to get that lock in. He is gonna be going not for the Jet here on Haven. He's gonna go for the race. Okay, this is interesting. We've seen most teams gravitating back to Jet on these, this map, but both of these no squads cipher. look like they're kind of returning to that era of like the fade raise, going for constant extremity control on your defense with that, yeah, uh, with that raise nade. And also, I mean, it's I've, just a comfort uh, I think yeah, uh, Icebox probably is gonna be fun as well. These are not very slow. This teams. is Garnet's very first international event. This is going to be a very tough debut for him and Jip Boys. Yeah, I mean, we, we have been seeing a decent amount of fade, but it's going to be the sky coming out here for the side of Talon, so going to have to see how they pilot that one, whether or not they're going to be able to play off those flashes and get the win. I'm feeding off this energy right now from the crowd. I can't imagine how your casters are going to be, be feeling in, uh, for them to cast MIBR versus Talon. It is Sideshow and Bren. Over to you guys. Oh, yeah. My favorite caster Thank duo. Thank you very much, Desk. Yeah. This is going to be a good one. Intergalactic think, shirt, the, by the uh, way. The MIBR crowd as well. Yeah. Really just uh, playing into it. I mean, they're, they they're are, still trickling in. They are trickling in. Boy, oh boy. I think we've got an exciting one on our hands yeah. because both of these teams are about equivalent, I think, on paper from what they've achieved in the past <laughs> and what their players have done when they've turned up to events. But they're both also taking elements of new things and unseen yeah. things and applying them together. Bezo I, I yeah, this is the clone of Bezos. This side of the bracket seems a bit younger. Open for the taking, and we just saw Heretics play EG. But uh, yeah, this uh, this one instead of going to Amazon, he's into teams, Valorant casting. Who knows which direction it'll go? At the end of the day, a tournament like this, quite a lot can happen. I'm expecting MIBR to win this. And it just bears mentioning again, as you see the crowd here, that Talon have a couple of new players that yeah. aren't super experienced. 
And so getting them comfortable on their first, their first match on stage, that is going to be a task. You are going to be looking at the veterans on talent, people like Fox, people like Sushi Boys, in order to, I mean, Cruz as well. What about you for him? Who do you expect to win? Guys down, calm also, Garnet, nice to see you, by the way. Boy down, and help them play against a crowd that is literally going to be cheering. I feel like Talon are going to struggle with the home crowd. I don't know if I've seen a single Talon jersey in here. Those, <laughs> those jerseys are dope. It takes a special type of person to not let that get to you. And honestly, sometimes in some cases feed off of it like BCJ does. The guy was just commenting on that about how yeah. he likes the crowd cheering against him sometimes. But we are going to be getting into the action. Talon versus MIPR. This first round matchup. Pacific versus the Americas, pissed around here on Haven. To start things off, MIBR, I think a pretty standard composition, honestly, all things considered. Very standard for the previous patch. I think most people are going to be playing Jet at this point, but... Yeah, I want to see Talon, like, is, I, mean, we just saw I want to see both um, teams uh, win, basically. Pretty much exact same comp Talon, season, because they are, he was playing, you know, not the, not the, the most popular. Yeah. But what a cautious beginning to this pistol round. But they might be ours as well because really it's a um, Brazilian tournament. And Talon are the team to do that sometimes. Well, Stunned to try and push off the angle. Fox needs to be careful of this one. A jump peak. Oh, careful, careful, Just careful. A quick little flash to push them back, but surely he doesn't want to fight this. Needs to get some backup. There's the util dump through, the horns and a flash. Uh, MIBR is um, Brazilian. It now. stands so for uh, Made in Brazil. Granted that at least, and the plant. Get themselves into this post plan, but Talon want to be trying to play this incredibly fast, just running straight into the smokes and taking these duels and fights on equal footing. The pistols are played, just trying to play one oh, after the oh, other, oh, and it's oh, Cruz oh. claiming four. And the crowd went silent. Nice try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just, as soon as Cruz mops up four in the midst of that, everybody here in the arena thought MIBR was winning that pistol. Yep. The way that was going, the way that they were afforded the side, honestly, it was looking like it, but this is going to be an interesting dynamic for this match. Cruz does such a great job here. He barrels through the smoke to begin, taking down Heat, the star player from MIBR, and then he's just tucked right behind his players until he swings around. Yeah. And that kill that he just found in short there, the one that you just watched, imperative, because otherwise he's stuck in a 2v1. Great timing. And I think it's important to know, too, that Cruz has changed his role. Last time you saw this guy on the big stage, he'll have been playing Breach, you know, that kind of role. And he, he didn't look that great. His fragging wasn't pretty powerful, but it wasn't a role that, where he was allowed that freedoms. And in the few off-season games that I've watched that Cruz and Talon have played, it's dangerous I think this smoke role seems to suit him a bit more. Uh, he did. Oh, he's opened things he up went for it. Quite nicely for their eco round. Just a martial purchase, but... Already making good it makes use me of look it. like I can see the future. That has pulled everyone away from C. Yeah. So the reaction from Talon. Yeah, Murray's the breach, the IGL of this team of MIBR, has got a lot on his shoulders. It's been a long time since we've seen him on the stage. Anyone more? But no? he does like to run this kind of push and pull setup with his attack sites. They can be pretty slow. Deep push into mid for information. There's no punishment. That is uh, almost almost a death, but. Oh, good team mistaken, cover there as well. Nice, two finds. For it. Wow. This is suddenly so dangerous, Brent. Yeah, this is a 3v2 now on a round that... And a weapon. Really, there was such a huge gulf in terms of the weapon advantage. Talon should not have let this drop. But Talon getting a bit reckless there. Where are these players? Where could they have lurked into? Stun, boom, boss. Oh, almost got the, the a good double swing almost got the kill. Players, and another bit of just raw fire. Just coming straight down the one angle. Dodging a flash. Murray's is set up for it. Go pick up a weapon, man. A round, a Actually, you might want the Marshall. Not much in terms of money invested in that one. Nasty. What a pop off from Murray's. Heat to open. Talon has they have to tighten it up because you can't be looking the at the same angle while running wider. What a, what a clutch. Yeah. You can't be doing These that. MIBR players are deadly. Deadly. And I think other you've teams, are, seen other that. teams of players that have been scrimming against them have been talking them up too. Yeah. So Mako saying that these guys are some of the best aimers that are in the tournament. I don't think anyone's got MIBR as the top team in the tournament, but in terms of actual talent on the roster, ability to hit shots, the Brazilian scene has always had that. 
a freebie that's going to be handed to them. And the freebie gets Murray's up to his breach ultimate too, but I, I don't think they're going to need it this round. This should be easy peasy cleanup. Yeah, there's not much in the way of any sort of obstacles. If anything, Murray should be taking a back seat and allowing somebody right. like Heat to build up they his make sure team. everything is clear. But Heat would die to they a play breath this of safe. fresh air right now, only on 5 HP. Nice by MIBR. Noise for but a oh, careful. Still Someone might be in the smoke. Surrounding them, but see what kind of plays they could operate off of. It's a nice little pop flash on top of it. And the back of the side is going to be claimed. He's still watching it. Ah. Another flash utilized. I mean, they got two kills. That is, that is decent for Talon. We talk about you know, the individual talent, the raw aim that so many people have been talking about with a team like MIBR. But one of the most exciting things about this team, I think, is that the fact that they have Bazooka as an addition. The former yeah. couch coach of loud who's been playing and just inserted into this team and honestly has just elevated i think the team structure yeah that's a really exciting sure. thing to look towards the brazilian region's always had the talent it's about putting it together into teams and this is a blend of mibr's former roster and keyed stars so you get all of that added firepower from heat for example coming into the roster and you also get the thought process of BZK. Look how fast this ooh, is. Ooh, That's ooh. absolutely That's right. Got it. But he's not wasting any time. Morris. So stuff pulled out. Morris ended up just bumping into the wall. He thought he could wall. get out. A little bit awkward. JSSA has to try and watch the smoky new cruise. He got there, turned into dust instead. An absolute pincer maneuver. Off the back of that one. There was no time wasted. Great round from Talon. But also, Bren, unfortunate from MIBR. The last three rounds, they've been holding very passive positions, waiting for that level of aggression. And it just never came. Talon weren't aggressive on the pistol. They weren't aggressive on, you know, the, the follow-up or anything yeah. like and that. And he got stuck on the and corner, this unfortunately. this is one round where Heat's gone for some early A lobby control and it was just matched instantly. And this is the power of Talon's comp, right? Whereas, whereas MIBR are playing a more slow, controlling style with the fade and the breach, the double flash combo, triple if you want to talk about the paranoia, is going to allow Talon to go crazy aggressive. And it's important that MIBR are set up to respond to that. That's why you saw Murray's RGL in really safe positions in prior rounds. And this is now a, a big blow to Made in Brazil. Their, their economy is now back in the trash and they don't have well, they a good opportunity the same thing again. to get value out of the breach hole. Unless they hit another couple wow. of crazy shots. It's definitely possible. Go back to a bit more even footing. The horns has dropped down. It does mark Cruz actually. Well, they know exactly yeah, where he is wild, though. And he's still just ego in this angle. Even against... That is greedy. The weapons that is quite dangerous of him, but definitely balls nice to uh, there stay there. And just making sure that he can take some space where available. And I think that really opens things up. It's yeah. not like Fox's weapon is particularly retrievable, but when you consider that Murray still has this ultimate, they can group and go for some kind of play. And I think this is way dangerous from Jim Boy here. A triple push down mid. Hmm. Grabs them a tiny bit of info, but not that much. They've left the hall of A open now, so they need to go and re-explore. And this is the timing where Murray's can take his team over towards C. There is only Sushi Boys remaining there. Yeah, this is uh, almost uh -oh. like telling a reading like this is going to be an aid, like yeah. already on the site, setting up to try and play fast retake. But Sushi Boys should be spotting them now. And there's that old the Rolling Thunder. Rips its way across. Oh, good it, catch still. there. That's what we Just want. Just being an absolute nuisance. The backstab from the middle of the site. The middle section of the map. And that's going to stop these round? retakers that from was, um, being comfortable. Uh, what's called the uh, MIBR, I think. To see if they can really min -max this no, no, no. Thing, but Talon. Talon. Oh. Ready once more. Garnet's pulling out the grenade, but it matters not. Sushi boys. Garnet. What was from the back? I don't know why you're holding exactly a nade or picking that. Needed. One bullet, though, will kill him. And he's worried about where Frozen is. There's only 10, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. A kill on Sushi boys. That's what it needs to be happening now in the 1v1 against nice. the Killjoy players. And a corner just nice, was nice. not cleared. What a round, what a play from Sushi Boys I'm going to grab some water. I'll be back soon. And I thought that Talon were going to be worried. Worried about Frozen behind them. Worried about the Lurk, the player that had picked up two kills earlier on in the round. Not but they, chance, they decided to full send yeah. that. They were more than ready. As soon as they heard the spike tap, the decision was already made from them. And that is just, wow. It's a bit of Lady Luck playing his part, I think. But Absolutely. But look at how Garner tried to get back into that site. Do you see him? Yeah. The nade to get the kill onto RGL. Blast back in, and then he pulled out his nade again. Pulled out his nade again. A bit of nerves, a bit of jitters. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Yeah, they still win the round. And you've got to set the context. That was still a half-by round from MIBR that got super dangerous. But they'll be kicking themselves they didn't win it. A bit of fast A-lobby pressure. 
being put out now by MIBR. They can take this A short control. Backing away, there's a boom bot that not going to be clearing too much. Fades away now, Aftershock as well, just in case there is somebody close into that one and done position. We'll see which direction they want to take this one in because MIBR have been playing relatively slow at the beginning of these rounds so far. I think they've got a great opportunity to use Frozen's ultimate. And we saw Frozen playing that lurky style over up towards B. And now the fact that he's regrouped with the rest of the team makes me think that he's going to try and go down short and play the lockdown. Although he seems to be on flank watch. What's the game plan here? Just send Heat in with his ultimate? It seems likely. There's going to be a stun. Nightfall as well. It's going to be accompanying it. Just clear out the side, but it does tag onto Cruz. Silly just holds his ground, claims the one kill, eventually dealt with, but another repeat from Foxes. That is a little bit uncalled for, in my opinion. The comp that they're running, pretty strong at retakes, but clearly no idea of really trying to play for that one. And Heat with the showstopper was not expecting that to still be in his hands. Sushi Boy's using his ultimate for the retake in the 2v4. Yeah, this is very, very brave. And a swarm to push them back. Another lockdown's going to be used in response of that one. Sushi Boy's really needs to get a move on here. It's going to be detained. Well, not quite. He's still available. Ready with the weapon in his hands. And five in a round means that's going to be a nice little ace. What a round from Heat. Great round. Both of these raise players are going to be absurdly aggressive. You watch them play, they're not the kind of players to be tight, always behind every flash, synced up with their team. No, they go for timings, they go for aggression, they go to try and push themselves into the enemy's face, blast packing all over the spot. So the fact that he pushed spawn there with his ultimate shouldn't surprise anybody. And I think you should expect that from both sides. One of my favorite aspects of watching this MIBR team, I think, especially on Haven, they're not afraid to react very quickly off of any sort of information. Heat in particular is the is, uh, impetus for a lot of that, you know, double satchel plays to try and combo up with Murray's right next to him, the IGL of this team. But I think you can also see that they've got respect for how Talon's comp is going to play and the aggression that they could throw them in the early round. Look at how slow this is and how tempered. A lot of the times you would see, you know, Brazilian teams Wait, just I an ace? throwing their lives away, throwing rounds away by not taking these things into account. Yeah. So I appreciate this. The unfortunate part being that Yo, GT, the four welcome to the stack. stream. Nice to have you here. Corner, I think so much. Is yes. Hope you have a good day yourself. The contact. I thought there would be some utility being used, but no, just backing Who away. Who got this? Yeah, definitely felt like that should have been a oh, trap. Oh, heat. Nice. Sushi Boy's response on the other side of the map, and he may be asked to do a lot more. One two's already quite Oof. good. What another angle as well. The crosshair placement, fantastic. From Sushi Boy's and the smoke just gives him a bit of coverage. Make sure he can weave in and out of it. Might need to be renewed sometime soon, though. It does fade away. And the players of MIBR have been grouping, but they matched pound for pound with at least the players who are holding on to the side. Paranoia rips across. Ooh, one the person left. Before. Sushi Boy's just doing the absolute most on his half by round. And Rifles Oof, be nice down. Talon good job by uh, Talon. Very good job. Just back and forth. Feels like we're seeing. Only Thrifty's being played, honestly. These half by rounds coming to fruition. Yeah, the rifle rounds just not working for either team here. I'm disappointed with the way that MIBR played that one. The, the shot from Sushi Boys to start things off, we didn't catch. No idea whether it was a bad fight or not, but Maris's angle didn't favor him. Yeah. And also the way that they got into the site really badly spaced out. Yeah, it turns out that one was just nasty, the first kill onto Heat, but... Where's the second player? The trade so late from RGL there. A little bit out of sync, and you can see from the, the reaction of these talent players, not letting this crowd get to them. In fact, quite Time the out. opposite. In oh, yeah. times, Time out. in the past at least, when we've had these big crowd events as well, I've heard it firsthand from a couple yeah, of players. Yeah, you don't want to lose the um, When they're on the opposite side, we're in a situation that the talent are in right now, where the crowd is cheering against you. When you make a play and you hear that crowd go dead, yeah. In some ways, it's even better than the crowd cheering you on itself. Yeah. And that can fuel you. And I think we saw that immediately off the get-go. The fact that Talon started strong, winning that pistol round, and got to experience that, it's felt very back and forth so far. The a coach is going to yell in their ears. A couple of errors, we barely hear what the coach overall, says. Definitely doesn't feel like Talon and then you go back like in game. 
get some kills, another ace, and they're back. Yeah, I would absolutely say that Talon are in the better position right now. Not just because they're 4-3 up, but take a look. They've got the better ults to work with, huge retake ults if they want to use them like that from Fox and Jibboy. And they also have that economic safety net to fall back on. If MRBR lose this rifle round, they're straight back to another Thrifty. And don't get me wrong, the Thrifties have been working, but you don't want to be there. No. I'd rather have the weapons. Such a forward to try and a lot of information there. Of that, the Omen TP. So just really disrespecting some of that A lobby control. When you're not running the fade as well, it does take a bit of bite out of it. You know, sometimes you have to be wary of that season aid combo, but it's the sky on the other side. So double push down C long in response to a lot of. Uh, which player has played the for the best so far? Uh, I think I that would think be a boo. The cruise is going to try to break so the far. And but this is just if they return. And honestly, that is something. It's nothing the out of the ordinary. It's like very team, team play but heavy cipher. Like barely a doing anything flash, you know. Look like they were trying to just the info. Wow. The play. alarm bot FRZ going out of range means the cruise has got past the alarm bot, past the turret. And they are not aware of this one. There was a timing. Chase's age is still facing a completely different direction. The prowler's being used. Oh. Not even staring. Patience, patience, patience being played. Oh, two kills and at two least. kills will be his reward. Fantastic. And the Seekers used at the same time to be able to find out where Frozen is, catch the rest of these guys. But an instant response. Heat. It's not wasting any time. Into the back oh, of the side. Still almost the trying. Point being played. Sushi Boy's watching ah, it and falling from the sky. No worries, Talon GP. No worries, once Mama. more. Wow. What a round by talent. What a fantastic That flank was huge. That's why you need to Cypher to watch flanks, by the way. That's Frozen exactly why you want Cypher. Through B. We've seen him get pushed up, you know, to the very front portion of B, where he looks to try and find lurk kills, timings. But Talon going for a double push and sneaking past the alarm bot, that is going to calm That's him down. crazy timing. Wow. And it, it reactivated once Cruz had taken a single step it's past nasty. its radius. Yeah. I mean, that was, a, that was a second where he was free, and uh, on either side, he would have been caught. It was milliseconds of difference. I hope they don't become super MMA, angry now. Maybe I want more push down to the weaker by. Arguably, of course, with the Stingers, but they have been nerfed in this patch. And it is a fast play to try and push Heat into this. No! Oh. Close oh. personal oh. position oh. into garage. <laughs> I thought it crashed. While this fight towards A lobby does take place, they love doing this. Way I've seen Morris do this in the off season too. He normally creates some pressure on the opposite side of the map to allow Heat to get his lurk off. So this pressure into B can be a fake. Ready for this. Or oh, now he can just have a great post plant position. A little bit mistimed with that one as the spike was planted towards B. Showstopper into the back. Garnets doesn't claim anything off of that one. A bit of a rosy yeah. moment, but. I think they'll try to make uh, the enemy's move or the platform move with the uh, flash or the nade, I mean. And still doubled up with the teammates' rifles. Will they make the difference? Cruz has got the most to do once more. Spraying oh, down a swing. Ho, ho, what is that? Cruise. But Heat is still behind. This player, this nuisance that was stuck no behind them from the beginning. No time to defuse. And he's just buying time. One satchel. He has the stinger. Can push them off the spike if they tap it. That's a Bit of a shallow angle to be taken. Cruz has managed to work his way in. Has already got half on the defuse. Needs to be covered. Needs to be watched. One kill. Ah, they have it. Getting off it in just a moment, but Good. enough time. So close there. Bought. What a round by so Cruz to salvage it. Good try, though. Only just, though. That's another one where it was a potential thrifty. And I don't think we can count any of these rounds out, no matter the economical situation. There's enough slip-ups and enough big plays happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the idea from Talon, actually, in this round. Fast garage pressure puts Heat in a good position where he can play as a lurker or a post-plant flank. The, the one I do zero. have is that satchel that he used at the end yeah. could have been perfect for getting somebody off the, actually pushing off the diffuse. But yeah. instead he used it to push a player away that he thought might be pushing him. I don't know, it's tiny things. Tiny things, but at the end of the day, those tiny moments I feel like Ward of the XE is uh, probably do. one of the most uh, famous moments in uh, a little bit of difference here in terms of the approach by talent this time looking or gaming in general to try and fight well not the gaming competitive uh, gaming. holding a couple of key pieces of utility it's the alarm bot in the smoke I think is what they're waiting for right yeah this is going to be a trap play I think they've got fault line they have flash set up he Actually, is Fox ready with that right fault line the player they're looking to punish so, no, they are. They're going for flash fault line off the alarm bot. So they're looking for a big trap play. Uh, ah, I think he popped the early. The too early, yeah. Off the alarm bot there. Decided they'd waited too long in the round once it got to about a minute five on the clock. 
That's fair enough, but the Flash didn't see anything, so that might have given them terribly bad information. I think MIBR were definitely disappointed enough. Like you said, didn't see anything. The alarm bot is now going to be making them aware of the fact that they have taken this area. And holding and holding Thunder just waiting in their hands. They're now still it's going to be loose oh, on the side. Oh, teammates on... Uh, wait, were teammates sure on uh, short maybe stunned? caught out of position. That's brave by Fox. Oh, it doesn't matter. There with the Vandal Tracers giving away his location. So Sushi Boys has the lockdown available for this. They're worried about a flank through B because FRZ's done that a couple of times before. There is the aftershock. Yeah, they're already, already for it. Just already for it. It's got way more health than it used to. But made. let's see it. Line up. This thing's definitely been orchestrated. Aftershock as well. Now over the top. Is it going to be enough damage? It is. It indeed. is. Yep, they are ready. Well prepared. And now a showstopper on top of it just to see if they can. They were Squeeze so anything ready. Else out of this one. They going forwards. Heat still just holding within this smoke. They know he's there, but a spam and they do find Ooh. it in the end. Garnet's making sure that he contains this approach. Just from the backside. Just trying to shut it down, but time is running awfully, awfully low. RGL Meister with the most to do. Having to defuse a spray down. Oh, no one's if he's, oh, if he stuck it, Did man. Did they have time anyway? I'm not even sure. Yes, Talon they had. Got off the they there. had. Possibly they didn't have they didn't it. You'd think have the spike to see a even. replay in order to know that was so tight. But however, however you slice that one, wherever you want to apportion the credit or the blame, MIBR come away with the round in a Red Bull clutch. You can see that these teams have anti-lockdown setups, but yeah. it takes way more utility than it used to. Huge the aftershock setup. not doing enough at this point you know that's one of the Even reasons why they go for Tunjoy the wall, that isn't to make them need to have to use the utility else, you know, to break it the aftershock or shock darts if you're running a sober in this instance a sky nade it's worth pointing out i think as we uh are jumping into this talent timeout discussing strategies for the final two rounds of their first half but so far it feels like mibr have just been straining the bank with almost every single purchase. They yeah. win this round, but at a costly, uh, costly moment because they're going to be pushed down to weaker weapons, half armor with rifles. Talon are doing pretty good. Yeah. Or? Uh, I mean, that is the big problem for MIBR in this entire half, yeah. is that it's been really back and forth, but always at the expense of MIBR's economy. You know, they're winning these rounds with sometimes nobody alive <laughs> like in the it's prior the way they retake. One, yeah. like the way they retake and occasionally is it comes down to a smooth. 1v1 or something like that they have just a solid for example this actual i mean where they're able to keep we had their heat in up. the smoke there I look at so this. you couldn't really catch the race armor, a bulldog, and a but then yeah. breach not really pushing in but this, instead spring the smoke the round of the half. so this is the difference really between a good half and a 4-8 deficit it certainly could be flash play at the beginning just to buy a bit of space towards mid it's a prowler as well that goes into garage, so familiar setup, honestly. But look at that spam, the angle. Oh, nice so time. much damage, and we're just refining it to mid. Murray's deciding to take a fight for whatever reason, but he does go down, and the spike was dropped with him. Once more, they pushed heat up in garage. Yeah. Are they going to apply some pressure elsewhere on the map? Murray's is dead, and that takes a lot of the initiator utility away, but they still have a horn to Feels work like with. Sushi Boy's nose. Looks like this is going to be a C someone split. In garage. I think Talon are going to sniff it out. They're taking a lot of space in A lobby. Incredibly pushed up right now, but not opting to use too much. Yeah, the smoke. Yeah. The smoke, though, right there from Cruz, blocking these players off. They know it's going to be some form of C split. Incredibly obvious. And now the ultimate as well just really does confirm. Wall banks it. coming in there, but Sushi no. Boys, the threat. Util really being oh, dumped hard oh. into the back of the side. At least Barely, the dude, see the nail just on top in time. Just in time before smoke. It was fully blind. It's up to Jit Boys to see what he can the do. With a lovely anti flash position matters not. Fox coming in from the flank. Both the players just making the sure they got each good. other's backs. They might be Again. leaving too many gaps in the Cypher overall would have sold this. And it's absolutely crushing. And then when they're dead, you just check the hat. Kuching. Every on time the, it looks like MLBR are getting on back nice. on their feet, they're knocked down. They're stumbling through this first half. And this round broken because of a decision by Talon to go for a mid-round push out through A lobby. They get all the info that it's going to be a C hit, and they also get a really fast flank. I mean, these players haven't even got into sight. They haven't got the plant down. Yeah. They're not ready for Fox and Cruz. 
There we go. This is a difficult Let's one. Let's go. The Bam. money not good. And that's a double satchel into the flash. Haji Elmeister couldn't see where he's TPing. Not sure if that was intentional. Nice find. Hito still with a backstab. And it is scrappy. It is chaos. But ultimately, it's all down to heat. Tyler not doing a, a very fast push here and just catching them before they even have a chance Spike to reply. Nowhere to be seen. The map just flipped on its head. If you can isolate a fight, it could be quite nice, but that's just a bit of running and gunning and coverage again there. Holding his eight ground. Four. Eight four half for Talon. Amazing beginning for them. Fantastic start to this map. MIBR's pick. And a map that MIBR in the offseason beat Leviathan on. Yeah. So definitely a map where MIBR feel comfortable and Talon have just rocked them. And it was death by a thousand cuts, Bren. There was no one player that dominated. It was the economy being ruined. Yeah, just absolutely ridiculous stuff. Garnets as well, 13-11 so far. This guy, rookie player, really performing on a big stage. But I want to hear what our desk have to say about the first half of this map. I think that they have to mention the ace for sure, right? Thank you very much, guys. Now, we've, we've had some ups and downs so far in this tournament. I want to see it. My God, I have never seen you two this happy and this relaxed and this chilled about the Valorant we're seeing right now. What is happening? It's great. <laughs> we're having is, a good time. This is not what I was anticipating. I was, like, cautiously optimistic that Talon could have that upset. They've done it in the past when they were under the Zersha banner taking down a Hoptic and whatnot. But, uh... Damn, this is some clean stuff from them. I've been really impressed. And that's despite the crowd, which right now is cheering so incredibly heavily yeah, Pipe and, uh, for MIBR. Is, uh, Every with Talon, time yeah. that this team but he has um, practically anything, a recovery they are from, popping um, off surgery. like crazy for them. You can see this one. This He's going to get a couple play. kills. And uh, for MIBR, they just have all this energy to fuel themselves off of. You'll see it in a second here. This means so much to the Brazilian fans. And, I mean, it is ridiculous the amount of energy they're putting into it. <laughs> but despite the fact that Talon on the other side is getting absolutely none of that applause they are still playing some incredible valorant the individuals on this team are popping off the coordination looks better even when this team was Zersha. i've been really impressed with them this half i mean even the two rookies where we, we have the known quantities on this team the three vets but then you have carnets and jip boys coming in and in their own right they're playing absolutely incredibly the utility coming out from jit boys on point it's right there with everybody else and then garnets i was really Uncertain how he's going to be going, you know, bringing out this race, having to go against Heat, but he is holding his own and then some. Heat does come out of this with a higher ACS because he has had some clutch moments. He had that ace, which we just saw in the replays. But Garnets is right there going toe to toe. 13 and 11 versus that 13 to 10. This I like guy the way is having Garnet a whale of a time on stage for his international debut. Yeah, that he is. But it's 8 4 at the half. It's the stronger side of the map. And MIBR, I am looking towards Heat again. Can he maintain that form? If he is popping off the way he was in some of these early rounds, if the team continues to enable him, they can come back into this one. Yeah, they got to give the crowd something to cheer for. And uh, we spoke about how maybe Talon maybe not be able to do this without Patty, but hey, who needs Patty right now? They're on fire. Back to you, Josh and Bren, for the second half. And I couldn't agree more. Garnets is really stepping up to the plate when we were talking about this guy, this rookie player, and this is his 22nd. Valorant series ever, and he's up against the superstar player of Heat going honestly toe to toe with this guy with an entire crowd against him. Yeah, that is incredibly impressive. A cheeky blind coming in. This pistol round is going to mean so much to MIBR. They're so a really aggressive oh, team on the defense. Setting up a trap play here. They're waiting for the alarm, alarm bot. Uh, no, not alarm bot, but They've waiting for killjoy contact, contact to there. Watch for any lurkers up through B. All the teams have basically leveled up RGL lately RGL in um, BCT. It's very nice to see. This one. Give it up the B -side. It's no longer like one or two teams that just play super approach, smart anymore. Spike's gonna go down All of them are. Problems. Now it's up to MIBR. What can they get value-wise? Cruise the look. And timing, timing, timing. It is oh, wow. absolutely everything. Are they gonna pass each other really? Like That's ships in the night? Absurd. Instead of going for the garage reflank or fighting for a connector, they slip Cruise into A? He spotted one player, the nade, just rebounding a little bit shallow there. Chip Boy's going for the swing and just claimed the one kill before eventually going down to a bit of a util, but the corner not cleared. And Garnet claims another one for his team. One after oh, another. Oh, oh, oh. Down to Frozen. He's got the frenzy, has to try and reset, but nice the swing is there once more. Nice Coordination try. on point. Talon taking the lead once more. I thought more, Cruz would be backing up there, beyond. but no. 
Cruz not even Good thing he, um, frankly. So <laughs> the reason he, he just pushed the, up the is um, plan, the safety net. just in case no you can catch another one. Game plan specifically for because you don't want to wish one up rotate the super retake. fast. RGL just kind of walked out through B. And you don't expect Heat to be losing his duels there, even in the pistol round. Against Jipoy, another rookie player. Yeah. MIBR absolutely need to be leaning on that experience that they've had and the talent that they have on the roster. If they're getting outclassed pound for pound by the talent guys, that is extremely worrisome for the series. And at some point, you've got to have that conversation about the double edged sword, I think, of the expectation that a crowd cheering for you really has. Sometimes that pressure doesn't exactly form diamonds. There is so much history between these two teams as well, actually. FRZ, he beat this, the core of Talon, at the very first LAN we ever had in Valorant. And Heat and Murray's both got knocked out of champions in 2021 yeah. by this team. Yeah. For RGL and for JZZ, they, they, their we get some action. Are yet Come on, peek. Those guys are rookies to the peek big stage other. in a similar way. Tagana and Jip are so careful. Although they've had more experience domestic. You have to be, but. This is an A take. Now we get going. Slow and steady as it goes. Stun, paranoia, nade into the back of the site. Nice Stay shot. Oh, Very oh. nice. Nade to support. Another thrifty. Run and yeah. gun. Well, a bit of a one and here done angle. Don't talk too soon here because the smoke's still weaving in and out. And Heat oh, just no. absolutely running rings around them currently. Another nade. Just oh, sidestepped. Both of them there. And they're going to be evacuating. To watch the side entirely. Oh, watch out, watch out. So There's one here. Cruise. Watching this angle. He expects both of them to just be running all the way on to B, and it's going to be that spike planted. Wow. What a monster Cruz is playing like right now. This swap to Smokes, this step up, this reclassification of him as a player. There's no reason Allman would so have different. to peek here. So I don't know why he's waiting so much. He's making every smart play. Rosen just searching for the right angle. Damage being done. Flames the one kill, but the time has really been bled down. He's on 22 health. He could die to the turret. The turret really could just finish the job. Essentially playing a 2v1, I think, honestly. And he doesn't know where Sushi Boys is. Nothing being given. The turret is just magnificent. Can't be cleared in time. That's the only resource he really needed in that moment. Unwinnable for him. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't want to give old Orb. And takes the smart play there sure. going to the spike. You don't want to give Sushi Boys another ult orb or yeah. even stay alive. But 10 4. What a dominant scoreline for Talon here. Listen, that I mean, kill jolt is going to be very annoying if you um, give ult orbs. Because then the they take Dolt or the Orb on the. Uh, They're not worried C. about it being expensive at this point. They and, just need uh, the rounds on the board. And they kill yeah, somewhere. They have a lot of Bam. room to breathe at this point. Definitely true. This is going the complete opposite way I thought it would be. I thought it would be way more convincing for um, MRBR. They're normally the kind of team that comes out with some set strats. We've already seen some trap plays on the defense. But I think you also have to be cautious because MIBR love pushing defensively. The tempo back. definitely taken here by Talon. Yeah, just trying to play incredibly fast straight into the B site. Good job. And Who is this guy? Action is happening. I mean, Cruz has just been unlocked. This guy is just a demon. He looks so much better than the last time we've seen him at LAN. Something about this roll shift. Something nice about entry. You know, the fact that he is one of the veteran presences on this team that some of the newer players are looking up to. Right down, All that ground gained. Can he do a bit more? Heats. Just to find out one kill. It's still that 2v4, but this was a weaker buy by talent. Oh, this defense, is so dangerous. Happy, this is so dangerous, my man. Things, and MIPR, the discipline is there. That face, cross that place, what are you doing? The flash out to the side, what are you doing, survive. Cruz? And MIBR finally get around where they keep four right. He has like one of these smart watches. I don't know if they've done they that. He just the got a vibration game. saying, Oh, the money's wired. I mean, this is going to be so important for their economy. Money Obviously, wired for the run. Barely had anything coming into this round, but uh, every thrifty has been dangerous at this point on Haven. And it looked like this uh, was Zero, initiators are not we supposed to um, focus very, around very info. Fast. Initiators but now set up the, the fight. Serious uphill climb. If MIBR initiate, have a decent so economy they and start to get the, the rolling, are they actually capable of bringing it to talent? The way Solva and Faye does it is by uh, making it easy to um, kill people with yeah, bollocks, right? Seemingly 
unwinnable scenarios, but... Breach does it, yeah. Uh, like Solar System says, also you make save. people move with fault line, off the shock, ulting, or you blind Flash them with the uh, flashes. Turret's gonna be taking contact. And when they move, they uh, move now, into bad positions. To lead them in, lets them break that or open angles. That's tools to really think about. Cruise. What sort of play are you going for? That's a paranoia, and he slipped his way into the B site while this hit comes through. Talon just not clearing the long section. Ooh, ooh, Rosen, get him, get him. Absolutely huge. Three in a round, anchoring it for his team, but Almost. eventually cleaned up. Difficult to, to know exactly what they are there. If you pardon the pun, because Cruz on the smokes for Talon is in such a great position again. What? Oh, the Prowler saw him, but he reacted too slowly. He knows where he uh, is. Crossfire. Look at that coordination. No hesitancy. I and think in that position, you ignore oh going the there. You go on a garage, I think. He finds because where the B player was holding. there's a guarantee Morris there's a crossfire. The connector. Hits him with a paranoia so he can't hear him teleport. And then goes towards the A connector. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never mind. He was uh, much less likely A player holding there. And despite all of the heroics from FRZ on site. Or maybe no. Maybe no. It was not. Everything. He's just different right now. I uh, something about the calling, the way he's playing individually, how intelligently he's playing. On top of that, just individually putting on a world-class performance. I mean, 21 and 8. I did not think this guy would be capable of it, but it's looking like Marv's in the seat. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I think part of it might just be that he's got tons more freedom as the lurker. MIBR taking a timeout here, and they've got so much to fix. MIBR did try to push out a lobby in that round. So we saw a little bit of their aggression. It was JZZ and Heat going up towards a lobby, seeing if they could get a flank playoff. But they just lost the rest of the map far too quickly. It still came down to a 2v2, but a 2v2 where they just had no idea where Cruz was. Yeah. And he made the enormous... MIBR needs to wake up here. So many rounds where that's happened. They need to put someone on permanent cruise <laughs> control. Oh, that was a horrible, I was, horrible I, was I was trying to find a different <laughs> word there. I really just, was. Just awful. But someone needs to mark this guy. Yeah. You need it's to be tracking though. his movements around the map. And especially he might have the document. I think he is the document. You never find so many openings for them, but now Talon. Again, at that pace just increased with the tempo. And it's really just being pushed into these four positions. Even a stun no reload even. corner from heaven, no. It's Bulldog in play. It's not the best weapon for the job, but it does enough to at least soften He's up the coming players. In. He's like, I want kills. Give me no kills. Showstopper as well. Unleashed, but it's caused a bit of an evacuation. Cruz does not have his ult online. They can't reclaim the spike as easily. Nice but these are the moments where MIBR has been throwing rounds away. They're 5v3. They need to stabilize, and they still don't know that Cruz is here. JZZ is watching. They're scared He's now. Suspecting. They're paranoid. Yeah. Starting and with to, good reason. It's time to be a bit more aware of it when these lurks are fashioned out of nowhere. Because there's been the gaps in a lot of their protocols that have just been losing them these rounds. Here's the crossfire. Nice. Not much nice. Players nice, nice, nice. Do against that one. The crossfire a little bit good too job. strong. Prime gaming flawless. So MBR be able to carry those rifles forwards. And that's crazy important. That's another thrifty. Or at least a half buy. Even if it doesn't count as an official thrifty. <laughs> I felt that the, the I feel that is heat is overheating, unintended. I mean, He's a, um, a few milliseconds too fast when pushing. Not synchronizing with you from his team. With the amount of thrifty and yeah. half fight wins that we've Could had, happen. the economy is not very easily sometimes. You know, you you try. The, so like the intention is there, but just, if he's the one, do you guys know if he's the one calling? And gaps in their game. Because if he's the, the one calling plays, then that's through. the issue. Same defensive setup here for MIBR. Flash to push back talent. I don't. I don't think he is the one calling plays, but. They do have utility at least. Okay. A random it's, spam down um, into the bottom of mid, so Murray's does claim that one. Picks it up out of seemingly no. I, I don't know. And they do deal with Cruz once more. Who is going? For you can solve that with like a three-to-one call, lurk, but. but like this, every team has their own structure. The these rounds are beginning for a team like MIBR. He don't want to be given away. Rifle. Ooh, Plays being made, ooh, but the guy's ooh. clearly feeling confident. Nice Two kills for him, but ultimately falling. Those are the kind of plays you go for when you're trying to build up your What happened confidence. to the costume? Uh, I took it off. It's very warm, so I decided Fox to make it so that whenever 
long time. Someone picks Cypher, I keep it on for the match. But I wanted to say, going into and that if round, someone picks Cypher again, I'll put it back on. From MIBI, I think in terms of the control in that match. A lobby, you see the season A being used almost off the rip. Many rounds now since they got onto this defensive side, but it might be worth pivoting to maybe outside double doors, trying to get something going in grass of it. Yeah, it felt yeah, like I setup, re just removed that thick layer of heat. Grass, towards it was very bit. liberating. In games in so, um, get so much value. they haven't done I any of it with that decision yeah, just simply because of the 11, heat. It's just too risky. Yeah. Like, that's just not something that players intuitively want to do, to take risks like that when Talon is so close to winning. If it would have, would have been a bit colder here, it would have been a very oh, cozy I've seen this one suit. before. Heat pushing up into A lobby, <laughs> taking the space off the back of the horn. It's absurd, it. but he loves it. I mean, it's just absurd, isn't it? You don't scout. Playing a role where he can really but they notice. Counteract this card. It's just hitting the nastiest snap I've ever seen. The ball has been fumbled in garage. Absolute fumbling. It quick. looked like a great setup, and the two players were vulnerable, but that's. Uh, that what's the weather? Uh, it's. Not rainy, but it's kind of dark. Any sort of player advantage, sushi or boys. what's it? cloudy, I guess, is the right way to say it. Cloudy, a bit cold, but not too cold, like winter. Sight mirrors. Bides his time. The patience is good there to claim that one kill. But the trouble is, he's got this operator. I mean, the guy's just not set up for any sort of retake. Morris is on an island right now, playing by himself with the one-way smoke setup. Does he still want to play this one? Does he realize that there's an opportunity presented for him? After shot, there you go. One kill found. Doesn't know where the remaining players are. One flanking him in no time. Oh, nice no angles try. given. Nice try. And he just saving the operator while all that was going on. So many map points here. So many chances Holy. for Talon to be able to win this. What a performance from Ghana. God, Is it true that you have very little um, sunlight during the summer? Yes. Like this. This guy Sometimes it feels like there's like two hours of... Um, game of Valorant, two hours. Oh, you may... Um, yeah. In the winter, yes. This guy and the inverse player. in the I'm summer. Honest, I feel like like in the summer, it feels like there's like two hours of Where he just came no out sun. and yeah. was immediately super confident, believed in the team, followed all of the utility so oh. like sun goes down at let's Hello. see well here's the play i was talking about 11 in the night 12 comes back up at two he should catch some value with the stun as well two players such up into the egg oh, there's the vibes there's no way nice aggression. he will claim his prize Get oh, they are in. From him too quickly. He Still is blinded. To the side aftershock is just not fast enough to push them back, including this lockdown. And Talon on map point, taking all the space in the world towards B. The lockdown cannot be destroyed. Pushing them out of position. This flank is being watched now by Cruz and the rest of them. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. The, showstopper. the guy is dangerous with value. the bazooka. Rolling thunder. It is just chaos all over the bloody place. Where does this go? Lands up top. Skipping a hop, he does survive. Now a prowler on top of it, and a three swing from Sushi Boys, an absolutely ridiculous what? What? FRZ Recurring from nowhere? No way. One after the other. The lockdown now on line, spray <laughs> down, but coverage is there. MIBR. They rescued Dude, a round. FRZ just from the out of defeat. nowhere. Miracles up with in a Brazil. Classic. That was an absurd round. FRZ just, just jumping and hopping, skipping around yep. with a classic in That's his hand. That's the biggest that might be our fan. If, he doesn't, so if he doesn't get that one, it's it's done. It's over. So many things that could have gone wrong with that. Yeah, it's it's not a solid game plan on the retake, is it? It's it's magic. It's all over the place. But that's only one of the chances that they've denied talent. There's still a ton left. Yeah. Actually, though, Talon deciding to force buy into this round with a Stinger and a Spectre. So, unusual decision in my opinion. Normally you don't want to take no, disadvantageous no, fights, no, but heat. you also don't expect Heat to be missing those kind of shots. This guy is normally such a consistent operator player. Now to show stuff front line, that's a direct hit. Garnets just ripping uh, a no, pathway guys. right into the site. And it's vacuum GGs. right up. Talon taking map number Talon one. Talon are playing super fast. Heat Silence went just in the way crowd, too wide completely there. there. What way a too performance. Wide. What a play. The MIBR fans, they're still, <laughs> they're still going. There's still chances. But it is talent that has struck a decisive first blow in this series. 13-8. And they were in control. They were in control of this entire map. This is 
so surprising to me. I think most people anticipated that MIBR would be the ones coming out swinging. Talent, you know, we were interviewing Cruz and the guy was saying, listen, we've had to split our practice up. Padapan wasn't able to play. You know, haven't had that much practice playing with Garnets in this roster. You, you really, then, you couldn't believe it. She's going to break them. She's going to break it those sticks. Magical, Actually, they have to give her, specifically her, supposed to be playing, and he's just solid six because to have wrist of how hard she goes. So they've had to get Garnet, a sixth player, in to, to play at this event. They've also lost one of their star players. Everybody would have expected them to be turning up to an event like this with Scary, but he decided to take an Ascension contract instead. Get the back, King. I appreciate it. But that also meant that we were assuming they didn't have a Star Smokes player on this roster. Oh my god, how wrong we were. Yeah. Cruz was hopping. Just filthy. I mean, the guy was finding so many opportunities. Deep pushes, lurks all around on both halves of, of the map. Yeah, just able to just create those openings time and time again. And I think one of the big strategic problems that I'm sure Loud's former coach, Pizike, is going to be talking to them about behind the stage when this is, you know, in the break between the maps. I think one of the big strategic failings was MIBR never controlled the tempo. They never controlled the pace. And part of that was economical because they were always on the edge of, of going out. But part of it is just yeah. we didn't see that level of aggression from them on the attack side they were always waiting always really trying to play well reactive Super and on slow. the defense we didn't see those classic mibr pushes either yeah so it's all a little bit missing from the overall game plans a little bit interesting i think as well and it really does shake up this series because it did not go the way we expected at least initially here for map number one but that's going to do it i but feel like still the series continues maybe we'll they let the pressure get to them as well break. especially hit there at the end with that def just unfortunate movement after happens but there's two maps left if they win this next one i just remembered you were talking about there how there should be a deafening ult just before fade came out didn't you i can't remember i can't remember but yeah deafening ult definitely um uh definitely um was needed however fade was probably in the works for like three years or something so maybe not three years at least um i think the cycle for an agent is isn't it like more than um, a year or something i can't remember how long but yeah the uh, riot had uh, worked on her way before i suggested i think Exactly, Shubham. Exactly. Nothing to lose. Nothing to stop you. And um, you gotta make the most out of it because, yeah, Padapan wasn't uh, there as well. But I feel like um, whatever they have been practicing, it's been good. It's been good practice for them because they have confidence, which probably comes from also playing, you know, pretty well in uh, in practice, feeling good about about what you're bringing in. You guys think MIBR brings it back? I think the coach is going to be like handing out slaps on the face, just wake them up. And maybe not the physical slaps. So maybe actually, I don't know. But um, he definitely is on fire when they, when, when they are winning and also angry when they are not winning. So you bet he's going to talk some sense into them. They looked a bit cold, MIBR, at the end. Like cold as in the energy just out. And when that happens, you just pump the back energy in. And um, same thing when there's too much energy, like people are tilting or, or something. Then you gotta take it away. I 
like those sparks there that's what he's gonna do he's gonna just put sparks in them I'm gonna grab some water I'll be back in a second Didn't the MIBR, MIBR players uh, play on land before? I thought they did. At least on land in uh, Brazil. What a star from the boys from APAC. They take down the hometown favorites on map one. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm back here with Mimi and Achilles. It feels good, doesn't it? It feels good for you. Yes. Yes. I'm like, okay. More competition <laughs> in the region. VCT Pacific is going to be awesome, especially if Talon can continue to play like this. I mean, good God, what a way to kick things off. I mean, Brennan and Josh were talking about it consistently throughout that. We were talking about it during the, the, uh, the halftime break. It just feels like they are completely unfazed by this crowd. And where is it? It kind of seems like MIBR absolutely phased by it. Maybe too much pressure is being applied to them right now. Yeah, what feels good to me is being surprised. I really underrated them coming into this event. I thought I was lost their aren't two on best Twitch players anymore. from last year. They're coming in with yeah, these unproven know. talents. But they showed up here, and they played a hope really uh, impressive game of Valorant. Both those uh, young players showed up, no played problem to watch on YouTube, though. And the calling from Talon as well I know a lot really of people prefer um, uh, Twitch, um, them a gap, you know, Talon just out of habit and so on. Exploiting that. Yeah, just in every twist and turn, fantastically done. And I mean, players that we didn't necessarily anticipate to step up in the way that they did, did in the sense of Cruz, in the sense of Garnets on this massive This flank here but Cruz was a massive flank. I wonder if Omen was um, I mean, he just, really could not be just yeah, looking first, back uh, just to make sure someone's the uh, not there. Was so or if it was uh, there just was a insane 180 flick. They were kind of seeing initial contact from MIPR and one air of the map, seeing kind of heat satcheling in as the read, and then instantly going for the super fast double flanks it was just crushing MIBR round after round and it felt like they were never really able to adapt to it I expected a little bit of more uh, more out of a team led by FRZ and Bazooka as the IGL I've been good I mean, this is what gotcha. they, we I've know been good man. teams they can shoot they can kill they can win games but I think this level just uh, of watching of these structure, matches it's a uh, long stream so just um, such great Valorant to watch and of course one guy that was behind I'm a lot a bit, of this uh, was Cruz, what's called um, of course I spoke about this already this is a chill veteran mode right now player he's been here to, uh, before preserve and He's but, uh, really showing his experience. I'm enjoying I everything. Josh put it perfectly on the cast. We didn't expect them. Maybe have a question. All star smoked player. Crew switches over to the wrong um, and first game. He just I stream Valorant a lot, and I was wondering, yeah, am I, I mean, supposed to wait for people to, to offer to sponsorships, like up, or should I contact them first? The like the you can do both. But he's just um, nuts going over to this home. It seems like he's slotting into when uh, when you wait for people. It yeah, really doesn't uh, come, like people don't come to you moment, unless you have a uh, huge wave viewership. Like if speed, you're sitting at maybe this was just 500, maybe, maybe like yeah, once in a while. But from my experience and from what I've seen with others, you gotta have uh, some agent kills. that's uh, helping you look for them, from this guy. So many of these or you look for yourself, or you have to have some huge viewership like usually around a thousand that's um, that's when organizations start uh, hiring you and so on but under that i'd say um, definitely definitely look for but um, yourself you get like 30 good no matter the number you always have to look for sponsors yourself and uh, streaming is a bit more difficult like if you if you were talking youtube videos then it's a lot more brands just reaching out to you because um, like uh, I don't know it's, guy, it feels feel like, like it's more um, of a thing like um, easier to get um, well ad, ad conversion on um, what's called the YouTube videos compared to streams him, like. so there's just more people paying attention to uh, videos though oh for sure I mean 
we know what he can get done. I think he's got a nice little smile. He's like, I'm just going to do this at uh, my own pace here. But, uh, I mean, we saw him pick up the ace. That was a huge moment and seemed like maybe a bit of a turning point of the game because that allowed them to tie things up at 3-3. Three to three. Um, But, yeah, I mean, he was looking pretty consistent the whole way. Oh, he's pretty good. Like the rest of the team, there was a couple moments just keep on doing what you're doing. They weren't hitting those shots that they certainly shouldn't. He, especially with that op, was also under those same circumstances. Yeah, Heat is not the guy that I'm really worried about going into the rest of this match. I, I think it's the rest <laughs> of the team. Obviously, you're going to get very prepared with a warm-up routine like that. Make sure you guys uh, replicate that one. But yeah, we're heading into Fracture next up, where I think traditionally Heat was playing the, the Neon on this map for them. So he's going to be in another role where he's really set up to succeed, but also in a role where the team has to put a lot of utility into yeah, the uh, Yeah, it's like Adam says. I think my worry is this was Talon's pick. Now, they People say, you know, uh, or like... Pick. Here. So, uh, Achilles, there's a lot you know, of pressure on MIB. It's easier there's a lot to, of pressure um, on them, but there's also pressure on Talon now. Um, to close what's it them? We have, teams, we have seen Separate teams yourself from the number, or like the, the number from the actual amount of people. A, a, but having like a thousand viewers, for example, that, that is a lot of people. Having a hundred people, that is a lot of people too. Having 30 people, that is a lot of people too. Like imagine you have 30 people looking at you while you're talking to them. That is quite a the, the amount of ice. history go through i really like the cypher pick especially as an anti-neon competition uh, on the defensive side you can really shut down a player like garnets but on the other side for talon i think this is a map where sushi boys and garnets will feel at home both the neon and killjoy roles on this map give you so much potential to pop off yeah, and I can't wait to see if MIBR have what it takes also to pull this one back uh, Bren and josh let's get into map two wait we have cypher Let's get into it indeed, yes. We're we have a Cypher. Another head-to-head -head battle. Garnet's the rookie player versus Heat, the superstar. They went, you know, listen, even footing, relatively speaking, in terms of that, that KD, but for yeah. Garnet's to have such an outlandish performance <laughs> as a rookie player is uh, almost unheard of sometimes. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, I'm getting the suit three if we see a Cypher. I'm right ready. Now, that don't have the same level of experience, I think all three of those failed to reach that kind of level that Garnet was bringing, that the veterans were bringing. And so maybe we see, you know, Jip Boy or RGL, maybe we see uh, JCZ step up to the plate this time around because all three of those players were very quiet map one. And that could be the difference maker, you know? Having a big game coming out there from There is a cipher. RGL, I'll example, be back soon. Smokes, that might make all the difference. <laughs> need something to turn it around. Starting here, map number two, Talon MIBR in the desk set it up. This is Talon's map pick. Already leading the series, and wow, what a beginning! <laughs> you know, just as we were talking about it, Garnet's just setting us off on a great path. I mean, these two kills that he's claimed, the spike is out of position now on top of it, and you're gonna have to be relying on Frozen with this late lurk down drop to try and bail them out. Garnet is just straight up diffing yeah. the MIBR players. He's playing without a care in the world. The spike is in such a treacherous position currently. It's not like FRZ can do too much about it either. He really does need to be creating some pressure because uh, I mean, there's three players just staring at the spike. Let's see Sushi Boys playing that anti-flash position with JCC still alive. One flash available, a deep smoke to see if they can reclaim this one. Stun. Hold line, buys him a bit of space. I'm ready. I'm wow. ready for Cypher. Change of the spike here before Ox. Oh, the call's been made, and well, just about misses the shot there. It looked like it was good. I could have sworn that Fox's crosshair was on the head. Yeah, it looks like he should have been good for it, but... And all of this, all, all of the stuff that FRZ was doing earlier in the round now might pay dividends. It wasn't necessarily to help the rest of his team, but he's in a position now where he's got a nasty backstab spot potentially. Oh, nice try, nice try. Taken, and now he needs to get a move it on. It is all on Cypher, come on. The job. Oh, he's way Come too on. late. And it is completely not planned Get for the headshots. Right around the corner. And all Talon have to do is hold it with oh, the double face. Two will That's fall, one. but ultimately the round will go their way. He, he does it. I can't, I can't even speak, but he does it. Yeah, the crowd are happy about that one, but I don't know if they've they lost the round, but line. that's yeah. still something. Talon taking that pistol and all sorts of miscoordination there from MIBR. The trade, I mean, non-existent, to be honest, isn't it? Yeah. Garner just allowed to pluck both of those players off while they're distracted by the turret and Heat's got a stun bolt in his hand. One of the things I was most impressed with actually looking at MIBR coming into this tournament was 
I think how well they reacted off of information. There was zero hesitancy at times, but so far it feels like Talon are the team that are doing all that. Yeah, I agree. It was just such a fast play through the choke point to instantly retake when the spike was down there. Absolutely. They're playing much looser. Yeah. And I think the desk might be onto something there in terms of nice. the pressure of the crowd actually ended up causing MIBR to stutter in some of their decisions yeah. and worry. Play with a bit more caution. Maybe just overthinking the usual game plan. It's a lurk from Heat, but doesn't nail a single shot. Inspector, not the job. These players in dropper. The These players in dropper so dead to the flank. Yeah, and it is. Pretty tight squeeze there. The spike's going to be dropped down. So the eco round mopped up easily enough. And the kills, the ult points, fairly evenly distributed from Talon. But Sushi Boys is getting close to his lockdown. It's not an ultimate that you can do that much with on the defensive side. You know, you can react to use it or use it for a, a bit of a retake potentially. Especially on B, you've got Kim. a position for it. 4 1 safer. But Good it's traps, really however, an could be using one there too. Round. This is going to be an aggressive defense <clears> a lot of the time. And it looks if he like uses the trap here, bonus round aggression down through it's trip. perfect. Yeah. But like now they have to watch their the backs top. all the time. Stun as well. Finding its mark, and it does buy them that space. The crew is going to be farming up at war, but they've given up a lot of control of Arcade in the process. The angle not really being watched for with the smoke drop down. Going to see if they can weave their way into tower. And I like how fluid mm. they are, Brad. Immediately making the decision to take arcade after they lost tree control. Really decisive. As oh, they're slowly to pushing to A. Well. Trying to get, gather some info here. May, might might be a switch up. <laughs> and move to A. How many times have we seen a player just end up falling? Potentially that oh, person. lucky spike Norris down too. Spike down. A little bit too wide there into that angle. Gun, it's no fear at all to take the fight with the, only the bulldog. Much backup and play, and he just has to cower in the corner here. I liked the game plan from MIBR at the beginning of nice. this round, but the spike is still in such a dodgy spot. And these two players, FRZ and RGL, are miles away from the action. Sure, they've got the A spike, but what are you gonna? Uh, sorry, the A sight, but what are you gonna do with it without the spike? I mean, it's such a mess. Dropping like flies. Heat with the lurk through, 20 seconds remaining. Oh, careful. Just uh, contact through, and the angle just watched. He didn't, I mean, uh, he didn't predict that. It's kind of it difficult. Be, uh, but losing that charm that I think that they had coming into the tournament. Mm. You know, we previewing them in their game against. You can the buy something Canada light here, maybe a you know, sheriff. Be incredibly sheriff strong. works. They were going toe to toe, they were making it very even. But uh, I feel like when really they spent uh, this really amount of time here with um, what Brim and the Cypher just, just chilling and spawn for almost a minute. When they took arcade control at the beginning of this round, they, why not just shove it in? Yeah. Try and take that tower control. Kind of lose pressure from the other side long, of B main. They allowed, uh, so all the attention can go to your uh, tower. The spike in a horrible spot. Baron, just like they had big one, man. There wasn't that sense of urgency. And remember, it's been a long time since Morris has been in this position as the IGL. A long time since he was on the stage. Maybe things are just slipping away from MIBR a little bit. But on the other side of things, Talon are reading all of these situations and picking up every opportunity. The wall is going to split this site up, including that utility. I think they heard him, right? Corner heat. He's going to open it up for them, but... This is so weird yeah, again. Not out of drop yet, it's uncoordinated! Oh. Isn't they just dropped onto the head of Cruz and okay, eventually they worked their way in, but it's a Here's bit of effort. it was very awkward. No time wasted from Garnets, drops down the fast second lane, ping. the wall's in play, location gonna be revealed in this Why one. Why don't no they shoot them on the second ping? Oh. Those corners, yet still the round will go nice job. Way, and eventually very nice job. There we go. <laughs> a lot more <laughs> people playing Cypher now, <laughs> and I love it. Thrifty, powered by Heat, running in through his neon wall with a stinger. And uh, somehow both of the A site anchors just kind of got bypassed. Yeah, very really, disjointed. Really weird Valorant that we're being treated to here. Take a look at it in the replay and just look. I mean, <laughs> the way that JZZ just lands on top of Cruz. Comical, and he's got players right behind him, too. You know, the fast flank was already coming through a dish at this point in the round. <laughs> he saw the elbow on, on the killjoy there. Very odd. Luckily.
Garnet now has an ultimate to work with. 10 seconds into the round already here, as dish pressure applied by MIBR. Also, Cypher is perfect here versus round, Neon. So. Flash. I don't think that reveals too much. I'm not too sure if there were that many footsteps, but the space has been gained and the fast lane can And Neon is very like popular on them. Previous round once more. Jason say with the rolling Dude, yeah, it's massive ultimate. Okay. Are they Great doing the, is he doing the two trip wires here? Sushi boys. Because ah, he's, he's afraid of Neon jumping over. Anchoring, takes down the entry. And that also takes down the wall. It's going to be Because he has not been watching um, my setups then. And it is incredibly tepid, isn't it? Just I don't know, Philip. I so just slow, see him so cypher yeah. and I support. After they get that first pick, they don't decide to explode. They still a really tentative. Just waiting around. Waiting around. Trying to win the round just by getting picks and everything's falling apart for them. Yeah, if they're relying on Frozen to try and take some of that space. It's just not even afforded for him now. Ults are online, big ones for MIBR, but the time is running short now and they're still contacting into this one. They could make it more re reactive play. Yeah, I kind of like this idea from them. They want to try and push them and fight them. Stun the fault line to push them back. Flash I'll forwards, there. pushes Murray's potentially forwards, but no, still just biding his time with 12 seconds remaining. And look at that, he over the strike, just pushes them away. You're running out of time. And a spike, well, in the hands of Murray. Well, at least you get spiked down. Health. We'll get that plant down, but the utility is just being uh, used, yeah. and he is just dropping like flies. That's very difficult. So, That's great so utility awkward. usage from Metallon. You said it earlier, Bren. And it was uh, two ultis, Breach and... Uh, it looks no, like not Breach. Breach was um, from uh, MIBR. These rounds are slipping away from them Brimstone. in really unusual ways. Yeah, I mean, a yeah, couple I, of different things. I that hope they play Cypher on uh, Liquid. After they got the it will be a shame if they don't. Pip, just, just go. Yeah. Put the wall down and go. Yeah. And secondly, I mean, you can see yeah. the ultimates. You know that Cruz has his He got glued to the ground. You've got to be aware that you need time to plant here. That's one of the key parts of Fracture. Getting the spike down is so difficult against Breach ults, against Brim ults, this kind of thing. Against a Raze ult, for example, if you're playing against a different composition. But Emma are cap? taking a timeout. And BZK Here. needs it's, it's too to small, though. instill some also stability into his team currently. But uh, we got the suit anyways. Right now, they are not playing like uh, the quality of the players would really <laughs> suggest. It's just so mistimed whatever reason you know we talk about that double-edged sword of the pressure when the crowd is cheering you on well sometimes you know it just causes things to slip but if also I'm MIBR, MIBR as a team I want to make the experience in brimstone and cypher right? combo sure. a bit more the, the players that a have bit more efficient on the big stage it's he cypher He's can be alone by the way he doesn't really need well brimstone a lot of the time and the rest of the roster the other four players have some experience or haven't been here in a long time or but that means JCC you have a two-man squad first time on a stage or, um, like so well if all if of the brimstone isn't gonna go alone about these you could have two and two here, the inexperience the lack of time together is which course, would be fine because two. since they have all neon you have neon there, plus let's say that. brimstone neon plus breach neon plus breach this is like pretty good on one side Brimstone yeah, like and Keio on the other side, B main. Chuck a flash a above the wall, for example, as Neon comes in from Arcade or the other side. Well. Embodied. Has found one of its targets. Counter stun with a fault line. Ripped across and well, fully stunned up. Still claims But they the don't kill. do that. So this guy just blessed, apparently. They and kind of waste a lot of time keeping so Cypher and challenge. Brimstone yep. in spawn. Garnet has no fear, playing so loose, so aggressive, crazy confidence. But an instant pivot, no hesitation with this one as the no commanders let rip Murray's wait his way across the side. There's really no one else to try and help him clear this one out. Uh, Galax, I'll, um, I'll add Neon just whenever I uh, have Neon clips. And if I don't have any Neon clips, you know, I um, despite being 4v5, MIBR have got a good chance of winning this post. I will just uh, make videos of what I have. It's online for this, so they are going to be able to get rid of that lockdown and the flash angle while Fox just. A little bit too open to that one. JZ say, what a play to make and what a time to do it. Garnet's all popped off. He's fully stunned up, fully flashed up. Ooh. Blind. Be open around the corner and the team are definitely backing him up now. Still, it's up to Frozen. Holding the angle, weaving in and out. Making it a difficult task oh. indeed. But the spray down, Jip Boys finds it. Time running low. <gasps> Util in his hands. The kill not found, but the sun is there. Slows it down. Good Claims job. the kill, but not no enough time, time to defuse, in the though. round. Some neon up. setup videos. There are some neon. I mean, you don't really do setups on neon. 
But you so have um, things happening there. Sushi Boy's decided to use his that you um, the orbital strike aim for with your you uh, utility, right? For example, if you want to stun here, you don't have to make the thing go all the way in. Play. You can stun on the outside and bounce it so it goes to the side as well, for example. And then Garda flies through with his ultimate out, full blind as well. I'm loving watching this talent team, despite the fact they didn't win the round. <laughs> Every round is a joy. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> Pure whimsy. MIBR not messing around now. It seems that timeout has definitely it's so been a cause fast. for the increase in tempo. Because Brent, they have been so, so slow by comparison. They're in on sight already. Garda is already into a wild position. This is dangerous, man. I mean, trying to reclear this corner. The players are all over the place right now. Just no one's looking. Lower section of arcade. Anybody watching this one? It's Heat. Can't claim the kill. A double swing. Perfect nice. timing from on high. This is just wide out in the open. Nice try. Has to dodge the FRZ, you the can do this. Good. 1v5s is normal to for end. you. And this round just demonstrating oh, nice the fundamental lack of understanding, I think, from MRBR of how to contain a player like Garnet. Garnet is on Neon. If he uh, pushes out one Neon area of the map splitting. and uses that tunnel, he can be in all sorts of spaces. You need to spread your team out more than playing four yeah, one uh, well, defaults on Fracture. I don't and I think this is see it in the same way as uh, with Cypher, for example. Like, and forgetting the stunts on Neon, you got to be able to like do them uh, on the fly. And, and it's more about having a system hard. for them rather than memorizing locations. Uh, compared to Cypher, for example, or Viper or um, whatever, you just memorize map. locations and you don't really Actually need a system as much. Because um, the what know, if what do you do when there's a smoke in the way and you don't see the, the area for your um, punish, stun? There were stuns in play, they were ready or you're getting sort of rushed or enemies are running away, etc. You gotta be able to find them on the fly, I feel like. And, it is and that's the key to, um, around, to Neon. So, listen, risks can be taken by MIBR. And this is where playing slowly and looking for picks, like the shot that FRZ just took, this is where this makes a lot of sense. You know, you don't yeah. need to group up and try and do something quickly. So or at least not until you have a player advantage. Yeah. Right now, just working away around the map, playing together here is three. If they take this arcade control, it's just an I'm surprised nobody uh, pushed. Oh, yeah, I mean, they have to watch, watch us for Fox, no of course. Tower. Anti-flash being played. Nice. Easy peasy, it seems like, for Talon once more against the weaker guns. So, 6-2 to two being that scoreline. And now we get to see MIBR put more money in the bank. Why have these weapons? What plan have they got? They need a plan. And they've invested enough in the prior eco round that four of them still have light armor. Not the best position to go into, and the timeouts as well have not created success for MIBR. Talon are just ripping them to pieces. I would expect something aggressive again from Talon. It's been working every time, pushing Garnet into a wild spot. And it looks like Garnet's going to try and take Tunnel again by pushing out Arcade. But this clash is more important over a dish. Sounds good. It's going to be a double face there, I believe. The also, I noticed that the um, the reason there. they have this three-man really squad... Also, here, here, this is the reason I would want a safer trap while you're there. That, way but they, they have so the Freeman squad the map That's so able to well, um, knife could and avoid having to use the flash from Breach and then uh, and you can use his when you enter site. So that's one of the first times that Talon have gone for something aggressive. The north side crunch and MRBR have shut it down. Mostly off the back of JCC's utility. Who is stepping up more than he did in map one? It's just been a little too little. The percentage play now for Talon is to try and take these guns away. The crowd is louder when Jit Boyce is close to them. Agile might have taken a fight, but it's traded. Cruz just seeing if anybody will wade into him. Yeah, that aggression actually does pay off. Pushing back that north side crunch now. So, option for them, and they built up All right. that Rolling Thunder once more. Another tool to work with. It's a big one. It definitely is. And MRBR's problem has just been that lack of decisive action, which they managed to find in that, map, uh, in that round. 
They killed the players over a dish and then take it's pass. fairly obvious that yeah, probably take pass. a push off the back of that, especially with players behind you. In some ways, the hand was forced. Interesting to see Talon taking a timeout here, actually. Oh, timeouts. It doesn't really feel like what they're doing is failing or they need to take some kind of strategy adjustment, but maybe just trying to hold the momentum of MIBR before it can begin. Yeah. Very possibly. Uh, you can tell that the first Brazilian team is here. Mm. This is a home <laughs> crowd. And the fans I would want to so see more variety in the um, yeah. They're out here in droves. Traps, the atmosphere is really. so different. And they are not exactly being treated to the start that they would have liked. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have dampened the mood, though. No, not quite. Happy to see. Do you think both teams both have a good agent to uh, pick for this map? Well. I do, but I don't think Killjoy is well as essential, really. Yeah, you kind of don't need the Killjoy on Fracture. Loud, obviously, the massive Especially versus match, uh, Neon. She's very popular now. And I feel like Cypher is much better, but um, Social Boy's maybe a more a fan of uh, Killjoy. I would have given an edge to MIBR, yeah. But a small one. Not even a 60 40 game, in my opinion. See, a bit closer you don't, really, you don't really have much to stop her when she's running in. No trip by or anything. Wow. So, What's up, Kane? Yeah, they are from Thailand. You were hitting up the Kaiperinhas. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Apparently. But okay, rifle round on board here. 6 3 the score. As Talon have taken a timeout, what do they adjust? So putting the Neon on the other side of the map now, playing Halls. And in these kind nice. of moments, normally. The important thing, coming up. if the Halls players like FRZ take contact and realize there's a three-player stack from the defense in Halls, Heat is supposed to go and help them all the way through site and go and help and backstab to put pressure on Jit Boys. Yeah. Can they identify what the defensive hold looks like and can they find the right solution? Smokes drop fast lane as well. There we are pushing through and it is oh, going to be an attempt to at that concern. Heat has been taken care of. Dropped immediately. Still MIBR oh, will be claiming this site. The Rolling Thunder's gonna be used without too much backing this up. It's only to try and clear through into halls so that RGL Meister can take that space once more. The flash play, it's dodged to the side. Quick reactions from him to be able to stay alive and stay active. It's a great kill by RGL and I think it changes the tide of this fight. Sushi Boys with an operator does not want to get involved in this retake particularly. Unless Fox finds something. Nice try. And he can't. Slightly off when it comes to the yeah, got to chill with the um, operator. Not the weapon to retake, as you were saying, Josh. Just needs to run away now. But MIBR starting to get a little bit behind them. And I think Talon's timeout might have helped MIBR there. MIBR need all the help they can get. They need to talk to Bazooka as much as they can. Yeah. If he could get wired Bazooka directly into their is such a good comms, name, by the way. They'd Bazooka. Go for that. <laughs> so Talon taking the minute there to speak to the coach on the opposite side, Zeus, I think I think that's helped MIBR. And the reason that I say that is because you didn't see any of that hesitation. There was <coughs> no early prodding for a pick. They just took the exact space that they needed, went into the site, Heat went to try and help his players. And yeah, even though Heat dies, they do end up with Hall's control, a good post plant position, and RGL anticipates that play happening and secures the post plant. That was just like a on paper textbook, how you attack A with a neon from drop. Sushi boys really push out of position now. Cool placement. Only landing across the map. I think that was at the uh, oh, in tower, though. There of tower, but now oh, not the shorty. Lane, shorty. Not the shorty. Told in the angle, what and is that, that? Is just okay. He's like the timing. Oh wait, there's a key over there. Flames the kill. Sushi boys also just waiting in and out of these smokes. Very dangerous when he does have that shotgun as the second. FRZ. Get him, get him, get him. Gonna be fading now, and there was a nice hiding. Where they could have fallen. So far, I might be out finding it hard to really gain any sort of space. I mean, how do you get the plant down? Jit Boy is just waiting for the plant noise, and then he's going to send the ult in. I don't think they're going to go for a retake here so much as just oh, wow. flooding in. I mean, and Heat, is he going to try and find space for them to rotate off to A? They're so committed to B. I think this is just a flank so that he can try and fight through spawn, but there's 45 seconds left in this round, roughly. This Cruz is holding for this flank as well. More than aware of this. That Heat's flank is not going to help them get the spikes down, though. No. It's and too the more late. The time gets brought down, the less time they're really going to be having to work with. There's the rolling thunder, though. And Frozen nice tries try. to play close, tries to play within the safety of his cages. Even if he doesn't get pushed, from the cage is not lasting long enough there. This one, Cruz holding the close angle. They need to just try and clear it oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. eventually returning fire, but he does claim two. And the crossfires oh. are enough. 
Nice try. And despite the fact that he actually found the timing last on round that, before, before switching, was way too good. Yeah. Switch boys says ulti. Cipher is ulti. Give me an ulti and bring ulti. Going for a straight up sight hit and just reaching a brick wall. That shot there, man. Certainly doesn't help when your KO dies off the rip. Moore is falling. No knife, you know, no counterplay to the breach shot, particularly in terms of suppressing him. 7 4. If MRBL can get this round, it looks like a much better half. Yeah, it's definitely going to be more respectable. Final round of this first half. But the weaponry is so poor. After the jump peak, rifle's going to oh, be exchanged, dude. and it's helped him out massively. The bait. Sushi boys. The I bet you they didn't expect that. that utility. There was an aftershock at his feet, but I bet you they didn't expect that. That's a smart bait. There, just a smoker drop. That's all that was Nothing needed. too special, but it's... It's not always we see that. Garnet is in a position to completely crush this. Oh, oh. I don't think there was any utility off of it. Missed the shot. And now the question is, do the defenders start flooding into B? Because if so, FRZ's got a good timing. Can Smoke he allow this alarm bot to go robot. down? No. Nope. Ah, oh, never mind. He spotted him. Yeah, it does spot him indeed. It's a really clear through tunnel again by MIBR now with 50 seconds. And you could argue that this opens up a bit of space for MIBR. We could let the kill J move to spawn the and then smoke the robot there. At some point here, Morris just has to call for them to commit. This Obviously, he didn't know that he had that info though. That she was moving. That's a good first kill with Garnet's falling. Grand left. scheme of things there for them. 25 they seconds. They need to react off of this, man. I mean, listen, they don't have a lot of time to work with. Foxy still has the KO nade. They're only just working their way into the site. There's going to be 15 seconds left. The spam coming through. When is the spike going to start to get planted? Oh, he got suppressed. Yeah, moves backwards, just goes and plays within the safety here. Tucks into the pocket, so they will eventually get it. But there we go, it's a common Oof. enough angle. And spam through the smoke will do it. Now the lockdown. And All there's Stolte. The so RGL, Meister will have something for this one. There it is. Answered in kind. Murray's taking a fight. Yeah, you Rather need to use that Stolte there. Time, and that's frozen. Late lurking, finding his target. Two players just trying to make the most you know of it exactly now. exactly where they are. Again, working their way forwards. It's a flash to try and potentially reclear this. There was util out in his hand. The tap on the spike. The, flank. the reclear off to the side. Oof. Enough for them. The fifth round finally. They really tried. In this half here for MIBR, and it is going to be more. Well played. Well played by MIBR. And look Definitely. at that. Cypher That's top the only fragging. Thing that saves them. This half, again, looked like MIBR were getting battered every time they tried to stand back up. But 7-5 is good enough. If they can win the pistol, this is still a respectable scoreline. i got to say, though, it look, feels still like Talon are in control. And MIBR are grasping at straws. They've just managed to pluck out the long straw in that final few rounds. And so far, the edge just really in the side of Talon's camp. But map number two, the first half is done. Let's find out what the desk has to say. Thank you very much, uh, guys. Now, it's a different map here, but Mimi, the level of Valorant, what we were ex what we uh, had from Talon on the first map, it's the same. It hasn't dropped. Yeah, it looked like Talon was going to run away with that half, like the casters were saying. But at the end, there was some resurgence out of MIBR, and it looks like they might have been able to get themselves back into things. Yeah, really good stabilization coming through, and I kind of do agree with... Now, uh, we have to see for defense, though, because MIBR now you're defending with a Cypher. But we'll talk about some good That's a whole stuff, different story uh, than defending with Talon. Because the, the synergy in their util has still been excellent. You see MIBR trying to creep over, get themselves in under this B site. Rolling Thunder comes across, but they instantly have a stun as well as his orbital strike to completely and utterly mess up RGL's day. He can't make it out of there. The spike does eventually end up getting planted, but being as low as he is, Murray's gets taken down at the end by the Nano Swarm. So I mean, the preset stuff here from the side of Talon and the just chaining of Util together has made a really painful run here for MIBR so far. Yeah, and the stakes are high for MIBR in this one. You lose here, you're going home in Yeah, I'm expecting some crowd. trips as well that are good. For but the people here in Brazil and for we'll this see. team to be able to find something more in this tournament. And towards the second part of that half, things were looking better. We saw oh, ulti was on him, man, Adam. These guys, the brim ulti, they kind of if you mean that. Had to adapt a little bit more. Early on, they were gambiting. Heat's life kind of make or breaking off if he could get in 
initial play, and it was never really working for them. But after they got Bazooka into the mix, the vibes went up. They started smiling. It was less of this sadness from the team and from the fans, and they needed to channel that energy going deeper into the second half if they want to be able to come back. Yeah, there's a lot more to cheer for here with this with this five-round count. I mean, if you get to that eight and four, it does feel a hell of yeah, a lot more. Yeah, they bleak. definitely look demotivated, but absolutely um, possible. I feel like that was um, earlier, like when it was the uh, rounds, but it didn't nice really win. Up at seven to seven. Well, it's definitely a doable, but they don't have a choice because if they lose here, they will be I'm going great, home. Neil. And they doing definitely great, don't want to be doing that you? in front of the home crowd. Brandon Sideshow, there is a lot of pressure riding on the second half. I'm happy to see more safer here. And speaking of that pressure, and, um, we're talking about it's better Cypher. Really, I mean, Every time we see Cypher, it's better Cypher than before. It is JZZ who has been is the suit custom made? Uh, I didn't make it. Well it's from uh, AliExpress. Yeah, having a much I have a hat too, but it's too small. So, so quiet on yeah. they, um, when, when I ordered so it, they didn't factor in the amount of here. lineups I have in my head. They thought that was Arena main or something, you know. No offense to Arena mains. Just any sort of play that you try and make. Early days, of course, if you try to go through that hall's uh, section, as we just saw, but a bit of a pivot now from Talon. Buying their time, they slow it down once more, and it's a bit of a re-clear, as you can see, towards that arcade area. But then an instant commitment. This trip is really interesting, actually. It's for the canteen push. No, okay. Wow. I spotted him. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. spotted aware. <clears throat> around this one to a degree that plant location is a little bit out in the open and this reflank by mbi has already found some decent value crews still holding close to the corner it's going to be cleared ah, enough damage not the heat falls relatively easily and it's going to be that double swing dealt with very well played by cruz frc looking to re-clear the reflank and mbi are coming back into this 3v2 what is happening yeah, why is that brimstone looking back Back end of this one, being able to take control of this site, but they need to start to get to the fuse online. I believe the post plant utility being played here. Cruz did have that. Molly Sushi Boys found. It's out in the open, but a miracle is going to be needed. A bit of spam, but he just doesn't know the angle in time and a flash. Yeah, it wasn't even Finish on the. Um, Enough for them to win out that, on that position. Well, good closer. job by MIBR. MIBR. Very, Very good. Even score line. That is the lifeline that MIBR needed. Absolutely. The desk were talking about how important this pistol round was. And it should get them up to a 7 7 scoreline. And considering they weren't in control of this map for the first, I don't know, nine rounds, makes a big difference. And you see the talent They game tried to do here. the kill jewel lineups, but it's going to be was too to early. quickly onto sites and then play post plant utility. There's, there's more to it, obviously. But that's going to be a big factor. Oh, wow. Okay. Little and we force by coming. Been a couple of teams that have been trying this at the event, despite the fact that we do have the Stinger Nurse live. I think it's a great yeah, idea. You can't get past that. If you get the plant out, <laughs> why not? A bit of extra money. You can offset it, and well, double swing through. Actually, I think they can. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. yeah, and Garnet slow to punish no, I don't the know. player. I think so there's like small it, stones and rocks and stuff MIBR, that you can stand they on there, but. To take holes uh, control. I mean, Garnet is in the holes right now, but he always has to be worried about JZZ. They have retaken that control, as you said. Now, the players out in the open. Knife close, stun. Fox really nowhere to really play towards, just trying to hug the close wall to make sure he survives, but he doesn't dodge the flash mm. in time, and that is well Everyone executed. gone. Good job. Not very good by uh, Talon there. Another big round by JZZ, too didn't really have the biggest performance on Haven. He was mostly just playing Fade, following Heat around, trying to support him. But now that he's on Breach and he's able to play these positions where he's getting to Rifle, man, he's having an impact. This play for Halls, the trade is great, but then his decision to drop so far back forces those these two talent kills. players into it. I, uh, and he just picks those. a great angle and annihilates them both with a Bulldog. Excellent play. Yeah. Really, that's, that's another massive bonus for MIBR is that their economy starts to bloom because of that force that Talon ended up opting for yeah you're right keep the bonus going what do they find oh knife for a main by the way turn the side of this oh far lucky just in the open careful headshot so, yeah, can't be making mistakes like that <clears> because 
Here's the wire though. I think they hear it. Yeah, they well, got the wire. Nice little angle that he was finding there from Heat. The Brimstone smoked Heat Amen push. and the wire got Not cleared. Tower, no bite Typical him. Brimstones. And Fox went back for a second bite of the apple. JZZ punishes him for it. It's B that's under pressure though, whether MRBR know it or not. And Tower is going to be somewhere that FRC has to look towards in a moment. Yeah, for sure. Lee glides to the side. Nice, really back down. Easily cleans. Frozen really there we go. doing some decent damage from on high. That anchor position. And it's nice. It's clean. It keeps a lot of stuff alive for MIBR. So they've got a good delayed bonus round here in round 16. And the only thing that would have been even better for them is if JCZ had gotten one of those kills. Because he's one away from that breach ultimate. It does feel like everything's going their way. Can they play for one of these orbs? Can they try to push JZZ and Heat aggressive somewhere? Dish, for example, doesn't look like it. The fault line required to control holes. Well, Unlikely. you got a... Shallow stun. As Neon, no, not Neon, as Talon. You don't really have much to uh, deal with the Cypher here. Because she can get past it really quickly, but Talon just waited out, and now they're going to be starting to re-hit through, taking control of Sand. There are players waiting for them. Let's see what an MIBR can really do about this one. The answer is quite a bit. Doubled up, playing inside the smoke, the weaker guns. It matters not. Nice. Flash round the side. It is a nice dodge from Sushi Boys, and he's still alive in the action. Orbital strike right on top of that. Unfortunate heads. ulti. The Frozen will be Unfortunate dealt with. Unfortunate ulti. They back away. They bide their time for a little bit longer. Talon, <coughs> too willing to jump into the fray. Not when there's so many unknowns on that side. This was a 3v5, though, and Talon found a couple of kills without having to strain or stretch themselves. Neon is going to be ready to roll it back. On Haven, so many of these 3v3, 2v2 scenarios went the way of Talon. They just got nice. They're sending more and more people to be here. Decided to cut noise. Never mind. The defenders spread Brim out. Going back. JCC has got to step up. He's been good for it so far, and he is again. That's beautiful. The guy's coming alive, truly. Not going to be able to use too many abilities, but still locking down this angle, and he's bought The more time, time you take, the, the more time Neon Just has to run. Play. And the talent guy is seeing what they can get done. What a swing by Fox. The stun, it's a little bit late. Nice. Down and he they took too much time really there. Back him up, making sure talent took too, way too much time. In it truly does feel like MOBR. Dude, are running away with this one. Are they, are they copies of each other? <laughs> Someone I went control C, control V. Screams there. <laughs> it was a great shutdown as the sight hit came through. I think FRZ getting trapped in the orbital strike is not optimal, obviously. Yeah. And it's probably a bit bold as well for Maris to go searching towards Sands on his own. But how they dealt with that uh, sight racist? hit initially no, coming no, through. No, no, no. Stranger, that's not racist, my man. I think that's where Talon are going to run into most of their problems. I th I thought Brent, they were brothers, about the my guy. Here, look. They, they all have the same glasses. They all have the same hair. They look like they're brothers. That's not racist, Good. my guy. That's stopping the neon from going fast into places. And it's not necessarily going to be like seen twins with are lots of kills, with lots calling of people twins. Wires. But it's more so the hesitation that it brings the into Talon's it, game. Man. Yeah, it's the threat of it, because you're seeing this, honestly. MIBR, they're dumping utility at the beginning of these rounds into the hall's control just to push it back. Because Talon feel like that's one of the only I areas... Specifically really talking about these guys, quickly. obviously, you know. They want to wait towards B. Obviously. It's got to be, again, a little bit slower in pace. You can't just run in with the Neon. No, you can't. And I think that's one of the major advantages to MIBR's composition. So Talon taking that time out, they're going to be looking for the right answer. Yeah, they really look like they are, Crunchy. Round, the I would be surprised. In their hands, but Imagine they're just randoms met up at the arena. Cheeky, maybe? Just a coincidence. If Talon Our best friends for life. Opening kill or two with these four sheriffs and a guardian, the breach ult has no answer. Chip Boy still holding on to this knife. one. Yeah, the knife finds everything. It's delayed across the map, and it catches on to, I believe, four of them. Are coming back. But Talon, Talon are pretty fine here, just spreading out, trying to look for picks. And I don't think... It's not like MIBR should be... I think he doesn't know about the... No, he knows all, about the wire. He must we've be. We've seen so many thrifties exchanged in the series. Thrifties, half buys, that kind of thing. Yeah. And Sushi Boys has just diffused one of the trap wires over towards Tree. Looks like the other one might be taken out over at Dish now, too. 
Nice. There we go. Who is the best the of your really fave Reyna and the Yora? Yora. That was... He opened up for them. An angle being found. God, it's, what is that shot? A start of a flash to push him back. And he wants to take the refight. Guys reloading. Heat. Flash as well. Trying nice to try. play up a bit as well. Fox is attempting there to we go, Fox. What is that? Reset one, two, one side to the other. And he's still holding on to this Guardian. Could be doing some decent damage with the spike planted, but dropped down. It's down onto Cruz, honestly. What can he get done? And he hears him, finds him. They know what RGL is now, but is that 1v2? And it's his clever play. The discipline Diffused there it. by yeah, RGL. Not you have it. Wide nice. swing that one. Plays Good his job. life really nicely. Good job. Well, uh, Sky and Fade, they are two different... Um, well, they're different, right different categories than the first time Duelist, right? Seen them get a substantial lead. Um, I would say Fade Next rifle round over Sky so for um, Initiator. And Yoro Foxy over um, Reyna for Duelist. Kill, I think they had this one wrapped up as soon as the plant isn't really for where Cruz is playing. And a much quieter map too for Cruz. Now that he's not playing the lurking role, and just more playing where his team needs him. He looks like his former self. If this, if this goes to map three, keep that in mind. But for now, big clash at arcade. Both Neons heading straight in. Oh, fighting straight up. Going absolutely man for man with the flashes over the top. But it is Talon who come out on top. <clears throat> the spike has been dropped behind him. And that might be hard. It's an instant reaction from them. This is what I wanted to see. There's no hesitation in this play. You had one trip wire there on B. Down. They are a little bit awkward. There is a gap. I Who do you want to win? I want to see uh, both teams win. FRC it's very hard to. Um, he to well, past Sushi Boys. MIBR. Sushi Boys I lean towards MIBR. So they have no clue that FRZ is here. Unfortunately, wow. I mean, he's going to hear those. Typical Cipher, home okay, arena. Oh. Talon just opting into trying to noise bait. I think How about actually, you? yeah. Yeah, that running was some footsteps and then just going to be walking back. Wow, they've sold that so well. Not just noise baiting, but actually sending a full player over there to put down the turret. It really sells it. Oh, it makes it, it feel it like this is an A hit completely. This plant's going to go down for free. And what an open post yeah. position that they can get. They should have Big just used the camera there and go well, for B instead. It's going to be nice for them. Oh, down. nice. Okay. Well, the first time we've seen that one almost just wrapped up the round for them. Too late to and go get the camera too. This would have been a 2v2 retake had Sushi Boys been found. But as Close. it is, it's an impossibility. Talon once more coming out on top when both teams clash and a trade situation happens. I think they've done that every time. And then also finessing a really crucial, uh, you know, 4v3, 3v3 kind of moment. It's hyper intelligent in the moment there to just <clears> try and bait with the footsteps. And push Sushi Boys in his advanced position, like you said. Prior, he puts down the turret and really sells it. Next round, vitally important. Whoever loses this, they're going to be knocked down onto a weird buy. And there are major ults to play with all over the place. MIBR, though, don't <clears> have <throat> the most important two that they can use to deny the spike plant. Cypher trap in the middle of sight. So should be talent and here. The question is in the execution. The coffers are full when it comes to the ultimate. A stun, no command. This is where you see that tempo increased. They're it's careful fast, pushing that as well. The one side of it just they take that alternative route Talon because they're afraid of trap oh, wires. Is that? Just spam? I think maybe a trap onto Garnet. Yeah, trap was on site there. Might be. That hit them. Definitely got the job done, and that movement is just far too clean. The bait and switch go. just cannot find a clean target. Eleventh round coming in. Despite the spike being down. What more can be awarded for them? Sushi Boys doesn't lose his nerve in a moment. He does claim the easy kill for them, but they need a bit more than that, and that might just be enough. Now up top is the tower. Oh, flash my play. Spray down, but Frozen more does tower. again get that trade. And now there's a lockdown. It's not a great position, though. Let's push them away from the spike, though. They won't be able to stick this. Time has been bought. There is a crossfire now. JCC needs to win this fight now, locking it down. He was weak, though. He's the game. The fuse. Sushi Boys. Waiting, 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 and it's a full stick! Oh, so close. But not enough done! Ah. Talon win it with the Red Bull clutch, and they silence the crowd. I wanted to see him turn what around or something. What a clutch by Sushi Boys! But I the think I, I even I... Like, if I was in that perfect. position, I would definitely 
not be thinking about turning around. I would be too uh, busy looking, looking for it. Really you, you that was an accidental collateral, by the way, because of the um, opposite side trap, wire. trap wires. So he doesn't get mm. caught by Fox's ult. So the defensive game plan there really did the work from MRBR, like, yeah. but look at the reaction. Holy moly, Bazooka. I should have told I mean, them to play Cypher. Away. What a heartbreaker, what a big play from Sushi Boys. And Josh, you said it, such an important round to win prior because look at this economy now from MIBR. They have rounds to work with in terms of just having that bit of buffer. The fault line, this is a very risky play, but why not take risks? When a weaponry is this bad. Uh, okay. You yeah, I couldn't get out there. Oh, that's that from Talon, it's sure a risky. Deal with heat. It's risky. And heat is alone isolated so much more than Garnet is. Whether it's his decision making or not being on the same page as his team backing him up, I feel like Garnet's always got his team tight, filling that space. Yeah. And heat tends to challenge alone a little bit more, a bit more of a loose cannon. Can MIBR win this round? They still have quite a bit of, I mean, good ultimates. A weapon in here too. The round's not over. Got it. What? He's just this? wading his way all the way through into their spawn and trying to watch for him. Mm -hmm. He's got it pulled down. Still There's taking no the fight. He's just running nice. and gunning. Oh, and he finds oh, oh. the two kills. Angel Meister. But by the no way, uh, when you're dazed as Neon, the does the ult is still fire the at the same rate? So much time, so much space. Because that looked like it he does. An absolute menace, I didn't know not that. Not a care in the world. Is it? <laughs> not a care in the world. He's one of the most fun rookies that I've ever watched on the big stage. Because if that's true, I'm roster. I'm just gonna eat the daisies while I use ulti. Puts that whimsy into that primary jewelist player. All right. Gotta be careful not to let this round get out of hand. Oh but yeah, do your do your lineups. Do your lineups. The positioning as well. Line up Larry in the lobby. Already see the cruiser just taking the necessary measures. He's already just backing into their spawn so that he well, can yeah, just orbital strike. Knives, I am new. I just thought the laser Morris for some reason would be uh, slower. It would have economic implications. Do take that double swing, but I mean, Jitboy, for example, now only has light armor or a bad weapon. It's not that they're trying to win the round, but just try and make things easier for yourself now that things are locked up 10 10. Back and forth, back and forth. Cruz has got enough to drop actually as well for Jim. I so has I don't think there will three be any, here. any problems here with the buy. Can do some work with that. Do some damage, I mean. It is, Adam. It is. Just wait until the off. next one, too. With Loud and Genji. Attempt to make something happen. That RGLG one is going to be a roller coaster for sure. Gonna be important. Looks like a bit of a north side crunch, although those B players aren't going too aggressive. That utility being thrown near the beginning. Bit of a default, but there is no presence from MIBR in A halls. It's actually free game, and Fox has realized it. Look at this, just knife doesn't spot anything. Works his way in. A lot of space for free, and if MIBR try and perform some sort of reaction off of it, I mean, Jesus is not exactly in the greatest of position to react with a fault line. In fact, it doesn't even have it off cooldown. It does have the ult, though. Oh yeah, no worries, Adam. Get to sleep as well. I'll sleep my man. Dude, I appreciate it. Leaving it on. Nothing You're a real one. Look how absurdly safe Cruz is playing. He has a molly lineup. He has orbital strike. I mean, he's so far in their spawn. Uh, he has no intention of being caught by Murray's assault. Okay, so here, here it comes, the null command, and Cruz miles away. This refight in horse is going to be so important now. The Rolling Thunder cuts across, and that is going to be the one kill found. Fox. <laughs> I wonder what now. his goal was there. His team to find it. What is that? I mean, Jip Boy is out an absolute miracle with that one. The old one two punch. Nice. And listen, the ultimate pushes them away from the spike. The round is claimed, but. A lot of all like this went down. Cruz still has his, uh, what an his own there. Insane map by Jibboy. That's free old is gone. He, I, I feel like he looked a little lost on Haven. Yeah. Maybe Good. that was just him warming up to the stage. But oh my word, these unexpected players just are taking dink, dink. turns on talent to step up right when their team needs them to. The the stun spray down. I don't think I've seen anything like that. Both headshots connecting. Here. So unfortunate for MIBR. Yeah. I still have it, but um, 
too sp I have too big of a head draw in terms of coming out to use it, so but I'll be honest, I haven't fixed it, but um, thought I'd uh, use it anyways. Amazing from talent. Yeah. They knew exactly how the retake or was going to work. Anyways, man. They had a molly lineup. You know, they have orbital strike for that. They, their players are set up in good positions. I mean, there were so many layers to it, right? Cruz was playing, you know, almost towards B main. Just because he didn't want to play within range and an old command that was yeah. wading through just so he would have his abilities ready for that post plant lineup. And MIBR had chosen to play retake instead of challenging them as they got onto the site. Yeah. Do we go for Cypher Man? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. We saw them have some success after speaking to BCK in like round 10, like round 10, 11, 12, something like that. They had a lot more success. After taking a bit of a break, Adam, can they find I appreciate it becoming a member, a mega member, mega mountain. Welcome to the mountain, my man. I thank you so much for your membership. Thank you, my dude. They're only two and enjoy your new remotes as well. Enjoy them. Home, and it's not far. These guys are all based in Sao Paulo. It would be brutal. I all right. Like in some sense, more brutal to watch the tournament going on We have a Brimstone ulti with Mollis. And know that you're not allowed to participate Do not anymore. let him a difficult decision made by MIBR. Them. Not spending all their money. Instead, going for the half by understanding that they have. Well, battle odds, penguins. So that is a good idea. I'll try that. Able to make it 11 to 11. Instead, playing for that OT. That's a brutal decision. That is a great idea. I didn't think of that. One and I mean, he just in the close corner, opting not to try and trade that kill as it came out, holding it, hoping that it wasn't going to get cleared. Frozen, seeing what he can do, but yeah, now you can make a long trip wires. You can go like this. Wait. Far too in control in comment sections on any wide. video, by the way. Gunners running rings around them. The door opened up. Just Pop trap up play. Well, you caught yourself in the moment. Matters not, though. Talon have two attempts to send MIBR packing. Still and got the ulti and long command. An there, I I'm, not, I'm not criticizing the decision too much, but... One of the big problems is that you don't drag out the ultimate from Cruz. That orbital strike for the post plan has just been hovering like a sword over MIBR's head the yep. entire time. Yeah. They need to fight them. They need to stop these rounds uh, no, from uh, YouTube doesn't have uh, animated um, animated Even emotes on um, on here. But um, I'm going to add some more emotes uh, pretty soon. And I'll make a key emote as well. I'll see if I can make it animated, moment. but I don't think it's possible. To the side, another stun down at his feet. That's an orbital strike being used aggressively. They saw players onto the site. They wanted to take a fight to them, but an absolute miracle. The spray in the corner. Say, what more can you do? He's already claimed three down, but dropped to the knees. Can they deny the res? Here Not comes Heat. go for this one yet. This is an attempt to deny it. Needs to be a big one. Yeah, no idea what they are. It is well supported. Oof. The doors well are done. Wide well they done. Talon alive. just threw that out of the window with sending it with their their own notice there. It's another miraculous round from JZZ. 23 and 16 right now. About to get another ultimate online. I mean, look at what he does here again. This is the absurd. spray down. You can't ask anymore. You can't ask anymore. He's doing everything for MIBR. When Heat is struggling, JZZ is stepping up. One chance. I to think take it's it overtime. I think we'll get overtime. One chance to stay alive. In this tournament, uh, it's a kill trick. Dude, he got countered. Big time. Eric has been playing towards Sand in that moment. Comes off really nicely, still the trade. One from above you as well. Still in this for a moment longer. He with the Here's the overtime coming in. Around the flank. Finding his target still. You can't overheat in this moment Whoa. though. MIBR. They had an advantage, the door. but it's slipping away from them. The crowd thought that was it. They thought we were headed to OT and now suddenly tension descending it's upon just the place. An instant dampener. The spike's gonna be planted. Yes, There's nothing to offset this one. And the rolling thunder is in the hands of Jip Boys. The breach battle all comes down to this, doesn't it? They've both been so good all map. Jesus Does Chipboy finds... find the timing? One kill to really get his own ult online. It's gonna be the stun working its way across. Rolling Thunder to push back that one avenue heat. It does connect. Time running low. A flash to push them back. Oh, Once dude, they're buying so much time. Fragment nade. All the utility being used to just delay an MIBI. It's a heartbreaker. Planet around the corner, the time running so, so low. It needs everything and it will oof. not happen. Oof, 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 Talon, oof, oof. they upset the hometown team. Dude, that they was take it in two intense. Maps. 
What a performance from the Pacific team. Um, They're known for upsets. Really, we, you can see it man, all my, my, just landing on Cruz there. Really the well played by MIBR still. Yeah. Into the next round. They almost got over the there. against EG. MIBR sent home. Devastating disappointment. They made a run of it there on Fracture. GG's. It looked like it was going OT. So close. There's one more Brazilian team. You know, Loud, right really after this. Stepping up to the plate. JZZ just went nuts in that final map, but only so much he could really do. Yeah, especially when Jitboy is also Push off awesome, man. Off. Just hosting a watch party. How about you, man? A phenomenal match, genuinely. We got to see a really even performance with Talon coming out, impressing us all. Yeah. I was impressed by their game plan. I was impressed by the individual ability. I loved the way that they were setting things up. And Garnet, too. Garnet win rate so far in this Jitboy, tournament. actually. Uh, let me see if I can find two. it. Both of their rookie players. Wow, what great pickups. I don't really know, but replace, I'll check. You know, Surf, Scary, Padafan. There's a range of really respected players. And yeah. these rookies stepped up. We uh, that was gonna it's not very head, good. You know, we were talking it's to not Cruz very good. At some point in the interview, 16%. I was asking him, you know, what do those new players end up bringing to the roster? And he said, well, you know, we're just hoping to get experience in the crowd. Fracture 50 50. Give it a good cheer for the players as 10%. well as they wave on the stage. Talon clearly happy with this one. I think well, he's not played everywhere either. Against them in this particular matchup, there was so much that could have gone wrong. Pressure the word of the day, honestly, as well, when we're talking about it and the impact it can have on a lot of these teams. But Talon have rose to the task and now they're going to be rewarded with that opportunity to continue deeper into this lock in tournament. Definitely showcasing that they Kildre are. Kildre is very strong, though, but keep in mind, if everyone is playing Kildre, Kildre is automatically going to be uh, of, uh, having good win rates, you know? Yeah. As the competition got stiffer, it looked like, oh, maybe these guys aren't going to be able to get the wins over Optic, that kind of thing. But here, it's a great start. And for the Brazilian crowd, they still have another opportunity to root for All right, I'm going to go heroes. take off the suit because Loud, playing next against Gen -G. Loud has to pick. Oh, well, someone in uh, Loud or Gen -G has to pick well. it to, uh, to come back on. That's and uh, I'll grab some water as well. Not so I'll be exactly back soon. how they wanted things to go starting out here. MIBR, I'm sure we're going to see them competing, you know, in the America's League, looking stronger than this, too. But they've got some good learning points, I think, to pull away from this event. I think this is a defining moment for this team, you know. And look back at this, obviously, there's an entire season left to play for. This is just the very beginning. But learn from the mistakes, you know. Move forwards to the America's League and maybe be a contender, truly. And you know who th I think, I just saw him on the screen actually and it triggered this thought, but you know who I think deserves a ton of credit and tends to get so slept on? Foxy. Fox is sure. always there bringing big rounds and he's also leading the team. I mean, I, I feel like the, the game plan, the way that they uh, were quickly reacting to stuff, a lot of that can be put down to uh, what Foxy's doing. Yeah. And then also being able to get so much value on the sky on Haven, the KO here. He's one of those players that is doing a lot with the talent that's available to him in that Apex sphere. I think he deserves a ton of credit for it. No, I couldn't agree more. You can vote for your MVP as well with the QR code. Garnets, Cruz, Chip Boys. That's a tough choice. It is a tough choice. There's a lot of options, honestly. I think, yeah, you could give it to a, a variety of the players, honestly, for being able to take that because it, it felt like a team effort towards the end there on map two. It definitely was a team effort. I think the player that performed the best over both of the maps was Garnet to me. Sure. I, yeah. I, I don't think he was the best player on either of the maps. I think Cruz dominated map one and Jit Boy was great map two. Mm -hmm. But Garnet was always there and Garnet always was stepping up to the plate. Yeah, no, certainly. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. But, you know, plenty more action left to witness as well today because, of course, that match number three that we were talking about, which was that, uh, that loud yeah. game versus Jit Gen G. It's me coming up after this one as well. We're going to go to a short break on the other side of things. Of course, our desk is setting it all up, so do not go anywhere. You know you don't want to miss it.
All right, all right, all right. No, no I think I think they are actually doing that uh, for sure. Uh, that it's um, calculated properly, so to say. But sometimes, you know, Killjoy wins ver versus uh, no Killjoy. And then, of course, it's uh, 100%. All right, big match coming in with Genji and, Cl and Cloud, I mean, Loud. Who do you guys think wins? I think 2-0 for Loud. But um, as we saw here, Talon just proved me wrong with uh, the MIB, MIBR pick I did. It's a 2-0 day so far. Shubham, sleep well, sleep well. I'll sleep, my dude. You're clicking X on the pop screen you had on the screen. <laughs> you say loud wins 2-0. I wonder, do we have do we have any any Gen G fans here? I like Gen G, but um, I'm just more with Loud here. Let's take a look at the players they have on Loud. Where are they? Here, here, here. Did it do any um, switches? I don't know if they did. I can't remember. Aspas, I know it was here. Let me take a look at Lycopedia. When are you gonna go pro? I've already been pro. And uh, I'm doing uh, some uh, different things, like content and so on. I like content more now. But I was pro in a different game. Um. <coughs> One second. <coughs> Got something in the, got something in my throat there. It was the hopes and dreams of Genji. Accidentally went in there. <clears throat> I was going to check, did he switch players? And yes. Kawan's, Kawan's in. And Tui's. I hope I said it correctly. <clears throat> How much water do you drink in a day? Um, Probably 4 liters at least. About 4 liters. But during these streams, I drink way more. Uh, which game? Well, uh, Heroes of the Storm. It's a MOBA game. And um, then I was a, a pro as a coach in Overwatch. You wanna it's actually pretty easy to get to that to that number. Every round is a joy. It's so fun. You just create a habit of something that happens regularly and uh, then just keep on drinking. They upset the hometown team and they take it in two maps. 
Well, people don't play it anymore. There's some people that still play it, but it's not being developed anymore. So it's kind of, you know, dying. But um, when I was playing, quite a few people played. Not, not the most popular, though. This one to be that good. Yeah, it was fantastic. There's something about the core of this talent roster. It used to be Zersha and coming to international events and finding a big upset early in tournaments. It, it's just nuts. I mean, never in a million years did I even expect that this was going to happen. I always knew that there was an outside chance, but especially with how dominant they were on that first map, I just had never really anticipated that, especially given that that was not their pick. Fracture, though. I think, for, for me, that might be the best map that we've had so far in this event. I So back and forth, so very close, almost getting that overtime. It was just absolutely wild to see. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the thing is that towards the end of that game, the, the decision-making from Kallen was incredible because MIBR looked like they were going to come back into that one, won six rounds straight, and then Sushi Boys shows up and finds two huge clutches back-to-back. -back. And from that point onward, the calling felt perfect. So many of these well-set up fakes awesome, from Kallen, they kind of conditioned MIBR to lean into those fakes. And after that, oh, I just it noticed just that like flash went above them. The yeah, them, I mean, so many just great mind games as well. The Sushi Boys sprinting over towards that A site to draw attention, allows them to get that free plant down on B. It's absolutely just so big right now. It's one of those things that you don't typically think about in the moment, but it's such a great call, whoever made it. And then he goes straight back round afterward into this that clutch. That was a close, a close I mean, call. He was, he look at that. And gets that kill. Almost it is so narrow. Almost. But two rounds in a row that Sushi Boys managed to pick up for his team just on the efforts of, of him and him alone. And that was them breaking that massive six round win streak from the side of MB MIBR allowed them to get a five round win streak of their own and then from there be able to close it out. I mean, we talk about the fact that coming to this tournament, they didn't just lose two uh, good players. They lost their two best yeah. players from the last uh, seasons last Clearly year. Uh, but exactly. <laughs> but let's talk about those two new players. I feel that this tournament, the theme of this tournament has been those debutants. Garne, uh, Mimi coming out here. He was out heating heat somehow. Yeah, I, I mean, it was no, an I had incredible the same match from him, both on the um, race and on I can that neon link, uh, on once again. map number two of Fracture. Despite the fact that he was having to execute into a cypher, the way that the team was calling really felt like it set this guy up for there. success. And on top of that, he was just so confident. There's something about when Thai players debut at international <laughs> events, they just come out swinging every time. There yeah, were a lot of um, teams it. that just weren't uh, like big teams that I coached uh, as well in between. Every time he pulled out that overdrive, it seems like he was finding an immense amount of value. You finding multiple kills, just being able to beam people down, right? You know, getting those headshots across, really take them out. Just phenomenal play. Just came out here without a care in the world. And it's just beautiful to see somebody who could step out onto a stage like this for the very first time and have that strong of a performance. We saw that from a lot of the guys on the side of EG, and now they all get to square off against each other oh, in the next round. That's going to be fun. And shout out to Jit Boys as well. It doesn't seem like he was a new addition. Like, it felt like he's been playing with the team for yeah. a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, but sadly, we've had to say goodbye to MIBR. And once again, remind you guys how brutal this format Mimi truly is. Yeah, it is really, really difficult. MIBR, they came in here. They who is had uh, my favorite hero in Heroes of the Storm? crowd and Ooh, it really was um, amazing to watch his team man, debut. Let me see if but I remember. Uh, yeah, Sylvanas. Sylvanas was, no, that was the one I really got good with. And she was broken, was like literally broken. You could, do, but I'm confident that I found a way to, to, uh, make those to make it so that yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, uh, uh, any uh, form of the damage you do on structures and characters as well, basically just melts them and you the you could take down towers and stuff just without taking damage so i would so just split push I, I all the time and win games super easy incredible things from uh, in a, in the but the absolute most favorite one abafer <laughs> i was i was the later an abafer player were able to do even more impressive given and uh, a lot of rosters need time i think it was uh, I like among the best i can't remember the, exactly uh, which yeah. rank i had but so scary and that was the first i was rank one at one point in europe at least going into this one and didn't matter. It's just it's not just rank one in game, but like rank one out of the rank one players. Another book, because this was still some fast and loose play. They did play, ranks, but it was a bit really weird. well structured, and the the moment to moment shot calling 
the way that they were able to pivot in the mid round was just fantastic. So I'd love to see that rather than just all out chaos from Paper X in the future. Yeah, well, before the break, we asked you guys at home to vote for the player of the match. The votes have been tallied and it's in. And yeah, I, I Abba for is super fun. You guys, uh, who you actually voted for. I kind of wish oh, there was an Abba for type of agent boys, but to Valorant, honestly, but to Cruz it wouldn't work. As well, people recognizing what he Since was it's an to. FPS yeah, game. A monster on that first map in particular. But again, this was a performance where it felt like everyone was showing up on the team. Jit boys maybe a little bit more in the support, less so than the numbers, but everyone was having their moments for Talon. Yeah, it's really good. I think I know what I'm going to have for dinner now is celebration. So I mm. uh, just got to go find some of the boys, get together, have some raw fish. It's going <laughs> to be a good boys time. On this team. Yeah. But All yeah, the boys. I think you could have kind of gone either way. For me, it was Garnt just because of the debut. The, the amount of impact that he was able to have across those two maps was absolutely incredible. But you couldn't really have a, a poor choice at all across the team. Yeah, and again, like you said, they got to face off against EG. I cannot wait for it's that be game. Great. Yeah. Uh, but before I get ahead of myself, uh, let's hear from Cruz himself. He is standing uh, by with Golden Boy right now in the Verizon post-match interview. Thank you so much, Yinsu. Yes, I'm joined here with Cruz. And uh, one, congratulations, my friend. That did not look <laughs> easy <laughs> at all. Uh, and not only because he did some magic in game. A, a damn good fight at the end there on Fracture, but also the very yeah, you know, exactly. hostile well, I was thinking more the abilities, that Adam, like the as well. uh, I actually just want to ask you about that shielding you others, doing damage through others and so on. We're doing the big dramatic I feel like that would be way too strong. And, the music and, and you just sit in camp somewhere in the corner. Cheering. What, were, what was going on with, with the, the team? Host what body. were you telling the team? Or was everyone kind of just quiet and in their own heads in that moment? I think ev everyone was happy. It was the first time we, we actually played in front of a crowd. And it's experience we couldn't get from anywhere else. I think Brazil has the biggest crowd I've ever seen. And I love having them watch us. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter if they booed us or they cheer for us. It's just the thing that... The presence of the crowd being here is yeah. already fun for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I definitely felt that when you guys were on Haven. As, as the match continued and you as an IGL, were you like thinking to yourself, this is going strangely too according to plan right now? Did you feel like, like everything was just clicking? And, and, and also, like, was it because of the prep work that you guys did leading into that matchup? Um, it was definitely because of the prep work, but... I think we had a lot of good rounds, like the momentum rounds that sure. put, put us put us through a lot of the ha a lot of the first half because they they made a lot of good plays, but we actually clutched it out, and I think that kind of destroyed them mentally. Yeah, and it gave us like a room, gave me a breather <laughs> just yeah, to think yeah. what we're about to do next. So that's probably why it felt better to be IGLing on Haven. Yeah, and and. Uh, we were talking before the cameras turned on, and you were telling me about uh, how it, it, like the, the atmosphere. Why don't you walk me through that? Because it sounded just from from your end. I can't imagine you have all this heads, all these headset on. It's hot in there. <laughs> what, what, what was? How did it feel? Like even though we were like having, we were so focused in the game, but the crowd was so hyped. It was yeah. so loud. We could hear it mid game, and it was so hard to hear the game as well. But. Like, it's part of being in a LAN, right? So it's understandable, and we just had to play. That's why you see some game. players yeah, uh, sometimes just make uh, weird decisions. You know, we were seeing, uh, I believe I saw pictures when of we hear it, but they, um, in, the, in uh, fact, don't. On the, on the desks and stuff, and, and, and you also brought in uh, Jet Boys and Garnets here as well, and they uh, had a, a great showing, Garnets especially. Um, you know, I guess, like, knowing that you have to replace someone like Patafan, who is such an influential player, I've been such a big fan of his for so long, uh, were you a little concerned uh, coming to the event, or did you feel like Garnets and, and, and Jet Boys were, were ready for the challenge? We were not actually concerned because, to be honest, coming into this tournament, we expected to just get experience for the two new members. Yeah, we Garnet didn't um, think a rookie, we were yeah. going to do this well, yeah. even though we we had prepared for we did a bit of pre preparation for the event, but it was just for the two new members to get the experience get the feeling of being in the land because yeah. we're we're going to head into the regular season which is more important for us i yeah. think so it wasn't really much of a stress yeah. even though patty is not here yeah of course but and i think it just helped that you guys were able to 
go out there, do your thing, no matter what the results were, turned out pretty well for you. <laughs> uh, it was a great experience nonetheless. Cruz, I want to thank you so much for your time, man, and, and the, the adversity and being able to clutch up in those moments <laughs> and win those rounds. So awesome to watch, and congratulations to you and the rest of the Talent Boys hey. once again. All right, well, that is going to do it for us here, and much love to the Talent Boys for pulling off what was it's definitely a difficult victory in front of a Brazilian crowd, but we have plenty more coming at you right after this because it's our last match here in the first yep. round. It's going to be loud. Facing imagine off if loud goes Gen home. G. Just imagine. Who knows? Anything's possible here in Sao Paulo. We'll see oh, you on yeah. the other Let side. Let me switch title too. Both of us. What's up, what's up? How you doing? Who are you rooting for in this uh, matchup? Gen G or Loud? We uh, have only Loud, uh, loud um, fans here so far. Red Bull gives you wings. Zero with Gen G, nice. At least one. Perfect time to get some water, snacks, whatever. And also tomorrow there's no matches. So um, there's a small break there. And um, back on Friday. Mm, 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 mm. Let me Let me bring back... Here it is. I was gonna watch. Uh, oh yeah, check the players. Yeah, I did check on Liquipedia. Do they have stats from uh, recently? No, nothing. What about champions? But yeah, with champions they switched out two players. And the coach, so it's kind of, kind of a lot. Uh, let's look at Chenji instead, though. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this, they um, they made it um, less um. Forgiving because a lot of people would, uh, for example, have artificial ping or high ping. I mean, wait, which uh, which team was this before? On Slayers. No. Maru Gaming. Was it? No, they have replaced all players. Okay. Ah. I was wondering, like, where these players come from. Because I remember King from somewhere. Secret Meteor. But not the other. Ah, wait, they have an Australian head coach, too. That is interesting. Full Korean team with Australian head coach. Hmm. Maybe no Korean. That's cool. That that's very cool. How do you add that old school theme on Chrome? This is just no theme at all. I'm pretty sure it's no theme. Let's see what we can find from... I don't think they played anything, right? Nothing. Yeah, barely anything played at all. I think some teams played them, um, but not maybe in January. I guess um, they all kind of avoided in January to not uh, show stuff. Oh, 
Why can't it give us a server? Uh, where are you from, Andis? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I can't answer it. I don't know. It's. Uh, it has anything to do with costs to um, maintenance to uh, yeah many things. I'm not really sure. You're from Madagascar in Southern Africa. Ah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it could be that... Um, I guess it could be because it's um, a small player pool. I'm not sure. But it's, yeah. Yeah. It is not fun. It is not fun to not have a server. I can only imagine like how... Um, how um, annoying it is in the games in general because I feel like it's um, many games that don't really have servers in Africa I wonder if it's uh, gonna change with um, in like if you take for example Starlink that um, Elon Musk has developed if, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but let's say that you have a satellite that, you know, zoom beams down the internet to different cities, and then you have fiber within that city, don't you basically have the um, ability to uh, play on low ping with someone that's maybe in a different continent, but connecting to the same, same satellite? Or am I oversimplifying it? Because that feels like it would be possible. Then you just need a um, high-speed connection within the city. And not necessarily connected to a uh, main line and everything else, you know? So maybe that's going to change in the future. But um, it doesn't really answer your problem, though. Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought in, in the terms of... Um, you basically end up playing on the same server as um, people elsewhere. Welcome back once again for our final match of the day. I'm your host, Yingsu, and this is the least biased desk of all time. We have uh, Tom <laughs> from EU, Mitch from EU, I'm also from EU, and we're doing a uh, NA versus APAC game. Uh, yeah. Talon won um, I don't the even know who's casting. We'll have to find out later. It could be Koreans, it could be North America, we don't wait. know. As Achilles managed to take over, I, I know that he's great play-by-play. -play. So he maybe he was like, off. he saw Gen G, saw that Korea flag pop up, was like, he's i got to get it. Snuck off and he that? left this here, so <laughs> I don't I don't know. I think we better check he hasn't gone hey, up there. We need to keep up with the theme of the least biased desk, okay? We we okay. gotta do that. Uh first though, loud, they're about to take the stage. They're returning to well, yeah. uh, this arena. They're, Let's they're gonna see be the what it looks like heroes. when they um, the do the of of band walk in. But Tom, walk they look out, a little man. bit different. Yes, uh, they've lost two pretty big players in the form of Sassy and Pancada, two of the best, although it, I feel like it was a pretty stacked roster to begin with. And then they brought in a couple in the form of Tuis, who's obviously someone they we don't even really have seen on the international they stage just whatsoever. Come from a so that's going to be brand new for us. And then you've also got Kawazine as well. Yeah, I mean, look at the, them walking past the fans. I think every single person uh, makes That's the here champion to watch treat, loud. treatment yeah, for you. Absolutely. You, you know, don't get the band. When we were looking out earlier, all of the people in the crowd, all the people out at the food trucks, everywhere I went, it was just loud jerseys across the board. Yeah, they are definitely walking into a, a very highly populated area. Now, this I wanted to bring up because one of the things that was so amazing about the old loud roster was the fact that from top to bottom, you can literally see it. This was in the grand final. There's 15 ACS difference. I like, literally so minuscule. Yeah. Who was the star or who was the least they played player on the really, roster? And that's why it's a little bit really, really going strong. forward. Cracked out everyone. Left because now it's not just a gap of like, oh, maybe we lost a star player or we lost a hero. 
it's kind of gone very far away. I mean, the question is, you know, all of the players are making their debut here so far. We even saw on Talon, they also lost their two best players, but they look incredible, yeah. Mitch. How big of a loss do you think Sassy and Pankata are to this roster? Oh, at the same time as I completely agree with the performance we saw from Talon earlier, it's so hard to quantify. Look, remove an IGL from any team, and I don't know what you're going to be left with. And the point is, when you've got Sassy and Pankata, who had fantastic tournaments globally, and now you're moving into new metas and everything like that, I'm not sure that the performance is going to carry over in exactly the same way. Well, they've lost the experience. That's the most difficult thing. Now, one of the points I wanted to bring up was actually to highlight Aspas. And that's because I think in the old roster, they didn't need a superstar. They had five of them. They had people that could fill in the gaps. And so you look at his statistics, and maybe you compare him to someone like a Ye, and you go, oh, it's, it's, it's kind of mid. But it's because he wasn't needed to be as good as I feel like he will have to be in this tournament. So I want to see those numbers go through the roof. It's definitely a lot more pressure for him. And then you have to add to that the fact that the crowd here is going to be 100% behind them. Every time you hit that shot, the crowd will roar. When you miss, they'll go Just silent nutty quickly. Shots. We saw it with MIBR, and I would say there's a lot more loud fans here. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I imagine they're not going to be as easily silenced. That will definitely be something <laughs> interesting. And I, I do have a lot of faith in someone like Sadak. Like, he's the leader of this team. He has already done this before, built a roster from next to nothing and brought it up to the top. He's now got a lot of very, very young players, though. Like, Kawazin is coming in at 17 years of age. I also realized that uh, I'm 11 years older than him to the day, Ooh. which I really, really to hate. The day. To okay, the day. We have okay. the same birthday, but he's quite a bit younger than me. <laughs> there you want to you hit your age out there? Anyone that's not too good at math? <laughs> uh, well, okay. Uh, 17 plus 11, guys. Be, be, I think you can do it. Before this gets too out of hand, uh, well, they, they do have some new players. <laughs> Let's hear from one of them. Tui's, actually. Uh, he's with Aspaz, and they're going to talk about their lock-in expectations. All right, about to begin. First, we gotta get to know him. Eu sou o Eric, me conhecem como Aspas. Eu jogo de duelista pela Loud e eu sou de São Paulo. Ah, eu tô me sentindo bem feliz e confiante também de poder estar jogando de novo, porque faz um tempinho que a gente não joga um campeonato e ainda mais que vai ser um campeonato no Brasil, então é mais emocionante ainda, interessante. Então eu tô bem ansioso pela estreia aqui no Brasil. E a gente também está se acostumando com o um novo estilo de jogo, porque agora mudou o meta, a gente tem novos players, então estamos criando sinergia de novo. Salve rapaziada, meu nome é Arthur, sou meta back then, boss. e atualmente faço parte do time da Loud. Not fun. Minha função atual é Chamber Vou começar primeiro pelo Matias, é um cara muito engraçado e ajuda todo mundo, é um cara muito gente boa, muito sangue bom. Quem vê acha que ele é muito rígido e sério, sabe, mas você conhece ele, você vê que o cara é muito engraçado, é muito maneiro. O Aspinhas é um cara mais fechadinho, mas mesmo assim você vai conversar com o cara, ele é sempre muito atencioso e muito gente boa, sabe? Sempre te ajuda, é um cara incrível. É, o Cauã, um cara muito parceiro, muito humilde. Gosto muito dele, a gente brinca pra caramba. Eu acho que that they put in the same battle tracker? Um, seria é NRG, wait, é this in the same battle tracker? Uh, eles têm o core da Opt, que foi no, no, it's, uh, this is only for professional matches. Only professional matches. So not uh, ranked or anything. Rapaziada, espero que vocês continuem torcendo pra gente. Eu gosto muito do carinho de vocês, é realmente algo incrível. É muito bom o suporte de vocês, então espero que vocês acompanhem a gente aqui nesse toquinho e continuem dando suporte pra gente. All right. I love how he says, like, they look keep happy, supporting look us, good. Like, people are not already all supporting <laughs> them. Look ready. But the great thing as well is, if they do play against NRG, he'll have had so many puppies at that point that he'll need, like, another guy to just be carrying alongside him. <laughs> yeah, I think, I feel like, I forgot about the dogs. He, he, yeah. It was like, every time he won, he accumulated yeah. another one, I, I'm right? not sure if he's doing that anymore. He might just need to get a big one well, after every five wins. Does he something. start again here? Is it, like, one dog now? Oh, or yeah. has he brought all of them from the previous event? Is this going to be, like, if he has a 10-year <laughs> career, we're going to need all the seats in here by the time yeah, we get that there. That will be interesting. We'll, we'll keep an eye out when they do the walkouts. Uh, but they're going to have to get past Genji first if he wants to actually actually start collecting any wins under his belt. And uh, Mitch, yeah, it's unlike pretty, uh, uh, it's Loud, getting late in this team, flag. it's not really that many familiar faces to us. 
Maybe not, but at the same time, you know, we've certainly seen I thought this seen match would start at like I mean, midnight, Hell, King, but um, it was two the zeros the all the time, so... Whether you've seen them or not, if you're a Korean fan, you <laughs> so, definitely have. They played on practically every single top-tier Korean fast. team that's out there. Whether it's DRX, your Vision Strikers, going all the way to a TNL. Like, these guys are not only fantastic players regionally, they are so familiar with each other. They've competed against each other a million oh times. Oh my goodness! Wow. This is brutal, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't like to do that one through. I, we have to kind of get past it every once in a while, but Mitch, you got a graphic. Yeah, um, so we, we drummed up this little graphic to kind of talk about the history of these teams. So in the bottom this is, is a small picture, or like small uh, print of a lot of overlap here. I mean, Echo, doing the TS, and Meteor, these guys played together in Korean Challengers. They had a good run. They lost for, I think, the seventh consecutive time, Division Strikers, without picking up a map. After that, they decided, you know what, King's pretty good. We need to make some changes. They dropped Echo. TS went to play with King over on Onslayers after he'd taken a little bit of a break from Vision Strikers. They beat Secret, who's also on this roster here. He was playing for Desperados at the time. Then we go forward to LCQ, where TS was now back playing with Echo, who he they needs, kicked from the team earlier. Board. He managed to eliminate <laughs> Meteor, who was on North Eption. You might recognize him there on the right side. Yeah, definitely, and Augustine. So that's an LCQ. At the end of that, they decide, screw it. Meteor, There's some players just here that us. just have good. insane KDA in sometimes. Get on our goddamn team. They pick him up on the core three tournaments. United yet again. They stick together for a bit. Then they go their separate ways once more. But obviously, the seeds were planted there from playing against so each other, from eliminating each other, from being eliminated by each other. Yeah, they eventually you're decided, right about it. Oh, makes sense for, so, so so basically for any anybody who couldn't keep up with for time and so on. But some of these you don't want a neutral crowd. And, against each other, and, and um, eliminated each other. if you want to build a fan base of Valorant globally, you don't do that by hosting a tournament in Germany all the time, you know? You do that by hosting in Brazil, hosting in whatever other countries, you know? So this is a team of players who have quite a That's the long-term goal for them. But now they're together. That's Hopefully nice. Over a that. happy ending, you know. <laughs> They're together now. Uh, but speaking of King, and I'm glad he got to do that little walkout in front of the Brazilian fans because he came in with a bloody hot quote in the press conference. I am aware that Brazilian fans are very passionate and I'm looking forward to silencing <laughs> them all. It's Mitch. interesting. He's, I haven't seen he's them literally going to go out the there. Fans. I put back tape on them. Stream because, uh, oh, he's yes. not on the screen behind us. I don't think he would be likely huh. to walk out to that one. because. Well, I mean, what are the chances, do you think? Do you feel like that Genji do have a good chance here for him well, to be able to silence I, the fans? I would say that I definitely think Loud come in as favorites. I don't think there's any arguing that. I will say, though, as we just saw in the last series with Talon, when they're losing, the fans do go silent. Uh, obviously, they get a kill or two and they come right back to life again, but it is definitely a possibility that the crowd could go silent. Yeah, and one of the players I feel like could be in the forefront of that, Mitch, of course, it is Meteor, a player that we are pretty familiar with. We've seen yeah. him in international tournaments before. Uh, talk me through why this is a very exciting prospect. Well, look, I, I mean, this guy, obviously, is going to be coming in now, maybe nerfed a little bit, not playing on the chamber, but from what we've already seen in this tournament, I mean, players like Ethan taken out of Yoru, I'm, I'm not quite expecting that. But some of those round, first couple rounds we saw out of Kellogg's, that's the kind we'll of thing see. Meteor can capture consistently. He could be the star duelist that actually silences the crowd. No, he's a fantastic operator player. He has superstar plays, even with Have a short... Have you tried KU anything? He's, he's, um, he's very similar to um, CS Utility. Issues all the way through the match. He's not my worry, I'll be honest. I, I really hope we get to see some split, by the way. It's whether or not the rest of the team can keep up. And they, they've got some other good players. I, I think as well, TS, in recent tournaments, has proven he can step up. King, I think this is his meta as well, with now him being an old-school Sentinel. But Meteor has to be here. Uh, can he do it? among this yeah, noise though this tough. is my worry <laughs> because i can barely hear you two just how loud the crowd is and mitch we haven't even started the game that's the thing i mean it was loud beforehand right but when that mibr game was going on it was crazy every time one or two kills came in yeah, it erupted exactly so for these players that's, down that's there that's why i keep on playing I guess it's going to come down to how they Especially want to approach like it just small the things Koreans, like getting people to walk into your trap them. wire they'll definitely be able it will to never have that get old. when they take rounds I almost feel like or that's going to pump you people up. People look for the camera and, it's and they can't attainable. find it. I understand that why they're well. called loud now. <laughs> Good one. You've been saving that one. I, I've, I've, been that one I've been sitting on that one for like two years. Uh, but anyway, let's hear from one of the players from on Genji. It is King and he's here to talk about the game plan ahead of this tournament. Hello, MTS. 
I'm Denji Sports Valorant team. I'm from Korea. 저희 첫 상대가 일단 라우드인데 어, 라우드가 세계 챔피언이라고 해서 저는 전혀 긴장하고 있지 않고요. 오히려 지더라도 어, 이렇게 좋은 상대 만나서 좋은 경험을 가지고 돌아갈 것 같습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 킹 그리고 한국 이름으로 이승원이라고 합니다. 저는 지금 젠지라는 팀에 소속돼 있고요. 제 팀에서의 역할은 감시자. 저는 그 팀은 일단 제가 봤을 때좀 무궁무진한 성장세를 가지고 있지 않나 생각되고. 어 시크리 선수는 일단 저희 팀의 첫 코너를 맡고 있고. 엄청 아, 아홉 살 차이가 나기 때문에 이제 That's cool. 저의 다음 세대를 이어갈 선수가 될것 같기도 합니다. 이코 선수는 저희 팀의 이제 첫 코대 라인 맡고 있으면 좀 저희 팀의 분위기 메이커, 네. 농담도 잘하고 저희들을 잘 느껴줍니다. 어, 일단 저희 팀의 타격 대 메테오 선수는 I could never play safe from behind. How do you adjust your economy when playing? Any tips? So when you buy um, your weapons and so on, in the top left of the buy menu, it says uh, the amount of money you'll have next round. And uh, just keep an eye on that. And um, when you want to buy big, you want to have at least 4,400 credits, which means you can afford um, Vandal or Phantom, Heavy Shields, two traps, two cages. And um, that's usually what I do. And if I don't have that money, I... Um, I can gamble and go for light shields, vandal or phantom, maybe skip a few traps or whatever, you know, mix it up a bit with a bit cheaper gear. Otherwise, I just save, make sure I can buy next round. I'm really glad to hear that they're so not going to let the pressure tip. get to them, but Mitch, there is a, a sizable experience diff here between the two teams. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I mean, obviously, Tom touched on earlier how some of the players that have exited the loud roster, maybe you're, you have a bit of a loss there. But over on the, the Korean side, I mean, bringing in someone like King is a I'm just going to grab move. some water played, before we begin here. On Slayers, DRX, Vision Strikers. He has got a deep history within the, the Korean scene. I don't know. Wait, so who did, did he play with did, again did, on the guys, roster? Do you know what? He played with Vision Strikers. Who did he that's play okay. with? That's we'll, okay. We'll put, we'll put the, the graphic back up. So we can have a look no, at no, no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I hope that's been deleted forever. I never want to see that graphic ever again. But no, he, he has played for every big team. And I, I think this is somewhere that you, you have to sit back and think, like, what is he bringing to the team? That that backbone could be so valuable when you're on in enemy territory. Yeah, I think my only worry when it comes to this roster is they have to be bigger than the sum of their parts. Like, you were talking about a roster that consistently always lost to Vision Strikers. Well, yep. Loud in the past were a team that could beat DRX, so it almost seems irrelevant that this team almost were as good as the team that Loud could beat. Well, that's pointless then. They have to be better mind. than the teams that came well, before them. Keep in mind, they never actually Glad won a them. Um, up and, against um, Vision Strikers. Hope you enjoyed the future videos too. It was 7 this core 3 just straight exactly. out of there. So this is not a team that we're coming well, in saying like, they were real close. Like, they lost in the semi-finals was like the last result they had, and then we've kind of scattered until now. Yeah, exactly. So, it, yeah, it really is a strong point that this Loud team, on paper, should be stronger. No, for yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I want to touch on the, uh, the loss of BZK as well. You know, the previous game, yeah. um, MIBR, we spoke about how big of an uh, advantage it is to have a coach like him. But, mm -hmm. Mitch, uh, I heard that you're pretty familiar with Loud's <laughs> new coach, though. Yeah, I, I used to run a podcast with Fraud. We, we used to chat quite a bit. So I was talking to him, even uh, down to the level. He speaks Spanish, so he's kind of adapting his Portuguese a little bit. And he said the amount that of time he spent here, issue. he thinks he's pretty fluent at this point. So Tom think? should even be up <laughs> on the server, and I'm pretty sure he knows what he's talking about. Looking forward to it. Well, we're getting a Really good look at all of our partner teams here at Locking. Sleep well, and Adam. That, uh, Sleep well, my man. That, and part of that partnership, say that five times fast, is How often do you buy the shoes like operator cipher? Thank Pretty you, much never. Uh, from Loud. But yeah, that's you just me. Hear from us. Yeah, let's hear from Loud. <laughs> Some cipher players they do, but I like the multitasking. Vamos lá, a gente pode começar a entrevista. Queria fazer uma perguntinha para vocês. So, um, yeah, pretty much never because of that. But I do buy Marshall when I have um, save rounds. Cara, eu acho que tem muitas expectativas, sim. A gente é um time novo, é, I mean, nunca um, aprende muita coisa ainda. Mas eu acho que vamos nos esforçar para carai. Espera ah, aí, estou, estou vendo legendas nesse momento. Estou vendo legendas, pode ser? Está, está me legendando, pode ser? Não, não. 
Pode continuar falando. Tá, tá, tá. Então, não, como eu estava falando, é, eu acho que a gente está muito bem, é, estamos treinando muito, a gente fez um bootcamp agora em Madrid, tá, realmente está sendo muito bem. Cara, eu estou vendo a legenda. Está me legendando nesse momento. Não, pode falar. Não, 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 não. Está me legendando nesse momento. Aspas, aspas, você me entende quando eu falo? Sim, sim, estou entendendo. Está tranquilo? Está tá tranquilo. Quer que fale mais devagar <risos> para você? Não, está tranquilo. Está de boa. Está de boa. Você está vendo nesse momento as legendas aparecendo ou eu estou louco? Eu estou vendo, eu estou vendo as legendas. A, agora, olha, agora estão tá as legendas. Está vendo as legendas tá aqui, agora? Está tá aí. A ver, espera aí, fala. Alô, alô. Agora tá sem legenda. Calma, fala você agora. Alô, oi, como vocês estão? Tá aí, Bom dia. Tá aí, Lelê. Tá não estou tá louco, não. Não estou tá louco, não. Tá, tá aqui. Tá, fala de novo. Alô, alô. Ih, não tem mais. Continua tá. falando, continua. Pode alô, falar, pode alô. falar. O que, é que você quer que eu falo? Alô, fala qualquer teste, coisa. Qualquer coisa. Bom dia. Qualquer... Bom dia. Está aparecendo. Está aparecendo, mas não sei se... Sou eu, né? Nossa, eu já sei. Só aparece quando você fala. Não, não, não. não. Impossível. Aparece. Não, impossível. Está aparecendo. Diretor. Porra, diretor, de não, novo, mas isso aqui. A gente começa de novo, isso aqui. Não Pode tem ser. começo de novo, irmão. Essa é a vez número 60 que está me legendando. Não aguanto mais. Não aguanto mais, não estou aguentando mais essa loucura, cara. É sempre a mesma coisa. Eu não aguento mais. Sabe o que eu vou fazer? Eu vou começar a falar em espanhol. Não, sei vou começar isso. A... Não, Vamos não, não, começar isso aqui de novo? Não, agora não, não. Você. Eu vou começar a falar em espanhol. Olá, muchachos, como está? Me querem me legendar? Vamos me legendar, então. Como está? Olá, tudo bem, Matias? Não eu, perca, opa. dia 13 de fevereiro, começa o VCT Lock-in em São Paulo. É um evento onde times do mundo Is inteiro irão disputar o primeiro lugar. Apoia a Loud nesta jornada. Go, Loud! Cool. That is a good ad. If it is. It was a bit silly. I like it. Have you guys seen, by the way, speaking of that, adding subtitles? Someone who speaks, you, you know they can speak English and you see that they speak English and you hear it and everything, you understand them. And they still add subtitles. But when it's not a joke. Well, I think it was, it was not bad. It was good. I feel like, um, You know, it hit the spot of the funny part, but I, I you know, I don't understand Brazilian and Portuguese, so... I, I don't get the full context, but um, I'm sure it was funny for um, Brazilians. What a great video that was. Honestly, Tom, I think petition to put subtitles on Mitch as well, because half the time... What are you even I talking about? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Why would you even say that? There's just no reason to be even talk like that, for God's sake. No, come on now, stop messing around. <laughs> Wait, I thought you were Scottish. No more Fulcerin. Oh. <laughs> Tom, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that comment later. Okay, yeah. you'll bring that when up in HR. No, when there's no cameras. Uh, anyway, uh, we are just waiting uh, for a couple of the players right now. Uh, I'm going to spoil who's it. Casting. I'm Guess who's casting. Yeah. I'm Guess. starting I'm to get an idea that it's yeah. not Achilles up there. I might have Honestly, an idea who I'm it is. I'm spoiling it for you guys. The casters just really don't want to start a game right now. I think Pansy and Hypo, they're enjoying the Brazilian crowd. They're down there. <laughs> they're having a good time. Are they at they're the bar? chilling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to wait for Pansy and Hypok to get back, and then we can jump into game. Yeah, so the players the players are coming over the comms here. They're asking where they are, but I think runners are gone looking for them. They should be they should be around mm. soon. Yeah, I'll I mean, up. it's what you get when you put all the EU people together, I feel like. What can you do? We they need our screen time, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm. I, think, I think the last time I was on the desk, something happened with a turret. I don't know if anyone... Don't! Tom, I'm here that. now. I don't want to be dragged into that. <laughs> wait, move wasn't, right on. wasn't that Let's also right Pansy on. and Hypok? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that it was. was also I think it was. I'm yeah. starting to regret turning up today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that I drink your drink. I can't you're going to be here for a while. I hope you've got a few more down there filled up. I yeah, 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 I'm ready to go. I was casting, and there was a thing where we had to redo a game. Oh, Maybe it was an um, illegal yeah, turret, I think. Oh, oh, hold <laughs> no up, hold up, hold up. All right, I, I, okay, we, we, we located Pansy Hypo. They are here, they are here. Well, this is the moment we have all been waiting for. It's time to bring on Genji and the reigning world champions loud onto stage. They're coming, guys. I promise. <laughs> you sure? Yes. Anyone got a stopwatch? <laughs> Where are they?
Ah, it's because Sarak speaks Portuguese with a Spanish accent. Or Tunish. Yeah, I thought it was fun as well. Even though I didn't understand it properly, dude, I, I thought it was funny because um, I've seen that stuff before and it's um, it's pretty funny how how some how some shows, for example, do that. Like reality shows. Has there been any cheating in VCT in the past? Only online. I think it was um, a player who got banned. It, it wasn't in EU that I remember. Maybe it was in EU. I can't remember when. But it was like some online um, match somewhere. Someone got banned. It was really early on though. Like really, really early on. It's such a huge risk. I wouldn't take that if I was a player. Like, it's such a huge risk. Stays with you for life and ruins your complete career and everything. Dude, the fans are going crazy. say probably none of them for Genji. Yeah. If we're being brutally honest, it maybe a couple of people made the trip, but I imagine they're in a in a corner of the room trying to keep away from everyone else. Trying to keep uh, real quiet. I mean Mitch, <laughs> I, I, we got a question on I think I spotted three dogs in total. Okay. We're starting with three, I think. You can okay. see them there. It's a new baseline. I appreciate it. You know, you can't leave them all at home. It's expensive to get a dog minder, so you got to bring a couple to puppies, but he's going to be earning one per game, I imagine, as we go on through this. You know, we already saw, you know, if you're Gen G, they had no illusion walking out onto that stage. They knew who they were going to be uh, facing. They knew that the crowd was here for loud, and they knew on the way in today, they've already had their greeting, and it certainly wasn't a cheer. Oh, I like it. They've already had the were known for how deep their map pool could go. It was one of the things that carried them and pushed them over the edge. Yeah, the interesting thing will be here is one of the maps no idea, that they never really played, which they were helped out a lot, was split. They never ah, played four times dude, ever Thomas, on thank you so much, by the way, for the so context. Maybe that Appreciate will go it a, lot. a little bit earlier in this pool. They've also only ever played Pearl once. Yeah, I mean, Haven's off the board already, Mitch. What do you make of this? Yeah, I mean, look, Haven going out I, for loud. I'm not going to really read into anything that they're vetoing right now because of the major changes yeah, structurally yeah, yeah. that they've undergone. This is a blank slate for me. Oh. But that pick right away of Pearl, they, look, that's so a punish pick if ever. Gen nice. just played it and they Lotus, suck. please. The thing is, Lotus. Though, if you look at even the old loud roster who were Let's go, incredible. Let's go, Lotus. They only played this once and they lost 13 3. Now, I'll take it. It's a different meta yeah. and they were up against now, one of the best teams ben. in the world. But even still, they must have Ascent. done a lot of work on this map. Yeah, and we and have coming in too, Mitch. Yeah, look, when we're talking about the Guangzhou tournament that What's they played that in, Gen no. G, they, they did bad on Pearl. Like, they lost okay. to Zeta 13. Please keep 10, split at least. But they keep were playing split. up against DRX. Now, look, all things considered, very yes. strong team. But we're going to get split. 13 3 on Fracture. Woo! We're going to get split. split Finally. It That'll be a toss up if we get there. Well, That's the Finally. Thing. It's like for Loud, realistically. This is almost proof that they are a completely new team. These are this is a map that they played once ever, and a, pl a map that they played four times ever. So they have literally gone for the the smallest sort of field of their yeah. maps. One of them they picked, the other they let through. So clearly they have done drastic work to get here. Does this even the playing field? I no. don't think so. I think Loud coming in, honestly, change of leadership, change of coaching staff, blank slate for me. They almost have an advantage because you do not know what they are going to do here. And on the other side, Genji have a small amount of tape. And what we have to go off of on those first two maps are just losses. And well, one of them was decimation, but they picked the map. The so. thing is as well, we're going to see the value of Sadak as the IGL versus Bazooka as obviously the coach. If they pick so Harbor, the interesting thing going man, forward. Warrior, good, we're into the prime gaming agent start. to Surely select not. here. And Aspas has locked in uh, the jet, of course, over the chamber. But there is a one agent. I'm looking at down the line. 
I'm hoping we're being baited. I'm hoping He's that done I'm, it. I'm seeing I'm seeing a hover. Oh, there's a hover oh. harbor and it's a There it is. This, nice. this becomes incredibly interesting as well because in terms of controllers, they've gone for neither that actually have like proper smokes. They've gone for Viper and Harbor, which means you're gonna have a lot of screens, but there's so much to break down from this and luckily we've got some geniuses up the top too. Well, I think at the end of the day as well, one other thing to add, Tom, if you don't want to jump the gun, get in there right away, TS, he's played it before. This isn't the first Harbor he's True. pulling out, so this is something they want to force. All right, Mitch, be quiet. Cast a star game. Come on. With absolute pleasure, Yinzu in the desk. We are now moments away from starting off this fantastic series. Mike, the atmosphere in here is genuinely electric. Yeah, yeah it, they're fired up. And it, honestly, this is going to be one of the most unforgiving places to play for Genji as well. Yes. Make any mistakes out there, the crowd, the sixth man will sixth punish. Man. Uh, it, uh, you've got the returning heroes, right? Literally the hometown heroes and the reigning champs. Yes. I mean, you've got the sixth man effect. The crowd is truly fired up. I hope you guys at home are hearing this as well. It's getting through to you because the ground is shaking in this venue when they're getting behind it. Now let's kind of boil it in. Let's focus up a little bit. Let's Dude, I love boil this. It down. Map one the energy in the crowd. Oh, also, this is with a capped Harbor. crowd. Yeah. More play coming out. I mean, actually, on the flip side of that as well, the lack of a traditional. They sure will see the entire stadium. Going to be filling those shoes potentially, but we're looking for value in the early round here. Any slow burns, any you know, running the clock down. Genji potentially going to struggle there. And I want to talk about arena plays that we're going to be seeing. The audio is going to be different out <laughs> yes. here, no matter how good it is. This yes. is rowdy as hell. It's map one, it's the first half. And Genji better get ready for being the villains in this. It's loud. Look at how it started. Walking around, just getting aggressive up, Alex? in their faces. Some of them. Taking so much space, Aspas wants to make that crowd sing Oh, 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 oh good. Oh! Right Rizzo out the gate. Two big kills and slicing through them. He is aggressive, Mike. Spike down as well, noted. That's the trouble. He's going to tag on the Right Fijiro out well. the gate. Aspas able to dip away, so. Remain as five for the time being. Genji desperately trying to scramble their way towards B site, but Zadak still chilling. He's got some utility to work with. Looks like he might even give up the initial approach here. No rotation coming through from Loud just yet, but Meteor has to find something here. Yeah, Zadak can just hold this space really nice. He does relinquish a little bit of that site control. Fair enough. Doesn't want to overstep the mark. Again, for Loud, we've got to see they're not going too far past the mark as much as the adrenaline will be pumping keep it in the right place throughout this good trade slouch with a two for one and i'll just yeah there's no way it's like four people there and listen to that immediately and a confident round from loud as well aspas enabled right off the rip and comes up and finds two headshots spike noted it's a genji on the back foot from the get-go all right and what a moment for aspas as well literally this is his town from Sao Paulo gets to come here, play the game that he's now renowned for. That's got to feel good as a star. That's a confidence booster. And if we're going to be very honest, and I know we're going to talk about the sixth man a lot and what that means, but also for Genji, they have to quiet one loud, tame them down a little bit, and then hopefully tame the crowd. So often we talk about getting confidence boosters, right? Some of these early rounds are so key. If you yeah. let Aspas really start stretching his legs, yeah. those buy rounds, when you're walking the tightrope in terms of the finances, it's going to become excruciating to try and pull anything off. How were the games until yeah, now? We they were the pretty good, as well. but Marshall, there were two zeros. Frenzy. And then the rest However, um, upset. At this point. Uh, loud already still walking about. Still trying I think to it was upset uh, on both. Let me double check. Sight, sees nothing again. Pushing out, playing out there. That's lovely for them. Uh, uh, yeah, I expect the team Heretics to win down. versus EG, yeah, but um, EG yeah. just got 2-0 versus them. Sent them home. And uh, then Talon beating uh, MIBR. So. Um, that's one Brazilian team that just so got deep, sent home. Actually got contact on the other side of the map, so I do wonder now how long Aspas holds this, and if he does, how much does he get to know off this first bit of contact? It's going to be pretty telling that there's a player here. Yeah. And there yeah, it is. no Sentinel that's is kind of weird. Follow up as well. Does he get away? He's trying. 50 HP. 40 makes it to somewhat safety. Not particularly brilliant, but he's got support now. Oh, oh man. Aspas is just um, the conductor um, of this man. crowd. It's perfect. Three big kills falls they away. They really tried to chase him down, but not nothing. Well, Less is there with both snake fires, just in case it's a little too much for Aspas to handle. But no worries, Alex. Very squishy here in round two. I'll see you tomorrow, man. Desperately trying to find that trade, but unable to do so. Could be able to get anything else done here in this round. 
getting something done, Mike. I want to see them do some damage, get on the board, get feeling the game out a little bit, because at the moment, it's just complete shutdown. Yeah, it's, it's, it's shut down. Third. More of these rounds. rounds Prime Gaming and Gen G, the they're going to get allowed. boomed. Gen G need to get a grip boomed on this into game quickly. Yeah. the next year. I'm curious here about the rhythm as well, whether or not they'll continue to post up for these aggressive peaks. Genji need to, or almost in my eyes, have mm -hmm. as close to a flawless round as possible Absolutely. to get himself back in a position to keep this close. Problem being, Aspas farming close to that blade storm. He's going to have that operator available very early on. Two flashes, obviously, on the Genji comp, but it's a tough, it's a tall order yep. to go off against Aspas when he's shooting like this already. And he's been very fluid. We've seen already that mid push coming out. We've seen him present towards that A lobby now as well. He's pushing out A. Same on B. They know it's going to be an all in A piece because Aspas has already broken through the back line. He's taking so damage to the crazy you meter. Go faster right now that's being sent to the blender. Good pick up for King, but it's instantly traded. There's bodies here. Loud, fully ready to commit to sending players out. Oh, Ooh, oh dude. Check his PC. No. Making it look as such. And now the 2v3. Three still standing for loud and the two on the other side. Do have a rifle and a bulldog. Upgrade found. That's two rifles to work yeah, with. Aspas are in the back lines. Slow burn. All this space. And pushing to try and pinch towards what they nice. know, which is pit. Good find. Good trade. Another 1v1, but do they even consider it. this? King has read it. Oh, the shot. Aspas, second bite of the cherry now. 50 seconds. And he wants to you know, upgrade. Find the rifle, which he's got now. Fair fight to be had. 1v1. Tap on the spike. He's been drawn in, but it's going to be a fake. And the shot's not. Big he ain't missing. The confidence is sky high for him. That's the third on the board for Lau. Yep. He's your one away from the blade storm, at least early progress for him, but very few positives to take away so far. Like I said, you let Aspen. Uh, no idea to try. I think they just don't like the. Continue to push. Well, I guess they, they play for the attack side. As well for the team. The amount of reads being able to get, the amount of stacking. Oh, no, 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 stacking towards the side, so to linger late. Maybe they it's don't the value traps and stuff yeah, because they are defensive the on defense. For not having that traditional sentinel as well. You have to stack up and Everyone just rush A, rush A, rush A. That's their team comes, rush A. Into Aspas. Give him a chance. There's absolutely nothing to be done now. They're already down to two. The sheriff's barely found even a shot to put towards. And Aspas, he's in the middle of no man's land. He is wanting this. He is feeling it. He's feeling fired up. Zero bullets to play with very much. He does need to back away a little here. Now the last two. Can they punish? Absolutely not. This, they've just got their foot on oh, their Oh, nice kill. Right now. Dude, they are putting on pressure. They ain't letting up. Nope. You just woke up, Kazia. You are about to be even more woken up. I mean, almost feel like it's very early on here in this map, but almost need to pop the brakes. I want a timeout. I want a timeout. I think that's what we're seeing right now. Just for the mental alone here, Mike, because again, we talk about sick man and what it can do for Genji, who are still yes, they played together in the past. As Mitch rightly highlighted, they've got a bit of experience playing against each other together and all this. Playing in this environment, even the best are going to find it difficult. They need to somehow reset this mentality here. I mean, there's no opportunity to even formulate a plan in some of these rounds. Nah. Loud aren't even really leaning back on, you know, very cohesive setups. He's talking about potentially having less, uh, less as the second layer to Aspas posting up, but they don't even need it right now. And so early on, he's got this operator in hand and off the rip. Like I said, I've got to see some of this initiator. This dude Utility here. Oh, through. we missed him. Secret. <laughs> he does not go. look happy about this. That's a Gen G fan. Let's find something. Unfortunately, it falls down to This is one of the things we always discuss as well. That head to head becomes Meteor. There was really? a team that what used Phoenix uh, yesterday. I Has believe it be was. A, um, I mean, explosive to say the least. What team was it? Kellogg's earlier having a wonderful performance on this map. You know, see, we've seen Cloud teams nine. like Aspas is put on the show on for Perm. us now. So he needs a, a, something similar. It needs to be a headline performance because right now the flag is really low. Phoenix. Bit. He, he did good with Phoenix. Like, it was to really make space with Dolti a lot. Overall answer is because for me, the one brilliant thing to Aspas, not just what he's hitting, is the fact he is so versatile right now. We've seen him across the map. Either he's he's on the right side for it for the hit coming in, or he's taking so much space that everyone else will be. You can leave him well, one and four on the right. I mean, of the map. I'm lo yeah. looking at the mini map now, and that's exactly what's happening. There's four players of loud over towards a site here. Similar scenes. And this is almost like Genji want to pressure them. Oh, that's it. Aspas. Where the hell did that just come from? Yes, Where? He hopped over the top in shop, I think. Had hmm. to have done. Had to have done. Oh, what interesting. a fantastic beginning. I hope we can find a replay of that somehow because I'd love to see how that played out. But now uh, that has Tushan, a problem, I don't know, but I feel like Loud is going to be in the finals for sure. Yes, you're looking at the timing on this. 
to be conscious. Gen Z have to make a move while it's two E's still solo on this site. We have to slow down with his utility a little bit. Oh, they're really trying to sell this B piece though. Look at Les. Les and Cowan Zine. They're Both all biting. Exploring wait, 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 wait. Les. Gen G, are they back in? Oh my god, this is bizarre. Flank on a flank, basically, know. at this point. Les got caught just kind of floating through. Divide now goes I don't up know. It's on that on rush play. And now King can become that deep lurk. Should have decent information. I'm not sure actually. Just a nano swarm on B site, so won't have information. Sadax rotation timing exactly. Lots to do here on a 3v5 retake for Loud. Kalzin's got a lot of utility to play with, and that's a good first step. King is in their spawn. Does he have support? No, it's just him on the side. Zeke's going to come down the double swing as well. They're ensuring this round is going their way. They've invested so many of these ults as well to make that the there case. There it is. And King seals it fantastic work from gem genji good recovery that timeout as well coming out that's fine on less was instrumental without that they were super passive the careful looking for info here it is yeah, right over top of shops, yeah. oh, that's oh that what a is dream come true, that nasty is. he woke up he was <laughs> they need something like that every round man yep. Again, it just so happens to wake be up call. on the other end. I want to see if there's just an instant aggressive response. Something just to tilt the pace right back away from them. I want to see if Loud are playing that mental game here because I am seeing three of them kind of posturing towards middle. Early investment of the dog as well to clear through. But more of a default being held. Now you're going to hear that. That's Obviously, you have to respect it. That's going to come out. Force him off this early angle. Mm -hmm. to try and take that space now. From being Cowan Zine. He's holding down double doors from bottom of link here a deep flash will catch him aspas is already here with the operator again yeah but smoked off they, they go they're doing the due diligence but again aspas that is greedy is walking nice, out out of, out of the, the smoke the sideways like that the turret as well but do they read it correctly again it could be a coin flip could still be a could still be b but you can't read too much into king after that prior round sadak, sadak might be the one anything yet Wow, doesn't need to. What doesn't is need to. that? Fully blind, just backs away. He's done so much damage. The Seeker's gonna come out. Everyone's now flying over to the side. They know this is where the end goal is. Aspas, he's postured up, but actually secret ahead of where he expected. Sitting a little deeper towards the site. He, he jumps like a million times. Sees nobody. Or whatever sound the wall comes up. He's like, oh wait. Move out. Bam. Headshot. Okay. Kalzin is still going, and King's just. That's the feeling they have. Oh my God! Brilliant. Okay. What oh, do I do? Timing. King, keeping his crown in this round at least needs one more. Dips away out of the old right choice here, playing the smart, making them work for this. And patience. He's not even falling through. He's got utility to run through here. So oh my God! Oh, King, lovely work. Lovely no work. bullets. Dicey for sure, but they get the job done. You find their second and that's where it becomes they lost a that round but the economy blade storm now for Aspas. sadak won to throw a, my heart a of other <laughs> well that round in my heart i mean with that headshot holy moly that headshot totally blind kill from sadak he managed to recover with that viper's pit but another round now happy to be proactive very early on not making a lot of noise doing it either, so it's not as if Gen G gets solid reads. I'm liking this, I'm so glad we get a bit of a fight out of Gen G. I was worried they'd just get kind of swallowed into the storm. Meteor taking the space, flash to go in, and the swing. Oh, this is chunky damage. Nice. I'm completely unaware of that. Gets that flash perfectly. Nano Swarm won't slow Meteor down. The 6 3 8 So still able to do something. Actually, does get a heal up, so. Opportunity to do some damage here. Now look at Aspas to get something done with the blade storm on the way out. Ah, uh, the crossfire is so strong. Genji sitting in really nice crossfires. Meteor the crossfire is just too good. Perfectly positioned. Prime gaming flawless. And I'm, I'm actually so happy to see this guy. Genuinely was worried. They found the right response after that timeout, and they've run it now three rounds on the uh, in, in a row. And Loud need their response in kind. Be it a timeout now or one more attempt at this. Is it normal to have to two um, is, smokers uh, per team on, on Pearl? G, it's, um, it's been popular now in, in pro play. Yes, Viper for the wall and uh, Astra right for the, now, you know, suck, but also smokes. The ones, uh, the um, 
some harbor as well to uh, to um, close the uh, you know the hallways and whatnot. It, it's been the meta for um, this map at least in the pro play. Mirroring the pace a little bit, maybe later on kind of readdressing. TS has to play this late if they drift back towards eight. First time they're Ooh. gonna get a fight on it. Meteor, great entry towards two. Like that opens up so much space and isolates so many of these defending players now. That's quite funny. You didn't do oh. art here, but noted Connected. with the flash. TS will have the info that there's been no aggression from Loud this time around. Les does have the Viper's Pit, so the 3v4, he could actually lock down a site here. Opted not to, I guess just wanted to play off those snake bites. Right, execute coming in. <coughs> here, but it's another situation where we want to see Gen G formulate a plan to go quickly while they have the advantage. Uh, he messed up there. Like, not good. And actually, Les gets a, an opportunity at it. Doesn't get away with those Secret does really well towards the side. So that's a spike if you planted. And now the two remaining, Sadak was pretty far away. Got himself there quick enough and now already finds contact. So they know where he is. As fast potentially caught that flash earlier Three people on, so looking really for the flank. Together, the pretty good. Here, and Asper, it's not going to be given much here. Probably just going to save one to the operator. And line up Larry. This round from Gen G. Again, even in that situation, it's not an awful lot for less to do. King sending a snake by right behind default. Would have been forced out that position and vulnerable regardless. But Gen G will tie things up and I've already mentioned it. Loud will be back on a save. Gen G's funds will swell a little further. So let's give them time to maybe mull through some of the issues that have been going on here. There is a hunt So far, so good. See a little bit of a look from Echo. It's going to be a uh, very cheap run now the for uh, Loud. Yes, he does. Okay, so that's no the money. play, but we are now tied for a piece. Oh, the force. No. Fire around this. Looks like a little bit of a, you know, half by coming out from Loud. Time out. Considering Stingers, Spectres. Yep. Loud actually <laughs> in response. Similar to Gen G, the coach is like, we'll guys, time out here. buy stingers, shotguns, this next round, considering the purchase, maybe not gonna shorty, try whatever you want. Crazy out of the bag just yet. But make it annoying. Shorties are the most well, annoying smokes. We We've seen a lot of shorties. With and it's uh, the meta in uh, Korea, by the way, in the Korean environment. Absolutely mental with these flashes. With these walls going up, it can create so much chaos. Well, not loud. Are really banking on actually just putting up good numbers here on the defensive half and going back and showing something special here on the second half. I guess that's it to follow on. That's when we have a similar discussion really with Gen G's comp without that Sentinel. I was talking about how much they need to utilize that early round in terms yeah. of fact finders. Need to be proactive on that front because the slow burn. How did the MIBR play? The they, played they played pretty fine. They played pretty well, but it was um, Looking, and, and when we talk about loud, very, very difficult the versus the talent. They were very explosive, and um, the, you know, they got some very strong kills. Yeah. And now they are rebuilding somewhat. Uh, uh, that, that discussion again. It, it, the and it was too difficult. Kind of a meta change there. Uh, you still have no concerns about this loud core. No, uh, it was a good match. It was very rare that Loud ever had to rely on a superstar, right? Yep. A hero. They were just, All of it them. was like pack mentality. Yep. So again, we see how these players do kind of suit into this now. They do get that comfort level as fast with an uncharacteristic miss, but he does get away with his life. Meteor desperate to chase it down, though. You can see him chomping at the bit to try and get it. Did Boys explode? Cruz did, actually. Do so. Aspas, waiting. I mean, he's all alone now. No, backs away, decides to give this one up. And actually, Genji winning out in every oh, opportunity. They're getting picked off one by one. Sheriff for the Stinger now alongside that operator. Need a miracle. That's tagged up on that first peak. I just don't think Genji are going to give it to them. Nope. Again, the rounds that Genji are winning, it's four or five surviving. Very disciplined in some of these post plant scenarios. And even on the approach, actually. Oh, Meteor. He's going to hunt down the operator. To find that open on Draspas. 
They've gone back to just kind of running that really clean Valorant, which is what you need in this. You need to play, I hate saying play your own game. It's, it's the worst response a player always gives you, but they kind of do. They can't fall into this romantic idea of what we're seeing from Loud. And they have started nice to quell that presence. Oh, they found Opera is not opener. good. That is not good. He's down to 900, so and he doesn't have any money. I think it's feasible for anyone to pass it across to him. No, he's actually going to be on the rifle light armor here. Yep. Every ultimate available. Except for the blade storm for loud. So coming out of that timeout, this is the round that we expect something to be put in place. Still seeing the Viper's Pit potential here to anchor heavily towards one site. Maybe even towards mid here. We're seeing less position towards double doors. All right, we have Meteor and his ulti, but he's not going to use it. Oh, no money, he does use it. Outside. Hey, a meteor looking for another up oh, drop kill, but big information. That is a is nice now? try on yeah, that. Uh, that's at least one scene. I don't know about the second. Potentially two, but meteor now on the case. Gonna deal with that, that early close call. fall away from this. If I ever play a jet, I'm gonna do those. A little bit quite loud, but there's no real damage done. Raspas did lose his light shield at least. They're, they're meeting each other throughout this map. You're seeing it in unison. Yeah, both teams with solid reads. Lovely flash, gets from the corner, but there's gonna be a flash right back. Actually ahead of it though, Meteor would the have The team play lately has needed. been very good between flashers and people peeking. Across all teams. Elsewhere. Now we'll leave Meteor posted up momentarily. Seekers. Not by loud, but I don't think it will paint too much of a picture considering it will pick up the lurk at least on King. Yeah, loud. Don't know an awful lot about this round right now, but 30 seconds left. Genji have to move fast. Left. Yeah, this is when it gets to a bit of a gamble to an extent. You just kind of have to read what you've got, or maybe just kind of try and stick the landing. Commitment towards the B side. And there's That's the Viper's pit. Nothing to and stop the kill turret. In. This is a massive space tonight. The meteor still oh, sliding nice. through middle. A quick handling of that though from Les will at least eliminate Very nice. that threat for 12 seconds. They've got the spike down and they actually get away with their life. And lockdown destroyed as well. They're gonna try and stick this out here. That's at least half. It's gonna be punished. Oh. Gen G still standing and only one. The ult was invested. A wall still in place. How much can one man do? He's got one shot, he's got one down, another tap on the spike trying to draw the attention and the paranoia starting to build. Goes back in and the double face is there, Gen G. I am thoroughly nice impressed try. with this roster. This resilience already, Mike, is unreal. Considering how this map started, and actually bear in mind, that's all the funds out the window for Loud now. Just and unfortunate. Unlucky deaths. So that bankroll they had developed completely ripped away in this round by Gen G. It's down to the wire. Like I said, the timing of that lockdown comes through and uh, again, whether or not you can have the discussion, if that's in link, if it's a little more impactful. Obviously, the Viper's Pit to try and make sure that absolutely seal that round, but it doesn't pay off, and it costs them dearly. That's best once again on the chopping block here. The vast majority coming this way. Three players, though, four loud towards this site. This is getting panic stations for me as well, if you're loud. Again, you want that crowd to stay on your side. You want to feel nice all those benefits. But right now, Genji are ripping it away from you. And rightly so. They're playing a perfect game by, by my book. They here. need some really money on the table for loud here. Also expecting that rotation they will have on the um, next round. But they need more. We heard some of the previews. And I said they weren't intimidated to play here on this stage. And it's looking that way. They were not shook at all by those opening rounds. Six on the trot, and that flash will confirm that someone has at least made it round towards his site. And the approach is a little messy, gets the job done on one, but there we go. A little bit of a fight back, but it's quickly quelled. Oh, and Genji, man. I think that's seven in a row now. They're staring down somehow. Whatever they talked about in the timeout, we're staring down the barrel of an 8 4 half here in favor of Genji. Really well. I do not know how he got here. I don't think anyone, even Seth, might have found it hard to predict this. Last saying something. He's somewhere in the building looking smug. I doubt he's in the crowd. No, I think, I doubt he's in the I crowd. think he might be backstage. Maybe. I'll take I'll hazard a guess at that. But a four to seven. If you're just tuning in, you think, oh, the scoreline's not so bad. I mean, it was the first four. And it was off the back of what you'd say is Aspas, really. The rest, not really stepping up here. Genji off that timeout have been. Not a pressuring a lot more on um, C. I mean, B. Phenomenal Valorant right now. 
Less will be spotted, but no connection here for Meteor. On the first round, actually seeing him don the attacking operator. Look how deep Aspas is. So that's going to enable this rotation once What happened to Loud? Out. No idea. No eyes towards King as well. I Ooh. think Gen G kind of just did some the the time out and everything else improved, you know? See what their approach is, and you can see maybe Sadak considering taking some of this space back. First time we're seeing them maybe try and find this target correctly, and they do. Oh, nice! Stunning work from Sadak. Very nice. Decent information as well. Seeing him drift back into window would kind of allude towards an A site hit, and the flash will confirm it as well. Wonderful read. They do have ults to play with here, though, Genji. If they still want to continue on this nope. route, have a lot of time to play with, though. Yeah, 40 seconds, but there is that one missing element, which is Aspas. Where is he? Still got a dash. Still got two smokes. So. If they're not diligent on this clearance here. Aspas. Can he do He's it? Popped it. He's heard the steps. He is coming. He finds one, gets away, falls away to the second angle. Another point. Oh, he He's still standing. Just gets away. And one more victim. Oh, so close. No, the man, that was. Down. Now a 1v3. This might be a good one. Cracked if he would have hit that. That's what they need. That's what they need. Bring it up to come back. Five. Nice. But Gen G is the now story of this side. half. Absolutely. What a recovery from Gen G. Need, how doing today? Nice to you. Stepping up to the plate. Nice he was getting slapped around in those opening rounds. Yeah, he was very quiet. Aspas was l as loud as can be, screaming from the rooftops during this one, but he did get quietened down. The crowd certainly got muted in comparison, and that stretch of seven rounds is formidable, Mike. Sticking to the game plan as well. Gen G remaining composed, Lauren. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hand it back down to the desk, if they can believe what is happening. Thank you very much, Pansy and Hypoc. I've got Mitch and Tom with me here. And Tom, my God, they needed that last round in the end. Yeah, it's been very, very quiet in here for the last, I want to say, 15 to 20 minutes. That's what Jet that is comeback picked. was impeccable by so the side awesome. of G Gen G. They looked very, she very can measured. Do that stuff. And I would say some of their takes have been superb. Uh, just a ton of control. I mean, you saw the panic start to set in there on that loud side. Even rounds where they have a four stack up on the A site, they're tossing yeah, Gen G are like looking crazy good. to they try are. and keep their opponent back. And sending the one guy that's over the other side of the map on the rotate this to go This was help. a very smart this, Some of these updrafter. early fights as well. We saw such great ideas. The Meteor updraft. There's just nothing you can do about that. And King hiding inside of his pit. Hansi said in that moment he was keeping the rest his of the uh, last two matches. Absolutely was all uh, two zero long. to um, this one here. Look, four players are here. They're putting out their wall, their cascade, their everything, was it? and getting Sadik to start the rotate over. I mean, this is a team that come in as world champions, and they are being pressured. Man, to the point my memory is escaping me. One second. the mere sight of two or three people coming down a long. Two zero. To yeah, I think EG and 2-0 to, to, to MIBR. No, I mean the talent. Going on that defensive side, but taking a little more of a, a look forward, I want to look at the controllers and, and the variance between them, because you got two Yees and of course TS, both very very different agents. Going into the attack side, I think that's where we're going to see more from Harbor in terms of the setup. Yeah, Harbor and attack is going to be um, his, his it's going to be pretty. Uh, play. But the good thing about having pretty interesting Astra to see how they use them because they're Viper the and Harbor now. For that defensive side, because they don't have the kill anymore. Well, I'll tell you what, I heard Pansy at the start of the game say, Genji better be prepared to be the villains. Well, they certainly embraced that role within those seven straight rounds. Shut down the crowd completely. Now, I'm sure they're looking to do it again. And with the way they played here, I mean, we need Kawazin to go crazy. He was doing great work there. Aspas went missing after the first couple of rounds. He was 7-0, and ended up with like eight kills at the half. Well, they got to give the crowd something to cheer for here. And Pansy and Hypok, let's hope that they do. I'm down for a villain story. Don't think I'm not. I'm down a clown. I don't have to pan to the crowd. They can't hear me in here. I'm allowed to have fun. It's crazy. Uh, but five to seven is still very much a good game. Um, and I think there's a couple of pe people we're looking towards. The fact that Meteor was able to rise to the occasion was incredible to me. Yeah, the, the one for me, I come back to some of the points I was kind of hinted at at the start of this map. Genji have to maintain control of this rhythm. They did they did that so well. Yes, they did. Post round four, you could tell yep. they stuck to the game plan. There were solid protocols in place. That's going to be so much harder for them on the defense, especially with the pace they were expecting. Everyone going for B. To, and the I like chaos it. they're going to be able to create with this competition. I like pushing B the first round. Walls. It's pretty, uh, going to be able to go pretty easy. Here. To try and en enable Aspas to deliver once again. I just oh, scouted everyone. Yeah, night, lots of info. Four considered. And at this point, they look like they're still. You might as well go in now. Well. See Genji trying to add 
A little bit more information side this nothing noted towards middle so it is still very much all towards that b site here mike of course the thought i'm gonna wait out this wall a little bit here but what happened off the third round they had a coaching talk and then yeah, bam just flipped soon. the switch no contact just yet absolute chaos in here Lauren. yeah it is there's two on the back of the site still and they finally Ooh. gonna show their hand here king being one of them and secret the other still looking to do it but actually that flash does not make it around that corner and oh my god leashes Three kills in the pistol already, leaving just like one mag, to three that kills. Sit for that deeper plot. It's done. Defuse. Oh, Root and Gen G turning this place into a library. I mean, I was talking about discipline in some of those post plant scenarios from Gen G. You can see there how happy they are to sit behind this utility. That loud deploy on site. Beautifully played, in secret. It's a long time since he just goes in there, but like. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's quite satisfying in a really dirty way. Feels like you shouldn't have to, but mm, five to eight. Now, uh, th again, we talked about the sixth man theory and the crowd and all the benefits there is, negatives, there is additional pressure playing in the home territory. All the a force that from uh, Loud. Can also then hint on the other side. No armor. They're going to die to the marshal. Oh, lovely from that is an expensive force now. Gone down, makes it a little bit trickier to get towards that Titan. So close to a pull-up as well, but there's so much commitment behind the Sadak. Just raw aggression from Loud. Trying to barrel down towards Genji. Got himself side control, though. So Genji locked out right now, except for Meteor up towards Heaven. To get themselves a clean plant. Again, those Stingers paying dividends early on, and that's it. ease. We'll find one with the Sheriff, too. Now King. It's Quality took a dump there. Let me see. Mm. They don't have a lot of time to try and clear this. A little bit of utility to put into place though. Try and maybe pressure those towards the back side. Facilitate the push out from King, which it has done. King gets down one. They still got two to try and get past though. Sat in curious positions. They oh, wow. What? King with the turn. Oh, oh King. Oh, guys. Supreme oh. play here. So much danger mounting from loud. Beautiful 2v3 retake there from Gen G. How did Viper survive there? Loud, unable to really grasp How? That side. How but again, did plant comes like? through. Some damage done will make this bonus round a little I more I guess not enough time because she just flicked, bam, headshot dead. <laughs> How quick Sadak is just charging down site. The pinch through double doors perfect. That's even with Yeah, Gen it's G a stinger. Um, a stinger um, spread <laughs> all over the place. This is knocking on the door of double digits now. Ten not far away here for Gen G. And the map pool then gets brought into play, right? This is Loud's map choice for starters. Back to you get Genji in a little bit of comfort on Fracture, and then you get split potentially as a third. It all gets brought into question now. We've suddenly seen life out of Genji after we thought they'd be crushed under the weight. Of those here, certainly not the case. Ooh, oh, well, unfortunate for Echo. It takes a lot of damage there. Yeah, got to come back for that heal. Cowan Zine and topped off nicely. A little bit of activity outside a main here you can see the clearance coming mm. through from ts and king this is a big indicator here actually relaying that, that information towards secret yeah. see the lean coming back towards supporting meteor now oh utility though will be noted so they will know that there is someone on those back lines eventually so it will if anything spur on the, the hit here need the green light for loud whole lot of commitment and they're being stalled secret doing quite well here but nice kill on meteor king the only one to really draw blood so far and Loud still being held up. This does allow the gap to get closed slightly. Upgrade of a rifle. It's still favorable to Loud here. Luckily, just about avoiding that timing on double doors. TS and King. Open plant here. Nano swarm down. Loud. My eyes, though, have to keep four standing for this. Flash. Nothing close by. They need to go through the... Oh, that's a that shot is secret. Yeah, an annoying one. up here. Zanak quickly dealing with TS though, does leave just the two alive. And these three players make it a really difficult. It's gonna have to be King with that rifle, and maybe he's up to the challenge. Oh, dealt with. Secret, this might be out of the realms of reality. Nice yeah, try. It is loud. Very nice try. Keeping it cool. How you doing, Nerf? Are you down to two. two rifles will remain from that round. I think Aspas is too close to his blade storm. No, still missing three. Be able to get. You're right, so, yeah, time for the, the best, um, best match. Three light armors here. Kalanzine will get a drop from Sadak. And Genji still applying pressure. 
because some of these rounds that feel those, like those headshots, man. Now to have the perfect setup to maintain. Wipe is bit available for Gen G now. Not deploying off the rip. Aspas, oh, gonna have his hands full here. TS just avoiding being spotted, oh, but Sadak over the top. Yeah, the angle just giving it away. Massive. Really diligent as well, considering Aspas was already kind of clearing past that. That's lovely. Big info being worked out here. That spike is slowly leaning towards the A site as well. It's just Meteor pressure. over there. Yeah. Oh, they're taking over Art. Meteor. Got to but try here's Nico. Oh. Okay, that's they got uh, they've spotted. got to know what's happening now. Meteor, this is so scary though. Actually, yeah, backs away a little bit, so it's a little bit safer, but actually it's loud in the meantime. Finding every fight nice. they need to. King still working Oh, back. no, what wait. No, no, King? no, no. Again, this guy is making rounds out of nothing, but Meteor can make nothing of that position in the end. Have to respect this lockdown now. The clock has become the second layer of pressure here. Well, Eco's just going to look for maybe an exit. Be spotted by Sadak, actually. Going to face off here on the flank with less potentially. And they stop this? To the economy I don't a think so. Bit. I think less yet, considering uh, exiting through spawn yeah. here. Everything else seems safe, though. Is he actually going back for that? Good morning, Dusty. Nice Ooh. to see you. He survives where he is. Should be okay. Yeah. Well, well, there it is. All right. I think actually the plan was just off the One round. Yeah. Good. Cover. Very good. Let's get that. more. <laughs> Having a little chat about it, I'm sure. Um, seven to nine, though. A little bit of a gap close, but it's certainly not stable. It doesn't feel comfort zone yet for loud, but it's what they need, I guess. Find themselves in the opener here, but certainly not the pace I was expecting from loud. Headshot from Sadak. He has been on fire with headshots. Crazy rounds where the utility just becomes overwhelming for Gen G. But like I said, you've got to credit that discipline mm. on display once again in some of these setups. Nobody overstepping the mark for Gen G. But this is the first time big we've seen them a couple of options. Maybe feeling they can with the light purchase. But big bullets but on the uh, loud side. Still in play. Meteor does get caught in the end by the dog. Can't make it out of there. Frenzy in practice. Gets caught by the next flash. It's lovely from Lau. Not flustered by the pressure. King! Oh, it's messy. Well, and a loud cleanup. There's that Good. pace I was talking about. There it is. Moving. No Just respect whatsoever. Moving like crazy. Making a hard We're hit. touching distance now, but Meteor be able to afford the operator yeah bruno yeah Could potentially be a little bit of disruption for loud in the early round g will pump the brakes a little bit here right time yeah nothing i'm gonna go grab some water here, so i'll be back soon potential here for loud to actually stretch and go one ahead yeah blade storm available meteor will have that to fall back on in the next but that no command still got that viper's bit in the hands of king who by the way is having an outstanding performance. And, and this is just second half performance as well. He was fine on the first half, don't get me wrong. Certainly present, but not the one to look at. But here, what a difference. 19 to nine already. Scoreboard doesn't tell you everything. His impact alone has been certainly something to look at, but it's been overdone, out, overshadowed by Loud. Finally kicking back into this game, rekindling a little, whatever it may be, but the pace coming through has been perfect. Something you were looking for. Yeah, I, I haven't seen enough of it yet from Loud in, in different variations, but uh, certainly when you look at this composition, you expect it to be fast, chaotic, and really embracing that. Uh, I guess that's it. Not, yeah, not finding that value with Genji, like I said, a couple of times, just happy to sit behind it, confident in their ability to retake and really mitigate some of that risk. And in this scenario, the operator there may be hindering their ability to retake a little bit. If they yeah. do lose a rifle elsewhere, certainly a consideration to make. Do we see Meteor go exploring? Looks like he's willing to at least push up towards B long. Less on the other side. He's actually a low ahead stunner. Takes the head off of Less. And that's half of the map now sliced through. But look at the pressure on the response from Loud. Quite quick to it too. The response is well in kind. Meteor already barreling away from B site. That should be a big indicator Ooh, for Gen G. That's a one HP at the Aspas. They haven't converted a kill just yet, but they will be able to get themselves towards site. Cross is made. That's going to be the spike down pretty safely now. See where that retake is going to come from. Looks like vast majority through CT, potentially secret. 
What do they have to work with tool wise? They've got a little bit of utility still in practice here. Actually, a fair amount on secret. No command popped as well. They want in on this. Force them away from the side. Aspas unrelenting though. Still gonna hold. Take down secret. That's a front man gone. No trades available either. Aspas getting away with freedom. Res comes in though. Now we look for the fight. Echo towards the side. Takes down Aspas. Flash to follow. That should give it away. The Seekers certainly do. But King now blinded. Falls away. Actually still standing. Cody! You wanted this player to step up. And he might jump be doing that. Makes a damn good go of it. The two E's with the cleanup. And a scenario actually when Genji rely heavily on what's worked well for them. Loud rip it away. I mean, at the point you think they get the res off there. I thought they were back in it. Yeah. They were the no the command side, comes so good. early. It's, it's almost as if they don't want Loud to have the opportunity to either take a close fight or to reset into a deep post plant. That's broken the money of Genji as well. It has. Like I said, this is. That was the flip round. Loud potential to hit double digits and take the lead here in the second half. Taking us on an absolute roller what coaster now? of a journey, only noting one of the night. Whenever I go uh, to grab maybe, water, I go to bathroom as well. I miss aces. I miss spin aspas. Spin botting aspas. That's going to be very telling. Again, they can start pouring players into this. The match is a great so far. We had, that, we had an upset earlier with um, Talon beating MIBR. And uh, yeah, MIBR home crowd. Finds a headshot, but uh, yeah, this mic, uh, like it's not this, new, but um, well, I got it um, a few Straight months ago, but it's um, Flash. Just on the drop of that. it's um, really a beacon mic. Sir, uh, the name uh, now gone from this went side. out of my head. Oh, the on How are you doing, by the way, uh, King <laughs> Davis? Space here, but loud. Considering the rotation on the side of Genji, but that knife will give everything away. Yep, you can even see the final player TS coming on over this side as well. Viper's pit in response, so good timing on this 30 seconds. Do they try and make the mad dash? I mean, they should do, yeah. The thing is, TS has rotated this side as well. A site on a platter right now. Someone's got to, someone has to someone worry has about to this. Someone has to move now. They don't someone, think it's going to be A because anyone, there's so little the time. Flash, I feel like TS had to have gone moving early, now, earlier. I mean, TS will be there, but he won't beat them. That's for sure. He no. certainly won't be able to deny this plant. And if he could have just been a nuisance on the plant, bought a second or two, that could have been maybe the round denied. But now they do get the plant. They get the safety off the back of Harbour as well. That's nice. Loud. Final seconds, they get the plant down and the Viper's Pit to secure it. They want this one sealed up. And yeah, they're <laughs> he can't see that. anything in there. He can't see anything. Sheriff, but they've navigated the threats well. This will be 10 for Loud. As soon as they find the last man king. Far away, very few opportunities. Oh, nice! Good luck on your workout, man. The Viper's pit just becomes suffocating here on site. I don't think Loud are even going to give him an opportunity at this one. Let's we'll seal the is. deal. There it is. I will repeat the same thing once again. Genji, yes, the buyer comes back in here. Will they be able to afford an operator actually? No, they won't. It'll be rifles across the board, even a bulldog to round this out. Not pretty. And like I said. They win this, this gives them access to the 12, to map point here. Genji still have a timeout left. I don't know if they used all of their timeouts here, if I'm not certain on that one. So I'm a little worried at this point, because they haven't really found much in these, what, five rounds? And they still feel they've got something to play with here. A couple of ults to bring into play as well. Aspas looking for some kills here. Mid presence will be seen. Sadak put on the chopping block though. Big oh, pressure! Big again, again, Big crazy headshots. And that's heartbreaking to find two on that. Well, Trying to get proactive, good. but. Oh, wow, wow. Getting away with daylight robbery here. Kaldin just up to the task. Less trying to make a run for it. King's probably got him dead here. It feels like. No way! You what think, is mate? this? You think? You think. That's on me. That's <laughs> on me. Prime gaming flawless here for Loud in a round that looked like it was one of the most deadly from Genji. Absolutely. Okay, now I'm just seeing what Genji wants to throw at this. Don't have the Blade Storm. Don't have much. Of the Seekers, yes, the Cosmic Divide, but look, what is that adjustment from Sadak? Two, of, two different players in that round should have been dead. Like dead I said, right. you go for that aggression in that round, you're almost banking on the trade. Worst case scenario, but. Sadak shutting it down, creating a massive 
Cal massive amount of space for Lau to work with. Calzine's on a quiet 23 here as well. I say quiet because it's not, you know, when you see, like, you know, uh, Aspas popping off, it's madness. He has been just quietly chipping away at Genji constantly. 23 to 15. Impeccable work. When the team needed a spark, he was there for it. Now with the Seekers to play with, right, he King. wants it. He showed himself. King, the first man to note the presence here. But does he realize how much is coming his way? What? With? With Frenzy? Okay. Frenzies, man. They're looking nice. Genji's frenzies hit different. Oh, no way. I guess the shorty don't know. Bess gets away with 18 HP, but... Good trade. That's going to seal the deal on that one. Oh, knives invested. They, they want King out of it. King can just buy a couple of seconds. It's gone. Aspas. Nice. Rips those seconds away from him. Echo needs to fall away as well. Sight's now under that loud control. The cross is not secured, though. TS still with a right. Oh, good headshot, but not good enough. Great shot. Echo. Flash comes in. Once the rifle gets it, backs away. 2v2 now. And this is tense as all hell. You have the lockdown. Don't want to throw anything else at oh. this. That's fast posted. That's a trade off shot set. The yeah. Meteor will fall. 40 HP for Eco. Does spot the barrel. Oh, God. This is so deadly. He's going to have to get past Sadak first. And now Aspas turns. Yeah, dude, Sadak, he does not hit anything Just except headshots. Just put it on the show for us, making it look way too risky for too long. But they claw this one back. 12 now by their name. Just one more and map one is in the books. And a great setup coming into this final round. I talked about the lockdown being available. Now it basically gives them blank canvas, an open sight. If they choose to employ it here yeah. or rely on it at least for the execution oh, they, they've got complete freedom with what they want to approach with that 12 to 9 operator with sadak and meteor <laughs> crowd letting him know they saw that <laughs> he backs away but the all invested and actually aspas quick to the site and he's on the hunt that's a little oh, too man. much for I'm my lucky. taste but again ts still in question fully blind dead good trade only trades come in though that's three players alive well, that's gonna be huge. it is gonna make anything of it they're trying to chase them down they do the best they can still standing still fighting not out of it yet sadak holding the There's ground the against the ulti look at less though look at less's position what he's all the way through sewer is this he's gonna catch the back side of this lockdown there's no king's turned and look king's oh. ready what? King, how do you even think about that? Sadak. <laughs> the leader himself here. He's got the operator. He's got Tommy back with him. And he's got a plan here. What does he do with it? Up against Meteor and King, two of the big boys. The impact mm -hmm. players for Gen G. Show me what you got, Sadak. He doesn't know the amount of time he's had, so he's made the best guess he could here. Is that towards the back of the site? Can he isolate any of these fights here? He's actually holding up towards long with the turret covering this way. Now should read it. I actually think the turret's facing this way. Opportunity to swing off it. Can he get one? He needs a clean kill here. There's a chance and it's a miss. Oh, but it's a ball! He's got a swim out! Rifle. Spray and pray! What is that? And so it's the crowd! What a clutch! From Sada! Pulls off the 1v2. The shot. That is smart. How? 150 credits paying dividends here for Loud to close out Pearl. That is correct. I am speechless. And this is only map one. We've got a series on our hand, I hope. This one Loud's map, so don't think it's over yet. Yeah. GG, every opportunity to turn it around. You've got to watch hey. this one again. That's shorty. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Matty manages to pop, I think, both nano swarms in the process as well. Unreal. Unreal stuff. Yeah, here. that wow, played up perfectly for him. 13 to 9, though, a much closer scoreline. I think if we're going to be honest about this, that first half had us worried. Gen G bringing their A game here in the opening of this series. And some standout performances. King, Meteor. Meteor, seven first bloods. Huge impact. I'd love to see some breakdown of the head to head series. Everyone popped off. In that game. To this up. I, I think there's a potential here that at least in louder man. almost tied up for first bloods potentially i mean that was a huge frenzy kill though i guess the same can be said for loud to a degree like, the arena got quiet for a while that pressure started to feel heavy they the, problem, to the, the occasion the problem loud had was was dealing with this almost 
militant level of discipline from yes. Gen Z on display. It was brilliant. You see a number of times they're looking to really oh. spice things up. Throw them What's off Brody? kilter. How do you, my man? But in my eyes, uh, I mean, 13-9 doesn't even feel like it does justice for Gen G's performance here. No. Cameron Zine as well. 25-17, yeah. I'm been, I've been good. I've been watching the matches today. Time Hope you've been good yourself. Delivering constantly. Glued to the hip of Aspas. Yep. And for me, a nice it was second. a quiet 25, but certainly an impactful one. But Mike, map one has been incredible in my eyes. Do you see the series going the distance now? We've got a fight out of Genji here. Yeah, we, we definitely do have a fight. Obviously, Frakt is something that uh, I don't know how much loud they're going to be able to rely back on that chaos and maybe spice things up a little bit. Uh, afterwards, I would love to see Split. The you Split decider, I would love to see it. Because it always bangs. <laughs> yes, anyway, anyway yes. look, we're getting ahead oh, of ourselves. Hector, we have okay, Fracture okay. on the way. Do not go anywhere. <laughs> Let me see it again, then. I wasn't paying attention there. For the execution. Can they make it the as well? What's it? Oh, it's almost. Feel heavy. They the, problem, to the, the occasion. The problem Loud had was was dealing with this almost militant level of discipline from yes. Gen G on display. That's brilliant. You see a number oh, of times. Oh, okay, okay. Dude, they deliver. They delivered. Can you do an L for us? Wait, let me make sure it's... Uh, no, like this, right? Oh. Definitely like this, yeah. Got it. Dude, I'm, I'm cheering for Loud. I want Loud to win. I want to see Loud stay in the tournament, bring it home. Especially because, uh, yeah, MIBR went home. And uh, yeah, they don't disappoint at all. I'm very happy with um, how they play. Especially Sadak. Like he, well, Sadak, Aspas, everyone. But Sadak has been hitting some nutty headshots. Just out of nowhere. Well, next map. Let me see. What's the next map? Um... Next map is Fracture, and that's uh, Gen G's pick. Probably gonna see Neon. Probably. Yeah, it's unfortunate that they went home early. It's unfortunate. Dude, go for it, go for it. If you guys are in any uh, Brazilian Discord or, um, or anything, send uh, send hi for me and uh, and uh, yeah. I I support I support loud Brazil Brazil in general. I I really like how you guys play. Loud versus Sentinels. I don't think Sentinels has a chance. I don't think so. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. We haven't seen them play yet. I was wrong about Cloud9. But oh yeah, 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 never mind. I didn't, uh, and I forgot this. I forgot that Saucy and Pancada joined Sentinels. I forgot. Okay, never mind. I'm down for it then. I feel like the RX could be a they take map one against the RX Genji versus Loud could bring a very, very high final. Behind them. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm back on the desk once again with Mitch and Tom. We had a few questions. How are the newbies going to do on Loud? And uh, Tom, do you feel like they answer some of your queries? Well, that's the thing. Kawazin is someone we have seen before in NIP and was always very good. But let's be real, being in Brazil, the pressure goes up. 17 years of age. 
He was by far the best player in the server. Absolutely impeccable performance from him in individually. And honestly, I'm really excited to see how far he's going to go. Because this was map one that he's played with the team. Yeah, I mean, we highlighted him a little bit at half time and said, you know, we you just woke up and uh, I'm still alive. Out in the second, but you know it, man. Absolutely unbelievable what he was able to field here. I, I mean, we're well. seeing why himself and Zand were such hot prospects coming into yeah. this season, why Crew ended up with Zand and why this man here is now on loud. He's also role switching as well, playing the sky and looking fantastic. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it, it's obvious to give an honorable mention to King as well. I think some of the lurks, he had a fantastic meteor on the entry and Genji had some great setups. But this man just did so much. He was normally like the second player in, and a lot of the time that's who you expect your superstar to be. Like that, that's where you would sort of place someone like Les in the past, and Les he was lurking, and just ultimately where Sassy would be. So the fact that he's managed to fill into this role so good morning, uh, but also has nice some really big clutch rounds as well. So this guy was, I mean, he was good in the first half. Can to anyone else waking up right second. now? Good morning, good I morning. I think like realistically, there's a couple of players that certainly looked a whole lot more comfortable when we swapped yeah, over. Yeah, a lot of waking up just now. Yeah. very much. Like Getting because set um, the pace was Loud's game. I mean, you could see that defense. A lot of viewership in Asia. Harbor, I'm so, not um, sure, but there was a little bit of panic like, there. Completely uh, dissipated see. in the second half. I mean, Is even like the crowd, there was a difference, right? First half, I feel like it, in the beginning, it was great. We had loads of cheers. But in the second half, Tom, they really came alive. Yeah, for sure. Well, it does help when your team wins, like, what, yeah. seven, eight rounds in a row. It's quite easy to get hyped for that one. Obviously, they, there was a moment where they got silenced. It was proven it was possible with a the moment. string of rounds. Seven, in a, seven row. in a row. that came through for the side of Gen G. So ah. they're going to have to try and focus on that going forward. I, I like, just okay, guessed. can silence them. <laughs> they had a lot of really cool setups that five sort of helped them out for you. to do that. The thing is, though, this yeah, crowd, it's, crowd uh, literally midnight. one or two kills go the other way, and they're already getting pumped. Honestly, but I'm, uh, I'm, hopping, I'm, I'm hopping off to bed after this. Match. That Sadak managed to do that in front of a Brazilian yeah. crowd. That was just a moment. Uh, but um, when it comes to Genji, honestly, Mitch, I don't think you spoke enough about how this roster came to be. So I'm going to give you a little bit more All time. Right, we know. To Get just that graphic back it. up. Let's go. We're in October 2020, and it's going to be the start of the journey. We had Meteor. We had TS. We had. <laughs> You know, I'm actually, I might, I'm I might Sweden, get a nice uh, I've seen some of those formula before. This can be flashbacks from Sweden. to Uni, please. Uh, uh, Sweden, uh, uh, as well. do it, Uni? Not too great. I uh, didn't finish it. <laughs> now I'm here. You know, it is what it is. You know, I, I think one thing that has to be said, though, for, for me, coming into this game, I had some doubts about Loud. Mm. I think, like, it changed a lot. And we saw losing seven straight rounds, fraud in the coaching seat. I had a little screen preview of him here the whole time. He He's was a bit sweaty. not looking very happy. And they managed to bounce right back into that in the second half. I'd love to see some of the behind the scenes that went into <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the one of the guys I feel like was spearheading that comeback, how they did in the second half, was Sadag. Uh, he is in the aim lab shoot around right now, warming up for the next map. But there was a bit of a contrast here, of course. And Tom, I think in oh, the first half, mode. maybe his IGLing could have been questioned. But in the second half, I don't think oh, well, anybody could have any well, I don't think any players should have this being before. an in-game leader, a brand new team, especially a team that's incredibly young, like you kind of lost your experience. Like Sassy was someone who was around for such a long time and even in other esports had a lot of experience. Pancada, the same, whereas players like Les, even Aspas is quite young still and also very aggressive. And then you brought in some even younger players. So on the defensive side, His you have aim to has been spot on, you have so to basically uh, listen to every single yeah, player, work out what they're doing, try and pick the right like this, move, while also being a side actor aim. and seeing they're going, okay, they're coming towards me, I now have to do this, while all the rotations are coming back through, calling people and moving them around. On attack, you have your strat and you can sort of set up where the team are going to go, what you're going to do, and almost manage them along the way. And we saw his individual level go from the worst player in the server to one of the best. And I think that's where we have to look on the other side then for Gen G and think, okay, when it comes to leadership and experience, sure, we mentioned someone like oh King God, as having a ton good, to work down. Oh, my. <laughs> Bounce back from the Gen G. We'll talk about that later. The first to second half difference there from That Zanuck. is a difference. I mentioned Kawazin. Good in the first half, fantastic Defense, in the second. Absolutely this guy, nothing. He Dialed Attack. it up a notch. Yeah, it, it was a completely different showing from me. And I said, I think that comes down to just being able to micromanage a little bit less, have your set strats, which you worked on. I think a lot of the time that's a lot easier to do on the attack. So I think he did a fantastic job, and we can kind of expect that. So the thing I was going to say as well was on his sense of leadership, King, ton of experience, he'll be able to help out. But leading on the international level for TS, this has got to be a struggle for him. I mean, you're sitting here for the first time in front of this crowd, and they're getting loud get every split, time you're getting taken down. But I don't down. think we're going to get to I split. I imagine that's certainly going to be a, a little bit of a 
thing gnawing at the back of your mind. Yeah, let's talk about Fracture as we go on to Gen G's pick here. Again, I don't didn't really I personally didn't really expect uh to see this map, but I mean Gen G must be coming with something. Again, Tom, they have to, because if they lose this map, they're going home. Yeah, this is one of the maps that we did actually get to see them play at the prior tournament. Yeah, they Pixel, got I, by I love watching Lotus. I, I love playing in Lotus too. A more from a loss than you will a victory. We've seen it Probably a few times, but quite a bit. Even the map not this much lately. So I bet I we're going to see it more lately, uh, later in the tournament. Carl, Some teams might save strats, you know. Going into Fracture, I think they're going to have a lot of ideas. I mean, both teams, they heavily lean to the cham into the chamber. The last time we saw them play it. Uh, Less was unreal. Yeah, and for now, that was a while ago. And we have seen some chambers already but surely they're not going to go there here there's going to be something new hey listen this is D this is they they were playing against drx with a chamber with stingers on second rounds i mean it could, could have been a completely different game oh it'd be interesting if we get these agents <laughs> locked in we get three, <laughs> three chambers one is not enough but uh, of course this, this is the prime gaming agent select and uh, so far no chamber yeah, no, it's a map where I think it's still definitely possible with the no level cipher. of aggression, but... No Cypher, Oh, Sadak Sadak on the race! The I want to know what Aspas is actually I'm playing now. Okay, oh they're going God. in with the double. Both, Both sides teams are going are. double. Nor normal so stuff from I, um, I really like seeing the Neon still in play, but yeah. this is definitely an interesting change. Yeah, I mean, this is something that they described Echo as an oh. initiator in their interviews earlier on, but this is a bit I of an anomaly. I think Cypher is better on Fracture, especially. This is somewhere that he certainly has some experience, but... I, I mean, they've got to be tuned in from the very get-go. This is a map they got dominated on before. So much must have changed. I'm going to sell you something. Sadak played Raids one time before, and he got 316 Woo! ACS. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what they can okay. do here. Certainly, Pansy and Hypok, a very different look from both sides. Very different. No Neon uh, yes. on the um, I believe so. Other side. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little curious what we're going to see here and what we can see here. We have a little technical issue on our side of things, so we'll we'll figure it Shocker. out. Who'd have thought it? It's Who'd us. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have to wait for the game to get ready and all of that business anyway. But let, let's then talk about what this map kind of entails to you. What do you instantaneously think of when you're seeing this map now coming into play here? Uh, I mean, I, with a team like Loud, um, sure. uh, again, I'm actually slightly surprised to see the Neon on the other side of things, right? Yeah. Uh, again, this is one that kind of leans into their pedigree, right? Mm. As a name in Valorant, and that ability to really control some of that aggression, create that chaos that we yes. were alluding to on Pearl. We didn't see an awful lot of it with that composition. Um, but this certainly, <laughs> uh, again, I'm, I'm, you feel like, I'm um, worrying once people don't know the strats for Lotus sort of and clean comps so they go through it. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, that is a part of it. Very, very heavily they don't feel comfortable yet on Lotus, to work. And but on it's also... Um, Lau, that's going for a they might have strats for Lotus, but the other team might not. And they count Lotus as like a free map or something, you know, free ban. Figure it out as we go along, because there's been some curious statements. I mean, Scream saying that doesn't even doesn't even like a duelist. So, you know, we've, we've seen some really interesting things. Um, but I generally think that teams that ban Lotus first, the server, they probably... Early games. We well, either two things. Now either they have strats uh, and feel good, or they don't feel good at, at all on it. Done. Thank you for the patience. Um, we are just trying to sort a couple of bits out this side of things. You know, it's a little hot in the venue. It's a little warm. There's people in here. We're having a great time. Um... But outside of that map one that's going to roll back, do you think some of the worries you had then with Gen G's agent select or you know, agents coming up um, was actually some of the reasons that we had problems in that game for them? Did that actually come through as an issue or? Is that just something you're worried about overall? Uh, overall, yes. Sure. I mean, uh, the one thing to note as well, we obviously talked about King filling those We've shoes had two a little bit on the so Viper. I think and he was two. so hyper aware uh, one was what was going with, on around um, the map and when. FPX, uh, and the other one I can't remember with, which one picked. With the one controller, right? You can't really commit a second player but it was towards yesterday. having that, that sort of role there to really no, shut, actually, down the flanks, uh, shut down some of those two days second ago, layers of pressure that we were talking about. Uh, but the other thing to consider, Loud's ability to really find opening engagements, find the kill, that's going to be concerning once again as we come but in I hope here. We because see King more. is actually on the KO now. Yeah, straight into things. We'll have to see how this I like Fracture a lot as well. Already noting a little bit of information here. Ma'am, how are you doing today? Yes, nice to you. Deciding it's time to commit early enough in this. Doesn't want to risk anything. Information being found on the other side of the map. Three players going Yeah, for a go walk for it. They were here. very fun to watch. Really, really fun to watch. That's going to be seen. That's going to be relayed. And the fault line will come in response. Tempered aggression for the time being. Genji will peel away. No pressure on them. Um, 
dry side. A little curious towards B site. Does he get the timing on this, do you think? I guess they need Doesn't look like Gen G. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're going to tuck themselves in here, just playing off each other's contact. But it is only Aspas here. As I say that, Genji are starting to drift a little deeper on A site. I think actually on the back of that knife invested towards drop. Nope, Pico's going to find the contact here. Oh yeah, Paper, uh, uh, Paper X and C9 value. had le Lotus too. That was down. a very fun one too. Patience. A lot of uh, nice yes. kills. Okay, that's one, but there is still a second. And they're going for the they double pump. The uh, they're, they're coming right back around. It's on Meteor, basically. Oh my uh -oh. word, the shoulder peak was enough. He was able to back away from this, and that shorty's going to send him packing. Aspas down to 24 HP, 30 shorty. seconds. They're being denied. The uh, might have issues on the side now. They're trying to follow through. Meteor trying to play his life. Seven seconds, and it's going to be denied. Massive work uh, coming um, out from Genji. Unlucky. Unlucky. Genji, honestly, with how that, the timing of Aspas getting away, I think actually potentially he would have had open sight lines towards TS. I think he's just so cautious with such a huge gap between him and his teammates. Trying to make sure that he can absolutely find value. Again, of course, it's a shorty he's facing off against in tower. Look like they're setting up this fairly proactively. Nobody on the side of Loud over on that north side of the map. I just no think they don't um, have a strong sentinel player. Could be uh, that. I quite like how proactive Genji are being in this one so far. Really enjoying the fact they're actually trying to clear space, take partial control somewhere, work back through. Very diligent play. They probably so value the flashes and smokes way more the of that for the neon combo. Yeah, the problem being, Genji rather than having a sentinel like cipher because it, like they can have smokes but they need a cipher them absolutely no hint they also probably don't expect loud to play neon so then they don't need a cipher Lion on their ability to get back onto site here and they've made it on pretty cleanly yeah lovely now can anything really deny this now a little bit of utility is still left in play for loud to own maybe just be disruptive but the amount of bodies there is oh. simply Massive, loud, actually doing so much damage. The fuse. Still uh, the end part like of this tail. They've drawn blood though. They absolutely have, with very little. And with the plant going down, should aid the finances just a little bit. And apologies if we miss out. Till Joel can be as free on this map. We currently don't have uh, some of the. Oh, so yeah, it is. Yeah, right I, but you need to get Dolphin. Right bear, bear with us if we're saying some mad stuff, but um, <laughs> we should be seeing the reward of that work coming here. And it doesn't sure, stop the Neon either. Stinger on the, uh, on his back. Oh, the That's Genji looking to get very proactive in this round oh. three. That's Eco found one. The flash was so good, but they couldn't quite get on the second. Sadak still. Some having so many just extra lives to run through. It, it, it looked like a ton of one. damage on the second as well. Yeah, actually, yeah, Sadak. Let me licking his wounds. Peeling away from B main now. But Genji feel as if they're going to catch the timing on this rotation. King has to slow things down with the fragment. Oh, this is his elbow. 77 HP. Knife back in three seconds, so could reveal this setup. Everyone plays um, oh, there it is. Brimstone uh, ah, Adrenaline on Fractious far. Sand, but they're not quite that far out, but what a snap from TS. Now starting to sweat in this King's still on the site. Trying but yeah, Brimstone ult is more for a post ground. Aspas down. Spike's in the doorway still. Uh, Two E's. Two E's, maybe he can get the drop on one, but they've got to start questioning it at some point. I mean, it's 30 seconds. He has to commit to this flank now. And I love this readjust though from yep, Genji, just getting close by. Further. Really nice. Like that, playing smart together. And there it is, contact made. Now you can see the, this This is almost impossible. King spotted. And then this time, it's all about time. 13 seconds and eventually you will see that flank even coming back oh, on in. It's King nice try. doing wonders now for Genji. Really nice response to him. And that will break the bank for Loud. <laughs> I'm not yeah. entirely sure of the ultimate um, progress, but unlucky to lose the bye round. A lot to throw into this round. And Gen G, be very happy with themselves. The start on the defense.
What do you think? Um, who will? What do you think? Who will win? I think Loud will win this. I I feel like they will win. It might be two one, but now. it's also still early on in the match here, here for, for a fracture. What do you think? Because Gen G definitely has a, so a chance to win. To <laughs> from but I feel like Loud is just gonna pull through. Secret has found Sadak on the drift out there from that orbital strike. Cowan Zeen, very tacked up, has to peel away from this. Nobody towards A site right now, but you can already see the preemptive rotation coming through as the spike will make its way towards Ditch. I think actually, on the back of loud cutting sound, Mm. Might find themselves Nothing there. in a favorable position here. A 3v2 granted to Gen G. Yeah, Secret's time. <gasps> beautiful, oh. beautiful from Secret. Oh, man. So worried about that. They can't that catch a breath. Slightly, but it wasn't time to perfection, and now they don't have the same sort of space. And they're already considering At least you're that one orb away from uh, Breach ulti. You can see it being red, being worked through TS. No you find that you learn a lot from, through watching them properly? I do. Way, I seconds. do. Is there anything disruptive? If too easy falls too quickly, especially when I um, analyze. I don't really learn much from uh, the like listening to casters and so on because they just commented to entertain. It's more when I um, analyze on my own. Like I can analyze while watching or some uh, bot review or something. Got to play this to perfection. No less, we'll do it. Spots a barrel, spots a player, gets a kill. One there we go. Yes, He's sticking it. He's sticking it. It's a different game. There's a crowd in here. They're going to make noise and Kowski nice. knows it. Nice. Nice. Let's do it the final moment here. TS trying to get away with a little daylight robbery. I think the crowd has a bit of a delay. We'll get themselves on the board at Just least. so that they don't help. With that Red Bull clutch. What is this shot from Unbelievable. TS? No right to start hitting those sort of shots. Kalzine. Too aware to I've learned that sort of setups uh, from pros and have pros learned uh, setups from you. I've learned some uh, setups from pro well, players, but most of them have been mine. And if they have learned from me, I don't know. Aggression being the name of the game, though, Aspas instantly being tested here. They've done similar to mine, or have done Absolute the exact chaos. same, but. Uh, you know, if they watched me or so someone else that found sure themselves, really how to approach this. that's a different uh, story. They get his trades back and forth. Would be cool though, yeah, if um, down. We are into a 3v3. if they did. Sadak. See media, and then she ooh, gets a lovely one. Sadak. You definitely want Huge that. You you need that. Round. But they spent the brimstone player. ulti over there. Kind of too much. And fall away. Yeah, 15 HP. Kimbe, the rifle. Good. It would be amazing. It would be amazing, but I think I think, I think instead gonna what's going to happen, with there's going to be a, some kid out there, of unknown the right now, the just going to turn up one day out. and just dominate with uh, safer place and have the exact same playstyle. Sadak still sitting on that showstopper. Or I'll get my own team impact, and I get five safer players. Now we look at where the money sits. I'm going to be a little stretched. But this is the moment for me that really stood out again, just securing the round. There was an opportunity there for Genji. Timeout. And it looks like we do have a bit of a technical timeout. Sure for who? Oh, it's just just an overall tech. A Pampot classic. Well, now get themselves into a position where his ultimate start starting to come online at least. And he not able to convert that early run of rounds into anything too concerning just yet. Uh, Hafiz, uh, I'm not sure what you mean. 
I'm not sure what you mean. Good what's up? Hope you're doing good. I'm curious as well if Genji continue to uh, pressure so much. Uh, yeah, like it's the syndrome. It's uh, the it premier mode. Like the really they will have so that, that you can play tournaments in, in the client. And that's going to be super cool when it comes out. I hope they make it so that again, you can create your own tournaments for your like communities. And um, I would host tournaments for you guys. For example, them. That would be very nice. I actually have to, I guess, wait and see how loud opt to navigate that in the upcoming rounds. Kepo you yeah. too. You too, my man. Timeout now should be hopefully worked out soon here. Not sure what the issue may be, but try to look towards the players if anyone's headset off yet. <laughs> well, it looks like it's uh, being worked through as we speak, so shouldn't it's be an too audio much issue. Of I wonder if it's the crowd. <laughs> there's, there's, there's people out there being quite. Uh, I mean, I can barely rowdy. hear you, so. What? Huh? Never heard you in my life before. All right, we're back. Now it looks as though the time up is uh, coming to an end, so we should be good to get back into game. Thank you for the patience, sir. And yes, it, I'm actually enjoying the match. Game, actually, towards, you know, Lance, I'm I'm having uh, fun, uh, but I've been I've been live for seven hours, so my energy is a bit um, you know low. But I'm I'm pistols. I'm having a lot of fun. Rifle on King, so see what he can achieve with that. Yes, I'm liking the match. Two, so a little bit to play with here. Like when I'm not talking and I'm just looking here, <laughs> I'm just I'm basically a, a viewer. That's exactly what the doctor ordered there. Remove that hero rifle that could have potentially done a little bit more damage. Very few opportunities now for Meteor to try and be disruptive to this round. The last players nice. are down to those nice, pistols, nice. really. So again, this one looking sewn up here. Off the back of Aspas with a lovely double. Righteous. Moving King. Good afternoon. Did have that vandal nice only brought forward. Well navigated here to make sure Meteor finds nothing without showstopper. Again, the awareness. I agree. I I cannot. I agree. I would want to see Cypher just to stop the, um, but not really stop Neon because they have no Neon on uh, on loud. Let's finally trading it out. Kind of nice. So we'll draw blood, force out a couple of repurchases. Yep. But yeah, definitely see um, Cypher just for flank control. Again, some of these ultimates still available. Nice, I mean, good job. Finding seemingly two freebies on the way in. Or with minimal cost here, albeit Cowan Zine's life. So we've got a showstopper, the blade storm. Uh, what's my favorite down. Phantom of Vandal skin? Phantom enough, is uh, RGX, RGX, the blue version. The and for Vandal, later. it's Neptune. Oh. I like that I one the most. It. It. As, as yeah. I've just said that. Well, I mean, again, if you had a jet here, you could anchor similarly to how you would with a Sentinel in this composition. Yeah. If you do want to play out something a little slower mm. anticipate some of this aggression on the side allowed oh here we go here we go on the other side gonna get a lot of attention early on draw a lot of that utility out Actually, no one there okay unscathed, quite surprisingly how long have i been on youtube it looks like they're trying to commit to this uh, well, since yeah, 2018 to this one. roughly and well you can see as to why no. media is deleted the quick trade for secret. Comes back through. It's too easy. These are back and forth frags. But, but I didn't actively post until the um, Valorant allowed. That's started. That's the coming in. And my eyes instantly drift towards less. What can he achieve in this position? Just securing any of that drop down. Any of those I didn't know how to make uh, videos really King before be uh, Valorant. King's got a couple of flashes to work with. But I learned as I go. I went. Actually found one on site. Cowan Zine's going to fall. So now he can flash himself out. Nice. 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 Pressure from the neon, and yeah, brilliance from Lesser just falling away, making them work for him, buying fresh seconds oh, of the door. I like it. Shuts in his face, and the round goes to loud. And making no secrets of that round there, Mike. That was quite, you know, headstrong almost in approach. Oh, almost an opportunity now. Talk about Gen G unable to capitalize on that early string of rounds. The funds starting to dwindle. They have a bit this three year kill jolty, probably gonna go be with it. A couple of players able to force something in here. The Bulldog. Two on a, a scope of a different kind. A stinger. And not close to some of those key ultimates to offset this. Looking towards the Meteor and Eco here. 
Oh. Actually gets to double dip on this, but now down to 14 HP. Has to respect it. And this fight for B main, back and forth. Genji happy to dip their toes. Yeah, Jinbei, I'm, I'm hopping off to bed um, after this. There's a amount they can do that, and I think Meteor, the cost was 10 HP. It's um, almost 1 a.m. here, so getting late for me too. But looking at the other side of the map here, already spaced Baron, taken yeah. over by A, so Brazilian crowd, the, the Brazilian crowd is um, always delivering hype. The pressure coming through by Dish. But as we note, it is going to be that B piece by all accounts for now. And well, the timing oh. is gorgeous. That's pass again. Formidable on these approaches, finding those instantaneous picks. Smoke's now going up as well, securing safety on that cross for the side plant. Good flash though, actually the swing out, not going to find anything. Oh, yes. no way. Gets two, though. Less than Zadak will fall. There's still, uh, there's a huge chance that spots him. How does he do that? How has two nice try. found that kill? Dude, two kills. Again, Scrappy. collateral. Close, but certainly no cigar allowed. Going to carry on forward with the two standing. Yes, it could add some issues to the economy. No, look at that. Already 7k built on Aspas. They're fine. That's an operator back in play. And Genji now deciding it's time to consider their options. Yeah, they have to put a stop to this run. Now, now up to five rounds unanswered. That's a huge that. kill. <laughs> Finding a perfect lineup there on the back of the flash. It's difficult. Some of the things we're seeing Genji try to achieve here yeah. on the defense. And uh, we always talk about it becoming more and more. I'm going to go grab some water. I'll be back in a second. It's scary, really, when you don't have the funds to back it up. Hmm. Especially being away from some of these ultimates that you can offset some of these purchases. Now, if the arena dropped the lighting, that would be kind of sick. I'm not going to lie. Do you know? It looks pretty good in here right now. <laughs> yeah. A couple more seconds on this timeout, though. You're coming to an end pretty quick. And overall, I, I mean, I was getting worried about Genji and Map 1, but after that timeout, we did see them actually find a bit more of that validity coming back into it. They certainly had that springboard going forward, so I shouldn't write them out but, you know, just yet, but I look but at the way the rounds are trending, though. It's you know, five on the trot here. It's a very different scenario. The Defendulum has swung back in favor of Loud here, so... Yeah. But not Genji really in a position to mm -hmm. repeat the same as I guess that's success after Correct. the timeout is the question. Because like I said, they haven't really been finding value off some of these crunches early on at least. The flash over the top. But it's a split this time. You can still see Loud not over committing towards that B piece. Uh, they had, to be fair, they haven't even been doing that before. But still committing two players to it this time. While Tries to flash him out, but uh, that neon out, is not moving. Find. Too much value. That's about it. It's, um, it's about as far as it gets before the site well comes uh, 30. in. Loud no. is so good at probing, though, and figuring uh, 12, out exactly who is playing where. It's almost 1 a.m. So they note King's flash early on. They've now noted... Hope you're doing good, by the way. Nice to see you. position. They would have noted Eco off the stun as well. King tucked all he the way into spawn that. here. He can see the cross onto site. Uh, That's just it. I mean, Les can't see it, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely tunnel vision towards... Push I was waiting through, for him to just see the elbow there. Genji sitting purely for retakes here. This is. Yeah, playing off the sword. Just trying maybe. It's not there to deny plan. Maybe holding for the lockdown. I'm not sure. Potentially, but still would have to really work for that. Uh, they do have one player towards the site. Now trying to clear Ooh, towards tower. Does good. it? That's a big objective achieved here on the checklist of the retake. But now you have to disrupt the players sitting deep on the other side. Well, that is a nasty through. one. Oh, oh, ho, ho. Meteor deleted. They're going to sit on this spike. No one's moving them just yet. Still, no one moving. There we go. Finally, the shot comes nice. in. Nice. Well done, Loud. Well say, done. The timing on that smoke dropping was going to be crucial because Gen G in broad daylight. Oh, yeah, I'm spotted. Tomorrow, there's no matches, and um, I'm, I'm not streaming tomorrow. Going to be working on uh, video instead. Something in this oh, and uh, then season. there's only two matches. On uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it would be four weapons max. They had to reschedule Loud's shot? match Lovely. because they were sick what early on. So, um, yeah, that's why we have three matches now. But, yeah, that's how it is. It's got to prioritize um, player self. Looking more and more comfortable on the stage here. Another pinch towards the north, potentially. Actually, no, Eco slipped through into underpass. Might catch Aspas here. The timing on that flash was perfect. I think Eco just missed him on that cross towards the box. 
Oh, oh. Good trade. And King's still finding that is ridiculous. But the fact that he Can got I so speak far out by Sam German? without being ich checked nicht. on. Ich nicht. Tell Spreche. me how. But Genji responded German. massively. No. All players ich now nicht. drawn over. They're trying to retake Spreche the space. Deutsch. They're going to be catching them completely unawares. The spray's done enough for less. But those shots are hitting. I know I'm wrong on how I pronounce it though. Pass pass against Meteor. A minute to play with him. Plenty of mind games if they want it. And a drastic outgun in favor of Aspas here. Meteor has to respect no. this amount of well, space. That's what you get. I know Schmetterling. And um, has swapped out to a rifle I used as well. to know how to say um, airplane of window. Oh, Meteor is actually going to retrieve an upgrade here before he goes for this retake. He's not. No utility. What is he going for? By tapping. Oh, nice. Oh, man. This guy is so clean yeah. with it. If you guys speak the German, you just heard me wow. speak German. I'm and pretty sure I sound like I'm drunk so out of my mind. Reading the setup from Gen G. They don't feel this resistance that's what it sounds in A main. Like. They get a couple of sound cues elsewhere on the map. And that's why we see Sadak immediately push through Zook. sand. He knows Flug the maximum Zook. is going to be one. Yeah. It's that's not going to be that plane, yeah. utility. You know, but window. Eco playing off the, the flash somewhere from secret. Beautiful round from Loud. Now we become even more concerned about the finances once again. Round oh, they're trying to stop the Neon there. An awful lot left behind this purchase. Ultimate. Ah, then I remember it. Back Maybe it was some other word I remember that. But will that be the saving grace if they lose this one? They're staring down the 9 3 half. They are. Curse or not. Ooh, secret seen a whole lot here. But again, the amount of space Sadak's finding, but they already expect this to an extent. Oh, but the shoulder check just gives Sadak even more Yeah, there it here. is. Oh, Pressure, though, can't uh, make it away. It's whatever. That aggression. But note where There's the spike's the going. It's all down to one, and King had a finite Ooh. amount of time to play with. Yeah, done for. Lau just running rings around them right now. Both players coming across from bridge. Your secret. Yeah, I feel like fail. Loud is winning this now. He's looking to greet them on the way in here. Finds the first. This third on the round. Bruce. Can Secret respond here? Just hit the one shot. He'll be fine. Secret. He's there dead. it He's is. Dead. Loud. Three eight. Are they gonna act with curse? And Three Gen nine. Defiant on map one. Map two starting to bleed away from them here. We said the ultimate's potential to be the saving grace for Gen G. They will be able to scrape together some kind of purchase but it's spectres a judge to round this out whether or not we see some aggression on the back of the rolling thunder the first time actually there's been a heavy emphasis from loud towards bridge yeah i think anticipated maybe that very aggression towards the typical points that genji have gravitated if they could be rewarded for it. But absolutely a correct call. Uh, Hilo, does that mean I'm right? Yeah, no no reward this time. But it's only... Jinbei, sleep well. I'll see you later, my man. It's now starting Take to care. begin that exploration mission as, as a whole pack, as five players. Yeah, that's just King here. I mean, yes, TS is jump spotting from spawn, but not in a position the to play a human angle from He's going to find a headshot. We'll note the Sadak. shock at least. That will pull Meteor very quickly this direction. But Sadak, he's got a showstopper now. Yeah, and he's going to just let that rip. Take as much space as possible, push through. A bit of yeah, he had to use there. it because Keo knife. And now has to hold this one. He's not, he's not alone. He's not even needing the backup. Ooh, so close. And, and there's Meteor. the... Big shot comes in as well. There's the, the buzzer back. Oh, I'm lucky there. The pass, pass. That too. This is not clean at all. Loud. Put through the paces now. Just one alive in a 1v4. What can he do with this? So many bodies in the way. There's ah, nice try, nice try. Stopping. Gen G. It's, it's going to be 4 run, 8. No curse. Much, that means loud wins. The one you least expect them to pull off. Again, it's actually greasing that aggression really nicely. Aspas just caught off guard with that wide swing. Shuts down the blade storm, but elsewhere. Meteor and Eco coming through. That flank from Tree. So much more to be seen, so much more to be said, Mike. But at four to eight, we're gonna hand it back to the desk to break down that first half. Thank you very much, Pansy and Hypog. This one isn't as close as the first half of Pearl. And a double duel is on both sides. What did you, what did you guys think? I'll be honest, I think a lot of that has got sort of what Mike was saying. Like, 
I feel like it's a great game being called. The initial rounds, it was very aggressive coming out of Gen.G. They were sort of like taking a lot of space and immediately you just see a lot more of a direct sort of pushing strategy coming out of Sadek, just taking space and not allowing them to catch them in the pincers. Yeah, you definitely saw the difference in comfort here. When we saw the I first like half of the previous half no defensively, playing a solo anchor of a killjoy, this guy now. didn't have nearly as much freedom as he did this time it's around. It's going to be very problematic. Move around the map and take a lot of these duels. His utility was perfect, and the calls off the charts. Thinking about what we're going to see from him in the next. Defense is where he struggled before, but that was when he had a lot of responsibility. As I said, playing well, actually, what am I talking about? Now, I mean, on that attack. have as much to worry about on with less picking up that role. Well, that's the thing. I almost feel like their defense is going to involve just being aggressive again, like having more set plays and him leading the way. Like, you can't do that with a double duelist. That's actually why I want to look at the guys on the other side in the form of Echo and Meteor. I think some of the setups that they had on the last map revolving around those supportive players pushing these people into angles. Now, they were trying that on the defense. It was failing miserably. Look at that they were being contrast every single time. between the player now, shots. They're going to be the, the, the one on this side again. They Hi. have to lead the way, find them. Meanwhile, Mitra is like, I'm going to end you. Players work around them. So the fact that they're quite low on the board, it's rough for now, but hopefully it will work on the other side. Now, one question I had going into that half, going into this series, TS, he's a new guy on the international scene. He's IGLing. You're up against this crowd as well. King comes <laughs> in and says, I want to I want to shut them down. But I wasn't so sure if uh, TS would have the same idea, but he was playing a fantastic game there up towards the top of the scoreboard. Hopefully he can keep it up. They're going to need it. Yeah, they are going to need it indeed, Genji. They got to deep here, de dig deep here, because <laughs> uh, if they don't, Pansy and Hypoch, they're going to be going home. Yinzo. Yeah, I can't last see thing that. we need, uh, Yinzo, is deep heat. It's very warm up here. No product placement, of course. Appreciate you. <laughs> I'm just getting glares, but. Four to eight, we can actually now focus on the game here. Let's kind of dive back into the first half. And, and the problem is if we, if we, let's look at this, right? It's perfect on the screen right now. First three, looking great, really exciting. And the last one. And it's Imagine. just an absolute I get demonetized on YouTube of rounds here coming because of a caster. Cloud. Eight rounds on the trot. Oh, we love a tech pause. Mm. God, we are being treated today. It's actually uh, crazy <laughs> since we've landed here in Sao Paulo. Though. Exactly, the, he the, race, it. the ratio is <laughs> fairly outrageous. It's, it's, it feels. I it's wonder if Kirsten. the next it's Sentinel would be pause. anything no, like Cipher. I really hope us. so. It's an us pause. It's an us pause. Thank you though for not blaming us though. I do actually appreciate that. To agree. Like maybe it's nice of them to do this. I mean, some people do blame us. Notably, be Mitch. He is mostly top. Mitch. Yeah. He's absolutely. Like, I've never seen Mitch so happy. This guy here, he's not happy. Look at him. Get him spot on the desk. He's a Gen G fan. Really pleased. Look at that guy, smug. Ah, well, look, if, if it all goes wrong, we can just get like a quad cast. Just open up the desk mics. <laughs> Mitch, is Mitch, has been, chair, Mitch right? has been play by play in some of his segments on the desk anyway. I mean, the pace has been uh, out of this world. So if you are wondering why we're talking absolute nonsense, we do have a tech pause and we have nothing to really talk about yet because the second half hasn't really started. And oh. the first half in context, Michael, once the weapons came out to play, it was loud winning. Yeah, I mean, once they built up that bankroll, like I said, some of the things that Genji were attempting become yeah even more risky, right? Ulti. It snowballs from there. They can't really commit no, no to some ulti. of these what am I talking about? But I guess that conversation does carry across to the second half. Sure. Obviously, the lack of that Sentinel. Yep. Yeah, split we're would be very, uh, pretty sick. Very I bet that from there, from Gen -G. which is Actually, hard. How they will play our Sentinel. Loud really toy with that Gen -G, lack of that is. control, right? They don't have an information gatherer, right? No, Outside no. of the boom bot, don't really have anything. While it lasts. Well. All right, yeah. let's see. How will this go? This That's is going to be a very point. fast All right. pace with the Neon. Let's see. I'm pretty sure. If there is any fight left in Genji they have no, here, because they have no way to hear. Again, they can't hear this. This is elimination if it does get lost. Whoa. And after, what a start. Diving in head first, taking down two loud left to three Someone has to take care of that. Is everywhere. Kauzine's still going to walk away with at least something, but still looking at this, they've won everything they wanted here. I cannot, if I was there, you know, I wouldn't just hold two sticks. Okay. I would do all the sticks, like two in one hand. Make a believer out of me in this round, loud. And oh no, oh my god, oh my god, that was so I would close. Stop juggling them. A 1v2, this is so much for less though. He still has Atari, still got a little bit to work with. Utility on the side is there, but he doesn't know what's clear and what's not. Only noting one player, potentially even seeing the foot there, but that player in CT is an issue. Pons not really for it, but can be made to be a nuisance with just that. Of course, Secret nearly fall into the turret. He's 3 HP. Uh, 
the time though. Mike dwindling. Still doing so much work. He can't uh, say he's not trying. Nice try. Gen G. With the cypher suit. Maybe not with the cypher suit. Actually. need to see pace. I need to see a committed hit maybe, with this composition maybe. from Gen G. It is going to be very warm. I might die from how, how warm already. it is. That flash wow. was perfectly at timed here. But at least. Beautiful. Again, Meteor. At least, you know. To follow up here in this double duelist composition. Actually, no, it wouldn't be uh, worth it at all. Actually, no. How not. many pieces do we see from Gen G just like that? Oh. Do we see an optic approach? Do you think there should be um, yeah. agent skins? Yeah. No, I don't think so. And Not yet, at least, pace. because it's, it's going to be super and difficult to recognize bravery. agents. Like, imagine you, you a cypher skin look that looks like a demon. And then you have a ray skin that looks like a demon, too, but in a different way. And suddenly you mistake the agents. That should be good for nothing here. The door should be shut in the face. There should be six. And Mainly Gen for that GT reason, but if it's like super can. subtle, By all rights, then try sure, I mean, this gap. It's not could over be yet. done well. Fairly polarized, you think about it, obviously we're talking about the financial struggles in the first half. This, yeah. potentially, Loud win the pistol in round two, it's 10-4. It's, it's Again, the same thing, you to assume would have happened. Constantly playing catch up, Gen G, constantly yeah. starting on the back foot. Four Spectres, a Sheriff, into this round here. Going to try and convert as best they can. I'm hoping TS buys a little more utility than that. Mm. Just carrying 5,400 into this, or I guess they're just going to run it down again. The speed at which they're going, and the trades are quite good. Looking for that end player damage. Sadak nice. is keyed up for success, but could only get, I think, one, but he did do a lot of damage. Look at King. Yeah, Look at uh, well, in Overwatch, you have to factor in that well. um, all, all the characters have a different gun. Yeah, with the lack of smokes here. The way they shoot, the way they sound when they shoot and so on. Yeah, you're right. For example, a giant monkey with a taser just going zzzz. That's very difficult to um, mix up with, uh, for example, um, a roadhog. Saving. Saving Aspas there for sure. A meteor being given nothing. Look at Too Easy sitting so deep towards CT. Aspas going through over by sand. So many angles to worry about from the time side of Dwindle. Need to hold on to this great isolated pick with it. Denial on the old nail seeker in trouble. Spectre. Come on out. Nice. Can he go to it? Doesn't matter. Aspas made it there in time. The fuse going to come in and loud. Yes, lost out in some numbers there, but they will make it up to nine now on the board. Two rifles to carry across from this. We have to scrape something together. And G, though. You know what they could do? Booming after that. Just a team fight. Uh, team Fortress 2 approach. Give everyone hats. The bottom half. That just hats. in terms of the finances. Yeah. Decent progress towards some of these ultimates as well, but actually, Loud almost edging them out in this first ult cycle. It's so crucial that Meteor's showstopper gets yes. shut down yeah. there. So I think the fault line actually connected onto Aspas. Yes, he dashed out. Potential there for him to isolate something with the showstopper. Big info here from King. I'm not really seeing that death ball approach from Gen G. No, I don't mind the pace change coming in, hitting the brakes a little bit, knowing that you've got a little bit more utility maybe to try and work through. See if they you get think uh, Valorant skins are fairly priced? I think so. I think so. Obviously, they're expensive. Very, very like, I don't buy all the skins myself either. I haven't bought skins uh, in a while. But tower, they are not essential the either. It's how patient allowed in this. That's contact. This could spur it's, on this um, approach. Let's see if King and Co are ready yet. Yeah, they absolutely are. But head set out. And if you want them, and sure. I mean, this does have support systems in that's place. Fine. This was all to try and bait that And for that Maybe reason, I think it's fairly priced. To that further aggression in a -hall. Because you, as a consumer, you decide what you want. For loud. King close enough to get ahead of that flash. Remove Sadak. Oh, and Zine now, 25 seconds to that fault line. You can't really slow oh, this down, but he's oh, actually oh, going oh. aggressive. He got the first, but he caught the flash. TS will find the trade. I still got a number up to the good and the smokes will Oh, be able I forgot to, to check Night Market. Terrible I'm gonna do that. Um, I didn't play that. ranked today, they so that's why. I'll check it after the stream, um, we'll after the match here. We uh, hop in the game and an check the um, Night Market. Aspas can be coming around by Dish. But how do we disrupt this post plant? So difficult. Too easy, not being gifted too much here. Two on the site still. 
He has still got that molly as well, so can play this pretty late. Come on, loud. Spawn set up for it. Very difficult to do this because even just addressing that nice. back line, they've done Huge the best kill. they can, but they still need to get past TS's molly. It's probably been sent out into play now, and he needs to get there fast. Meteor still holding the ground. He's going to be doing well towards one, but the molly burning. Going to get it towards halfway, but lose life. And now the 1v2, Aspas. Can he be the hero this round? No! Oh, Gen G! So still close. with death. Still with players. He shot him in the chest. Still with life in them yet. Is Night Market out? I don't know, but uh, I've been asked it it yesterday, now. yeah. So um, I'm gonna check to it. Throw some investment here, but no Blade Storm, no Showstopper. As you want to wait from the Showstopper and the Rolling Thunder. Like I said the timing I on think the Molly coming through out. here just to apply a little more pressure. Last Night Market like that, was well. very good for me. I didn't buy anything here. from it, but it now was somebody in pretty the back good. lines. Wait, it isn't out. Oh, okay, okay. Genji. Seven, nine now. Does Genji have it in him? They got the dog in him right now. Oh my word! Sadak with the judge Yo. still. Actually catches Meteor. Artex. They aren't going and down just yet, but the pressure Amado. is so quickly mounting. Amado Kario. Welcome to the mountain, guys. Finally. Hope you guys have a great day as well. No problem for him. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And it is just chaotic at the moment. Leaving it back down to a 2v2. Spikes on the side for the flank. Be a watch. TS big. Ah, uh, then it's probably coming Sadak. out tomorrow for you. But now, look at the HP remaining. King was vulnerable. But Might be tomorrow that it comes out. Unless it's safe um, on the, site. the same everywhere. Because we get the patch um, a bit uh, later. 8 to 9. This is getting close now. Loud feeling that pressure again. The old cycle hitting perfectly for them now, though. Could not ask for a better look here. Just missing out on ass passes, but still. So much to bring into this potential round. And that last one was pure and utter chaos. Is loud actually the ones oh, out in you as well. All right, I'll check it after the matches. The for them. Four ultimates available. Aspas, two off that blade storm. Ion Phantom for 10 bucks. Should you buy if you have the disposable income? All but tapped out, and you like loud. the skin, go for it. Only one round separate. I think Ion is a very nice skin, but um, and now we look at you know, at the end of the day. Right, time out here it depends loud. on if you like when they it want to shoots, make sure this gets how it looks, they don't want the reload or so on. The doorstep. They don't want to think about map three because we, we do need to bring it into question now, right? We're talking about the map pool that we've seen. We've seen Pearl and Fracture quite close, which has been wonderful to watch, right? Brought us a brilliant game, but split. I think before is Night Market, uh, we know before the last Night Market, I would always get like a ton of. On it as well, but it's still it is Shorty, Frenzy, to such a no, large extent Shorty, Stinger, and this that one. The shotgun, not Deadly. judge. That scares the life out of me, and it probably does a little for loud as well. Bucky. So if the opportunity is here, a lot of Bucky all the time. The and talk this through. How do you want to? The guns I don't really use that much. Where do you want to bring into effect? How do we want to approach this game? That is the consideration now. Again, you do look on the other side. Secret does has have his king not far off either. Meteor still a little further away, but the purchase is there with a little in pocket. And this is a buy down for loud. So, and you can see just the scoreboard. Genji have been absolutely step by step bringing this game back. The pace has been fatal. Naspas going to get the first bit of contact. Quick I am Catalyst. Arcade. I am. But is he willing to deal with the three players? Still has a chance on it, Meteor. Belting start. Takes down Aspas, and the site is there. The pace is unrelenting from Genji. And so are the frags. Less is gone. We're down to three. It's so Ooh, one jerseys. more, one more. Mike, this is absolutely nuts. Genji have just kicked up a gear. They're about to break the economy even further. And keep five standing. Yes, ultimates available for loud, but they don't even get a chance in this round. Oh, oh nice. Oh, CS has found another two E's. We'll find a consolation. Goes out. Well, That's into the smoke. That's all out. it is. Has to tuck his tail and back between in. his legs. Because the money was looking weak as well. I mean, he will bring this save. across. Can't remember off yeah, the top no of my head if Aspas will have the blade all storm good. here. Pretty sure Sadak had the showstopper. Only Everyone like, else had uh, everything apart from Aspas, so, so I don't am really curious uh, if that was enough, that much didn't quite um, it before. Could be something to yeah. work with, but like super this is nine apiece now. So yes, like where we'll do I live? His third. They're struggling here, Mike. Where does my girlfriend live? You know, stuff like that. It's that pace that's been coming through. It's what we needed to see. We called this at the half change. No Sentinel, they had to commit to this. And they're winning out some key engagements. Meteor finds the first hit, doubles down as well. Him and Eco, this dynamic duo on the duelist. Really nice. Still high spirits for loud. Not worried just yet, but this one could be. 
getting a lot of nerving because it's 10. It's 10 on the board. That's when you start to get a little, you know, okay, we see, they still have that proof if they need it, but you wouldn't want to go there. But they just simply do not have the answers right now to what Genji are bringing, at least on this half. Oh, is there for King as well? So really going through the motions this time, Genji mm. trying to give themselves that next layer too if they get the opportunity to bring it in. Because we know that Loud have all those opportunities in the round following, round 20. Oh, a catalyst. That is nice to hear. But they are not out of the woods just yet. Sheriff's galore. And actually players in the right place for this if they do go for this A hit. One smoke deployed. Genji's stacked up outside it right now, but the read all right. from Loud Echo. is spot on. It's very good. He has the full charge of very running here. It's not pop for Aspas. 71 HP in a dream to make this one work. Sight already in question, and but Zalek's going to find one. Yeah, now unlucky the cross need. gets brought in as well. They are making this so, so difficult to hit that oh. cross. The shot, Aspas, desperate for it. Oh. Tries his best and he can't do it. King's ult takes away the knives, so puts them back in the pocket. And one King left. carries this round forward for Gen G. Let's now a 1v3, and that Sheriff can only do so much. Rifles aren't really close by. There's no... Ah, weapon nice to pick up and Was King Supreme in this round. I'm doing good. Doing good. I'm a bit again, tired, Genji but I'm doing good. Playing phenomenal Valorant. Matches have been very Look nice today. We had an half. upset earlier Huge. with Talon round versus 15, um, MIBR. I expected Talon to go in. home 2 0, but instead they Another killed 2 0 MIBR at, uh, with also the home crowd. Like in the back chicken. pocket of Loud. Yeah. And uh, that match, which was um, there, the no command, man, the only I've got real one. threat there, the name. completely mitigated on the back of uh, that ultimate let's from see, King. Let's see, what was Aspas it? Now wants EG the versus uh, Heretics. That yeah. one I thought EG would lose, but they oh, showed I, themselves very um, small. Aspas, this is so dangerous! I'm like it, Aspas. He How was did he creeping see? onto the How angle. How did he see him on that angle? So fine! It must have been an elbow or something protruding a meteor will punish a man advantage once again that glass cannon shattered and we look towards a already made that progress towards it already got that foot so in the door i have a slow reaction here. time but King, i confess it with so high sense but it makes me inconsistent so he's just gonna be sad. would you recommend high or low oh, speed yeah, the there, i would really recommend low speed and um, not slowing them down you see like all. enemies um, let's see take enemies are coming from a corner or something or like running past the corner uh, the way you can compass a slow reaction Summer time is um, we'll instead oh. of placing the crosshair at right the at the edge of the corner, factor in some um, in. The the delay ah, pretty much all the block and uh, assume oh, that enemies are running out of it. So um, you, yeah, place it a bit further away from the cross uh, from the corner, and that way you don't have to adjust your your crosshair when you you know do the action to shoot. We had to stabilize on the back of that as well. Three will survive. Up, SP, SPLG. Sure and uh, yeah, exactly you want low sense because sit, um, you want be stability in your aim. Because uh, yeah, Genji all the shots matter. But if you would be playing regard. something like uh, yeah, that was the Overwatch, you to where right. like you just can turn and you know yeah, aim however you want, just, you right. then you want a bit more faster sense because enemies coming from everywhere. And you have to turn all the time. You take, right? Here, we'll just take it again to allow this round to happen, stability. Like here. And um, lots, mind, uh, lots of pro players play only on slow. All the ults. The low I don't pocket. think there's any pro player that goes but for high sense anymore. There might be, but it's uh, a lot rarer. Exceeding, and the pace again. Big pace change. No worries, no worries. Wide open B site here. We'll get a free plant. Yeah, my predictions yeah, uh, predictions have been wrong King as well, Ricky. I, yes, I don't mind it though. Zim will swing, but he will fall. Look at this, it's it's so bloodied on the way in, it's not clean at all now. Loud, at least clawing onto this round. First time we've seen resilience, and that's back to the previous He got the ulti off though. Secret goes down as quick as it was, and now the two, King and DS, the King and his knight right now. Yeah, 0. 0.7 is pretty high. That's going to buy a couple more seconds. Switching out to the still rifle. Quite a lot of time, though. Still there a is. fragment here from King. But can he even implement this? You can see they're trying to go take the fight on a King. Be I good think he one. tried to. Um, Wait a second, the still going to be coming in. Overround it there. Oh, and he's done it. Gen G. Ooh. It's King leading the way with the Red Bull clutch. Another he example tried to that headbutt the um, dropping at only, the I think. Moment. I don't know. We switched off. This time it's Loud who suffer for it. Beautiful pace change. They know. The louder feeling the pressure now. Look at this. 
buying the time perfectly. Yeah. Playing it so well. I'm so impressed with King here. He missed the molly, so that was perfect Some there. Some real pivotal rounds coming out from him. This is what brings up the question, though. Loud, they depended on all of those ults before. That's what got them that break in this trend. Look at the rounds as they were going. They, they had to invest everything just to stop that momentum of Gen G. And now they're in a position where they almost have to concede towards the let's 12. See if, Gen G will let's find see if they can get point. some. Uh, Bar any heroics. Some sure, free there, there's always here. a chance something crazy will happen. Someone pulls off. Yeah, this is the beacon mic. World, but and uh, also have it paired with the um, we are looking beacon uh, like mixer. Map three could be on the cards here. Very nice uh, combo. I used to have um, round. pod. Um, it's called um, a pod mic from um, Road before. And that King one was very nice too, but uh, doesn't beat this one. Trouble here. Pressing this corner. Does actually get away just evading. And I'm surprised by how good it is as a uh, USB mic peak. as well. Yeah, death of Kauzin tries to make something of it. But keep in mind, we have classics. They have frenzies. It's not much. And the diligence you got Recon Phantom in your is, is night market. And don't you don't like the design. These real errors that could cost them this. I don't and recommend it if you don't like the design, no, in my no opinion. No stress, no problems. No threats here really found. That's not, I was going to uh, say, that's not going to be able to do too much. It would not be um, a skin Perfect. that you enjoy, I think. Spike noted now. And these smokes seconds. are about to expire. they got to make a move on this one. Gen G, though. So quick. Could on. No kill. Well, only one kill. It is drilled. 12 to 10. One more round and Genji unlock map three. Uh, that's actually the other one I've been looking at. Okay. Yeah, this dude. Aspas now I have, have operator, some good advice. Um, behind you this time. If you live outside yeah. of the US, Closest ultimate getting this one might be a bit more pricier lockdown, because you have to import it. Genji, nothing left but in if you're in e if regard. you're yeah, in US or whatever, Again, but you don't want to... Um, Let's say that you want to upgrade to an Azure SM7B later down the road, or maybe some other no. like XLR mic. Going for the pod mic so is probably precise. a better bet then, but you can go for this one go. without That's having to get to, uh, a mixer, avoid that one. because it uses the window uh, Windows audio. So depends on uh, the, if you want the, um, an audio interface or something yeah, later. Or, or if, or if you have one already, or if you want to get one. Towards tree here. Cowan Zine will be the second and uh, this. I so think you also need a preamp side, for um, the pod mic, unless you use side. a GoXLR or something. But the uh, amplifier in this here. one is much this stronger is than well, in the no GoXLR version. Drop, but a deep position from Eco, probably going to read this rotation. And the mixer well, software, players, you get it with this thing, with yeah. Yeah. even if you don't have the uh, mixer. Have oh, they fell for this hook, line, and sinker. Now, at some point, they will question where these players are, and there it is. That's where the penny's going to drop, that this is all but a ruse, all but a fate, and Kauzin oh, going to find TS. he is hidden. Okay, dealing with a little bit of what? He saw Beautiful just the tip of the cap. Maybe in the final hour, but they're still king. Finding two, popping the O. He wants this round, he wants this map done. 25 seconds, and he needs the support. Echo was the one who was in the other side of the map. Oh, Has to oh, come oh, over. Oh, gonna find him, and now it's just down to one. He's the main. 15 seconds, and it's not gonna happen. Aspas with heroics. One Take more. To 11. Stepping up once again. One more. Get it over time. How precise, how disciplined Genji have been. And it's a gap in the smoke. Yeah. That this round crumbles apart for Genji. The fake was perfect. It was stunning. And they bought it. Of course they did. You had to. We hadn't really seen something like that before. There I it can't was. believe it. TS has had a fantastic map here. 25 and 15 for Gen G. Huge. But it's that tiny, tiny mistake. And Aspas will punish and find three here with the operator. Gen G pumping the brakes. It's their time out being called. What do you call in for this round? You have one of the old sitting on TS, Orbital Strike. Just imagine well from his. the amount of pressure Secret added from away, the crowd against away. just Genji. Not really going to have those opportunities to bring those through, at least with secure confidence. On the other I'm side, hoping Loud, loud wins. Operator still out for Aspas, of course. What about you, uh, Catalyst? I know we, we have a, a majority of um, Showstopper, the chatters here are knives. for Loud, I think, but there are some for Genji as well. At the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in it for the uh, best well round. But um, I, mean, just I want to see Loud win because, uh, yeah, Loud, home stadium. Be able to and see how the crowd is. 
Yes, they have the showstopper. It's a judge to round things out, actually, yeah, got the to complement that. Yeah, he'll be but my eyes just go to what does Genji run? I know this is loud, uh, you know, trying to pull this one into OT, but this is Genji fighting for their life, and they've done really well in these gun rounds. You can see the you just them, go but it split. feels like loud just True. has that ability in those final moments. Hopefully we get you get a Sadak moment, you get, you know, a Sadak moment here or there. Kauzin, do you it go back to the basics of what was working in these B-set like pieces Cipher of A-hit that have been gorgeous? So when you don't the side, though, can pick him there, you're kind of giving a, a free advantage. Nice, nice, very nice. Rifle found and Genji in tatters. OT calling. There it is. There it is. No one more. One oh, they've got the fight in them still. And Meteor in a 1v4. He just knows this is all but done. And this is going to be OT calling. There it wow. is. Over time. Giving us a game. And it's so key. The awareness there from Les to read that pace he hit to deal with the knife. To make sure he's still got his utility to fall back on. There we go. Beautiful to watch. The awareness on both Dude, teams. 100 here. Thieves seen are so many different great examples right now. of it. Again, this pins the immediate response. I think the head coach mate. Mike's has the done a great job with the team value. as well. And Cowan Zine, once again, that second layer to this aggression for Loud. That's gonna be that heartbreaking. safety net behind the duelist, Lauren. That's gonna that's gonna be so hard for Gen G mentally though. Because you think they did all that hard work technically, right? The technical aspect of it. But that guy is ready to knock down distance. any, any doubters. And now Loud starting to feel that confidence again. Maybe they've got the theory, the method that works. The pendulum swings again. Look at the base. Oh, though. they're going super no aggressive. Five man rush. They are playing like they're on the five. Line. And they absolutely are on the line. But Les is aware of it. The flash is back and forth. Fully blind. Gen G breaking in with two. Too easy. And let's go down. And now it's 3v3. Aspas needs to make go a for run the plant. for it. Yeah. Get out of danger. Blonde coming in. This will Dude, now be time Nobody on the expects side of a Loud. five man rush there. But the there is a race. Was that? It was a five man push. All the way into tree. Aspas now trying to hold down the floor. Oh, the Sadak is yes. absolutely slapped by King. Mirrored almost in approach now. The last two are going to have to make it through by A main. You've got Aspas and Kauzin on the other side. Spike ticking knife back up in three, but it's the yes. shot from Aspas. There it is. Oh, there it Just is. Them down. Blow for blow, Lauren. <laughs> it's sure. so back and forth. I mean, the rush almost worked out. It almost worked out. They almost got Aspas. It's, nobody expects a five-man so rush like that. Here. That's the stuff you got to pull out in, in overtime. How deep for the five-man tree push? push. <laughs> Come on. But it's another oh, round that Loud are just absolutely on point with this reactive gameplay. It's so fluid. They're always in a position to capitalize. Always. This is heartbreaking. This is, you know, really you smart of us to throat, uh, decide feeling. to go out there as well. By the world's on your shoulders, Gen G now. As said, we're in touching distance for so long, so close. And now, imagine we got to overtime until it's like 40 rounds. How far down the rabbit hole do we go here on Fracture? Just one round separating. Yeah, you get an extra timeout on over the map. Both teams elevating here on map two. Oh, yeah. What an insane performance Which across the uh, board. Basically Which resets. My, my question is, though, do they go for it again? Do they what do they go left BP's? in the tank? Exactly how much have we seen from them? Do they go for the hit that came through drop? The, you know, the dish hit? Do we see do we see those A main pieces? Maybe a fake? Oh, the crowd is cheering. With, right? The crowd is cheering that, for the right choice. They got handled over by Les. That, you know, it was all really quite they a problem. They are cheering for the right so choice. Again. Man. 13. Home crowd out. advantage. It is OP. That same piece once again towards B. Oh, actually, never mind. I'm, Les will feel the I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping. Yes, he can. One more trade. This I time thought it was closer by, though. So right away around. My bad. Safety. A plant should be next in line, which it is. And now we look at the post plant. Far more dedicated towards the site. This I thought time it as was. Well. Loud on the disconnected, so definitely got something cooking with that molly still got the fragment secret should get oh. some utility back Big. ts has found one sadak will fall there we go they are holding on to this with both hands as much as they can aspas trying to clear through nice oh, what the drive by nice and loud oh yes my God. Oh, they done that g g 
The molly will land, but it won't matter. It is GG. We will get a victory lap around. <laughs> Aspas will fall for it. Cowan Zine, though, once again, the same pair of hands um, to seal the what deal. A, for what Lau. a match. Oh, it's sunshine in Sao Paulo for Lau. Gen G, man. This was that a great is match. Heartbreak. Hats off to them. Absolutely phenomenal play from them today. We talk about what this is, and, you know, it's roses for Lau, but for Gen G coming in against, you know, the reigning champions by all rights on the hometown is there another match today nah, this was the last one for today and uh, tomorrow there's no matches and still putting up but on friday like this, there is um, semis Meteor, so two TS matches and then well. two matches and i believe um, really on monday coming out from Gen yeah, the yeah, next I mean, bracket begins to, which is um, these the rest of the team questions around this roster coming into this event but in my eyes if one series is anything to go by and you can hear as well, they've Good earned crowd. the respect, the Absolutely. standing ovation here Absolutely. in Sao Paulo for There's Gen no G. losers bracket, yeah. it's Absolutely a single elimination. Deserved. We didn't, I, I genuinely will be completely honest with you here, fully transparent. Did not expect that it's level of depth, G. that heart coming out from Gen G, but it is Lau's moment. Oh wait, uh, Rody, right? Down heroes walking back in. After what All was right, an let me check the game. night market. Pushed in both I mean, maps. Towards the end of that one, I almost oh, wanted I'm to see I'm waking up in eight hours, oh, apparently. Split at and, that point. And, uh, again, we talked about, obviously, some of the concerns with this roster. Yep. Obviously, with losing Sassy and Pancada, yeah, the absolutely. core stands. It stands the test of time so far. Yep. Everybody's stepping up to the plate. I mean, look at the scoreboard here. It's so evenly distributed. Just to go ahead, Atsi, top heavy for Gen G. Meteor, TS, and King. Overall, top of Fracture, but... Talked about that graphic just before this came out. Just it's 15 ACS yeah. separating yeah. the photo here. Previous performance allowed, and it's not a million miles away once again. Nah, they are all heavy hitters. Yes, you will see those occasions from Aspas finding a little more Sadak, maybe you could argue, but I'm saying it now, that team is is so capable. Oh, man. Hard to yeah. see on the other side here. This is the brutality of this format, yeah. of this tournament. Not many. Get to walk away here as victors. They should feel no shame in their performance no, whatsoever no. today. Again, against the odds they face All here right, in I this gotta arena. I've got to hide the link here. Take nothing away from what they displayed. No, I can't wait to see what Genji can bring going forward. I hope this doesn't, you know, echo further. And now, let's check out the night market. Oh, wait, I have to um, download the patch. It'll go pretty fast. And then we wrap the stream. But if anyone is heading out now, hope you guys have a great night, great day, great morning, whatever time it is. And I'll see you next time. Where are the puppies? It got too loud for them. No pun intended. What do you want? Well, I I don't I'm not really gonna buy any skin, but um, I wanna see what I get. That's what I want. I want a nice surprise. Yeah, eleven. Yeah, I mean that's that's a part of the that's a part of the competition. It's not to be mean or anything to them. It's more like capturing the moment, you know. What's the discount range for DM? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I follow. All right. Is Veteran going to start? Yeah. Nice. All right. Here it is. Oh wait. I have RGX RGX Vandal in the store. Too bad I'm not getting it. 
Okay. What are your predictions on this one? I am saying it's the Halo Claw. You know, the Iron Knife. Bucky and Bucky skin. This one and the Ares. Stinger. Random Vandal. You guys ready? Let's start with the blue. Boom, boom. Not even close. Smite Classic. Convex Bulldog. Let's go green one. Frenzy. The Yoro one. The red. Crimson Beast Vandal. That's the most... Uh, well, not most recent, but it's pretty recent, that one. Nebula Phantom. Not too bad so far. Neptune Anchor. Dude, I don't have this one. That would uh, fit with my uh, Neptune skin, but I don't think I would. Uh, I, I don't think I would enjoy this one that much. The sound is what's selling me on this. The water sound. Yeah, I mean, the last night market I had was way better, but this is better than average, for sure. My store, though. I mean, yeah, this one alone is pretty nice. Roblox skin. All right, you guys, I'm hopping off. Hope you have a great night, great day, great morning, whatever time it is. If it's a birthday, happy birthday. And also, before we hop off, um, outro song. I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you've been enjoying the matches and uh, tomorrow i won't be streaming no watch parties either but i will be uh, working on on another video so a video coming out tomorrow hopefully uh, hopefully we get two and uh, then i'll be back on friday with uh, watch party saturday watch party probably no ranked on saturday and su sunday um just to spend some time with my girlfriend as well um catch up on uh, valentine's since uh, we couldn't couldn't meet up with her so you know doing something special and uh, yeah, going to be some nice matches in the weekend. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Love you all. Peace out.